The story begins with Cheng Dong Choi sitting holding his phone, remarking that webtoons these days are so boring. His black-haired friend comments that they always depict some loser getting stronger. The brown-haired guy agrees, adding that it always revolves around school violence, which is absurd nowadays. Chang Dong Choi asserts that it's because all these authors are old, and school bullies were only prevalent when they were students. For some reason, they think bullies are still ubiquitous today. He nods in agreement and asks Sa Hyun Kim if he is keeping watch properly. Fa Hyun Kim stands near the wall, scanning the other side to check if anyone is approaching. He turns and confirms that he is and wonders, how is this not considered bullying? Cheng Dong Choi approaches, grabs his neck, and demands an end to school violence. Sa Hyun Kim screams and pleads for him to stop. Cheng Dong Choi throws him on the ground and remarks that he guesses it's not ending. The brown-haired boy responds with a nope and suggests they leave. They all move from there, and Chang Dong Choi asks if the coin stocks are rising. So Hyun Kim lies on the ground and contemplates that he can try yelling out that tired old slogan as much as he'd like, but no one ever shows up to actually do anything about it. He wonders where it all started to go wrong and why he has to live like this. He reflects that these days, webtoons and web novels are always about getting quests, receiving rewards, and growing stronger like characters do in video games. He wishes he could do that too and calls out for the quest window again and again with a full voice. After a while, Sohyun Kim sits near the wall and remarks, but that will never happen, thinking to himself of course it won't. He states that this is not a web novel, there is no way something like that would appear out of nowhere. Suddenly, the quest window appears in front of him, and the system notifies him that the quest window has been activated. He is surprised to see this and asks, what the heck is this? The quest window asks if he would like to begin the quest. He thinks to himself that from that moment on, his life begins to change. Later, he sits in the classroom and reflects that there are two types of people in the world, the popular kids and the loners. He believes that if one is outgoing and active, they are considered a popular kid, while if one is shy and introverted, they are labeled a loner. He contemplates that the terms popular kid and loner have replaced the terms bullies and losers, a change for which he is thankful. He prefers being called a loner over a loser, but something interesting happens. He calls the quest window, and it appears in front of him. The quest window asks if he would like to begin the quest. He, a loner like himself, unsure whether he is dreaming or awake, continues to toggle the window on and off during class. After doing this about 300 times, he realizes that, no matter how unbelievable the whole thing seems, he cannot help but believe that this is real. He ponders what beginning the quest means. He moves his finger to click yes and wonders if he just needs to press the button. Suddenly, Karen Beat comes in his way and his finger presses on his belly. He is shocked to see this. She says this is sexual harassment. He explains that there was actually a quest window. She slaps him and calls him a creepy little nerd. While sitting in her seat, she tells him to go to the school snack shop for her. He asks about the snack shop. She confirms that she is craving a sandwich. He asks why she doesn't go get it herself. She responds by saying he knows how great her legs look, and thanks to these legs, she has 200,000 Instagram followers, and he knows that. She asks if she were to trip and fall on her way to the snack shop, whether he would take responsibility for her injuries. He thinks there is no point in trying to argue with her and says okay, he will be right back. She responds great, he is such a nice guy. He asks about the money. She says he must be joking and abuses him, saying it'll be his treat. He moves from there and thinks this is the kind of person he is, too scared to speak out against injustices like this. Just then, Chang Dong Choi arrives, grabs him by the neck, and demands an end to school violence. So Hyun Kim thinks he is pathetic. He is thrown to the floor, and Chang Dong Choi asks if he is okay. So Hyun Kim responds with a trembling voice, ending the school violence. Chang Dong Choi remarks that he should have said that before he got punched and adds that he knows he is just messing with him. So Hyun Kim agrees. Chang Dong Choi taps him on the head and sincerely says he is such a nice guy. For Hyun Kim thinks to himself that just wait. One day, after he has become successful, he is going to expose them all as bullies and apologize. He leaves there with his gang. After a while, Sa Hyun Kim is at home and tells her mother, seriously, let him drop out of school. She thinks that she's the only person he can talk back to. He expresses that he's not learning anything in school and would rather drop out to start being a YouTuber. 
She stands in the kitchen, cutting vegetables, and tells him not to make her laugh about dropping out of school. He argues that school is nothing but a waste of time and questions what will happen if he goes to college. He predicts he'll just end up with some mediocre white-collar job. She warns him, holding a knife, that if he doesn't quiet down, she might do something she'll regret. He insists he can make it as a YouTuber. His sister, Dahyun, lies on the sofa, laughing and calls him a jackass, questioning if he thinks this will become a viral hit. He tells her to shut up. She challenges him to make her. He storms off to his room, slamming the door, and claims it was the wind, not him. His mother admonishes him not to go around slamming doors in the house. He insists it was the wind, not him. He lies sadly on his bed, pondering why he is like this. He admits he's too scared to even stand up for himself at school and calls the quest window again. Alone in his room, he wonders if he pressed the button properly and presses it again. He figures he can test it out to his heart's content. The quest window notifies him that it's initializing the quest system, and once he completes a quest, he will receive a card. He wonders what kind of quest he's starting and realizes he'll get a card if he completes it. The quest window informs him that the tutorial quest is being generated, apologize to his mom, with the reward being one gold card. He questions if apologizing to his mom is a quest, and if once he does that, they will give him this gold card thing, and if it's gold, maybe he can sell it. The quest window notifies him that he may receive the following cards as rewards in ascending order, bronze, silver, and gold. He acknowledges that's all fine and good, but wonders if he can sell the gold card or not. He emerges from his room and apologizes for yelling at her earlier, thinking he'll just give it a try. He explains he didn't mean to. He just got a bit worked up while talking to her. He wonders how long he needs to keep going and apologizes again. Dahyun remarks that he sounds like he's finally gone off the deep end and suggests they should get him checked out. He wonders if this is good enough. The quest window notifies him that the tutorial quest is complete, and as a special reward for completing it, he receives a gold card. He realizes he did it. He returns to his room, sits on the bed, and asks if he has got a gold card. He reasons that if it's a card, he should be able to sell it for at least 10,000 won. He notices the quest window and asks how he can get it, and if he needs to say claim card. He then says claim card. The quest window notifies him that he has claimed the gold card. His room starts to sparkle, and a gold card appears in front of him. It reads, one time use card, grow one two inches. He realizes he will grow one two inches taller, and this card will disappear once used. The quest window asks if he would like to use the card. He confirms, saying use the card. The quest window notifies him that he has used the grow card. He emerges from the room, calling for his mom, grabs Dahyun by the neck, and exclaims that he's grown one two inches taller. She asks what he's talking about and threatens to call the police. He explained that he measured his height yesterday, and he was 5 foot 5, but now he's grown 1 2 inches, so he's over 5 foot 6. He finds this amazing. The quest window notifies him that the number of available cards is zero. He expresses how glad he is that he apologized to his mom and believes this is real. His mother passes by him and apologizes too, asking him to have a seat because it's time for dinner. He reflects that at school, he's always apologizing, but this is the first time he's apologized to his mom and agrees to sit for dinner. The next day, he arrives at school happily, thinking he is taller. A student asks why Sehyun has that weird look on his face. Another student remarks that he seems to be in a good mood. He believes he has gotten taller and finally crossed over 5 foot 6, feeling the air is different up there. A girl interjects, asking what's going on. The other student mentioned that he seemed a little taller than before. She speculates he probably just has lifts in his shoes. The other girl disagrees, pointing out that he's wearing slippers and looks at him, asserting he's taller. He attributes it all to the quest and wonders why the quest window isn't popping up today. He realizes he needs to complete another quest to get a card. The quest window notifies him that it's generating a tutorial quest, with the rewards for completing it being one gold card and one silver card. He reflects on receiving another gold card and a silver card on top of that, considering it generous, especially given how easy these quests are. The quest window notifies him of the next quest, Kiss Karen Beak, with rewards of one gold card and one silver card. Karen Beak tells him to watch where he's going. He realizes the second quest is to kiss Karen Beak and remembers her asking if he has a death wish. 
She is about to slap him and threatens to beat his ass. He wonders if she is kidding him. There's no way he'd ever be able to kiss her. Then she stops and mentions she heard a rumor that guys are getting hit by her. He thinks it will never happen. She moves away and says she is not going to hit him. He thinks this quest is impossible. How could they give him such a ridiculous quest? He says to abandon the quest and decides to give up on this quest and get a new one. The quest window warns him. He wonders what this warning is about. The quest window notifies him that once a quest is abandoned, all rewards are forfeited and quest windows will never appear again, asking if he would still like to abandon the quest. He stands in the hallway, lamenting that this is not fair. A girl tells him to stop blocking the hallway. A boy asks what the hell is wrong with him. He realizes he wasn't aware of this. If he gives up on this quest, he will shrink back down to 5 feet 5. Another girl sees him and asks what he is doing. The short-haired girl remarks that it looks like he's touching something. She calls him a creep, and the other girl agrees, saying it's disgusting. He realizes not only that, but he will never get another quest. The quest window notifies him of the next quest. Kiss Karen Beak with rewards of one gold card and one silver card, and the deadline is before school ends. He thinks he can't give up. There's no way he is going back to being that small, and he will give it a try. After a while, he sits in a classroom and thinks it's impossible. He said he'd give it a try, but there's just no way. They are not even dating. He wonders how he could kiss her and blurts out loudly a kiss. He reflects that it's not like he'd ever be able to date Karen Beak in the first place and she might try to slap him to death just for asking her out, let alone for kissing her by force. He repeats a kiss aloud, thinking there's no way he could do that. Kyujaya asks if he wants a kiss. Startled, he asks if Kyujaya is serious. Kyujaya replies that he doesn't mind kissing him. He exclaims, saying he scared him and asking what happened to his face. Kyujaya explains that he got beat up by the bullies. She questions why he would say something like that with such seriousness and remarks. It's funny how he looks like he'd be one heck of a fighter, yet he goes around getting beat up all the time just like him. Kujaya admits he also thought he'd be stronger. Sihyun Kim tells him to stop speaking so seriously. Kujaya asks why he keeps muttering about a kiss, finding it very suspicious, especially since he's right beside him. Sihyun Kim wonders what he would do if someone gave him a mission that he had to complete, and it was to kiss a girl. He asks what he would do in that situation. Kujaya suggests that if he asks the girl really nicely, she might let him. Sihyun Kim disagrees, saying she would not. He proposes trying something like the free hugs campaign, but with kisses. Sihyun Kim says there's no way that would work, especially not for guys like them. He suggests offering her money instead. Sehyung Kim declares he's a genius. A kiss is basically just two people's lips touching, and everybody likes money, so all he'd need to do is pay the girl. He asks how much cash he has and if he can lend him some. He states he will pay her to kiss him. Kyuja Ya reaches for his wallet and says he's got him covered, adding that he can't believe they legitimately thought that was a good idea for a minute. He apologizes, recognizing that suggesting such a thing was terrible. Sehyun Kim agrees, acknowledging they were both wrong for entertaining that notion. He points out that to kiss a girl, he wouldn't need to be alone with her and asserts that guys like them never get such an opportunity. Sehyun Kim reflects that Kuja's right about that. There's no way he'd ever get a chance to be alone with Karen Beek. He considers the possibility during gym class because Karen Beek always claims she's sick during gym class so that she can skip it. After a while, Karen Beek awakens in the classroom and asks what the hell is going on. She sees Sihyun Kim in the classroom and asks why he is not in gym class. He thinks she's awake and he is alone with her, so now what does he do? He says he was not feeling well. She asks if he is watching her sleeping. He denies it, saying he was not. She teases him, saying he is screwed, he is going to tell everyone, he little creep. He stands up and repeats that he said he was not. She reassures him, calling him a moron and saying she's kidding, adding what a lame ass. She then asks if he is not busy and tells him to go get her a carton of strawberry milk. He says he already got one. She questions what he said. He repeats that he already got her one and sees the strawberry milk on her desk. He thinks about whether the first step would be to date Karen. She asks when he bought this and compliments him on being a good little minion. He thinks about how kissing happens between two people who are in a relationship and considers the likelihood of Karen secretly having feelings for him, 
which he concludes is obviously zero. He realizes he can't waste any more time thinking this over, and if he does not try something now, he won't be able to complete this quest. He goes near her and grabs the strawberry milk. She asks what the hell he is doing. He starts drinking and thinks, let's do this, and asks if she has ever kissed anyone. He knows he can't just give up without even attempting the quest. She questions if she has kissed anyone and warns him that if he does not cut the crap, the only thing he will be kissing is the floor of a jail cell. He realizes that of course that wouldn't work and says it was just a joke, and he was just curious, that's all. He thinks he failed the quest. Just then, Changdong Choi stands aside, holding his phone with his boys and asks if he wants them to kiss him. He starts laughing. They surround him, and he asks what the hell that was if they heard that. Changdong Choi asks if he likes Karen Beek. He announces to everyone that Sohyeon Kim has a crush on Karen Beek and that he gets off on being embarrassed. He denies it, saying that's not it, and asks why he recorded that. He repeats that he told him that's not it, delete it seriously. Changdong Choi retorts, but it's so funny. He screams at him to delete it. Changdong Choi punches him in the face, says it's just a joke, and asks if what he said to Karen was a joke too. He asks if they are not allowed to make a joke, and if he does not want to joke around with them. He asks why he doesn't want them to joke around with him. He slaps him and says they want to be his friends too, that's all. He repeatedly slaps him and says he said they want to be his friends too. So Hyun Kim's glasses break and fall on the floor. He demands an answer and is about to slap him again. Karen B catches his hand and says to cut it out. She is sure he got the message and deleted that video too. Changdong Choi salutes and says of course Karen's word is law. Then Changdong will now be stepping out for a smoke. He tells the others to let's go guys, they'd never do that to her. The brown-haired boy says they did not record anything in the first place. Changdong Choi tells Sehyun Kim to let's have a proper chat later. She tells Sehyun Kim to just go home early idiot, if he stays in school, they will beat him all day. After a while, he sits in his room, crying and says he failed. He just got beat up and ended up coming home early. He wonders why he even bothered trying. He thinks if he had just given up, at least he would not have been beaten up. What's going to happen to him at school from now on? Changdong was really pissed off today. He wonders how he'll explain the glasses to mom. He has already used the fell down the stairs excuse with her once. So he ended up failing the quest, and he will shrink back to 5 feet 5. He lies down and says everything's blurry, thinking he is glad to have had the chance to enjoy the extra height. The quest window notifies that the quest is complete. Meanwhile, in class, Karen Beek picks up the strawberry milk and remarks that she forgot about it. She wonders why that moron was going on about a kiss and asserts that no, he has never done it. She starts drinking and then realizes that this is the same straw Sohyun used. Meanwhile, Sohyun Kim's room lights up and sparkles. The quest window notifies him that he has received the rewards, a gold card and a silver card. He considers how the quest was completed and decides to claim it. He thinks that whatever it does, it doesn't matter, and instructs to claim the cards. The quest window confirms that he has claimed the gold card and the silver card. He contemplates that since he got his rewards, the first gold card made him taller, and he wonders what this card will do. Surprised, he exclaims, this is amazing. The quest screen displays the gold card, indicating that it is a one-time use card. It states that upon use, the holder will have their vision restored to 20, and the card will disappear thereafter. The quest window prompts him to decide whether he wants to use the card. He considers that it might be for his vision this time and chooses to use the card. The quest window confirms that he has used the scene the light card. He observes his hand clearly, chuckles and remarks that these quests are the best and quite remarkable. He speculates that he may have also obtained a silver card, wondering about its effects, although he assumes it won't be as beneficial as the gold card, likely just a claim card. The quest window informs him that he has indeed claimed the silver card. He identifies it as such and ponders whether it constitutes a truly rewarding prize. He excitedly leaps up, exits the room, and informs his mom about his improved eyesight. Dahyun tells him to be quiet and come eat dinner. He settles into his chair and asks where his mom is. She explained that she had to work late at night. He inquires if she prepared dinner for him. She mentions that it's a wish come true, as mom prepared dinner for them before heading to work. She instructs him to cease talking as his breath is unpleasant. 
he retorts that her own breath is equally disagreeable. She dismisses his retort as a feeble comeback. He remarks on her annoyance. Upon observing his face, she inquires if he has been in a scuffle. He explains that he was merely engaging in playful banter with his friends. She chuckles and expresses disbelief, asserting that he must have indeed been in a fight. He insists that her older brother doesn't go around getting into fights. She rebuts, dismissing the notion of him lording his age over her and questions the whereabouts of his glasses. He explains that his vision has improved. Skeptical, she urges him to stop deceiving her. He maintains that he's not lying, attributing his improved vision to forces beyond her understanding. She brushes off his explanation, stating that regardless if he ever sees her at school, he shouldn't speak to her. He queries the reason for this directive. She retorts, questioning why he thinks so, and remarks that it's because he's embarrassed. After some time, Cheng Dong Choi confronts him at school and mentions that their classmate Sahyon attended school that day. He questions if he has the courage to show up. The black-haired boy suggests that Sahyon likely believes he's weak. The brown-haired boy agrees with this assessment. Chang Dong Choi grabs him by the head and asserts that he can't allow that behavior to continue. He mentions that the bell is about to ring and suggests they finish and leave. The other boy agrees, stating they should depart. Another student in the class observes them assaulting Sahyon Kim. Chang Dong Choi instructs Sahyon to meet him behind the school building at lunchtime and warns him not to eat beforehand as he'll likely vomit it all out. He emphasizes that it's Sahyon's fault for angering him, so he should be prepared for whatever consequences he faces. His friend joins in laughter. Sahyon Kim moves to take his seat. Kyu Jaya apologizes, stating that he is sorry. Sohyun Kim questions why he would apologize. He wonders if Kyu Jaya believes that trying to intervene would result in him getting beaten up as well. Sohyun reminds Kyu Jaya of their agreement not to intervene when someone else is being attacked. However, Kyu Jaya expressed concern that the situation had escalated too much that day. Sohyun brushes off the concern, saying whatever, and queries why Kyu Jaya had asked Karen Beek if she had ever kissed anyone. He jokingly asks if Kyu Jaya desires to be kissed. Hyun Kim clarifies that he doesn't want to be kissed by Ku Ya and announces his intention to take a nap. He reflects on his situation, feeling pathetic and questioning why his life is like this. After a while, Chang Dong Choi lights up a cigarette, and Se Hyun Kim tells him to go ahead and yell at him just like he did yesterday. Se Hyun Kim apologizes, admitting he doesn't know what he is thinking and that he shouldn't have acted that way. Chang Dong Choi finds this strange. Sahyun Kim asks what's strange. Chang Dong Choi points out that he's the one hitting Sahyun, so why is Sahyun apologizing to him? He slaps Sahyun and tosses the cigarette on the floor, instructing him to pick it up. Sahyun Kim asks if Chang Dong Choi isn't done with it. Chang Dong Choi insists that Sahyun should do it. Sahyun Kim crawls to retrieve the cigarette. At that moment, Da Hyun arrives and asks what he is doing. He ponders what he should do. She repeats her question, asking what he is doing. He considers what he should tell her. Chang Dong Choi then inquires who's this. So Hyun Kim identifies her as his little sister. Chang Dong Choi asks if he has a little sister, to which Su Hyun Kim confirms. Chang Dong Choi explains to Da Hyun that it's all a misunderstanding. He was smoking, and Su Hyun was just picking up the cigarette he had thrown. He clarifies that he doesn't want to catch Sehyun smoking and asks Sehyun if that's correct, to which Sehyun agrees. Da Hyun asks if it's really true. Chang Dong Choi leads him away, stating that he should not misunderstand the situation. Sometime later, he remarks that was a close one. Sehyun Kim agrees, saying yeah. He asks if Sehyun isn't grateful that he covered for him. Sehyun Kim responds with a sure. He then comments anyway his sister must be pretty popular. Sehyun Kim expresses doubt, saying he doubts it. He notices his sister putting a garbage bag away and mentions that he'd like to become very good friends with her. Later on, Chang Dong Choi is urinating while Sehyun stands nearby. Chang Dong Choi expresses feeling a little hurt and asks why Sehyun didn't tell him he had a sister. He adds that he thought they shared everything as he knows. Sehyun Kim explains that it's not like he and his sister are close and she doesn't want him talking to her at school. He insists on being introduced to her. Sohyun Kim responds, stating that she's not great as she has poor grades just like him. He acknowledges his own poor grades and suggests they could go to the library together to study, emphasizing that they're friends and urging Sohyun to introduce him to her. 
Sehyun Kim questions why he wants to be introduced to her, stating that she truly isn't good. He responds by asking if Suhyun will be honest with him. Suhyun Kim asks what he means by being honest. He explains that he believes she would be good romantically. Kyuja Ya exits the restroom and inquires about what was just said, remarking that it's going too far. Changdong Choi punches him in the face, claiming he scared him. He berates Kyu Ya, stating that he had warned him not to frighten him with his unattractive appearance. He kicks him and exclaims for sake, if he is in high school, at least look like a high school student. He questions how the hell he's only 18 years old and mentions that it makes him feel guilty whenever he beats him up. Additionally, he reminds him not to take things so seriously. Fuhyun Kim witnesses the scene and calls out to him abusively. Chengdong Choi turns and asks if he just called him with bad words. Sehyun Kim confirms, stating that he did. Chengdong Choi moves towards him, expressing disbelief, and is about to punch him. However, he managed to hit him in the face before Chengdong Choi could do anything. The scene shifts to a flashback as Kim Sehyun observes the card and questions if it's a silver card but wonders about its utility and the purpose of receiving such a reward. He expresses doubt that he could ever utilize this skill. The silver card is revealed to be an attack card labeled Boxing Jab, enabling him to execute a jab, a punch commonly used in boxing, with the current skill rank being F Suinit. Returning to the present, the quest window notifies him that he executed a jab. Sohyun thinks to himself that he can't continue living like this and resolves to change and fight back. The quest window then informs him that a new quest has been created. Fight and defeat Changdong Choi 01, with the reward being one silver card and one bronze card. Sehyun recalls the earlier comment about a good lay and declares that he's going to confront Changdong Choi forcefully. The quest window confirms the initiation of the quest. Changdong Choi remarks that it is interesting and questions what the hell is happening at that moment. He prepares to fight again. Changdong Choi comments on how dramatic the situation is and asks if he watched a few tutorials on YouTube last night and if he truly wants to fight him. He proceeds to punch him again. The quest window notifies that he threw a jab. Changdong Choi falls down and inquires what this is all about, wondering if Sehyun secretly took boxing lessons or something and if so, since when and why. He moves to attack Suhyun and states that he took up boxing specifically to fight him. Sohyun Kim continues to attack him repeatedly. The quest window notifies multiple times that he threw a jab. Kyujaya expresses disbelief, stating that this is unbelievable. The quest window then notifies that the objective to fight and defeat Changdong Choi 11 has been completed, with the rewards being one silver card and one bronze card. Kyujaya remarks that Sohyun knocked Changdong Choi out. The quest window announces that the quest is complete and Sohyun's jab skill level has increased. Changdong Choi lies on the ground, and Kuja asks if he killed him. Suhyun assures him that he's probably just unconscious and moves to check on him. He grabs Changdong Choi's hand and insists that now is not the time, they must run. Suhyun Kim tells him to stop speaking with such gravitas. After a while, they sit near a construction site. Suhyun Kim remarks that they were able to escape. Kuja Ya comments that this is only the beginning. He agrees, mentioning that their classmates must be in an uproar. Hyuja Ye adds that the entire school is probably in an uproar because those guys are intimidating, always moving in a group. Changdong Choi searches for them and asks where they are. Suhyun asks if he will be able to continue attending school, expressing concern that they will be targeted for beatings during every break. Hyuja Ye asks when Suhyun learned boxing. He explained that he had just watched new tube videos and practiced by himself. Kyujaya questions if he can do that. He responds that he supposes so and recalls a notification he had never seen before. He wonders what it means that his skill level has increased and what will happen if he reaches 100. He suggests that he should see what rewards he received. Kyujaya asks about the rewards. He dismisses his previous statement, explaining that he was merely talking to himself and speculates that perhaps other people cannot see it. He reiterates that he doesn't need a kiss from Kyujaya. Kyuja Ya questions if he's feeling lonely. In response, he decides that he might as well take a look now and suggests they see. He is surprised to see the card and wonders how this is possible. Karen Beek approaches with other girls, calling out to them and inquiring about their activities. Kyuja Ya remarks that they are in trouble. Fahyun tells him to stop speaking with such seriousness and assumes that Karen Beek has also been searching for him. 
She approaches Suhyeon and asks what he has been doing, informing him that everyone is currently looking for him. He questions if it's true and wonders if she wasn't trying to find him for Changdong Choi. He admits that he somehow ended up fighting Changdong Choi. She decides to pretend she never saw him there and instructs him to go home. After a while, they both get caught. A boy asks if it is him, and if he is sure. Sehyun Kim wonders what he should do. Changdong Choi questions if he got beaten up by a weakling like him. He thinks he is scared. Two boys surround Kyu Ya, and one boy remarks that he has got to be kidding him. The other asks if he passed out from being punched by this guy. Kyu Ya tells them all to stop. He hits him and commands him to shut his damn mouth. The other classmates stand near the door. Changdong Choi demands to know what they all are looking at and what they want, telling them to get out there unless they want to get beaten too. He asks what they want to do now if they want to fight him too or fight instead of him. Sihyeon wonders what he should do, thinking he might as well let them hit him now. If he keeps stalling, that guy might show up, the beast who used his boxing skills to get all the seniors to fall in line as soon as he transferred to this school. He contemplates the possibility that Hajin Gu, the top dog of West Gang Bakhai, rumored to have never lost a fight, might be on his way here. Hajin Gu arrives and inquires about the situation. A boy turns and identifies him as Hajun Gu, informing him that Changdong Choi was beaten up in the bathroom and passed out. Hajun Gu asks who Changdong Choi is. Changdong Choi points to himself and acknowledges that he is Changdong Choi. Hajun Gu notices Suhyun Kim and asks if he is the one who hit Changdong Choi. Changdong Choi confirms, stating that Suhyun punched him. Hajun Gu instructs Suhyun to raise his head. Suhyun complies and lifts his head. Hajun Gu questions if Suhyun hit these guys. Suhyun affirms, saying yes. He asks why he did it. Suhyun Kim explains that he started it by insulting his family. He asks if that's all and comments that Suhyun apparently packs quite a punch, then hits him. Suhyun holds his hand and mentions that he heard Suhyun took up boxing, so he should try hitting him. Suhyun clarifies that he didn't actually take up boxing. Chengdong Choi asks why he didn't want to. Hajun Gu asks if he should hit him then. Suhyun wonders what he should do if Hajun Gu wants him to hit him, and if he's actually supposed to. He says it's okay, if he can land a hit on him, he will let it go. Suhyun considers what will happen after he hits him, and if he will be the one who ultimately gets beaten up. Hajun Gu assures him that he promises. He ponders what he should do and considers the cards he received after the last quest. He sees the cards and contemplates if he can use the new cards he has now. He thinks that the hit those high notes card does not seem appropriate for this situation, but the healing bean might come in handy. If he uses it, it will restore his stamina, but he wonders if restoring his stamina will change anything. Hajun Gu interrupts, insisting he said to hit him. He thinks that even if his stamina is restored, there's no way he could win against him. He considers his options, realizing that whether he hits him or not, he's going to get beaten up. He decides that since he's going to get beaten up either way, he might as well try hitting him. He throws a jab, but Hajun Gu moves aside. He realizes that Hajun Gu dodged it and attempts to punch him again and again, but Hajun Gu protects himself and throws him away. Sohyeon lies on the ground, opens his eyes, and realizes he passed out. He concludes that Hajun Gu dodged his jab and then he passed out from a single punch. He understands the situation. He is absolutely screwed. He had actually tried to hit Hajun Gu, and there was no way Hajun Gu would let him live after that. Suhyun imagines Hajun Gu ripping him apart and feeding his remains to wild dogs. He covers his face. Hajun Gu asks what he is doing. Sihyeon responds that he is waiting for Hajun Gu to hit him, wanting at least some control over how his life will end. Hajun Gu asks why he would do that and suggests they go for a smoke. Sahyon is shocked to hear this. After a while, outside the school, all the boys are smoking. A gray-haired boy asks what happened to her. The black-haired boy replies that he got her number. Sahyon Kim stands between them, wondering what the hell is happening right now. The gray-haired boy suggests asking her if she wants to go for a beer. Sahyon wonders why he brought him here. Hajun Gu offers him a cigarette and asks what he is waiting for, telling him to take it. Suhyun realizes what's going on. Hajun Gu is going to beat him up out here. He refuses, stating that he doesn't smoke. He figured out that Hajun Gu had brought him out here since he couldn't hit him in the classroom. The rumors were true. This guy is the worst. 
Hajungu asks for his name. Sehyun introduces himself as Sehyun Kim. Hajungu apologizes, admitting that Sehyun was better than he thought, and he ends up fighting back out of reflex. Sehyun is shocked to hear this apology. Hajungu continues, saying that he has boxed for quite a while too and thinks Sehyun has potential. Sehyun realizes that Hajungu is complimenting him now. After a while, Sehyun lies on his bed at home and ponders about Hajungu's behavior. He wonders what Hajungu's deal is. He had heard that Hajungu was a really scary guy, but he apologized to him and even paid him a compliment. Sehyun considers that Hajungu even spoke to him politely, making him question if Hajungu is not like all those rumors claim he is. He asks what if Hajungu beats him up tomorrow, finding the situation frustrating. The quest window notifies him that there are no quests in progress. Sohyeon remarks that he never thought he'd get mixed up with Hajungu because of these quests and questions who's assigning these quests. He reflects on the fact that it says these are all still tutorial quests and wonders if that's why they are giving out so many cards and if the main quests are a separate category. He discusses the cards he has received so far, gold, silver and bronze cards and wonders how good the cards that are even better are and if they are higher in level than gold. Sohyeon also notes that the abilities granted by the cards are strange and observes that all the cards he has received so far are related to fighting. The scene shifts to the next day. Sohyeon Kim sits in the classroom with Kyuja Ya. Kyuja Ya remarks that Hajun Gu is quiet. Sehyun agrees, stating that he thought Hajun Gu would pummel him as soon as he got to school. He wonders if Hajun Gu wants to catch him completely off guard before he confronts him. Changdong Choi calls Sehyun, approaches him, and declares, here he is. Sehyun prepares for a fight and asks what Changdong Choi wants, wondering if he needs to fight him. Changdong Choi responds that it's not about fighting and explains that Hajun Gu wants to see Sehyun after school. He starts to leave and asks if Sehyun got it. Sehyun tells him to wait. Kyuja Ya remarks that the end is nigh. Sehyun asks if Hajun Gu wants to see him after school, implying that he wants Sehyun to quake in fear all day. He asks Kyuja what they should do. Kyuja Ya responds that there's no other way. If they run, it will only get worse the next day. He suggests that the best option is to meet Hajun Gu today and get it over with. After a while, he arrives at Wan Music Town and sees Hajun Gu sitting with his friends, feeling scared. Hajun Gu tells him to sit. Sehyun agrees and thinks there's alcohol everywhere, so this is what these people do whenever they hang out. All the popular girls from school are there as well. A short-haired girl asks who he is. The other girl says she has no idea. He wonders if Hajun Gu is going to publicly shame him in front of everyone here and how he should react in this situation to ensure he gets beaten as little as possible. Karen Beek asks him what he's doing there. He explains that Hajun told him to come here and realizes that she's there too. Hajun Gu suggests that since he's there, he should sing something. A boy mentions that Hajun wants him to sing. Sehyun Kim thinks he is a bad singer and doesn't know what to do. He asks what he should sing. Hajun Gu remarks on how he's freaking out. Sehyun Kim thinks that if he refuses, he might ruin the mood, so he decides to give it a try since he has this card. The system notifies that he used the hit those high notes card. He starts singing, and everyone is surprised to hear his voice and likes it. Sehyun Kim expresses gratitude to everyone, saying they are too kind, and wonders if he was that good. Karen Beek remarks that she thought he'd sing a song from an anime or something, and is surprised he didn't. The other girl laughs and mentions those high notes. The short-haired girl comments that he's kinda cute though, admitting she was so surprised. A boy asks Hajun Gu if he can sing that song. The other boy also says of course he can, it's easy. Sehyun agrees, calling himself a tone-deaf idiot. The other boys laugh and comment about tone deafness, saying his voice is like nails on a chalkboard. A girl asks who he is. The other girl responds that he's apparently a friend of Hajun's, adding that she has never seen Hajun bring a friend before. Sehyun introduces himself as Sehyun Kim. She asks him to sing another song for them. Sehyun wonders if Hajun is not going to hit him. The boys surround him, and a boy asks if he can sing a dance song. Sehyun agrees, saying for sure. The other boy comments that he is quite the party animal. Sehyun realizes that the rumors are wrong and turns to ask Hajun what's about him. Hajun Gu reassures him that he is fine and should have fun. Sehyun thinks that Hajun was a good guy all along. The scene shifts to the next day. 
So Hyun Kim announces that he is off to school and reflects on how it's the first time he's been excited about going to school. He thinks he was doomed for sure before. He marvels at the fact that Hajun would call him a friend, believing that life at school is going to be a breeze from now on, especially since Hajun said to let him know if anything bad happened. So Hyun believes everything has been going great ever since he started these quests. The quest window notifies him that there are no quests in progress. He concludes that he doesn't need to worry about bullies anymore and resolves to ask Hajun to protect Kuja too. Just then, Hajun Gu arrives and calls out to him, asking if he's just getting in now. Suhyun asks if Hajun is just coming to school now too. He confirms and suggests they head in together. The quest window notifies that the main quest is starting. Suhyun thinks the tutorial quests are over, so he will be getting main quests from now on and wonders about the rewards. The quest window notifies that upon completion of his first main quest as a special reward, he will receive a platinum card. So Hyun realizes that it's a higher level than gold and wonders, if that means the quest will be that much harder, but he decides it doesn't matter. Hajun Gu asks what he is doing, and So Hyun thinks that whatever it is, he will complete it. Hajun Gu tells him to come on, let's go. The quest window notifies that the task is to fight and defeat Hajun Gu, the top dog of West Gangbuk High, with zero out of one completed. The time remaining to complete the task is three days, and the reward is one platinum card. So Hyun thinks he knows some of the rumors about Hajun may be exaggerated, but he's still the top dog at school. So Hyun is supposed to win a fight against him in the next three days. He remembers the boxing jab attack cards. He thinks this skill didn't even work. Hajun Gu asks if he has something he wants to say. So Hyun wonders what to do. The quest window notifies that as the main quest progresses, side quests are activated, and he can now earn more cards. He ponders why things have been going so well. There's a time limit, so if he doesn't beat him in a fight in three days, he will fail the quest, and there is no way he could beat him. After a while, he sits eating food and wonders what to do. He became friends with Hajun thanks to these quests, and just as it finally seemed like he'd be able to enjoy normal school life, he was now being asked to beat him in a fight. He contemplates defeating Hajun Gu, the top dog of West Gangbok High. Kyuja Ya also sits with them, and says to Suhyun that he feels like he is getting indigestion. Fahyun Kim thinks this situation is so awkward, there might be bad rumors about him. Kyuja Ya whispers, asking why Hajun is eating lunch with them. So Hyun explains that Hajun likes hanging out with him, and he actually thinks Hajun is a good guy. He wonders why he has to fight someone who's being so nice to him. Hajun Gu stands up and says he is leaving first. So Hyun responds okay and tells Kyuja that it's easy. Kyuja asks if he is saying he is easy and what he is going to do to him. So Hyun says, please shut up and thinks he won't do it. He just needs to give up on this quest. He believes he has Hajun in his corner, and with him, his life at school will be a breeze. There's no reason for him to pick a fight with Hajun. He thinks his goal is to have a normal school life, and if he were to pick a fight with Hajun and lose, not only would he lose all his rewards, but he'd lose Hajun too. So he might as well just give up on this quest now. After a while, Sohyun Kim calls Hajun and informs him that he is there and believes they will be best friends forever. Hajun Gu smashes Changdong Choi's face against the wall while apologizing. Hajun Gu asks him what for and bangs his face against the wall again. Sukyeon Kim is shocked to see this and wonders what the hell is going on. He apologizes. Karen Beat comes up behind him and asks if he thinks he is a good guy. He says that's the kind of guy he really is. She asks if he knows why he's getting his ass beaten. Sukyeon Kim asks why he is. She says it was because he did not pay up enough. He asks about paying what. She says he knows what, the money those bullies collect from everyone else at school. He says yeah, he pays them too. She reveals that all the money goes into Hajun Gu's pocket, and he coerces others to do his dirty work, keeping all the money for himself. She says it seems like Hajun Gu has been nice to him lately, but he should realize what kind of guy he really is. She moves from there and says she will be going then. Hajun Gu turns to him and asks when he got there. He says he just arrived and wanted to ask him something, then asks why he is being so nice to him. Hajun Gu says, well obviously, it's because he is good at boxing. He adds that before he met him, he was surrounded by weak idiots. Suhyun thinks that's what it was. Hajun only liked him. He asks why he asked him that. 
he replies that he is just curious and thinks that because he believes he is a good fighter, if he gives up on this quest, he will lose the ability to throw jabs. One day, he will discover that he is not a good fighter and start treating him like dirt. Hajin asks what it is and if something happened. He says it's fine, so he should tell him. Suhyun says he just feels like crying, that's all bad. After a while, he practices at night. The quest window notifies him that he threw a jab. He thinks he will give it a shot. He can't go back to how things were before, and he can't just give up. He wonders how he can beat him, considering the jab did not work on him that time, and if he will be able to beat him with just that. He realizes he has more cards, the healing begins, and he hits those high notes cards. He thinks that he can beat Hajun with these. Just then, some students come there, and Sang Chul says, excuse him, and asks if he is a high school student by any chance. Fa Hyun says yes he is. Sang Chul says he sees they do not have any money for the bus and asks if he can lend them some. Sa Hyun Kim apologizes but says he does not have any money. Sang Chul says he sees he is clueless and he is telling him to hand over all his money. Sa Hyun scratches his head and says but he actually doesn't have any money. Sang Chul moves to attack him and says he guesses they have to beat it out of him. Fa Hyun punches him and the quest window notifies him that he has thrown a jab. He apologizes, stating that he reacted without thinking. Sang Chiol remarks that he sees Sahyun as the type who likes to get in the first punch. The quest window notifies that his jab skill level has increased. He is surprised and thinks about his skill level, realizing it didn't increase after the previous time. It only goes up when he hits an opponent. The quest window notifies congratulations, and his jab is now at E rank. He realizes his jab is at E rank, understanding that the more he levels it up, the stronger he will become. Sang Chiol once again moves to strike, easily distracted. Sahyun Kim hits him repeatedly, noting it feels different from before, faster and stronger. At this rate, he might have a chance against Hajun. He asks what the others are doing and tells them to get him. Sahyun wonders what he should do now. The quest window notifies that a side quest has been created, to fight and defeat thugs with a reward of one silver card, and there are hidden conditions. He asks if this is the side quest mentioned before and wonders what the hidden condition might be. The quest window notifies him that he can forfeit the side quest. He asks if he can, and then of course he will give up. They all move to attack him. So Hyun wonders why he should give up and how he can give up now. The quest window notifies that the side quest has started. He admits he is terrified and wonders when he can get a card out of it. The quest window notifies that he has used the hit those high notes card. Sang Chiol asks if he has some boxing experience. Sa Hyun Kim responds that he can handle it. There are only five opponents. He moves to attack Sang Chiol. Sa Hyun Kim wonders how he's going to beat all five of them. Even if they only slap him, it's still five against one. He attacks Sang Chiol, and the quest window notifies him that he threw a jab. He realizes all he can do is throw jabs. Sang Chiol falls unconscious to the floor, and his friends call out to him. A boy asks what's wrong with Sang Chiol. Su Hyun Kim also wonders what's happening. Dong Jin slaps Sang Chiol's face, telling him to wake up. The black-haired boy remarks that Sang Chiol won't open his eyes. Another boy says he's just playing around. The boy in the red shirt insists he's only pretending to be knocked out, and this can't be the end. The quest window notifies Su Hyun that he needs to fight and defeat Thugs 15. Sang Chiol's friend mentions their hopes and dreams, as well as the promises they made to each other. So Hyun Kim wonders if he has killed Sang Chiol. The boys tell him to shut up. The others say he's just unconscious from being punched in the chin. So Hyun Kim thinks that if someone receives a blow to the chin, they pass out. Dong Jin urges them to hurry up and get that idiot, pointing at Su Hyun. He realizes he really needs to focus now. Somehow, he was able to knock one of them out. They remove their jackets and move to fight. A boy says he's dead. Another asks if he knows what a nice guy Sang Chiol is. Si Hyun Kim thinks there are still four of them left and decides to run from there. Dong Jin says to catch that idiot and let's avenge Sang Chiol. Si Hyun Kim says Sang Chiol's not dead and suggests they run away for now. He knows the moment he is surrounded, he is in trouble and needs to think through how to fight them. He suggests they all rush him at once. So Hyun Kim looks for a place where he can take them all on by himself and heads towards a less spacious area. Dong Jin asks what's up with this idiot and says look at this fool. He questions whether hiding in there is going to solve anything. 
So Hyun Kim realizes he's found it. Here, he can fight them one at a time, but now he's all tired out. He acknowledges he looks exhausted and asks if he really appears to be a boxer. The other boys comment that he's weak as an idiot, guessing that throwing jabs is the only thing this guy can do. So Hyun Kim eats a bean. The quest window notifies him that he has used the healing bean and his stamina has been restored. Donjin tells them to get out of his way, as they're scared of this weak idiot. He moves to attack Sohyeon, saying this is for Sangcheong. Sohyeon Kim attacks him again and again. The quest window notifies him that he has thrown a jab. A boy asks what the hell is up with that guy, remarking that he thought he was about to keel over. Sohyeon Kim realizes it worked. He is definitely used to throwing jabs now, and he has complete control of his attacks. At this rate, he has a fighting chance against Hajin. The quest window notifies that the task is to fight and defeat Thugs 25. The other boy mentions that Dongjin got caught too. They were both full of hopes and dreams. Another boy says Sangchen will be waiting for Dongjin. The quest window notifies that he used to hit those high notes cards and has fought and defeated Thugs 35. He decides to aim for the chin and attacks the others as well. The quest window notifies him that he needs to fight and defeat Thugs 55, completing the side quest. He sits between them and declares that he did it. The quest window notifies that the hidden condition has been achieved. He inquires about the hidden condition of achievement. The quest window notifies that winning without receiving a single blow from the enemy achieved, congratulating him for unlocking the hidden achievement. He has received a gold card. He realizes he ran because he thought he'd be done for if they hit him, but that was a hidden achievement of the quest, and his reward was upgraded. He claims the card and thinks he is so lucky. The quest window notifies that he has claimed the gold card. He plans to claim it immediately. He holds the card, surprised to see what is written on it, and wonders what it means. The scene shifts to the next day. So Hyun Kim sits in the classroom, and the quest window notifies him to fight and defeat Ha Jun Gu, the top dog of West Gangbuk Haizo 1. The reward is one platinum card, and the deadline is 0802 to complete the task. He realizes it's already been three days, and he only has eight hours left to beat Hajun. He considers the cards he has, the E-rank jab, the healing bean, and hits those high notes, and with the new gold card he received, he has four in total. He wonders if he can win with these against Hajun Gu, who apparently has never lost a fight. He corrects himself, thinking he has to win, if he doesn't, his life will go back to how it was before. Kujaya sits beside him and asks if he wants a kiss. He demands to know who Kujaya is. Kujaya remarks that he seems upset and asks if something is wrong. He acknowledges that he needs to protect Kuja, recalling how Kuja would always get beat up instead of him and help him out, especially when it came to matters concerning Hajun Gu. He reflects on how Kuja even took beatings in his place, proving to be a truly great friend. Kujaya asks about Hajun Gu. He brushes it off, saying it's nothing to worry about, and realizes he has never properly thanked Kuja. He seizes this opportunity to express gratitude, saying thanks for everything, though it feels like he's heading to his death. Kuja Ya asks what he is talking about. Fahyon sees Hajun Gu approaching them and realizes he's here. Hajun Gu asks what they are up to and suggests going to the snack shop. He wonders how he can fight him and considers just asking him for a fight. He stands up and agrees, but inwardly admits he's too scared to do so. For now, he'll just go to the snack shop with him. Just then, a boy approaches from the side, talking with a girl while holding an ice cream. Suddenly, he accidentally bumps the ice cream into Ha Jun Gu's shirt, apologizing immediately and asking who he is. So Hyun Kim is scared to recognize him. Ha Jun Gu grabbed him by the shirt and told him to wait a minute as they went to the snack shop. So Hyun Kim moves forward to confront him thinking that an idiot like him deserves a beating, and that must be why he is receiving these cards. Ha Jun Gu asks if he is talking to him. So Hyun Kim again insults him and asserts that he is indeed speaking to him. While he may not believe in himself, he believes in the gold card he recently acquired. He warns Ha Jun to open his mouth because he is going to shove new moves down his gullet. He thinks alright, he will fight just like he practiced. Ha Jun Gu pats him on the head and says he is a loyal guy, asking if he gets angry because he hit someone in his class. He responds with a no, saying he was just talking. Ha Jun Gu insists they should not fight. They are friends, so they should chill out. He holds him by his neck and suggests they go to the snack shop. So Hyun Kim thinks this is not how it was supposed to go. 
After a while, two girls sit in the playground gossiping. A girl in a black jacket asks if she has heard. The girl in the white shirt says no and asks what she heard. She responds that two people almost got into a fight. The other girl asks who did. She says that someone apparently tried to provoke Hajun Gu. She asks who would do something like that. She says it was Sehyun Kim. She asks how he is still alive. She says Hajin said he would not fight him. Sehyun Kim sits aside and thinks he didn't think he'd apologize, and now what does he do? The other girl says it seems like the rumors are true. They are friends, and Hajin Gu is nice to his friends. Sohyun Kim thinks it seems like Hajin really thinks of him as a friend, and he's incredibly violent and surrounded by bad rumors, but Hajin definitely does like him. He thinks there is not much time left to complete the quest, and at this rate, it might all be over before he can even begin. Kuja Ya also sits with him and asks if something is bothering him. He responds, yeah, because of Hajin Gu. Kuja Ya asks about Hajin Gu again, and if he is bullying him too, Sehyun Kim says it's more like he will be getting bullied by him soon. Kujaya says he understands. Karen Beek arrives and mentions she heard the rumors going around in school. She asks why he tried to pick a fight with Hajun Gu and if he was actually planning to fight him. Sehyun Kim says he does not know. She says he is hilarious and he actually got pissed off seeing him beat up that other kid in class. He denies it, saying that's not it, and asks why she hangs out with people like Hajun Gu. He reminds her that she helped him when Changdong was beating him up and told him that stuff about Hajun, asking if she was not doing all that to help him out. He adds that, come to think of it, even though she hangs out with them, she does not bully anyone, and she seems like a nice person. She says hanging out with them makes his life easier and asks if he expected a different answer. He says he sees and tries to say something, but she interrupts and says he crossed the line, she tells him not to get overly friendly just because she talked to him a couple of times. He apologizes, saying he thought they were friends now or something. She stands up and asks if he can't control himself. She says she knows she is attractive. Just then, a student comes calling Sehyun and says they have a big problem and that now's not the time to sit around. Sehyun asks what it is. Meanwhile, some bad students are poking Kujaya. A brown-haired student tells him not to make him laugh and asks if he heard him right and what did he say. Kujaya says he said to call Hajun Gu over here. He asks if he calls and if Hajun is supposed to come running. Kujaya says he feels like he has seen him before. The other student agrees and asks where he saw him before. Another student asks if he is not the kid who follows Sehyun around. Kujaya confirms, saying yes Sehyun, the little idiot. He taps his face and asks now if Sehyun and Hajun are friends, he thinks he is Hajun's friend too. He moves to attack him and says, first of all, he does not even look like a student. Hajun Gu arrives and says to get out of his way and asks why they are looking for him. He asks what they want. Kujaya says to stop harassing Sehyun. Hajun Gu asks what. Kujaya repeats, saying he said to stop harassing Sehyun, making him tag along with him because he's strong. That's basically the same thing as harassing him. Hajin Gu is punched by him, and everyone is shocked to witness this. He is seated nearby, stating that he and Sehyun are friends, and he does not appreciate people like him. He strikes him again, emphasizing that he doesn't appear genuine. There exist different tiers of individuals in this world, and he should associate with those of his own caliber. He questions if he believes he is harassing Sehyun and asserts that he is the one who is harassing him. He urges him to cease spending time with Sehyun, claiming it brings him down to his level. Kujaya suggests that if that's the sole reason he considers Sehyun a friend, he probably doesn't consider him a friend at all. Sehyun Kim arrives and retaliates against Hajun Gu. The quest window indicates that he throws a jab. He tells Kujia that if it weren't for him, he doubts he could have endured a day at this school. Meanwhile, a student swiftly enters the classroom and reports that a fight is occurring. A student inquires about the identities of the fighters, while another asks about the location of the altercation. The informant specifies that it's happening at the back of the school building, involving Sohyun Kim and Hajun Gu. The students gather to witness the confrontation. One questions whether Sohyun Kim is indeed participating in the fight, expressing doubt since it was described as such. Another student questions if it can even be classified as a fight. A different student wonders if Sohyun is simply going to be overpowered. Yet another student asks what might be wrong with Sehyun and if he initiated the confrontation with Hajun. 
Another student ponders whether someone should intervene to stop them. Karen Beek remarks that Suhyun could potentially be seriously harmed and advocates for someone to intervene. Another student questions how exactly they are supposed to do that. Ha Jun Gu challenges Suhyun, questioning if he truly wants to engage in a fight and expressing surprise since he believes they are friends. He clarifies that the only friend he has made at school is Kyu Jia, and he is prepared to engage in combat using quest cards. He utilizes an attack card with maximum capacity, which lasts for 5 seconds, confidently asserting that he will render Suhyun unconscious within that time frame. The quest window notifies the initiation of the quest. A student asks, what did he just say? The student wearing a tie responds, saying he mentioned he would knock him out in 5 seconds. Another student inquires about knocking Hajin out. The student with the tie asks if Hajin struck him in the head or something. The student in the black jacket questions if this guy is serious. Another student mentioned hearing that he's a fairly decent boxer though. Someone else remarks incredulously, saying no way, he must be joking, but still, he's no match for Hajin. Fahyun Kim believes he can succeed, noting that his jabs have become much stronger and he throws a jab at Hajun. Everyone is shocked to witness this. Hajun swiftly evades and remarks that it's already been 5 seconds. He launches another attack. A student comments that's impressive, likening the scene to watching a boxing match. The quest window notifies that he threw a jab. A student asks what's up with Suhyun and remarks that they didn't know he was that skilled at boxing. Another student asserts that Hajun can't do anything. Someone else questions what exactly is happening. Suhyun Kim attempts to strike again. A student comments that at this rate, Suhyun might actually emerge victorious. The quest window notifies that he threw a jab. The student with the tie asks, what if Hajun really loses? The student in the black jacket intervenes, admonishing them not to speak in such a manner. Changdong Choi wonders if this situation isn't somewhat peculiar. He asks what he means by this. Changdong Choi explains that it's reminiscent of when he fought him before. Hajun Gu attacks Suhyun. Changdong Choi suggests that he seems to only know how to throw jabs. Suhyun Kim collapses onto the floor. Hajun Gu remarks that it seems like that's the only move he can execute. Suhyun retorts, saying all he needs is 5 seconds. He slaps his and declares that this is absurd, questioning if he genuinely planned to defeat him with just a jab. The scene shifts to a flashback where Suhyun Kim wakes up in his room and wonders if he can emerge victorious and defeat Hajun Gu with just a jab. He reflects that while his jabs have certainly become stronger, there's no way it's potent enough to serve as a finishing move against Hajun. He muses that perhaps the only recourse is to utilize the card he obtained from completing that side quest the maximum capacity card. He expresses that it would have been preferable if it were a tackle or some sort of jiu-jitsu move, but he supposes he must lure Hajin into a false sense of security in order to employ it. He recalls that the maximum capacity card lasts for 5 seconds, and if he can defeat Hajun within that time frame, he has no alternative. The scene shifts to the present, where Suhyun Kim moves to attack Hajun Gu and declares that he only has 5 seconds. Hajun Gu punches him and questions his actions. A student interjects, asking if Suhyun was attempting to tackle Hajun just now. Changdong Choi explains that it's because Hajun is a boxer, unlike Suhyun, who isn't an athlete, and considering the difference in weight classes, a tackle wouldn't be effective against him. Suhyun once again mentions the 5 second limit and realizes that in order to use the maximum capacity card, he needs to persist. The quest window notifies that he has used the hit those high notes card. Hajun Gu questions his actions once more before striking him again. Sohyun persists in his attacks, thinking that he can't relent until Hajun grows weary of him. He strikes him on the chin once more, repeating his question about his actions. He, determined, continues his assault, thinking that he must keep going until he gets an opportunity. He grabs hold of Hajun's shirt and holds a bean in his teeth, recognizing it as his chance. The quest window notifies him that he has used the healing bean and his stamina has been restored. The student with the jacket remarks that Hajun has started swearing and they need to stop him. Another student expressed that they anticipated this outcome. Yet another student asserts that this isn't just a mere fight. Hajun Gu declares that he will truly harm him and clenches his arm, believing Suhyun won't be able to resist. Suhyun Kim grabs hold of him with both arms and utters maximum capacity. He explains that it's an attack card with a different style than a jab, and the ability of the maximum capacity card lasts for 5 seconds. 
The quest window notifies that he has used the maximum capacity card. He realizes that his current weight is 344 pounds, and the quest window indicates that the maximum capacity countdown has commenced. Fahyun Kim lifts Hajun and moves upward, stunning everyone who witnesses this feat. He realizes that he possesses the strength equivalent to someone weighing 344 pounds, enabling him to hurl Hajun with the force of all 344 pounds. He beats him on the floor, removes his jacket, and punches him in the face. He reflects that his punch also carries the force of all 344 pounds behind it, marveling at the power behind his punches. The quest window notifies that the maximum capacity has reached its time limit. So Hyun Kim also falls to the ground. Ha Jun Gu declares that he has won. The quest window notifies that the main quest is complete. Everyone is shocked to witness this. The quest window announces that he has received a platinum card and asks if he wants to claim his reward. Sahyun screams and demands if he would like to give him the reward. The scene shifts to the school where two students are sitting in the classroom gossiping. One student glances towards Hajun's seat and remarks that Hajun didn't come to school today either. The other question is whether he would dare to show up after what happened, mentioning that he got beaten in front of the entire school. He expresses hope that Hajun never returns and adds that now he feels like he can finally breathe without him around. He marvels at how amazing it was and wonders who would have expected Hajun Gu to lose that fight, especially to someone like Sohyun Kim, whom he refers to as a loser. A student interrupts, signaling that someone is passing through. Another student asks who he is. The first student explains that he's their school's top dog. They identify him as Sohyun Kim, the one who defeated Hajun Gu in a fight. The first student repeats their school's top dog. Sihyun Kim walks down the hallway, reflecting on how things turned out like this. After a while, he sits in the bathroom, holding his new card, and remarks that he finally has a platinum card, indicating that he indeed defeated Hajun Gu. He reflects on enduring all the challenges to obtain the platinum card, which is supposed to be one level above a gold card. He commands the card to be claimed and wonders about the potential of this amazing card. The card notifies him that it is a peak card, allowing him to observe another person. He questions what this means, expressing disappointment that it's not an attack card as he had hoped for something more powerful than a jab. He ponders if it's a good card, but wonders what exactly he can peek at in another person. Hu Jiaya interrupts, asking what he's mumbling about in there. He quickly responds that it's nothing and exits the bathroom to wash his hands. Kujaya suggests they should leave, to which he agrees, stating that he's ready. Kujaya then asks if he's truly prepared for this, to which he confidently replies, let's go then. Upon coming out, Kujaya remarks that he is too close. He apologizes, and everyone starts gossiping upon seeing him. A girl identifies him as Soyeon Kim, and another echoes the sentiment. Another person mentions him as the one who defeated Hajun Gu. Suhyun Kim feels dizzy, realizing how widely the news has spread. A girl comments that he looks like a nice guy, but another interjects, claiming it's just a facade. According to her, he lulls his opponents into a false sense of security with his innocent-looking face before launching surprise attacks. She deems it sneaky. She added that she heard Hajun was still in the hospital, explaining his absence from school. Suhyun Kim overhears this and thinks otherwise, knowing that Hajun is fine and simply skipping school. A student mentions that Suhyun apparently even attacked Hajun's dad, prompting surprise from the others. He mentions that his MBTI result labeled him as a psychopath, sounding like a total maniac. He reflects on how these rumors are spiraling out of control. A student points to Kyuja Ya and remarks that evidently the guy beside him is just as frightening. Another student asked if that guy was a student. He states that he heard Kyuja Ya is actually 48 years old. The other speculates that he might be the son of a Yakuza member. Sohyun Kim ponders on the rumors surrounding Kyuja and realizes that they are bringing down a lot of heat on him. A student contradicts this, saying that Kyuja is Sohyun Kim's right-hand man and that they supposedly fought for three days straight to determine the pecking order. Sohyun Kim feels the need to clarify to everyone that it's all a misunderstanding. Suddenly, he bumps into Hyun Dong Lee. Hyun Dong Lee apologizes and asks if he is Sohyun Kim, the one who won against Hajun Gu in a fight. Sohyun Kim confirms that he is indeed Sohyun Kim and asks if he has done something wrong. Hyun Dong Lee seizes the opportunity to properly greet him, introducing himself as the first year top dog Hyun Dong Lee. 
His companions also bow down. Fahyun Kim asks what's happening and why first years are greeting them like this. Hyondong Lee explains that it's because Sehyun Kim is the new top dog of West Gangbuk High, so it's only proper for them to greet him as their seniors. Sehyun Kim questions who declared him the top dog and why they're greeting him in such a manner. Hyondong Lee realizes this and suggests they should kneel instead. Sehyun Kim quickly advises against it, stating that it's all a misunderstanding. He clarifies that he doesn't intend to become a top dog and just wants to attend school peacefully. Hyondong Lee interprets this as intending to abandon them. Fahyun Kim inquires about what Hyondong Lee meant by abandon, stating that there is nothing to abandon. He acknowledges the situation and moves on, excusing himself. Sehyun Kim shouts for them to get out of there, expressing his reluctance to get involved with those people. He questions what's going on with those guys. Kyu Jiaya explains that Hyondong Lee, the first year top dog, used to follow Ha Jun Gu around, but Ha Jun apparently found him annoying. So Hyun Kim asks if Hyondong followed Ha Jun around. Kyu Jiaya confirms, stating that Hyondong had a reason for doing so. Now that someone as strong as Ha Jun has lost to Sehyun, Hyondong has come seeking him, the new top dog at school, for the same reason. Kyu Jiaya adds that he heard Hyondong is the younger brother of Hyondo Lee at Yi Won High School. Sehyun Kim expresses disbelief and asks about his reason. Kyu Jiaya explains that Hyondong's reason is to unite all of Gangbuk. He elaborates, describing Gangbuk as currently a battlefield, with the four most powerful high schools expanding their influence. While Ha Jun Gu wasn't interested in unification, he believed that Hyondong Lee felt differently. He mentions that he wants to unite all of Gangbuk with him. Sehyun Kim thinks that's ridiculous, and he should never get mixed up with that guy or his plans for the unification of Gangbuk. He wonders why anyone would want to unite it anyway. He resolves to ensure he never gets involved in Hyondong's business, especially since things are finally looking up at school, now that Hajun is gone. He simply wants to attend school without any trouble. The quest window notifies him that a new quest has been created, with the objective being to win over the first years of West Gangbuk High 01 and the reward is unknown. He decides to abandon the quest. The quest window notifies him that once a quest is abandoned, quest windows will never appear again, and all rewards are forfeited. He considers that if he forfeits or fails the quest and his rewards disappear, he will be fine for a little while. However, someday, people will realize that he is weak, and then things will revert to how they were before. He inwardly criticizes them, calling them morons, and claims that he was testing them. He declares that from this moment onward, he will be taking over West Gangbuk High. Hyondong expresses its intention to unite Gangbuk. He feigns pleasure at seeing his underlings so happy, though he inwardly acknowledges that he never said he would unite Gangbuk and feels a sense of unease. He believes that things won't worsen from this point onward and that there won't be any more fights, but then he hesitates, realizing that quests are always created whenever something like that happens. After a while, he sits in class, glances at the card, and thinks that he still hasn't tried using it yet. It's not like he's had a chance to use it. He had to deal with those first years all day. He knows he needs to try it out sometime today, but it's been such a long day, and he feels zoned out. Karen Beek approaches him and asks what he's up to now. She mentions hearing rumors around school that he has taken over West Gangbuk High. He denies it, but she mentions hearing that he was going to unite all of Gangbuk. He denies this as well. She finds it hilarious and asks what's going on, questioning why he's staring at him like that. She reiterates that she's talking to him, and he responds by suggesting that she peek at her. Confused, she asks what he means and pauses. The quest window notifies that he used the peek at his card and is now peeking at Karen Beek. She asks what's going on. The quest window shows Karen Beek's strength, speed, potential, endurance and intelligence. He realizes that this is peaking. He can see his opponent's stats, which isn't quite what he hoped for but still pretty cool. He notes that her stats are lower than expected. Karen Beek demands to know what he is doing, stating that he is pissing her off for some reason. He thought Karen would be a better fighter and suggested peeking at her while pondering if he could use this ability on himself too. She slaps him and tells him to cut that out. He considers that he might actually lose to her in a fight and understands what the rest of the stats mean, but he's unsure about the potential stat. She leaves the room, announcing her departure. He thinks that perhaps the potential stat refers to someone's hidden potential in a fight. 
Since it's called peek at her, he wasn't expecting much from it, but this card might turn out to be more useful than he thought. After a while, Sehyun Kim and Kyuja ye walk with Hyun Dong Lee and his friends. Hyun Dong Lee commands out of their way move. His black-haired friend remarks, he's trying to catch these hands. The bald boy declares, top dog of West Gangbuk coming through. Hyun Dong Lee urges them to come at them, as they've got nothing to lose. So Hyun Kim considers putting a stop to it. Everyone is looking at him strangely. A student asks if he has heard, and another states that they will eviscerate anyone who gets too close, mentioning that they even attacked the principal. So Hyun Kim thinks to himself that he has never eviscerated anyone in his entire life. Hyun Dong Lee boasts about how happy everyone at school looks to see him, as expected from the new leader of West Gangbuk. He questions what Hyun Dong Lee is talking about and asserts that no one looks happy. Everyone is staring at him as if he were a piece of shit. He whispers, asking why Hyun Dong is doing this, and if he has something to say, to say it, and then leave. Hyun Dong Lee acknowledges that he understands what Sahyun is implying and hands him an envelope, saying, here he goes. He explained that it contained the money collected from other students that month. Sahyun Kim demands to know why they're giving him this money and why the envelope is so bloody. Hyun Dong Lee reveals that the blood is from the first year students. Sahyun Kim quickly retracts his question, telling him not to answer, and turns to Kyu Ya, asking why he's tucking the money into his vest. He insists that Kyu Ya give it back and that they shouldn't take that money. Hyun Dong Lee asserts that it's not enough. Just as he thought, Sahyun is a man of a different caliber, and he will increase the fee they are collecting from the students. Sahyun protests, stating that's not what he meant, and wonders what's up with these idiots. He pleads for them to get out of there, issuing it as an order. He wonders what the hell is Hyun Dong's deal and decides to peek at him. The quest window displays Hyun Dong Lee's abilities, causing Sehyun to suddenly feel embarrassed for some reason. Sehyun Kim concludes that he is a total thug, and he shouldn't get mixed up with someone like him. He calls out to Hyun Dong and asks where he is going, convinced that whatever he wants from him, it's going to be nothing but trouble. Hyun Dong explains that he needs to attend his inauguration as the new leader of West Gangbak High. So Hyun Kim turns back and inquires about the inauguration. The quest window notifies that a new main quest is available, attending the leader's inauguration ceremony. So Hyun acknowledges that he should attend the inauguration as the new leader of the school. Hyun Dong Lee praises him, saying he is so cool and declares himself the top dog of West Gangbuk, ready to confront any challengers. After a while, in a classroom, everyone chants Gangbuk Unite and bows down. Kyu Ya instructs everyone to relax. Sehyun Kim stands up and advises against humoring them, declaring that the inauguration ceremony is over. Hyun Dong then announces that Sehyun needs to be briefed next and presents a map. Sehyun agrees but urges him to make it quick, wondering when they prepared all that. Hyun Dong explains that Gangbuk is currently a war zone. Sehyun questions how he would know that. Hyun Dong elaborates, stating that Yohan Seong, who had previously united all of Gangbuk, gave up his position, leading to an all-out turf war. Sehyun remarks that he's not listening, but Hyun Dong continues, mentioning that East Gangbuk High, led by a reckless leader, is out of control, with rumors suggesting he earns money by exploiting people. He continues, mentioning South Gangbuk High next. They are the exact opposite of East High, comprising a group of model students, and their leader is apparently a nice guy as well. However, that group also runs a business, so there's probably something more going on with them too. He emphasizes the importance of ensuring West Gangbok High does not get taken over by them. Sehyun Kim questions why they can't just let them take over and why they need to unite Gangbok in the first place. He wonders if they come to attack them here, they can just call the police on them. Kyuja Ya instructs someone to get him some water, and he asks for a glass of water for Kyuja. He questions if they can't all just get along, and if he is that desperate to get involved in some turf war. Hyun Dong Lee responds to Sehyun's suggestion of getting along, saying that probably won't be possible. He explains that those idiots are already quite suspicious of him. Sehyun Kim asks why. Hyun Dong reveals that rumors have already spread, calling him Tank Top Sehyun, the man who wears his tank top crisscrossed as he strikes down his enemies. Sehyun Kim angrily demands to know who spread those ridiculous rumors. Hyun Dong Lee admits to spreading them. Sehyun asks if he is kidding and insists that he is not getting into any more fights. 
he tells them all to stop following him around, stating that having them around is causing all these rumors to start circulating. Hyuja Ya then suggests that they will see him later, but Sahyon tells him to be quiet. Hyun Dong then asks about the upcoming Gangbuk conference. Sohyun questions what that's about and states that he wants no part of it. He just wants to attend school in peace. After a while, Sohyun Kim sits at home watching TV and thinks he made the right decision. Why does he have to protect West Gangbak High? He wonders why he needs to get into fights to protect the school. It doesn't make any sense. Dahyun comes home and asks what exactly he has been up to at school and if he knows what everyone's been calling her. She mentions being referred to as the little sister of Tank Top Sahyun. Sahyun questions Blade of Frost, wondering why seniors at school bow to him whenever they see him. He reassures her, saying not to worry about it, as he sorted all that stuff out today, and he won't get himself into any trouble with that gangbuck conference or whatever it is. Dahyun expresses her frustration, saying it's pissing her off, but she admits it's still better than seeing him bullied and beaten up all the time. She warns him that if he goes to that gangbuck conference or whatever, she will tell their mom. Sehyun reassures her again, telling her not to worry about it. He feels free now and thinks he can just be a normal student. Meanwhile, a student calls Yi Ha Han, who is the top dog of East Gangbuck High, and asks if he has heard about West Gangbuck High. Yi Ha Han inquires if it is something he needs to know. The student confirms that he thinks Yi Ha Han does need to know. Yi Ha Han tells him to spit it out. The student reveals that Ha Jun Gu was defeated, and there's a new leader at West Gangbuk. Yi Ha Han kicks him in the face and throws him away. He clarifies that he knows it must be hard for him to believe, but it's true. Someone called Tank Top Sehyun. Yi Ha Han states that's not why he hit him. The student asks why he hit him. Yi Ha Han responds, asking if he is kidding and questioning why he would need to know that. Meanwhile, a student asks Siak Kang, who is the top dog of South Gang Bakai, if he has heard about something. Siak Kang inquires, asking what he heard. The student mentions that someone defeated Hajin Gu of West Gang Bakai. Siak Kang confirms that he has heard about it. The student then asks if someone called Tank Top Sohyun did it. Siak Kang responds, saying apparently, he's incredibly cruel and violent, and he wonders what Siak Kang is planning to do about him. Siak Kang states that he is sure he will be meeting him soon, especially since the Gangbok conference is coming up. Meanwhile, Hyun Dong Lee writes Se Hyun Kim's name in the sand and thinks about the approaching Gangbok conference. He ponders if this is yet another trial Se Hyun must overcome. He gets a call and answers it. Se Hyun Kim is on the other end. Hyun Dong Lee asks why he is calling him, reminding him that he said he didn't want to be contacted. Se Hyun responds, saying he did say that but not to worry about it. Hyun Dong Lee asks if he is crying. The system window notifies Sehyun about the third quest for West Gangbuk High, attending the Gangbuk Conference. Sehyun asks when he said the Gangbuk Conference was. The quest window notifies that the reward is one gold card and ten bronze cards. Hyun Dong Lee points out that Sehyun said he wasn't going to attend the conference at school. Sehyun asks how he can refuse when the reward is eleven cards. Hyun Dong responds, questioning if Su Hyun is involved in gambling too. Su Hyun asserts that he will be there regardless. Hyun Dong acknowledges his decision and mentions that he will need to make the necessary preparations. Su Hyun asks about the preparations and what exactly he's preparing. Then he insists that whatever it is, he shouldn't do it, as he's only planning to attend. Hyun Dong questions if Su Hyun is up to something again. After a while, Su Hyun Kim sits in the classroom and notices a girl sitting nearby. The quest window notifies him that he used the peek at his card. He looks at a boy and then peeks at him. The quest window notifies him that he used the peek at his card. The boy asks what's up and says he felt really grossed out just now. So Hyun Kim thinks this is fun, it's enjoyable to see other people's stats. The girl says it felt like some creep was watching her. The boy sitting beside her says he feels the same way. So Hyun Kim wonders why people react like that when he sees their stats. Since the card is called peek at him, could it be that the people he peeks at feel embarrassed? He ponders if it's really okay for him to use this card, and then contemplates what's even stranger. That this ability is level 2, which means he can rank up this skill, just like with the jab. It seems like he gets one experience point for every two people he peeks at, and if he is able to see more, his rank for this skill goes up to E. He thinks if that's the case, he really should not be peeking at anyone then. 
He looks towards Qjia and says, peek at him. The quest window notifies him that he used the peek at his card. Qjia blushes. He looks at him and wonders why this idiot is enjoying it and says whatever. He calls Qja and says he's got to ask him something while observing his abilities on the quest window. He asks why his potential is S rank. Qja Ya asks about his potential. He says never mind, it's nothing. Ignore what he just said and think, what is with this guy? Upon leaving the school, Qja Ya mentions that today is the day of the Gangbuk conference. So Hyun Kim responds that if it were not for those 11 cards, he would never go. Qja Ya asks about the cards. So Hyun Kim replies no it's nothing, and thinks he will just need to attend the conference to complete the quest, as he is only doing these quests because he has become addicted to receiving the reward. He thanks Kujaya for coming with him. Kujaya asks if he has a plan in place. So Hyun Kim says he is just going to show up for the conference and make a run for it as soon as it's over. He thinks Hyun Dong said there will be attendees from East, South and North Gangbok High. Kyuja Ya says he really hopes nothing goes down at the conference. He thinks those guys are going to be as scary as shit. He should not piss them off. Kyuja Ya says he thinks that might not be possible. He asks why. Kyuja Ya says to look in front of him. Hyun Dong Lee bows down in front of him with his subordinates and says greetings. So Hyun Kim states that he does not even have the energy to get angry anymore and asks what they are up to this time. He explains that the Gangbuk Conference is where the leaders of each high school in the Gangbuk District gather, and Hyundong has readied their people in case something goes down. He questions why they would do that. A student explained that they were the best fighters in the first year, and they all volunteered to join them. Another student mentions that one of them showed up, even though his grandfather is deathly ill. The other student added that they knew his grandfather would support his decision. Another student asserts that they are all loyal to him and would happily lay down their lives for him. Kujaya says they should prepare themselves as tonight they dine in hell. Sehyun Kim tells him not to humor them as people are assuming the worst. Two girls pass by, observing them, and one of the girls remarks that they look like they are heading to a street fight. The other girl agrees, calling them brutes. Sehyun Kim asserts that he told them not to engage in such actions. He instructs them to inform everyone else to go home, stating that only the three of them will attend the Gangbuk conference. Hyungdong responds by expressing confidence in facing the individuals from the other schools alone, to which Suhyun clarifies that it's not what he meant. He then dismisses everyone, urging them to go and see his grandfather. He tells Hyundong that they should proceed to the Gangbuk conference now while internally questioning why things turned out this way. Meanwhile, a person is being badly beaten by Yi Ha Han, who insists on repeating what was said earlier and questioning why it cannot be reiterated. He expresses apologies. Yi Ha Han remarks that high school kids these days are frightening, slapping the person and inquiring if they are associated with a gang and which gang it is. Upon the person's assertion of being a gang member, he questions whether gang members are permitted to engage in such behavior. He makes a motion to slap the person again, insisting they must pay for the alcohol consumed. A bystander intervenes, grasping Yi Ha Han's hand to halt the assault. Yi Ha Han comments that perhaps the bystander isn't entirely timid and proceeds to attack. Another individual approached, addressing Yi Ha Han and apologizing for the interruption, mentioning that the Gangbuk conference would commence shortly. Yi Ha Han questions why he should attend such an event. Meanwhile, Sohyun Kim arrives at an old building and inquires if the conference is taking place in a location like this. Hyundong Lee confirms, stating that it's a building that halted construction, subsequently turning into a somewhat dubious area where the conference is consistently held. He remarks that it appears exceedingly suspicious, even suggesting that one could potentially commit a murder here without detection. Hyundong Lee cautions Sohyun Kim against revealing any intentions of harming everyone at the conference that day. Hyun Kim denies such intentions, stating that wasn't what he meant. He advances, lifts the curtains, and anticipates encountering a gathering of intimidating individuals who might assault him upon his entry. Siok Kang stands there with his gang and warmly welcomes him. He inquires if Suhyun Kim is from West Gangbok High, to which Suhyun Kim affirms. Siok Kang introduces himself as being from South Gangbok High, believing they are of the same age. Suhyun Kim remarks on Siok's name, finding it similar to Suk, to which Siok points out the seating arrangement for West Gangbuk High Representatives. But Hyun Kim acknowledges and expresses gratitude, considering Siok to be a nice guy and finding it unbelievable that he's the leader of South Gangbuk High. 
They all take seats on the sofa. Meanwhile, Hyundong Lee calls Sehyun Kim. Sehyun Kim wonders what he wants, feeling relieved that he's okay. Hyundong Lee warns him not to be deceived by Siok's friendly demeanor, cautioning that although Siok may appear pleasant, he's the formidable leader of South Gangbuk High, making it difficult to discern his true intentions. He advises Sehyun Kim to remain vigilant around him, suggesting that among the leaders of high schools in the Gangbuk district, he may be the most dangerous. Siok Kang's friend inquires about his impression of Sehyun Kim. Recalling their previous conversation regarding his name, Siok Kang responds that it's been a while since they teased him about his name, and he didn't expect him to dare do such a thing. Meanwhile, Sehyun Kim wonders what Siok is discussing over there. Hyun Dong Lee advises not to look away first, as it shows weakness. Sehyun Kim tells him to shut up and thinks that a nice-looking guy like Sehyun couldn't be dangerous. He wonders why the quest hasn't been completed yet. He needs to acquire his 10 bronze cards and is eager to discover what abilities he will receive this time and if people from the other schools need to show up. Siok Kang asks if he's warming up, to which he responds negatively, thinking about when the leaders from the North and East Gangbok High School are arriving. Wiha Han arrives with his gang, lifting the curtain and commenting that they should have ripped it open. Upon seeing Siok Kang, he remarks that the idiot is here too. Siok Kang responds, saying that's rude, as he thought they were friends. Meanwhile, Sehyun Kim thinks that guy is clearly dangerous and looks like a total thug. He wonders if the newcomer looks like the kind of guy who'd steal his girlfriend. The quest window notifies him that the quest is complete, and as a reward, he has received one gold and ten bronze cards. Sehyun Kim realizes he has completed the quest and decides it's time to go home to claim his cards. He stands up and tells his friends they should leave, pondering what abilities he will get this time and where he should open the cards to maximize his chance of getting good ones. Yiha Han grabs him by the neck, demanding to know where he's going and stating that he's only there because of him. He introduces him as Sehyun Kim, the top dog of West Gangbuk, and mentions hearing that he beat Hajun Gu. He challenges him to try and beat him too. Sehyun Kim smiles back at him. He asks if he thinks this is funny. Sehyun Kim thinks this is a typical quest trigger. If he reacts to this, a quest will pop up, telling him to fight this idiot. He recalls a memory when he was with Hajun, and the quest window popped out, saying to fight with him. He thinks that, after all, that's exactly what happened with Hajun Gu, and he does not want to fight this guy. So, in order to prevent such a quest from appearing, he will do nothing. He says, amazing. Siak Kang's gang member says not only did he dare to provoke him, but he's also not at all afraid of Yiha Han. Siok Kang agrees, looking at Sihyun Kim and asking what's going on with that blank, unfocused expression on his face. He speculates that Sihyun Kim is probably looking for Yiha Han's weak points. Siok Kang says yes, he believes so, and he guesses the rumors about him were true. He mentions tank top Sihyun of West Gang Bakai, who was said to be so ruthless that he'd even take his family members as hostages to get what he wanted and face off against Yiha Han. At best, this fight will end in a tie. He says he can't waste this opportunity. After they fight and wear themselves out, they will attack them both. Sahyon stares at Yiha Han. He says this is the first time someone has provoked him like this. Sahyon Kim thinks a quest has not appeared, but at this rate, he will end up fighting him anyway. A Yiha gang member comes between and says he needs to stop. He gets angry and slaps him on the face, calling him an idiot narc for daring to talk to him. He says Siok Kang is here. If he fights Sehyun Kim here and now, Siok Kang will take advantage of the situation, and who knows what kind of hell he'll pull. Yiha Han says he needs to calm down. He says he will have other chances to face off against Sehyun Kim, but Siok Kang is here, and he's the most dangerous person in this room. Yiha Han leaves from there and says forget it. Siok Kang claps his hands and says, well that's enough for today. If they drag this on any longer, it will just end in a fight. He says that now that they have had a chance to meet face to face, they shouldn't forget to say hi the next time they run into each other, and besides, no one from North Gangbuk High showed up. Sehyun Kim thinks this is unbelievable and tells Siok that sounds good. Siok Kang accuses him of making fun of his name again. Sehyun Kim thinks it's over, and he doesn't have to fight anyone. He guesses he can go home now, but he can't leave empty-handed, so he says peek at him. Siok Kang suggests to Yiha Han that they grab some food since it's been a while. Yiha Han asks what the hell he is talking about. 
The quest window notifies that he used the peek at him card. Siok Kang says that's mean, he thought they were friends. Yi Ha Han tells him to get out of there before he kicks him. The quest window notifies that his peek at him rank is too low. So Hyun Kim wonders why he can't see their stats. After a while, So Hyun Kim walks along the road tiredly and thinks to himself that it's already morning. He recalls the conference or whatever it was called that he had been so worried about. He fell asleep as soon as he got home. More importantly, he can't believe the peek at him card failed. He says it stated his rank was too low, and he guesses he can't take a peek at just anybody. He wonders what the basis for that is, perhaps strength. He wonders if that means the two of them are much stronger than he is. Currently, Hyun Dong arrives there with his gang. So Hyun Kim inquires what it is this time. He states they have nothing but respect and admiration for him. So Hyun Kim retorts they have already been told that. He remarks that he is so humble, they have heard everything, and he asks how it all went down at the Gangbuk conference yesterday. So Hyun Kim asks what he means. He mentions Yi Ha Han, the top dog of East Gangbuk High. He heard he took him down with his dragon tiger fist, and that the fight was over before Siok Kang could even intervene, and rumors spread all over the school. So Hyun Kim asks how and who spread that rumor. He says it was not easy. He knows coming to school at the crack of dawn and spreading that rumor. The students surrounding So Hyun Kim exclaim he is amazing, the hope of West Gangbok tank top So Hyun. Another student suggested that he show them his great dragon tiger fist technique. Another asks if it is true that he mastered that technique by killing his martial arts teacher. After a while, Sohyun Kim finds himself in the nurse's office and complains that everything hurts. He mentions he has been through so much since yesterday, so it is no wonder he is feeling ill and achy all over. He adds that he even has a fever, but he has been leaving school early way too often lately, so he can't go home either and wonders what the hell a dragon tiger fist is. He almost forgets but then realizes this is his chance, as there's no one around. He declares it's time to claim his cards. All the cards appear in front of him, and he notes that he got one gold card and ten bronze cards from the last quest. He decides to start with the gold card. The quest window notifies him that he has claimed the gold card. The gold card indicates that the normal card is the card master, which allows the user to combine or disassemble cards in order to receive cards of a higher or lower rank. He wonders if he can combine and disassemble cards, and if this is just like video games where he can combine and disassemble materials and things. He then proceeds to claim all the bronze cards, and the quest window notifies him that he has claimed 10 bronze cards. The window displays all 10 cards to him. He remarks that the only one that's even remotely useful is the leap of strength, but it says it will decrease his intelligence by three levels in exchange, and he doesn't think he can really afford to lose any more brain cells at this point. Nonetheless, he decides to keep this one just in case. He comments that the rest are mediocre, so he combines the bronze card hit those low notes with another bronze card, lesser what's that smell. The quest window notifies him that he used the card master card and received a silver card by combining two bronze cards. He remembers an old silver card, boxing straight punch, and throws a punch. The quest window notifies him that he threw a straight punch. He thinks that combining cards is really fun and mentions his mom said he should never try gambling. He ponders over how strange this feels and says technically, this is not gambling, but it's giving him a strange sense of thrill. He admits that yeah he guesses this is kind of like gambling and decides to just try four cards. The quest window notifies him that he used the card master card and he received two silver cards by combining four bronze cards. The quest window displays the cards with their details. Holding the cards to see, he thinks these are useless. He is not trying to be a pro athlete or anything like that. He decides he can't do it. He shouldn't waste the silver cards and should keep these two just in case. He wonders what if he gets a really crappy gold card and decides he should quit while he's ahead. Then, he scolds himself, questioning why he's being such a coward and reminds himself he could end up with an amazing gold card. He admits he hates sports anyway and doesn't like getting all sweaty, so even if he kept these, he'd never use them. The quest window notifies him that he used the card master card again. He declares he's going all in. The quest window notifies him that he received a gold card by combining four bronze cards. He asks if the new card has popped up yet. The quest window shows the trigger card, which notifies him that something good happens to the user whenever they receive a hit, up to five hits. 
he thinks this is a card for fighting. The trigger card notifies that something good happens to the user whenever they receive a hit. The effect is triggered after 5 hits. He slaps himself on the face and says that it hurts. He asks what the hell, nothing happened, and wonders if it is because he hit himself. He says the card's called Master, so he thought it would let him assert dominance over people or something. But instead, it will reward him whenever other people assert dominance over him, and actually, he thinks he likes it better this way. The quest window notifies that a new main quest is available. He says a main quest, it is high time for a new one, and he needs more cards so he can combine them. He asks what it wants him to do this time. The quest window notifies that he needs to recruit crew members 04 with a reward of one gold card. He sees the screen and thinks, so it's finally come to this. Now it's overtly telling him to recruit crew members. He wonders why it keeps raising the stakes like this. It's almost like he is actually playing a video game, and if there is a final boss he needs to defeat or something. He thinks this quest is so different from the ones he has gotten before and wonders if it is that difficult to recruit crew members. He sends a message to Kujaya and asks if he wants to join his crew. Kujaya agrees. The quest window notifies that Gukja Yang has joined his crew and recruited crew members 14. He thinks that was quick. This is such an easy main quest. Hyondong arrives holding medicine and asks if he is doing all right. He thinks whatever. He will just recruit a bunch of randos and get his reward. He waves toward him and says he is feeling much better, asking if he's referring to his visit to the nurse's office earlier and if he wants to join his crew too. Shocked to hear this, he drops the medicine packet and exclaims that finally he is assembling a crew to unite all of Gangbuck. He kneels down and says, please forgive his lack of respect and let him formally greet him. Sehyun Kim thinks if it's okay for him to just recruit whomever, and what if he runs into a problem later on because of the haphazard crew he assembles, realizing he is going about this the wrong way. Hyondong Lee says that he will call him boss from now on. Sehyun Kim says never mind, forget what he just said, and thinks he'd better think this over more carefully. He tells Kuja to let's go. Kuja Ye follows him, saying okay boss. He asks if he wants to be his second in command. Kyuja responds with a yes. After a while, Sehyun Kim lies on a desk and ponders who he should recruit. It's too risky to just recruit anybody since he might get a follow-up quest that involves the crew and he will need members who are legit. He asks how he can confirm that and then suggests using the peek at him card. He says he should look at people's stats and recruit the ones who are stronger. He agrees to do that, realizing he needs to test the card he was awarded last time too. Karen Beek arrives, sees him, and says it is him, Sehyun, asking what the hell he is doing here. She further questions why he lives in this neighborhood. He asks if it's because he lives in this neighborhood and if that is his fault. She says it is not his fault and moves to leave, saying okay bye. He says he'll see her at school tomorrow. Then he remembers something and says just a minute, he has a favor to ask her. She asks about the favor. He says he knows this is kind of a weird thing to ask but if she could slap him in the face. He recalls the trigger card and thinks he will ask Karen to help him. He says there's something he needs to check physically he means. She asks if he does too. He wonders what she's talking about and says yeah, he feels like something good will happen if she hits him. She asks if he wants her to swear while she is doing it. He says he did not ask her to swear. She says anyway, no take backs and moves to slap him. Dongjin arrives with his gang and asserts that he loves getting beat up of course. Sehyun Kim looks at them. He mentions that they forgot about him and inquires if they did indeed forget. He states they're there to avenge their brother Sangchul's untimely end. Sehyun Kim recalls them and acknowledges they're the same guys from last time, pondering why he had to encounter them again. He questions their intentions, specifically regarding Sangchul, and wonders if they're akin to monsters in a video game, respawning from a particular location or something. He exclaims in disbelief, realizing Sangchul is standing right behind him. Sangchul Park indicates himself, stating he is Sangchul Park, and reveals his Myers-Briggs type indicator as Enfp. Suhyun Kim expresses frustration, saying he doesn't care about Sangchul's Myers-Briggs type. A quest notification pops up, indicating a side quest has been created. Fight and defeat thugs, thug boss 01, thug henchman 05. Reward, one silver card. He believes he has to fight them again, but he already defeated these guys last time. Dongjin mentions who they have brought with them this time. 
He believes, thankfully, this quest should be easy to complete, but who is the thug boss, and if it is Sanchial, he asks who he has brought. He believes he has even ended up memorizing their names. Sanghyuk Park from East Gangbuk High arrives and demands to move out of his way, asserting he is Sanchial's older brother. He believes this guy is the thug boss and suggests peeking at him. The quest window notifies that he has used the peek at his card and displays his details. Sanghyuk Park asks about what he peeked at and whether he realized he was his type. He believes his stats are incredible, with high strength, speed and endurance. Sanghyuk Park mentions he heard a lot about his tank top Sahyun. He believes he has not even seen anyone at school who is ranked B for strength, and there's no way he could beat this guy. Sanghyuk Park commands them to get out of the way. Karen Beek steps forward and inquires about the school the guys attend. He considers that he could use Karen's help since she knows everybody, and he should be able to do so with any luck. She admonishes them, calling them idiots and questions how pathetic they can get by ganging up on one person. Sanchial derides her and asks who she thinks she is. He observes that she has discerned that thugs like them would never harm a woman. Suhyun Kim intervenes, urging them to leave her out of it. Sang Hyuk Park moves, strikes him, and commands him to shut up. He remarks that he had heard Sahyun was West Gangbuk's top dog, but he just seems like a pathetic little bitch to him. Karen Beek attempts to enlist his help, but a red jack boy seizes her and remarks that Sang Hyuk Park's fists are merciless, especially against the weak. She inquires if he is okay, and he responds that it's his stomach. She asks what is wrong with his stomach. He states that his stomach feels fine. The quest window notifies him with a message, Master, please, one hit. She inquires about what he is saying. He questions why his stomach would feel good. Sang Hyuk Park demands to know what the idiot just said and asserts that he mentioned feeling good after being punched. Dong Jin suggests that maybe they went too easy on him. He remarks that there's something wrong with that idiot. So Hyun Kim wonders what's going on. Sang Chiu shoves Karen Beek and instructs him to stop behaving inappropriately since there is a lady present. He moves to strike him and threatens to beat him to a pulp. Sehyun Kim contemplates whether getting beaten up feels good. The quest window notifies him that he has received five hits with the message, Master, please, effect triggered and something good will happen. He contemplates what something good could be and whether the card was triggered. Sang Chiu inquires about how he likes that jackass. The quest window notifies that one stat will increase at random, and his strength has increased from E to C rank. Sehyun Kim punches him in the face and throws him away. The quest window displays his abilities ranks. Everyone, including Karen Beek, is shocked to see this. Dong Jin remarks that the newly strengthened Sanchial was taken down by that idiot. Sehyun Kim steps in front of Karen and confesses that he kind of feels good whenever he gets hit. She calls him an idiot weirdo and asks if he likes getting hit that much. He thinks he can beat him. Sang Hyuk Park states that he will then hit him as many times as he wants. He believes they are now on an even playing field. Sang Hyuk Park suggests, let's do this, tank top Sahyun. The quest window notifies that the side quest is starting. They all move to attack, saying they can't take it anymore, and ask how dare he hurt Sang Chiol again. Suhyun attacks Dong Jin in the face. The quest window notifies that he threw a jab. He thinks there are too many of them, and he needs to fight in a narrow alley like he did last time. Hopefully, that jab will distract them for a bit while he makes a run for it. The blue tie boy remarks, this is unbelievable. Dong Jin is stronger now than before too, and yes, he's down after a single punch. So Hyun Kim thinks that was just meant to be a diversion, and he did not even hit him in the chin. They hold Dong Jin, who is unconscious, crying and urge him to fight back so he can get up. So Hyun Kim thinks he got knocked out by a single punch, and if this could be the power of the master, please card. They stare at Sehyun. He calls Karen and tells her to close her eyes. She asks about her eyes. He says a girl like her should not have to witness such violence. A boy asks what the hell he is saying and remarks that's the cringiest thing he has ever heard. Thang Hyuk Park applauds and remarks, not bad at all. Now things are finally starting to get interesting. So Hyun Kim observes his abilities ranking within the quest window and notes that his endurance is only ranked as C. Sang Hyuk Park addresses him as Tank Top Sehyun and initiates an attack, challenging him to see who emerges victorious. Sehyun Kim calculates that at his current strength, he stands a good chance of winning and retaliates with a punch. 
The quest window indicates that he threw a straight punch, and his strength has decreased from C to E rank. Fang Hyuk Park questions if Sohyun Kim was knocked out by such a weak punch. He wonders why his strength suddenly decreased and ponders if it's because he hasn't been punched in a while, speculating if the counter for hits is down to 4. He concludes that his strength has decreased because he hasn't received 5 hits, and he asks why the stat increase is so short-lived. Sang Hyuk Park delivers a harsh kick. He reassures himself that it's okay, he just needs to get hit again, and with just one more hit, he will have five hits again. Sang Hyuk Park punches him and comments on how weak he is, finding it strange that despite beating him severely, the effect isn't triggering. He wonders what the issue is and throws him away with a punch. Sehyun Kim requests a timeout, pondering why the effect was triggered earlier, but not this time, and if there's a special requirement he needs to meet to trigger it. Sang Hyuk Park advances, stating that time waits for no man. Sohyun Kim worries about Karen being in danger if he loses. Karen Beek intervenes, moving to assist him and verbally confronting Sang Hyuk Park. Sang Hyuk Park reassures her to wait, indicating they will have some fun once he's finished with Sohyun. Karen, fearful of Sohyun getting hurt, calls out to him. The quest window indicates that Master Please requires five hits for something good to happen. Sohyun Kim punches him in the face and notices that his punches suddenly feel much stronger. The quest window then notifies him that his strength has increased to C rank, and he delivers a straight punch. He thanks Karen, realizing how he managed to stack up five hits and consumes a bean. The quest window notifies that he used a healing bean. Sehyun Kim clarifies that his desire to protect himself wasn't the reason. It was the shame he felt about getting beaten up in front of a girl. He reflects that he now understands, that's what it was. He comprehends that the effect doesn't trigger just whenever he gets beaten up. He needs to be beaten up and feel ashamed to meet the card's requirements and trigger the stat increase. So that's why the card is called Master Please. Sang Hyuk Park grabs his leg and remarks, it seems like he's a half-decent boxer, but has he heard of the name Sang Hyuk, the boulder park, as he attempts to lift him? The quest window notifies that he used the maximum capacity card. Sang Hyuk Park wonders why he can't lift him. So Hyun Kim moves aside and strikes him mentioning the weight boost from the maximum capacity card and the strength boost from the master please card, noting that currently, his punches are at a rank. He continues to hit him repeatedly. The quest window notifies that the side quest is complete and he has received a silver card. So Hyun Kim ponders what card it will be this time, realizing that cards are all he cares about now. After a while, So Hyun Kim walks in the hallway, pondering why he's receiving these quests and finding them enjoyable. He reflects that the quests seem to be assigned based on his actions and wonders if there's someone assigning them to him. Suddenly, Karen slaps him and verbally abuses him. The quest window notifies that it's one hit for Master Please. He requests her to slap the other cheek too, questioning what's going on. She continues to abuse him and demands to know why there's a rumor circulating that they're dating. Some students gather around them, with one girl remarking that it's a lover's quarrel and another commenting on young love. So Hyun Kim asks what they're talking about and why anyone would spread such a rumor, insisting it's ridiculous and nothing has happened between them. He responds, well, unless she's counting that indirect kiss. A girl asks another if she heard that. A boy whispers that they've only kissed indirectly, not even on first base. She admonishes him, saying not to make it worse. Another student commented that he guessed the rumor about them having three kids already wasn't true. Hyun Dong arrives holding flowers and remarks so it's not true that he fell for him after he heroically saved her. She denies it, stating that it's not true at all and that she doesn't like him. She tells him not to jump to such conclusions. He then asks if it's also not true that she is the dominant one in the relationship and Sehyun is the submissive one. She responds, get over here. Outside the school, a student bumps into Ha Jun-gu and apologizes. Ha Jun-gu moves away without saying anything. Meanwhile, at East Gangbok High, Sang Hyuk Park kneels down and apologizes, admitting that he tried his best but couldn't defeat him, confirming that the rumors about Tank Top Sohyun were all correct. He explains that he pretends to be weak, waiting for his opponent to lower their guard before striking with a single ruthless blow. He asserts that Sang Hyuk at Boulder Park has no doubt that Sohyun is trained in martial arts and especially skilled in offensive attacks. He sincerely expresses his regret, acknowledging that he has brought shame to East Gangbuk. 
Yi Ha Han responds harshly, saying that no one expected anything from him and deriding him as a pathetic little shithead. He accuses Sang Hyok of thinking he belongs with them just because they accepted his money a couple of times, asserting that he's not even worth a beating. He concludes that beating him up would only make it seem as though Sang Hyok were part of their crew. Sang Hyok Park asks, so what? He inquires if Sehyun Kim spread those rumors as he said. Sang Hyok Park confirms, saying yes, there's no doubt about it. He responds, okay, then he should pay him a visit if he's so desperate to fight him that he's resorted to spreading rumors. His friend mentioned that he had another appointment this afternoon. Yi Ha Han asks if he should clear his schedule for the rest of the day. He asks when and how he's going to teach Sehyun Kim a lesson then. Yi Han Han steps forward, lighting up a cigarette, and declares, right now. Meanwhile, at school, Sahyeon Kim sees his card and thinks that this is the card he got from the latest quest. The normal card displays the name to the moon and advises him to try and get on his level. He contemplates to the moon and considers whether he should try using it now. Meanwhile, Dsyong H. Wang, ranked 14th in East Gangbuk High, calls Yi Ha Han and questions why they're using a sledgehammer to crack a nut. He suggests leaving it to him. He'll tear Sohyun from limb to limb and leave the pieces in front of their school statue for the vultures to pick at. He asks Yiha if he thinks he can manage that and boasts about beating Ha Jun Gu. Dsyong H. Wang slaps his belly and asks if Yiha doesn't trust his gut. He insults Yiha, calling him an idiot pig, and accuses him of thinking he's hot stuff if he doesn't trust him. He demands to know why he is just standing around and orders him to go get him. Meanwhile, Sohyun Kim sits in the classroom, sees the card, and thinks that this is the card he got from the latest quest. He ponders whether it seems like a great card, although it might come in handy from time to time, and whether he should just disassemble it with the card master. He decides against it for now, realizing he's becoming too addicted to disassembling cards and might end up in a worse place than where he started. More importantly, he needs to complete the quest. The quest window notifies him that he needs to recruit crew members 14, with the reward being one gold card. He contemplates who his other crew members should be and realizes he needs to find people with good stats. As he walks in the hallway, his slipper breaks, and he remarks that his slides are coming apart. He thinks he will soon be able to rank up the peak at his skill and wonders if he should wait until it reaches E rank before he starts looking in earnest. He decides he better deal with his shoes first, Karen Beak approaches and informs him that Homeroom is looking for him. He bends down to inspect his slippers but accidentally bumps into her chest. She demands to know what he thinks he's doing, how he's feeling, and if he's enjoying himself. He explains that it's his slipper. She slaps him and verbally abuses him. The quest window notifies that it's one hit for Master Please. He apologizes, stating he honestly didn't mean to do that, and he just has the worst luck. She tells him to shut his mouth and threatens to report him to the cops. He pleads for her not to go. At that moment, Ha Jun Gu appears behind him, causing a chill to run down his spine. He quickly runs to hide, feeling stressed and realizes he's back at school after not seeing Ha Jun Gu for a while. He reflects that everyone was worried about Ha Jun Gu, including himself. He asks if Ha Jun Gu has had breakfast yet. Ha Jun Gu walks away, stating that they're not really friends anymore. He states that he doesn't really want to talk to him, and if that's the case, he won't bother him. The quest window notifies that a side quest has been created. Recruit Ha Jun Gu as a crew member 01, with the reward being one silver card. He wonders what this is about recruiting Ha Jun Gu as a crew member, and how he can recruit someone he fought against. He contemplates whether he'll end up having to fight Ha Jun Gu again and doubts if he could beat him a second time, or if he should just give up since it's just a side quest. A girl sees him and identifies him as Sehyun Kim. The boy with her wonders what dastardly deed he's up to this time. Sehyun Kim thinks that it's probably for the best, as the quest is only offering one silver card as a reward anyway, and he should try to complete it. He calls Ha Jun Gu and asks if he wants to join his crew, realizing he can't throw away his chance at another card. Then he wishes Ha Jun Gu a good day, thinking that it's probably not going to happen. After a while, Sehyun Kim sits with Ku Ya at the bus stop. Ku Ya remarks, fortunately nothing happened. Sehyun Kim agrees, saying, yeah, it was quite unexpected. Ku Ya comments on how surprising it is that Ha Jun Gu would let that pass. Sehyun Kim agrees, expressing his fear of not being able to nap during recess because he was scared Ha Jun would find him and kick him. 
He mentions that he can't use a peek at his on Hajin either. Kyuja Ya inquires about peeking at him. Sahyon Kim dismisses it, but Kyuja Ya insists he can peek at him if that's what he needs. Suddenly, a boy rushes over and informs them that something terrible has happened. The East Gangbuk group took Hyondong. Sahyon Kim suggests calling the police, noting that they always seem to forget that contacting law enforcement for help is an option. The boy asks if he should call their guys up. Sohyun Kim replies that he's not listening to him, and even if he were, they can handle it themselves. He adds that if he goes to where they are, he'd just end up fighting. The boy says okay and moves to leave. He asks Sohyun if he's joking. Sohyun Kim sits on the bus with Kujaya. Kujaya asks if this is really okay. Sohyun Kim responds yeah he is not going. Yi Han is the top dog of East Gangbok High. He thinks that if there were a quest, it might be a different story, but he didn't even receive one. He opens the window and remarks that he doesn't want to show up wherever they've taken Hyondong and end up in another fight. He expresses hope that after this incident, Hyondong will stop bothering him, concluding that there's no need for him to get involved. He feels the air from outside and thinks about what a beautiful day it is. Meanwhile, a boy in a white shirt comments on what a beautiful day it is and asks if Hyondong Lee of West Gangbok High doesn't think it's a good day to die. He proceeds to beat him and berates him, calling him pathetic and stating that he knows he was Hajun Gu's lackey and has now aligned himself with Sohyun Kim. He adds that if someone were to beat Tank Top Sohyun, he'd go kissing that guy's ass next. Hyondong Lee responds by saying that just as a clever bird is particular about the tree upon which it builds its nest, a wise general is particular about the sovereign for whom he lays down his life. He explains that this idiot is smart enough to go to college and was simply selecting the right tree. He has finally found the sovereign he is to serve. Hyondong Lee asserts that he will have no other master, and he knows that Suhyun will not come to save him, so the buck stops with him. Di Xiong H. Wong asks if that is right. Hyondong Li asks if he isn't a little embarrassed and if Yi Ha Han really sent all of them here. Di Xiong H. Wong picks up a rod and asks if he thinks he can take all of them. Hyondong Li comments that now he's resorting to using a weapon on him. Di Xiong H. Wong clarifies that it's not for him, but for Hyondong Li and places it on his shoulder while instructing him to hit him. Hyondong takes it and hits him. Di Xiong H. Wong asks if that's it. Hyondong thinks that it didn't hurt him at all. The boy in the white shirt kicks him and commands him not to just stand there. He asks if Hyondong doesn't know who Di Xiong H. Wang is, stating that he's ranked 14th in East Gangbok High, which means he is their 14th strongest fighter. He then moves away, saying he will leave the rest to the others. The boy in the white shirt moves to attack him, declaring, let's finish this. Hyondong Li thinks of Suhyon, apologizing for everything and for always bothering him. At that moment, Sohyun Kim arrives and punches him. The quest window notifies that he threw a straight punch. Everyone is shocked to see this. Sohyun Kim asks how dare he irritate him all the time, bug him all the time, and make him worry about him. He admits that he has grown attached to him and assures him not to worry. He will deal with these guys somehow. The quest window notifies that he used the peek at him card. Di Xiong H. Wang asks if this is Sohyun Kim. The quest window displays their abilities ranks. Hyosyak on comments that he's even smaller than he thought. Fungju Kang remarks that this guy is the top dog of West Gangbuk. Sohyun Kim thinks let's see, he can probably take these guys. Di Xiong H. Wang mentions that he believes Sohyun Kim is a year older than him. Sohyun Kim sees his details on the quest window and ponders how good he is at taking hits with his endurance ranked A. Di Xiong H. Wang asks if he is ready to have the crap kicked out of him by their junior. So Hyun Kim wonders if he would be able to beat this guy. Di Xiong H. Wang insists on an answer. He observes that he is huge, noting the significant height difference, and considers that maybe he could take him down by attacking his face. He asks if Di Xiong H. Wang wants them to go first, suggesting that in situations like this, the rule of thumb is for the weaker fighter to attack first, saving energy for the rest of them. Di Xiong H. Wang replies that he will finish him himself. Seung Ju Kang comments that he is the goat. So Hyun Kim wonders what he is saying. He wants to fight him one on one and attack him. The quest window notifies that he threw a jab and a straight punch. So Hyun Kim thinks, well, all the better for him then, and punches him, but it doesn't affect him, leaving him to wonder, what the hell? Di Xiong H. Wang asks what he is doing, and So Hyun Kim thinks that it didn't hurt him at all. 
So Hyun Kim punches him again and again, thinking that his huge belly is absorbing all the damage and wondering if this is why his endurance is ranked a plus. He realizes he has no choice but to aim for his face. Di Xiong H. Wang attacks him and says it's his turn, noting that he is so weak. Hyun Dong remarks that there's too much of a difference in weight between the two of them. So Hyun Kim responds that it's okay, and if weight is the problem, he has a solution. He apologizes for doubting him. Su Hyun Kim thinks that he has a card that allows him to disregard weight classes. The quest window notifies that he used the maximum capacity card. He tries to lift him up, but the quest window notifies him that this card cannot be used. Di Xiang H. Wang effortlessly holds him up with a single hand. The quest window notifies that maximum capacity can only be used once per day, with one hour of cooldown remaining. He realizes he used the maximum capacity card last night. Di Xiang H. Wang attacks him again and throws him away. A student asks what the hell is going on and why he's so weak. Di Xiang H. Wang questions if he's really the top dog of weak Gangbok High, stating that it was way too easy. So Hyun Kim realizes he can't move. Di Xiang H. Wang moves away, declaring that he will leave the rest to the others and that he doesn't want to waste any more of his energy. Seung Ju Kang agrees, saying they have to let everyone know that they were the ones who took Su Hyun Kim down. He suggests they should at least break one of his legs. Hyun Dong steps forward, stating that they all have to go through him first. A boy attempts to attack him with a baseball bat, telling him to stop being so melodramatic. Hajun Gu suddenly arrives and kicks him, shocking everyone. He tells So Hyun Kim to let him ask him something and questions what he meant at school when he asked him to join his crew. He asks if So Hyun Kim takes him for a fool. So Hyun Kim denies it, explaining that he just thought he'd be a reliable person to have around, that's all. Hajun Gu remarks that So Hyun Kim is a weird guy and leaves the lackeys to him. So Hyun Kim asks what he means. Hajun Gu responds that he will do it. He will join his crew. The quest window indicates that Hajun Gu has joined his crew completed the side quest, and is being awarded a silver card. So Hyun Kim holds the silver card, shocked to see it. Di Xiong H. Wang asks if he is Ha Jun Gu, expressing that it's the first time he's seen him in person and that he has always wanted to meet him. Di Xiong H. Wang asks if they should get right into it. Ha Jun Gu replies that it's not him. Di Xiong H. Wang asks what he is saying. Ha Jun Gu clarifies that he's not the one So Hyun Kim will be fighting. Di Xiang H. Wang questions what he is saying. Ha Jun Gu elaborates that he's just getting suited up, and it's tank top So Hyun, that is. So Hyun Kim gets ready to fight after eating the healing bean. The quest window notifies that he used the healing bean, restoring his stamina and creating a side quest to execute a combo using various cards, with the reward being a gold card. Di Xiang H. Wang attacks him and asks what difference it would make if he got suited up. The quest window notifies him that Master Please has one hit. Di Xiong H. Wang questions what difference that makes, and if it's a name brand tank top or something, then hits him again and again. The quest window notifies that Master Please has five hits, and one stat will increase at random. So Hyun Kim admits he's feeling embarrassed. The quest window notifies that his strength has increased from E to C rank, and he throws a straight punch. He punches him hard in the belly. Di Xiang H. Wang abuses him and says that it actually stings a bit. He thinks he can still beat him. Everyone is shocked to see this. So Hyun Kim recalls the To the Moon card that allows him to perform a high standing vertical jump. The quest window notifies that he has used the To the Moon card. He takes a high jump and Di Xiang H. Wang moves his hand up, saying he will just grab him and throw him down. Hyun Dong screams no. So Hyun Kim spins in the air while recalling a silver card which is the Taekwondo spinning back kick. He is able to execute a spinning back kick, a type of kick used in Taekwondo. The quest window notifies that he threw a spinning back kick. He kicks Di Xiong H. Wang in the face, knocking him out. Everyone is shocked to see his moves. The quest window notifies him that the side quest is complete, and as a reward, he has received a gold card. He says, claim card. The quest window notifies that he has claimed the gold card. The quest window displays two cards and asks him to select one. He can only claim one of the following two cards. He thinks about how he can only claim one of them and wonders how they expect him to choose. Di Xiong H. Wang's gang members surround him and comment that Di Xiong H. Wang won't wake up, with another adding that he's practically wasting away. Hajun Gu says to get him out of there. 
After a while, Suhyun Kim arrives home and thinks he is so tired that he ends up fighting again. Everything hurts, and he better go straight to his room and rest. He is shocked to see Daehyun dancing and asks what the hell she is doing. She asks, what the hell? He said he was going to be home late. He goes to his room and says as if he wanted to see that, and in fact, he'd give anything to unsee it, so let's just drop it. She says everyone else in his class is doing it too. He says he doesn't care, but about a TikTok dance challenge. She tells him to shut his face. He thinks about what he should do and which card he should pick. He sees the cards and thinks the first one is an eye for cards. Knowing what card he will be getting next will definitely come in handy, but if this is a card he really needs right now, and the second card is a fateful meeting, a challenger card, the highest ranking card, ranked higher than gold, platinum, or even diamond. He wonders if the challenger card is able to speak, but why would it want to meet him, and if it is going to answer all his questions. He lies on the pillow and thinks he will think about it in the morning. Meanwhile, at East Gang Bakhai, Dsyong Hwang asks if he wants him to go home. The boy in the black jacket says he knows how Yiha is and asks if he really thinks he'll leave him alone after he comes back with his tail between his legs. He advises him not to show his face around school for the time being unless he wants to get his ass kicked and tells him to go home and lay low for a while. Dsyong Hwang agrees, saying that he will go home. Yiha Han arrives and asks what's going on. The boy replies that he is here. Yi Ha Han notes that he came to school today. Dsyong H. Wong kneels down and says to calm down. He is so sorry. Please forgive him, and he never had any intentions of betraying him, he swears. However, Ha Jun Gu suddenly shows up, and he asks for one more chance. Yi Ha Han moves to slap him. Meanwhile, at West Gang Bak Hai, So Hyun Kim thanks Ha Jun Gu for yesterday. He mentions that things were going badly back there, and he's grateful Hajin showed up in the nick of time. He asks why Hajin came and saved him though. He adds that seriously, they would have been screwed if Hajin hadn't been there. He then laughs and says that's hilarious. Hajin Gu is peeing in the washroom and says that's fine, asking why Sohyun is telling him this right now. Sohyun explains that he just happened to see him in there and asks if Hajin wants him to help shake it off. Hajin Gu says he can manage. Sehyun remarks that Hajun is even stronger than he thought, and thanks him for being a part of his crew. Hajun Gu responds, saying not to flatter himself, he's just sticking around for a little while to see where Suhyun goes from here. He adds that Suhyun should really be worrying about East Gangbuk. Suhyun Kim asks what Yi Ha Han is going to do next and wonders if he might just leave him alone. He mentions hearing that Yi Ha was a delinquent and out of control. Two girls overhear them talking. One in a blue jacket mentions that Hajun Gu is now hanging out with Sahyun too. The other, in a red tie, adds that apparently they even have matching tank tops. Sahyun says that with some preparation, they could probably beat Yiha easily. Hajun Gu warns him to watch out for Yiha Han, saying he's not the idiot Sahyun thinks he is. Sahyun asks what Hajun means, and Hajun replies that people who don't know Yiha Han think he's just a common thug, but they are wrong. Meanwhile, Yi Ha Han slaps Di Xiong H. Wang. He thinks Yi Ha Han, contrary to his appearance, is smart as heck. He asks how that fool fights and mentions he's a decent fighter, he knows this, so what happened? He demands to be told everything. How Sa Hyun Kim talks, how he acts, his habits, his strengths, what to watch out for, and what his techniques are. He says he gets it now. His gang member asks what he means by he gets it. Yi Ha Han kicks Di Xiong H. Wang and clarifies that he is talking about Tank Top Su Hyun. He understands what he is now. A boy notes that Di Xiong H. Wang got knocked out with a single blow and asks about Su Hyun Kim. Yi Ha Han responds that he understands now. Su Hyun Kim was close to being knocked out but made a sudden recovery and threw a fancy kick out of nowhere. He concludes that Su Hyun must have that ability too. Meanwhile, Sohyun Kim's gang members gather and bow down in front of him, offering their sincere congratulations. Sohyun Kim places his hand on his head and tells them there's no need to congratulate him. They ask what he means, of course they should. Kyuja Yu sits beside Sohyun Kim and asks for his briefing. Hyun Dong says all right then, he will begin the briefing. He taps on Di Seong H. Wong's photo and mentions that he is aware that his nickname has been updated to Tank Top Sihyun the Cannibal, derived from practically devouring Di Seong H. Wong in battle. He comments that the rumor spread fast. He continues, stating that it's unfortunate Di Seong H. Wong, being only the 14th strongest fighter in East Gangbuk, 
was too low ranked to be overseeing any territory. He remarks that if he were, that territory would have been theirs, which is tragic. He adds that those ranked 13th strongest or higher do oversee territory, so soon it will be time for them to expand their territory as well. So Hyun Kim wonders how things ended up like this, realizing that at this rate, he might actually end up uniting all of Gangbuk, and it's all because of those quests he keeps receiving. He ponders why these quests are appearing in the first place, and if he is somehow the chosen one. He questions why it has to be him of all people, and what awaits him at the end of these quests. Will he have to complete quests for the rest of his life? Hyun Dong remarks that Se Hyun seems to be musing for them, and everyone should get ready to clap. They compliment him, saying he's cool, as expected from tank top Se Hyun the cannibal. Se Hyun Kim acknowledges that he has so many questions and realizes it's time for him to make a decision. He doesn't want to spend his life completing quests without knowing the reason behind them. Although he feels it's a shame he can't keep the eye for cards card, he genuinely wants to know where these quests are originating from. The quest window notifies him that he has selected the fateful meeting card. He concludes that he needs to meet this challenger who apparently wants to meet with him. The quest window asks if he would like to use the fateful meeting card. He decides to use the card. The quest window notifies that he has used the fateful meeting card. He is surprised to see everyone disappear and wonders where everyone has gone. He calls out for Kyuja and Hyondong, searching for them and even calling out to teachers, but there's nobody around. He questions what is happening and where everyone else has gone. Exiting the school, he sees multiple lights all around and expresses disbelief. The quest window pops out and welcomes him, stating that this is their first meeting and assures him that he has many questions. It encourages him to ask anything. Sehyun Kim asks who is giving him these quests and why he is getting them. He questions why it's him, of all people, and what they want from him, as well as what the final quest entails. The quest window notifies that, alright, now it will give him the answers he desires, and it will connect him to them. He inquires about them. It acknowledges that he is Sehyun Kim. Sehyun Kim thinks this is a human voice. It states that he has already drawn the fateful meeting card, and he is a very lucky kid. So Hyun Kim asks if that means there's someone else doing these quests too. It reassures him, saying there's no need to worry, whatever he is concerned about will not come to pass, and it will be honest. This meeting is premature, and it does not know whether he is worthy of the task. So Hyun Kim asks what task, and if that is the final quest. He responds that of course So Hyun Kim must have many questions, but they cannot yet trust each other, so how about he first shows him what he is capable of. Sehyun Kim asks what he is capable of. He says to unite East and South Gangbuk High. Then he will be able to place his faith in him. Sehyun says that uniting means he has to beat up more people, but why does he have to? He asks if he means to say he will give up, and if he does not see this as an opportunity, noting that his eyesight has improved and he has gotten taller. He says he is no longer bullied and his life is changing, but those were merely gold cards. Bronze, gold, silver, platinum, he mentions, and asks if Suhyun will be satisfied with these alone. He mentions diamond, master, and challenger cards and asks if Suhyun is not curious about what they can offer him. His body remains unconscious in the classroom, and everyone calls out to him. Hyundong remarks that they thought he had kicked the bucket and asked what was going on and who was groping his butt. He explains that his eyes were closed and he wasn't saying anything. Another student suggests that most people would assume he had fallen asleep. He adds that, under Kyuja's leadership, they were discussing having matching uniforms made. Hyundong approves and tells them to come in. Fa Hyun Kim stands up from his chair and realizes that when he uses the fateful meeting card, it appears to others as if he has fallen asleep. Hyundong asks if he feels tired and if they should wrap up for today. So Hyun Kim says, yeah, let's do that, and moves from there. He advises to rest up, mentioning he has a whole family to support. Sehyun Kim clarifies that by family, he is referring to West Gang Bakai, and he calls himself an idiot. He remarks he can see why all those rumors got so out of control. However, he believes he has an opportunity. Cards of an even higher rank and gold cards alone make him taller and improve his vision, and he can acquire cards capable of much more than that. He calls Hyun Dong and considers this a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. He says he is now interested in uniting Gangbuk and believes he will do it. Hyundong says he will pass on his message to all the other high schools in Gangbuk. 
After a while, a girl hangs out at the school with her boyfriend, calling him Honey. Sehyun Kim stands beside a wall and observes them sneakily. The quest window notifies him that he has used the peak on his card. The girl slaps the boy and asks what the hell is going on. Sehyun Kim says he's got to grind the peak at his skill again today, and he feels like he has peaked at pretty much everyone at school. The boy asks what has gotten into her. She says she is so sorry, she suddenly feels super creeped out. Sehyun Kim says his rank should level up. The quest window notifies that congratulations, peak at him, is now at E rank. He thinks he did it. He ranked up his peak at his skill to E rank. He looks around and thinks about who he should try it out on. He sees Karen Beak and uses peak at her. The quest window notifies him that he used the peak at her card. He wonders why he zeroed in on Karen Beak right at this moment. The quest window shows her abilities and details. He thinks he can even see people's weight. That might be a little risky. After a while, he walks down the street holding a card and thinks, let's see, these are the cards he possesses. He has a couple more, reaching maximum capacity. But will this be enough to unite the East and South Gangbok High? He contemplates that she believes he will require more attack cards. He remains unaware of Siok, but Yiha Han is truly intimidating. He realizes that until he becomes stronger, he needs to avoid Yiha. Yiha Han approaches him and inquires, really, what is it? So Hyun Kim is shocked to see him. He kicks Yiha and asserts they are not friends, there is no need to exchange pleasantries. So Hyun Kim falls to the ground and thinks, what is this? That kick knocked the wind out of him. He questions if he's not going to fight and mentions he heard his footwork was decent. So Hyun Kim eats a healing bean and attempts to run. The quest window notifies him that he has used the healing bean and his stamina has been restored. Yiha Han moves to kick him again and asks if they are only good for running away. He stands in front of him, ready to fight. Yiha Han asks how the hell did he beat Di Xiong H. Wang. He responds, peek at him, and the quest window notifies that he used the peek at his card, displaying Yiha Han's abilities in detail on the window. Yiha Han inquires if he won by peeking at him. He observes the ability ranks and realizes two of his stats are S rank. He acknowledges he is totally outmatched especially since he has already used the healing bean, and wonders what to do next. The quest window notifies that a side quest has been created. Fight and defeat Yi Ha Han, with the reward being one platinum card and a hidden condition. He thinks he's got to be kidding me, how the hell is he going to beat him? He suggests they fight another day, reasoning that there's no point in fighting here without anyone around to witness it. He realizes he can't give up on a platinum card and must strategize. He emphasizes it's a battle between West and East Gangbok High, expressing his desire for it to happen in this dirty alleyway. He admits he's too weak right now, and that this is the only way while silently hoping Yi Ha Han will take the bait. Yi Ha Han asks when he wants to fight. He believes Yi Ha Han took the bait and confidently replies, don't worry about that. Tank Top Sa Hyun will be in touch as he moves to pick up his bag from the ground. Yi Ha Han questions if that's right and agrees, saying he'll see him then before leaving the area. Sa Hyun Kim seizes the opportunity, leaps high, and moves to attack. The quest window notifies that he has used the To The Moon card. He thinks he's a beast, with two stats ranked S, and acknowledges there's no guarantee he'd be able to beat him next time, especially considering his A-rank endurance. The quest window notifies him that he has used the Maximum Capacity card, and he executes a spinning back kick. He believes he just needs one hit and aims for Yi Ha Han's head. Yi Ha Han turns, kicks him, and remarks that he never lets down his guard. He throws Sa Hyun away and acknowledges that his steps are uncoordinated, but his technique is not half bad. The quest window notifies that the side quest has failed, but a hidden condition has been achieved, first defeat against an unbeatable opponent. Congratulations are given for unlocking the hidden achievement, and Su Hyun has received a diamond card. After a while, Hyondong tries to wake up Soo Hyun Kim, who lies unconscious on the desk. He opens his eyes. Hyondong asks if he is alright. Soo Hyun Kim asks where he is. Hyondong Lee explains they are at school. He found him passed out in the alley and brought him here. He mentions he heard about the fight with Yi Ha Han. Soo Hyun Kim thinks he sees it. Yi Ha Han knocked him out, and Hyondong saved him. Hyundong says he heard what happened, calling Yi Han Han an idiot for sneaking up on him like that. He reassures Sehyun not to worry as he treats his injuries. He mentions he has been studying medicine in his spare time to be of service. 
So Hyun Kim asks why he didn't just take him to the hospital and then retracts, realizing he's not that grateful. He reflects on his defeat, feeling a complete and utter loss. He laments losing before even trying to fight back, experiencing such a huge gap between himself and his opponent for the first time. He wonders why he was so helpless against Yi Ha Han when he was able to take on Dis Young H Wang. He notes that Yi Ha Han's strength is ranked S, while Dis Young H Wang's is ranked B, considering it's not too huge of a difference. He speculates that strength may refer to an individual's total attack power. Ha Jin Gu arrives and comments that Su Hyun got lucky, implying gratitude for not having gone further. Su Hyun Kim wonders why Ha Jin is there and if he is worried about him. He decides to use the peek at him card. He pauses, realizing even Yi Ha Han was wary of Ha Jin, raising questions about Ha Jin's strength. Ha Jun Gu responds that he's already looking at him. So Hyun Kim realizes that Ha Jin's strength is also S rank, nearly putting them on the same level. He ponders how he managed to beat Ha Jun Gu. He questions if Ha Jun went easy on him or something, finding it difficult to comprehend. So Hyun Kim then states he has a question, prompting Ha Jun Gu to inquire about it. He stands up and acknowledges that he is just wondering why Ha Jun is helping him. He expresses his suspicion that Ha Jun might have been going easy on him during their fight and mentions that Ha Jun even agreed to join his crew. He asks if there's a particular reason for this. Ha Jun Gu responds by calling him weird, stating he's never seen someone like him before, and admits to being a little intrigued. He clarifies that he never said he would work with him or anything, then leaves, bidding farewell. So Hyun Kim reflects that it seems like he's the weird one. He asks Hyun Dong if he can leave too, noting that what happened must be weighing heavily on his mind. Hyun Dong expresses understanding and hopes he feels better soon. So Hyun Kim expresses gratitude and thinks that the sooner he leaves, the sooner he can see what card he got. He urges himself to hurry up and get out of there. He holds the card and reflects on it being a diamond card. He ponders the rarity of receiving such a card from a side quest, thinking that someone up there must really like him. He considers whether fighting is not all about winning, but quickly dismisses the thought, attributing his luck this time to chance. He reasons that they said they wanted to see what he is capable of, so he doubts they'll keep giving him good cards like this. Nevertheless, he expresses gratitude for the card and vows to use it wisely. Reflecting on the platinum card he received earlier, which turned out to be a peek at him, he wonders what the diamond card will be. He says, claim card. The quest window notifies him that he has successfully claimed the diamond card, offering congratulations. He is surprised to see the card, which notifies him of a summon card. Copy Cloud summon it in a safe location. He contemplates the summon card. Meanwhile, at East Gangbok High School, Yiha Han's gang members bow down in front of him. A boy expresses gratitude for his hard work and asks about Sohyeon Kim. Yi Ha Han questions if they think he would have shown his face around there if he had lost. He dismisses it, stating that Sohyeon was weaker than he thought, and now West Gangbuk High belongs to them. He calls for Do Yok Kang, who responds affirmatively. Ha Jin Gu instructs Do Yok Kang to gather the boys and wrap things up with West Gangbuk. He reassures them not to worry about Sehyun Kim, but acknowledges Ha Jun Gu's presence, implying it will be tough for Sehyun to deal with him. He emphasizes the importance of taking Jin Park with them, prompting Yi Ha Han to question who he means by that guy. Ha Jun Gu clarifies, mentioning Jin Park, and asserts that they can also take down Ha Jun Gu with him. He urges Yi Ha Han to convince Jin to join them and take a break from his experiments. Yi Ha Han declares his focus on South Gangbok High from now on and expresses his determination to see things through with Siak Kang. He states that once they have taken both West and South Gangbok High, they will go after the individual in North Gangbok High. After a while at home, Da Hyun holds So Hyun Kim's arm and earnestly pleads with him to comply. She explains that her friends are coming over today and asks if he can please stay in his room while they are there. So Hyun Kim questions why and if she is ashamed of her dear brother. She assures him that she's not ashamed of him and explains that she's simply worried he might feel uncomfortable with her friends in the house. She insists that he will stay in his room. So Hyun Kim protests, expressing his reluctance and jokingly suggesting that he will come out and confess his feelings to one of her friends. Da Hyun tells him to stop joking around and pleads with him not to come out of his room no matter what. Sehyun Kim reluctantly agrees, stating that he supposes he could do that. 
Da Hyun thanked him and promised to do whatever he asked in return. So Hyun Kim goes to his room, muttering that he will walk around the house in his underwear. Da Hyun scolds him, warning him not to do so as she doesn't want her friend to see him and be embarrassed. He sits on his bed, gazes at the diamond card, and thinks that he's finally home. He has been eager to try out this card. The card instructs to summon it in a safe location, and he can't think of anywhere safer than home. The summon card indicates that it allows the user to summon clouds that can be copied and passed. He decides to try it out and says, Summon Copy Cloud. The quest window notifies him that the copy cloud is being summoned. He is surprised to see a huge magical light in his room. The quest window confirms that he has summoned the copy cloud. He observes some clouds in front of him and wonders, what the hell is this? Outside, Dahyun opens the door and asks what took them so long. She expresses that she thought she was going to starve to death. Her short-haired friend apologizes, mentioning that the Tidiakbaki they ordered took forever. She enters the house, hands a package to Dahyun, and asks if it's enough for her to forgive them. Dahyun accepts the package and agrees, asking if they brought any drinks. She suggests that maybe she won't be able to help her with her tic tic talk. Dahyun apologizes, and she asks if no one else is home. Dahyun reveals that her brother is home. She clarifies if it's Tank Top Sohyun. Dahyun tells her to shut up. The friend questions why and reminds Dahyun that she is his sister, Blade of Frost. Dahyun requests her not to call her that. She suggests that the Blade of Frost should be the theme of his Tic Tic Talk video. Dahyun threatens to kill her. Meanwhile, Sohyun Kim sees the copy cloud and politely asks for its identity. He wonders if he's dreaming considering this is the copy cloud and contemplates its purpose. He questions if it can speak and ponders if its only function is to float in the air like that and if it's invisible to other people. The copy cloud responds by asking if this is a diamond card. Sohyun Kim confirms it and wonders what else it could be. The quest window notifies that the copy cloud can activate the copy move to replicate a surrounding object. Sohyun Kim ponders what that means. The quest window warns that once copy mode is activated, the cloud will automatically replicate a surrounding object. He decides to try it out and activates the copy mode. The quest mode notifies that the human cloud is searching for an object to replicate. At that moment, Dehyun opens the door and approaches. She mentions that her friends are asking for his autograph. He responds, don't come in. She is surprised to see the copy cloud and asks what it is. The copy cloud captures Dahyun, rendering her unable to move, and she exclaims, what the hell? The quest window notifies that Dahyun Kim is being copied. The quest window notifies that he and the subject cannot move during the copy process and Dahyun Kim is being copied. Congratulations are given. Dahyun sits on the floor. The quest window notifies that he has successfully copied Dahyun Kim. He asks if she is okay. She responds that she is okay, but it feels like her body is suddenly tied up with something. She asks if it could be the Blade of Frost. He questions what she means by Blade and suggests she's been playing too many video games. He wonders what he should do if she sees the copy cloud and asks what she means by feeling tied up. She insists she is being serious as it feels like something has tied her up. He wonders if she was able to see the copy cloud and asks for clarification. She asks if he thinks their house is haunted. After a while, she sits with her friends and explains that it happened, insisting there's no way her house is haunted. Soha Young suggests she may have been mistaken. She asks if Soha thinks so, to which Soha responds that ghosts are not real. On the other side, Sohyun Kim sits on the bed holding the copy cloud and wonders what kind of card this is and what the point of copying a person is. The quest window notifies him that he can now paste Dahyun Kim. He says, paste Dahyun Kim, and decides to try it out. The quest window notifies that Dahyun Kim is being passed. He is surprised to see the copy cloud start changing its shape and wonders, what the hell is this? The copy cloud becomes the same as Dahyun. He quickly goes out to see Dahyun. Dahyun tells her friends that she just had an idea. They should make a tic tac talk with the ghost. Soha Young asks if a ghost would show up on video. The short-haired girl reassures her that she is kidding. Sohyun Kim turns back, closes the door, and sees the clone Dahyun. He wonders what is going on. He raises his hand and pokes his finger on her nose, realizing he can touch her. He considers that it really copies a person and wonders if that means the copy is visible to other people too. He worries about what will happen to him if he is caught. 
He supposes that a soldier asks if they have heard and says, apparently, they found an alien in that house. Civilians are not permitted to enter, and he thanks them for their cooperation. The quest window notifies that the copy cloud is displeased. She slaps him on the face. The quest window notifies that the master pleases one hit. He suggests she slap his other cheek too and wonders what's going on. The quest window notifies that the copy cloud has decided to return to the card. The clone Dahyun starts disappearing. He wonders what he is supposed to use this card for. After a while, Sahyun Kim sits in the classroom and thinks he has finally managed to get a diamond card, but all it does is copy and paste things. He wonders why that is considered a diamond card anyway. He contemplates what one is supposed to do with a copy of a person, and realizes that having two sisters would only end up annoying him twice as much. He reflects on how happy he was to be rewarded a diamond card and can't believe it ended up being such a useless card. Suddenly, Hyun Dong appears in front of him. Sehyun exclaims that he scared the life out of him and suggests that Hyun Dong should consider getting an eyebrow tattoo or something. Hyun Dong delivers the terrible news. Sehyun asks what the terrible news is. Hyun Dong explains that East Gangbok High is making its move. Sehyun inquires what he means. Hyun Dong reveals that, apparently, Yi Ha Han has sent a group of his people to take over West Gangbok High. The leader of the group is Jen Peek, ranked fifth in East Gangbok High and infamous around these parts for being an incredibly strong fighter. He explains that the vice leader is Do Yok Kang, who is ranked 13th, and he is stronger than Di Xiang H. Wan, the guy Sehyun Kim knocked out. The two lackeys accompanying them are fairly seasoned fighters as well. Currently, they do not have anyone at West Gangbok capable of facing off against those guys. He emphasizes that if they were to fight that group in their current state, there is 0% chance of defeating them. So Hyun Kim ponders what he should do. A group from East Gangbak Hai is on their way, even stronger than Di Xiang H. Wang, whom he only beat because he got lucky. He wonders if he would be able to beat those guys and if beating them would even solve the problem. He worries that if Yi Ha Han shows up again, he is really screwed, especially since these are the only attack cards he has. He considers if there is any way he can get more attack cards. Perhaps he could find the Sangchiol and his thug buddies at the park, but he has no idea when they will show up again. Even if he did find them, there's no guarantee that it'll result in another side quest, and there isn't enough time. After a while, he sits on the ground, holding his head, and says there's no way he can become stronger in the little time he has left. Ha Jun Gu arrives and asks what he is doing there, noting that he doesn't even smoke. He considers asking Ha Jun Gu to help him train and says he has a favor to ask him. Ha Jun Gu immediately declines. He thinks to himself that he hasn't even said a word yet and decides to forget about it. He believes this just might work. Meanwhile, Do Yok Kang, ranked 13th in East Gangbak High, comes to meet Jin Peek and greets him, saying it's been a while. Jin Peek responds that he was wondering who was visiting him. Do Yok Kang asks if he was experimenting. Jen Peek replies that he wouldn't call it experimenting, he's just messing around a bit. He explains that he tried mixing this and that but doesn't think they will be able to make decent money off of it, and he doesn't know how those South Gangbuck idiots do it. He compliments Siak Kang, acknowledging that the idiot is smart as hell. He mentions that he heard they are going to take down West Gangbuck. Doyoink Kang confirms that it's correct. Jin Peek remarks that Yi Ha could have wrapped that up himself while he was there but he loves to do more work for the rest of them. He asks when Doyo Kang would like to head over there. Jin Peek asks when he wants to go and says he knows how Yi Ha and the role, and they are going right now. Meanwhile, Sohyun Kim stands in front of Ha Jun Gu and attacks him. The quest window notifies that he throws a jab and his jab skill level increases. He thinks to himself that it's increasing, his skill level is increasing, and he expresses gratitude for taking that hit, or rather thanks to the cloud. The quest window displays the abilities rank of the Hajun Gu copy cloud. He reflects on feeling hopeless when Hajun said he did not want to help him and decides that he does not have to let him hit him from now on. He wonders if he can just block his punch and thinks that he does not necessarily need Hajun to help him anyway, he can just copy Hajun instead. He considers Hajun Gu to be a training dummy he can use to level up his skills. The quest window notifies that due to the strength of his opponent, his skill level will increase sharply, and his straight punch skill level will sharply increase. He believes he can become much stronger and attacks again on the cloud. The quest window notifies that his jab skill level has sharply increased. 
he thinks this is the power of the diamond card and can hear the sound of his leveling up. The quest window notifies that his spinning back kick skill level has sharply increased and again notifies that his straight punch skill level has increased. Finally, it notifies that congratulations, the straight punch is now at D rank. Meanwhile, at Gangbuk Girls High School, Soha Yang hangs out with his friends, and a long-haired girl asks Soha Yang what he is doing today. She mentions there's a book she is reading right now, and she is gonna go home to finish it. The short-haired girl asks about another book. The long-haired girl remarks that she is such a bibliophile. She laughs and agrees, saying yeah, totally. So Ha Yang tells them to stop, as they are embarrassing him. At that moment, Do Yo Kang sees them and comments that Gangbuk Girls High definitely has the hottest babes, and he's glad they stopped by there, what a feast for the eyes. The black-haired boy agrees, saying for sure. Do Yo Kang suggests they should bring in girls like them and asks if Jen Peek is on his way. Do Yo Kang confirms that, apparently, Jen Peek is on his way. He suggests they better get moving, stating that Jen Peek will take care of Ha Jun Gu, and asks if he will be able to handle So Hyun Kim. Do Yo Kang sizzles his cigarette on his tongue and says, please. He asserts that So Hyun Kim barely beat Di Seong H Wang. If they had a rematch, Di Seong H Wang would win. He adds that he destroyed Di Seong H Wang, and if So Hyun Kim challenges him, he will beat the crap out of him and send him to the emergency room. Do Yo Kang comments that it makes total sense. But guys, doesn't he think it would be a waste to go looking for Sa Hyun Kim right away? He asks if they want to do something else. On the other side, the long-haired girl suggests they should have a little fun first. Meanwhile, Sa Hyun Kim walks on the road with Kyu Jae Yu and Hyun Dong Lee. Hyun Dong Lee remarks that Sa Hyun is looking particularly imposing today. Sa Hyun Kim asks if he is, to which Hyun Dong Lee responds affirmatively stating that he is exuding an extraordinary aura of self-confidence and he wonders if Sehyun has been training or something. Sehyun Kim replies that he randomly feels like smashing a telephone pole for no reason. He adds that not even the threat of electrocution can stop him. A boy quickly runs toward them, calling out to Sehyun and saying there's an emergency. He wonders why everything is an emergency with that guy. Hyun Dong explains that he's West Gangbok High's official messenger. He mentioned that he had just received word that a group from East Gangbuk High was in the area, and he had heard they were harassing some of the students over there. Sehyun Kim suggests they should call the police. He asks what they should do, and if they should go help them. Sehyun Kim questions why they would do that and says they could be holding people hostage, and there's no real reason for them to risk helping them. Hyun Dong Lee agrees, calling it a wise decision. Sehyun Kim then inquires about who exactly those idiots are harassing. Hyun Dong Lee responds that he thinks they are harassing a few girls from Gangbuk Girls High School, famed for having a student body composed of only the most beautiful girls in all of Gangbuk. So Hyun Kim declares that tonight, they will dine in hell. At the moment, Di Seong H. Wang arrives and asks where they are off to in such a hurry. Hyun Dong asks what that idiot is doing here. Di Seong explains that thanks to So Hyun Kim, he has become the laughingstock of East Gangbuk, so he is here today to redeem his reputation. Hyun Dong asks what they should do, noting that it looks like he's here for a fight, and they can hold him off here. Su Hyun Kim disagrees, suggesting that the two of them should go on ahead to Gangbuk Girls High. Di Seong H. Wong remarks that pretty girls are in trouble. Hyun Dong Lee acknowledges his fair point and advises Su Hyun to be careful. Di Seong H. Wong questions if he is kidding right now and asserts that he won't be able to beat him all by himself. He suggests that Su Hyun might have caught him off guard last time when Ha Jun Gu showed up, but he must have realized that day the difference in ability between him and Su Hyun. He asks if Su Hyun is waiting for Ha Jun Gu to save him like he did last time. Su Hyun Kim responded that Ha Jun Gu wouldn't be coming. Di Seong H Wang wonders what's going on, stating that he can now take him on all by himself. He wonders why Su Hyun is so confident all of a sudden. Meanwhile, Do Yo Kang and his gang are harassing So Ha Young and her friends. He pushes So Ha Young with his finger and says, Come on, aren't they girls busy? He suggests they hang out for a bit and laugh. He proposes they party for the next three hours and they'll pay them, asking how much they cost. The brown haired boy remarks that they didn't think there were still people in this day and age who harass women like this and says they didn't either. So Ha Young demands to know why they are doing this and tells them to get out of her way. Do Yo Kang comments that she is hot enough to be a K-pop idol and very pretty. 
He moves his hand to touch her hair and asks why they don't work for Yiha. So Ha Yong asks what he is doing. Hyun Dong Lee arrives and tells him to cut it out. The black haired boy asks who that is. Do Yok Kang identifies Hyun Dong Lee from West Gang Buck High and asks how he knew they were there. He expresses disbelief, calling him an idiot, and asks if he's not their junior. Hyun Dong Lee thinks, What the hell, why are there so many of them? They all move toward him for a fight. The boy asks if he's there all by himself. The brown haired boy asks if he wants to die. Hyun Dong Lee wonders what he should do if he should wait for Su Hyun Kim. He comments that he looks at that little idiot getting into a fight stance with no respect for his seniors. Hyun Dong Lee suggests they try to hang in there, and they stop. He wonders why they're not attacking, and if they're afraid of him. A brown-haired boy mentions West Gangbuk's second strongest fighter, who apparently faced off against Sehyun Kim in an epic battle for three days and three nights. The newbie fighter who took the West by storm is referred to as the lieutenant. He identifies him as Kuja Yu, otherwise known as El Diablo. The long-haired girl expresses surprise that El Diablo showed up. The short-haired girl mentions he's apparently called El Diablo and asks if he's here to save them. The long-haired girl remarks that he must be a really good fighter. Hyun Dong Lee states that he committed a grave offense and should not have worried about anything, especially now that he is here, and then he will let them take over from here. A Doyok Kang gang member is shocked to see Kujia. Kujia moves forward, and Hyun Dong Lee smiles at him. The brown-haired boy remarks that he's put his hands in his pockets and asks what he's implying, and if that means he won't even need to use his fists against them. He tells him not to let his guard down and mentions he's heard he has a fist power-up technique, which might be what he's doing now. He urges him to say something as he can't take it anymore. They move to attack him, stating that regardless of how strong he is, they can at least tire him out a little. Sahyun Kim arrives and apologizes for being late, explaining that he had to swat a particularly pesky fly. Meanwhile, this young H. Wang lies unconscious on the floor and reflects that he lost. So Hyun Kim is completely different from the last time they fought, and he thought he would definitely be able to beat him in a rematch. He wonders how So Hyun Kim got so strong in such a short amount of time. Do Yok Kang announces So Hyun Kim's presence from West Gangbok High. So Hyun Kim exchanges a clap with Kyuji Yu. Kyuji remarks that he has spoiled his fun and will let So Hyun Kim deal with those pests. So Hyun Kim thanked him, indicating that he could see what was about to happen. Do Yok Kang asks if So Hyun Kim knocked out Di Seong H. Wang, then delivers some bad news, saying that he is stronger than Di Seong H. Wang. So Hyun Kim observes his abilities ranks with the quest window. He questions why they are all standing around and commands them to attack him. They all move to attack him, and So Hyun Kim also prepares to counterattack. The scene shifts back to a flashback where So Hyun Kim sits on the roof, holding cards and assessing his progress. He remarks, let's see, just how much he has leveled up. He notes that his jab, spinning back kick and straight punch are all now at B rank, and he gets an option when he hits a high rank. He observes that the names of the techniques have also changed. The attack cards of red jab, red straight punch, and red spinning back kick are all at rank B. The scene shifts back to the present, and he attacks them. Everyone is shocked to see this. The quest window notifies that a side quest has been created. Fight and defeat Doyok Kang, ranked 13th in East Gangbok High, with a reward being one silver card. Kim Soohyun declares that he is not interested in small fry and tells Yi Han Han to come back. The quest window notifies that the quest is starting. A boy moves to attack him and remarks, that's unsanitary. The quest window notifies that he threw a straight punch. He comments, his fist stinks of saliva. Soohyun Kim attacks them one by one. Another boy also moves to attack and says he will get him from behind, but So Hyun Kim punches him. All the girls are surprised to see his moves. Do Yok Kang says it is not bad at all, as expected from tank top So Hyun. He comments that now he can see exactly how strong he is and moves to attack him, saying that he is only about as strong as Di Seong H. Wang. The scene shifts back to a flashback. Do Yok Kang asks if So Hyun Kim is weaker than he expected. Di Seong H. Wang says yes, that's right. If he fought him again, he'd win, and because of that, he has no doubt that he's not a very skilled fighter. He says he can only win by ambushing his opponent. Still, he can't let his guard down around him, and that's how he managed to beat him. He says, well, that being said, no matter how much he lets his guard down, there's no way he could lose to him. 
Do Yeok Kang says, well, thanks for the info, so Sohyun Kim is weak. The scene shifts back to the present as Sehyeon Kim attacks Do Yeok Kang. The quest window notifies him that he has thrown a spinning back kick. He thinks he had said he was weak, but if this is weak. The quest window notifies him that he uses the to the moon card. He watches Sehyeon Kim's high jump and thinks he's so fast he's practically flying. The quest window notifies that he uses the maximum capacity card. He thinks about the expression on Sehyeon Kim's face, finding it irritating. Sehyeon Kim punches him in the face, and the quest window notifies him that it's a critical hit. Doyo Kang falls to the ground unconscious. He says whatever he shall do, he doesn't like resorting to violence in front of the ladies. The quest window notifies him that the quest is complete, and he has received a silver card. Sehyeon Kim turns to the ladies and asks if they are hurt. So Hayoung says they are fine, thanks. The long-haired girl thanked him again and suggested to Soha that they should go while holding her arm. The short-haired girl bows down and says they will be going then. She mentions she has heard rumors about Sohyun Kim, saying it said he feasts on the corpses of those he's defeated. Sohyun Kim asks if he can please tell those girls that he can hear everything they are saying. Hyun Dong Lee says he will. So Ha Yang asks if she can get his phone number and moves the phone towards Sohyun Kim. He asks if she is not one of Da Hyun's friends. The long-haired girl asks what she is saying and says this is Sohyun Kim they are talking about. She says she heard he likes to abduct women and tie them up, that he's a total sadist, and they have heard all those rumors about him. So Ha Yang says she has, but she still wants to thank him. Sohyun Kim says, goodness, that's really flattering. Kyu Jae Yu suggests he should cut that out and say whatever it is he wants to tell her. Sohyun Kim agrees and provides her phone number. Do Yok Kang lies on the ground and warns him to enjoy himself while he can. Sohyun Kim asks what he means. He responds that his days are numbered. Kyu Jae asks what that's supposed to mean and places his foot on his chest. He says he's the classic Kyu Jae also known as El Diablo. He assumes Sohyun might have heard of him and Jin Park, the fifth strongest fighter of East Gangbok High, who will be arriving soon after defeating Ha Jun Gu. Meanwhile, Ha Jun Gu is exercising when Jin Park arrives. Ha Jun Gu tells him to leave him alone as he needs to work out. Jin Park questions the purpose of working out, noting that Sehyeon Kim has already defeated him. He explains that Yi Ha Han sent him to ensure Ha Jun Gu defeats him and that they will deal with Sehyeon Kim. Ha Jun Gu responds that he had claimed not to worry about him anymore, but now he's weak enough to have been defeated by Sehyeon. In response, Ha Jun Gu turns and attacks Jin Park, knocking him out. He questions if that's what Yi Ha Han said, expressing that it's perfect as he needed an excuse to hang around Sehyeon Kim. He instructs him to inform Yi Ha Han that Sehyeon Kim's crew is on its way. Meanwhile, So Ha Yang is sitting in the study room and reading a book when her mom arrives and asks why she isn't in bed yet. So Ha apologizes, explaining that she was reading and lost track of time. Her mom remarks that she would expect nothing less from So Ha, the bibliophile. So Ha Yang tells her to cut it out, feeling embarrassed. Her mom advises her not to stay up too late. Meanwhile, So Hyun Kim returns and lies on his bed, reflecting on his victories. He thinks he won, managing to defeat two Dseong H Wangs in a single day, and at his current pace, he might even be able to beat Yi Ha Han. However, he ponders Yi Ha Han's lackeys and considers that they likely move around as a large group. He wonders if he could handle all of them alone. Realizing he has only managed to defeat their 13th strongest fighter, he concludes he can't win against all of them simultaneously if he's on his own. Perhaps he needs more people on his side, but before that, he must complete his quest. The quest window notifies him that he needs to recruit one more crew member. He considers Kyu Jaya Ha Jin Gu and Hyun Dong Lee as three members, leaving one spot open. He wonders who he should recruit as the last member. He's been using a peek at him everywhere to try and find somebody, but he hasn't found anyone else he can trust. Suddenly, an idea strikes him. Maybe he could summon Cloud. The quest window notifies him to summon the copy Cloud. He commands the Cloud to transform into a person. The quest window notifies that he has summoned the copied Cloud successfully. He expresses his approval but mentions that the Cloud cannot transform into his sister. The copy Cloud then transforms into Dahyun Kim, who sits on his lap. He reacts, nearly punching her, and instructs her to change into Ha Jun Gu instead. He asserts that siblings are essentially enemies and asks if she is listening to him. She moves to sit in front of him. 
he decides to proceed and extends his hands, asking her to join his crew. The quest window notifies that the copy cloud has joined his crew, fulfilling the requirement of recruiting crew members 44. The reward is one gold card, and the main quest is complete. As a reward, he receives a gold card. He commands to claim the card, and the quest window confirms that he has claimed the gold card, displaying it. The normal card indicates that the crew factor allows the user to level up their crew members. The quest window notifies him of congratulations, informing him that he can now level up his crew members. He observes the ranks of his crew members' abilities and realizes he can level them up. He taps on the screen and inquires how to level them up and whether they also gain experience when he fights. The quest window notifies him that crew members can only be leveled up using level up cards, which he can obtain by completing level up quests. He understands that he can only level up his crew members using level up cards and wonders if level up quests are similar to side quests. The quest window notifies him that level up quests have been activated. He decides he will find out once he gets his first level up quest, and he feels they might be easier than the side quests. He plans to worry about that later. He decides to claim his card first, noting that he hasn't claimed the card he obtained from fighting Doyot Kang yet, and commands him to claim the card. The quest window notifies him that he has claimed the card. The attack card, Boxing Weaving, indicates that he is able to weave a defensive technique used in boxing at the current skill F rank. He begins practicing. The quest window indicates that he has used the weaving technique and created a side quest. He finds it enjoyable. The quest window notifies him that he needs to complete a boxing combination. Boxing Weaving 11 and Boxing Hook 01, with a reward of one gold card. He acknowledges that there are side quests like this one too, requiring him to complete a boxing combination. He realizes that all he needs to complete this quest is the hook attack card. He considers it a gamble but decides to give it a try since it has been a while since he last used it. He says, card master, alright, let's go for broke. He decides to organize his cards and considers getting rid of the ones he's not currently using. He remarks that he doesn't think he'll ever end up using those cards so he might as well get rid of them by combining bronze cards. The quest window notifies him that he has used the card master card. He remarks that he wouldn't get the card he wants on the first try, acknowledging that it won't be easy. The quest window notifies that he has received two silver cards by combining four bronze cards. He then considers that he has never tried disassembling a card before and wonders if he should try it now, realizing that he has a lot of silver cards and regrets making the gamble. He acknowledges that he could end up getting a really good card. After a while, in the United Gangbuck, everyone bows down in front of Sehyun Kim and Kyu Ya and congratulates them. Hyun Dong Lee says tank top Sehyun and Kyu Ya, also known as El Diablo, have shown their true might to the idiots of East Gangbuck High. Sehyun Kim asks what they are congratulating them for. Kyu Ya says next time, they should ensure that they won't have to stoop to getting their hands dirty. Hyun Dong Lee says that what they have accomplished is, of course, because Se Hyun beat Do Yeon Kang of East Gangbuk, and the territory that was under his supervision is now theirs. He inquires about territories, likening it to a game of risk. Hyun Dong Lee explains that Do Yeon Kang was managing three high schools, Siajin High, Dajin High, and Jagang Tech, and those schools are now under Se Hyun's authority, remarking on how amazing it is. Sohyun Kim questions what will happen with Yi Han, and if he will intervene now that Sohyun has taken over part of his territory. Hyun Dong Lee responds that they should have some breathing room, at least for now. Sohyun Kim asks about the breathing room and why it exists. Hyun Dong Lee elaborates, saying he got in touch with South Gangbok High. Sohyun Kim asks what he means. Meanwhile, in Music Town, Yi Han sits with a cigarette on his lips and asks if Jen Park and Do Yok Kang lost. The red-haired boy confirms that the schools under Doyok Kang's management have been turned over to West Gangbuk and asks what they should do now. Yi Han questions what he means by that and asserts they need to head over there immediately. He says he understands and will prepare for it. Just then, a boy enters the room, calls Yi Ha's name, and alerts him to an emergency. South Gangbuk High is mobilizing. It seems Siak Kang finds out their guys have lost to Sehyun Kim and is attempting to start a war. At this rate, they will be attacked from both the west and the south. The boy asks what they should do. Yi Ha Han instructs them to send his second to West Gangbuk, advising not to engage in combat, but rather to keep them in check, as Sehyun Kim is weak. 
He claims he can defeat Sehyun whenever he wants, but first, he plans to crush Seok Kang. Meanwhile, Sehyun Kim hangs out with Hyun Dong Lee and recounts what happened. He tells him he did well and assures him he did good. Sehyun Kim thinks it's a relief. He's still not strong enough to win a fight against Yi Ha Han. While Yi Ha is busy with South Gangbuk, he plans to train and complete quests to get stronger. Hyun Dong Lee suggests that now that they have some spare time, they should focus on strengthening their position within West Gangbuk. So Hyun Kim asks what he means by that, wondering if he's suggesting they recruit more members to join their crew. Hyun Dong Lee says that's one possibility, but he was referring to something else. He mentions he recently expanded his territory. A long-haired girl overhears them and asks her friends if they've heard the rumors about Sehyun Kim, mentioning that, apparently, he never flushes after he takes a dump. Hyun Dong Lee mentions certain problems that might arise as a result. The three high schools that Do Yok Kang oversaw are now under his governance, but it is uncertain whether the students there are supportive of him. He explains that this means they could stage a revolt at any moment and asks what Sehyun Kim thinks about visiting those schools in person and showing them who's boss. The quest window notifies that a level up quest has been created, which is to assert dominance over the high schools under his authority. Siajin High School's 01, Dajin High School's 01, and Jagang Technical School's 01. The reward is one greater level up card for strength, speed, and endurance and one greater random attack card. Sehyun Kim thinks this is what level up quests are like, and now he will be able to train his crew. He says okay, let's do that immediately. He asks if they should start with Siajin High School. Hyun Dong Lee agrees and tells him to see him in front of him. So Ha Yang stands there and says hello. Sehyun Kim asks if she is from the other day and what she is doing here. She explained that she had made plans with Da Hyun after school that day. Sehyun Kim realizes she is Da Hyun's friend. So Ha Young confirms this, and he tells them to have fun and not to stay out too late. She agrees and then asks why he has not replied to her text. She explained that she sent him a text message but never got a reply from him. Hyun Dong Lee teases him, calling him an idiot for leaving a trail of broken hearts in his wake. So Hyun Kim acknowledges this and says she just wants a reply. He then tells her he will see her later and starts to leave. So Ha Young responds by seeing him later and says she did it. She asked him. The long-haired girl asks what the hell. Meanwhile, at Siajin High School, some boys sit on the floor and chill. A boy asks what they are going to do now. He mentions that Doyok Kang got his ass kicked and wonders if that means they have to follow West Gangbuk now. A black-haired boy comments that he heard Tank Top Sehyun is scary as hell. He suggests that the right thing would be to join him since Doyok Kang lost. Jinsu Jang, the top dog of Siajin High, interrupts, telling them to shut their Gotham traps. He asserts that they are going to stay loyal to Yi Ha Han to the bitter end. He threatens that if Suhyun Kim or whatever dares to show his face around here, he will kill him. He adds that they are welcome to join up with Suhyun Kim if they want him to mess them up too. The red haired boy quickly says they were just kidding. Suhyun Kim arrives there with Hyun Dong Lee and asks if the guys are from Siajin High. He questions what they are, bears or something, and why their hangout is on a freaking mountain. The quest window notifies that he used the weaving technique. Sehyun Kim attacks Jinsu Jang. Jinsu Jang retaliates and tells him to counter that. Hyun Dong Lee remarks that it's a surprise attack and he fights even dirtier than Sehyun does. The quest window notifies that he threw a hook. Sehyun Kim attacks him in the belly and comments that hooks are pretty useful. The scene shifts to a flashback. Sehyun Kim sits on his bed and exclaims, there it is, he finally got it. A card appears in front of him and he identifies it as the hook card. He expresses disbelief at how many attempts it took to obtain this card. He reflects on the process of combining and disassembling cards, realizing he wasted all the cards he wasn't using, including the hit those high notes card. He admits, well it's not like he has been using that card recently anyway. The quest window notifies that he completed a boxing combination. Boxing Weaving 11 and Boxing Hook 01, and the reward is one gold card. He thinks to himself, now then, it's time for his reward. The scene shifts to the present when Sehyun Kim punches Jin Soo Jang in the face. The quest window notifies about an attack card called Boxing Dempsey Roll, which allows him to execute a Dempsey Roll, an offensive technique used in boxing. It notifies that he used the Dempsey Roll technique. He continues to attack Jin Soo Jang repeatedly. 
everyone is shocked to see his moves. He prepares to punch again and says, just wait, crew, daddy's bringing home some cards. The quest window notifies him that the level up quest has started. The quest window notifies him that the Dempsey roll technique has been used by him. So Hyun Kim knocks him out. The other boys kneel down in front of him and express their desire to follow him from the start, stating they never liked those idiots. The quest window notifies that the quest has been updated, asserting dominance over high schools under his authority. Siajin High School 11, Dajin High School 01, and Jogang Technical Schools 01. Sohyun Kim suggests that it seems like things are wrapped up here and asks if they should move on to the next school. Hyundin Lee remarks that he is a total thug. After a while, a Dajin High student thanked him for looking out for Dajin High, mentioning that they had been suffering under the tyranny of East Gangbak High, so they were happy to see them gone. Sohyun Kim acknowledges Dajin High with a check. The quest window notifies that the quest has been updated. After a while, a Jogang High School student stated that they were from Jogang Tech and were happy to be under West Gangbuck's rule, and they just asked that he not increase the dues. He reassures them, saying not to worry about that. They are not like East Gangbuck, and they won't be collecting any dues from them. He declares himself a just and benevolent ruler. The quest window notifies that the quest has been updated, asserting dominance over high schools under his authority. Siajin High School 11, Dajin High School 11, Jogang Technical School 11, and the quest has been updated. He thinks he did it, and now he can level up his crew. After a while, Sahyun Kim sits in the washroom and contemplates that he has finally obtained some level up cards, but he can't decide who to use them on. He observes all his members' ranks on the quest screen and wonders if he should just elevate Hajin to God tier, but questions whether he will be able to rein him in if necessary, or if he should allocate all the cards to Hyundan. He feels that something about that idea doesn't appeal to him though. Alternatively, he considers using them all on Kyuja since Kyuja is currently the weakest member of his crew. He asks Kyuja Ye if everything is going okay over there. Kyuja Ye responds with a negative. He ponders if he should even involve Kyuja in the fight in the first place, as it would break his heart to see Kyuja get hurt, and he inquires if Kyuja is having trouble going. Kyuja Ye requests not to be spoken to at the moment. Nevertheless, Sohyun Kim remains convinced that Kyuja will inevitably have to fight someday due to his association with him, and he decides to at least equip him with the skills to defend himself. Kyuja Ye mentions he was just about to do so. Sohyun Kim concludes okay, he has decided. He is going to use them all on Kyuja and click on the quest screen. The quest window notifies him that all level up cards will be applied to Gokja Yang, and the level up card is activated. Kyuja Ye screams loudly. Suhyun Kim looks at him and wonders if they worked, wishing he could unsee that though. He states that by asserting dominance over the three high schools under his authority, he has sufficiently established his position within West Gangbuk, as he suggested, and asks Hyundong Li if he is right. Hyundong Li confirms. Suhyun Kim then mentions there's something he has been meaning to ask him. Hyundong Li inquires what it is. So Hyun Kim asks what the top dog of North Gangbak High is like mentioning he never showed up at the Gangbak conference, and it seems like both Yi Ha Han and Siak Kang were itching to get their hands on him. He expresses the need for more information on him in order to be prepared. Hyun Dong Lee responds that there really isn't any information available. So Hyun Kim asks if he has any information about him. He mentions that usually, the leader of a particular region tends to have a colorful past befitting their station, but no one knows a thing about that guy's past, and he only knows that he is rumored to be extraordinarily strong. Sohyun Kim remarks that's weird as hell. He adds that the rumors about him are like that too. Sohyun Kim agrees, saying that's true, and suggests that they are heading back now and need to get ready for class. Hyun Dong Lee bows down and expresses gratitude, thanking him for his time. Kyuja Ya remarks that he is too worked up. He doesn't think he will be able to sleep tonight. Suhyun Kim interjects, saying don't say things like that. He mentions that people will get the wrong idea about them. Hyun Dong Lee thinks things are now settled with the territory they have newly acquired, but Suhyun shouldn't have to keep handling matters like this directly, and they will undoubtedly continue to expand their influence in Gangbuk. Suhyun Kim requests that don't forget that he is still at school. He apologizes and considers that there is no way Sohyun will be able to oversee such a wide expanse of territory by himself. Sohyun can no longer afford to devote his time to what's going on within West Gangbuk. 
He suggests they need someone who is detail-oriented, noting that women are typically more detail-oriented. He believes they need someone to focus on strengthening their position from within, but wonders who would be willing to undertake such a task. He notices the girls around. The short-haired girl asks, what the hell, and why is that idiot staring at them like that? He thinks everyone at school considers Sahyon a total piece of rubbish and realizes there is a woman who fits the bill. Meanwhile, a girl in a gray shirt asks Karen Beek how she got so many Instagram followers and tells her to spill her secret. Karen responds that she just has to be hot as hell. The brown-haired girl calls her an insufferable bitch. Hyun Dong Lee sees her and thinks there's definitely a vibe of sorts between her and Sehyun. If the two of them start dating, Karen will take on the work of fortifying their group from within, and it's perfect. She urges Karen to come on and tell them her secret. Karen asks if she really wants to know and responds that she just has to be cute. She mutters that she is so bad. Hyun Dong Lee thinks he will forge a union between the two as their rulers, and they will usher in an age of peace and prosperity for Gangbok. After a while, Karen Beek asks about a party. Hyun Dong Lee affirms and suggests having a pool party at a resort in Gangbuk to strengthen their bonds of friendship. She slaps him and asks if he is kidding her right now. He wonders why she would do that. She tells him to stop acting like they are friends and questions why the hell she would ever party with those people. She warns him not to even think about it and turns to leave. So Hyun Kim remarks that he was rude of her. All he did was suggest they have a party and asks why she would slap him for that. He suggests that perhaps his suggestion of the venue was a bit too much. So Hyun Kim asks why. He remarks, well, it's the latest trend on Instagram for girls to upload photos of themselves in bikinis by the pool, and most of those pics are taken at resorts. Even high school students go on trips to resorts pretty often these days. He adds that since Karen is so active on Instagram, he thought she'd jump at the chance to go to a resort, but it's too bad she's not interested. Sahyun Kim thinks he's a brilliant, beautiful idiot and says no wonder she slapped him. He comments that they should not go to places like that since they are still minors. Sahyun Kim responds that being said, he shouldn't give up on his goal so easily. He agrees and asks if he should just scrap the plan. He mentions that Karen seems to be really against the idea, and he doesn't think she'd hate going on a trip with them that much. Kyujaya places his hand on his shoulder and asks why he didn't consult him about this. After a while, Karen Beek hears the sound of a door opening at her workplace and asks how she may help them. Her friends enter. The short-haired girl says it's them. Karen Beek mentions they scared her and suggests they should let her know if they are going to visit her at work. The other girl mentioned they heard the news about how Suhyun Kim booked them a resort with a pool and asked if she was coming too. Karen Beek responds with a no, stating she told him she is not going. Her friend insists she should come with them. The short-haired girl asks why not and mentions that it's apparently a super popular resort on Instagram. Karen Beek questions why she would go. Her friend suggests they can get more Instagram followers and they can go and just hang out by themselves, planning to ditch the guys once they are at the resort. Karen Beek hesitates, saying it seems a little bad. Later, she agrees to go. She asks if she is coming with them. They hug her and say she is the best and they are going to get a ton of followers. She thanked her and advised them to wear cute clothes for the trip. Karen Beek thinks she has to go bikini shopping. After a while, Sehyun Kim stands with Kyu Jae Ya and Hyun Dong Lee on the road and asks if the trip really is today and if he didn't get the date wrong. Hyun Dong Lee confirms that it is definitely today, but this is unexpected. Sehyun Kim inquires about what is unexpected. Hyun Dong Lee explains that he thought he, too, was against the idea of them going to a poolside resort. Sehyun Kim questions what he is talking about and asserts that he has not supported his idea from the very start. He simply did not like seeing him give up on his goal so easily, that's all. Hyun Dong Lee comments that he is awfully talkative all of a sudden. Kyu Ya interjects, saying he has a question to ask Sehyun. Sehyun Kim asks about what? Kyu Ya asks why in the world Ha Jun Gi is here. He mentions that he just asked him on a whim, but he didn't think he'd actually join them. Kyu Ya remarks that he must say his sense of style leaves something to be desired. Hyun Dong Lee notices Karen and says, here come the ladies. So Hyun Kim remarks that they are not wearing bikinis. Kyu Jae Ya asks what he means. Karen Beek questions why he never said that Ha Jun Gu was joining them. Hyun Dong Lee asks if his presence makes them uncomfortable. She responds that not at all. 
This trip is suddenly looking up. Sehyun Kim stares at Karen Beek's bag, thinking he should peek at her, and hopes that they brought some bikinis. She slaps him and says to stop trying to see what's in her bag. He apologizes. The quest window notifies that Master Please gets one hit. Hyun Dong Lee says it looks like everyone's here and suggests they get going. Meanwhile, at the East Gangbuk High vs South Gangbuk High combat, a boy approaches Seok Kang, calling his name, and delivers urgent news, West Gangbuk is on the move. Siak Kang asks about West Gangbuk and speculates that Sehyun Kim is not a complete idiot. He asks if they are on their way to strike East Gangbuk High. The boy responds negatively, saying they are just going on a trip, apparently. Siak Kang remarks on those idiots and mentions they must know he is attacking East Gangbuk from the south. He adds that the sensible thing for West Gangbuk would be to strike East Gangbuk from the west and ask where they are headed. The boy replies that it is the resort in Gangbuk. Siak Kang questions if that resort is not in North Gangbuk's territory. Meanwhile, Hyondong Lee remarks that they have arrived at Gangbuk Poolside Resort, confirming it's Gangbuk Poolside Resort. So Hyun Kim inquires if he has checked in yet. He responds affirmatively, stating that of course he can go right in. So Hyun Kim acknowledged his quick work and approved it. He jokingly asks for a pat on the head. So Hyun Kim refuses. Kyuja Ya questions Hajun Gu about why he is staring at him like that. Karen Beek asks if they should split up for now. She mentions they need to unpack and change as well. The other girl suggests going to the women's rooms. Suhyun Kim joins them. Karen Beek once again slaps him and asks why he is following them. The quest window notifies the master, please only hit once. He explained that he thought they were in the same room because times had changed. She asks why they would be in the same room on earth and tells him to leave. Hyundong Lee suggests they should also get moving since they are only here for two days, there isn't much time to party. So Hyun Kim asks why he is still in his school uniform and suggests they go see them later anyway. He declares it's party time. Meanwhile, a group of students sits there and observes them. Cheng Siok Na asks if he is certain that they are from West Gangbok High. Jiangbin An's companion asserts they have audacity and questions how they dare to show up on North Gangbok territory. He inquires if that person is Hajun Gu. Jiangbin An confirms it. Hajun Kang mentions that Karen Beek was also present. His companion remarks that she's the obnoxious one who thinks she's attractive. He states that she is much more attractive than Karen. She retorts, suggesting he say that while looking at her at least. He asks what they are going to do. Jiangbin An suggests he will report it to the higher-ups. Chang Siak Na questions reporting it and advises forgetting that. He asks if Chang Siak Na is just going to leave them alone. Chang Siak Na responds negatively, stating they will confront them and earn favor with him. Meanwhile, Karen Beek's friends are taking photos. The short-haired girl says, look at this, they look so hot. The black-haired girl asks if that one is hers. She wonders if she should post it or not and says to hurry up and decide. She asks if she's kidding and demands that she post it right now. The short-haired girl says they are going to become Instagram famous. She complains about getting her phone wet. The short-haired girl says who cares, they will be famous. The black-haired girl agrees. She remarks that they finally got a good one after taking like 30,000 pics. The black-haired girl suggests taking some more once Karen gets there. She asks if Karen saw it earlier. She asks what she saw. She responds that Hajun has an amazing body. She agrees, saying yeah, totally. She asks if she remembers what the other guys looked like. She inquires if there were other guys who came. She states seriously that she would date Hajun in a heartbeat if he did not have such a crappy personality. She adds, right, whatever, stop spouting nonsense and give Karen a call. She confirms she is here and asks her what took her so long. They are surprised to see her in a bikini. The black-haired girl questions why she is in a bikini. Karen Beek demands to know what's going on and says she thought they agreed they were all going to wear bikinis. She asks if they didn't see the group chat and points out they said they weren't going to wear bikinis. Karen Beek wonders if they're a bit too much, if they don't think, and runs from there. She finds it hilarious and asks where she is going. She suggests taking some pictures with them in that bikini, as they might as well. Thahyeon Kim also hears the voices and remarks that Karen's in a bikini. Karen Beek asserts that she's not taking any pictures with them, calling them sneaky ass bitches, and declares she's not going anywhere with the two of them ever again. 
After a while, Karen Beek sits with the boys and asks if they are out of their minds. She questions why she should put it on again just to appease them. So Hyun Kim reassures her, stating that it's alright, they aren't interested. He clarifies that it's not as if they only came here to see her in a bikini. He adds that anyway, she doesn't have to wear it, and he will be heading home soon. She angrily rebukes him. After a while, she states that now that they have eaten, she asks what they should do next and who will clean all this up. Kyuja Ye suggests Hyun Dong. He agrees, saying he will do it. So Hyun Kim inquires about Hajin's whereabouts. Hyun Dong informs her that he went for a run right after. He mentions that Hajun takes really good care of his body and wonders if he's unaware that women don't typically prefer overly muscled bodies like his. The short-haired girl questions the point of exercising, stating that they will all turn to dust one day. The black-haired girl mentions that it's already evening and they're going home tomorrow. She explains that's typical for a two-day trip. Karen Beek expresses boredom, suggesting she might go home early. She acknowledges that she's complaining again despite being the most excited about the trip initially. Hyundong proposes a game to alleviate boredom, suggesting that the loser has to shave off their eyebrows. Karen asks about the game rules. She agrees to play but jokes that the guy in question doesn't have any eyebrows to begin with. Karen Beek proposes starting with an easy game, adding that if she doesn't find it enjoyable, she'll just go to sleep. Five minutes later, Karen Beek tells Sohyun Kim that he lost because he played when it wasn't even her turn yet. She says see, she's really into it now. Sohyun Kim insists that he played by the rules. She repeats that she's telling him he lost. He calls bullshit. She asserts that she's telling him she's right and asks everyone else. He says if she's wrong about this, she will have to shave her eyebrows. She tells him to shut up and hold still. He insists he didn't lose. She says he did and tells him to let her shave those brows. He complains that he didn't even get to see her in a bikini and now this. She says she doesn't appreciate that level of honesty. The other girls nod in agreement and Hyundong suggests it seems like one of them lost this round, so what if the two of them play one more game to decide who the real loser is? She tells him he lost and asks what kind of game it is. He opens the closet and says it's this. She asks what kind of game they would play in a closet. He explains the rules, the two of them need to get into the closet, and whoever comes out first loses and has to shave their eyebrows. She asks if that's all. Sehyun Kim wonders if it's basically a game of chicken and remarks that it's too easy. He clarifies that they are not just going in there, they need to enter while holding hands and hold out until one of them gives up. Sehyun Kim asks about holding hands. Karen Beek questions why she has to hold his hand. Hyundong Lee suggests that they could both shave their eyebrows instead. The short-haired girl argues that it's just holding hands, besides, it's not like they have any feelings for each other, asking who cares, as it's just a game. She asks if she is wrong, and if they have feelings for each other. The black-haired girl jokes that love is in the air. She asks if she is feeling shy, and if they should drop it, stating she just needs to win. Karen Beek holds his hand and says he should get ready to kiss those eyebrows goodbye. They both stand in the closet. Hyundong closes the door and says, Now the game starts, thinking this is all for the good of West Gangbok High. Kyu Jae comments on the foibles of youth and says Sihyun Kim is finally becoming a man, expressing jealousy as he walks away. Just then, Chang Siak Na appears in front of Kyu Jae and asks why he is jealous, declaring himself as El Diablo. Meanwhile, inside the closet, Karen Beek asks why his hand is so sweaty. He responds that hers is too. She knows it. She denies it. He mentions feeling a sense of deja vu and recalls reading a fumbler post about a situation like this. She asks what the hell that is. The quest window notifies that a new quest has been created. She asks what's up with him. The quest window notifies that to defeat Karen Beek, one must exit the closet 01, and the reward is a silver card. He thinks all he needs to do is get out of this closet, and the reward isn't bad either. She asks what it is and what's wrong with him. He wonders if he should just do the quest and get a silver card, but why should he? She complains that it's too damn hot in here and tells him to stop staring at her. He thinks he is in heaven right now and says he can't help it. They are standing so close together. She insists he should at least make an effort. He changes the subject, asking if she isn't feeling well, noting she is sweating buckets, seriously drenched. He asks if she went for a swim while he was not looking. She tells him to stop already. He tells her to stop being such a pain in the ass. 
She agrees, saying seriously though, that if they haven't been holding hands for a while now, she thinks they can let go at this point. He disagrees, saying no, they are supposed to keep holding hands, and while this might only be a game, they should still follow the rules. He asks if she knows what he really hates, people who do not follow the rules. She asks if he can't just get out first. He asks what she's going to do for him if he does. She asks why she should do anything for him. He explains that he doesn't want to shave off his eyebrows. She reminds him that she said she'd draw them back on for him. He notices her condition and asks what's wrong with her and why she is breathing so heavily if she is really sick. She asks what he is talking about. He then asks if she wants to make out. She says, don't be ridiculous. He asks then what's wrong. She explains that she can't stand being in small, enclosed spaces. He asks if she is claustrophobic and says she really doesn't seem like the type. She responds that it's not severe, but it's because she was bullied. He asks what she means. She says when she was younger. He questions who bullied her, calling it bullshit. She explains that when she was in middle school, a bunch of kids bullied her for having a resting bitch face. She wonders what they want from her and says this is just the way she looks. When she ignored them, it sort of became the cool thing for everyone to bully her, and one day, they trapped her in the janitor's closet and went home. She explains that the bullying worsened when she started showing fear, and ever since then, she can't stay in small, dark spaces for too long. She asks why she told him all this. She admits that she didn't think they'd have to stay in here for so long, and that she shouldn't have agreed to play this game. He realizes that she helped back then because it reminded her of what she went through in middle school. He decides to head out first. She asks what he means. He expresses surprise, saying he didn't know something like that had happened to her, and suggests she should have let him know earlier if she was struggling. He reassures her, saying it will be alright, and tries to push the door open, but it does not budge. He suggests that they barricaded the door from the outside. She asks what he means. He knocks at the door and insists that it's not funny, urging whoever is outside to hurry up and open the door. He warns them to let them out right now, or he will get angry, emphasizing that he is Tank Pop Sahyong. She suggests that she thinks everyone else left. He speculates that they may need to wait a bit longer. She starts crying and asks what they should do now. The quest window notifies him that he used the maximum capacity card, and the quest is complete. He breaks the closet door and declares, as he said, that he is Tank Top Sahyong. He questions how they could play a prank like this and mentions that his hands are all scratched up, directing his anger toward Hyundong Lee for doing this. She holds her shirt and expresses gratitude, stating that once he has his brows, she will draw them back on for him. He admits that he didn't just break down the closet doors for her. He was starting to get a little too excited in there if she caught his drift. She asks what he means by excited. After a while, both girls sit down. The black-haired girl apologizes, saying they had no idea she was claustrophobic and that they didn't know she had gone through so much in middle school. Karen Beek responds, saying whatever, if they pull something like this again, she is going to kill them both. Sohyun Kim laughs and agrees, saying they won't forgive them. She asks why he looks so happy and what they two got up to in the closet. He reflects on what a long day it has been and realizes that this is how their little trip ends. She comments that he looks horrible without any eyebrows, yet he still kept his word and shaved them off. Suddenly, Hyondong rushes in and says they have a big problem. So Hyun Kim asks what he means and what the problem is. Hyondong explains that it's Kuja. He was dragged away by three thugs who appeared to be from North Gangbok High. He adds that he thinks they were lying in wait until they could get him alone. So Hyun Kim asks if they were the three who were watching them at the entrance. Hyondong confirms this. So Hyun Kim tells them not to worry about it. Hyun Dong questions what he means by don't worry about it and asks if they shouldn't go rescue him. Karen Beek asks if he is serious. So Hyun Kim insists, saying really don't worry about it. He is no longer the Kuja they knew. Meanwhile, Kuja Ya finds himself surrounded by these thugs. Chang Seok Na asks what's up with this idiot and admits he's scared as hell. He mentions that they were told this person was El Diablo of West Gangbuk and asks if this is really him. Ha Jin Kang confirms that it's him without a doubt. He wonders why Kujuya is behaving like this and calls him a total coward. Laughing he agrees, saying he can't believe it either. Jiang Bin An remarks that the rumors were way off base. Ha Jin Kang asks what else they would expect from pathetic West Gangbuk. 
Chang Siak Na tells them to move out of his way, stop wasting time, and that they have a lot to do, indicating they need to go after Ha Jun Gu next. He moves to attack, suggesting they just end him. Kyuja Ye recalls a flashback where Se Hyun Kim advises him not to doubt, emphasizing that if he lets go of his doubts, he can become as powerful as a real Yakuza, especially with the level-up cards he has received. The quest window shows two cards, the first is a greater random attack card, which grants a crew member a random attack skill when used, and the second is Systema, which grants a crew member the ability to use Systema, a military martial art. Kyuja Ya attacks Chang Siak Na and knocks him out. He wonders what is happening as his body suddenly begins moving on its own, and he thinks he did something really cool just now. Ha Jin Kang asks, what the hell? Jiangbin on comments that Kyuja Ya is really strong and suggests that he was pretending to be weak on purpose. Kyuja Ya reflects on pretending to be weak and realizes that he hasn't properly fought with anyone in his life. He asks if they are afraid, and if they are not here to fight him, telling them to stop quivering in fear. He considers the possibility that he has actually been powerful all along and questions whether he really needs to teach them something as basic as how to remain calm in battle. He states that he didn't get a chance to introduce himself earlier and declares that he is Kyuja Ya, the El Diablo of West Gangbok High. He declares that he will let them make the first move, closing his eyes and telling them to have at it. Ha Jin Kang tells him not to make him laugh and moves to attack. As he attacks, he asks if Kyuja Ya took his foe at their word, noting that this is the first time he has ever actually seemed cool. Kyuja Ya responds, declaring that they must meet their doom, and that he must teach them how to accept defeat too. Jiangbin An also moves to attack, telling him to get over himself and asking if he realizes where he is. Kyuja Ya acknowledges that they are in North Gangbuk territory and gets punched in the face. He reflects that it still hurts when he gets punched, but retaliates, knocking Jiangbin On out, while declaring that he is Kyuja Ya, the El Diablo of West Gangbuk High. He concludes that it's a successful debut if he does say so himself. After a while, Hyondong asks if Kyuja Ya took them down all by himself and expresses admiration, saying it's incredible and that Kyuja Ya is the best. Kyuja Ya sits near a window and explains that he didn't wish to resort to violence, but they forced his hand, and if he hadn't fought back, they all could have been in danger. He clarifies that he battled them to keep everyone safe, especially since there are ladies present. A girl comments that his statement about fighting for them is so cringe-worthy that it makes her want to barf. Fahyon Kim observes them and thinks that he feels bad about being the only one who has gotten stronger, but he's glad he was able to level Kyuja Ya up too, realizing that people won't mess with Kyuja from now on. He asks if they're worried about them, to which she responds that she's not kidding and they have it. Kyuja Ya instructs Hyondong to get him some water. Suhyun Kim contemplates when his S-rank potential will come into play. Karen suggests they leave their room. The black-haired girl agrees, mentioning that they're going to sleep now. The short-haired girl adds that they also need to take some more selfies. Hyundong Lee bows down and expresses regret that their trip ends tomorrow, wishing the ladies a lovely evening. Suhyun Kim also prepares to leave, bidding them good night and saying he'll see them tomorrow. The black-haired girl asks if she brought any comfortable clothes to lounge in. Karen Beek assures her that she did. So Hyun Kim sits on the floor and mentions that he brought his tank top. Karen Beek slaps him and asks why he's still there. He explains that he's staying just in case. The quest window notifies him that Master Please has one hit. Karen Beek tells him to get out of there. He exits the room, saying okay, and thinks he was so close too. As he moves to leave, he notices how quiet it is and wonders why. Since this place is in North Gangbuk High's territory, he expected to encounter some of their people, but the guys Kyuja beat apparently are not part of North Gangbuk's main crew. He concludes that perhaps it's for the best since they are still rather weak. He then asks by the way, where has Hajin gone? Meanwhile, Hajin Gu stands in front of the top dog of North Gangbuk High. The top dog remarks, it's been a while Hajin. He expresses curiosity about why Hajin contacted him after all this time and asks if that was the reason. Hajin explains that he wanted to ask North Gangbuk to let him and his friends be there, as they were just here to party. The top dog responds by reminding him that the only reason he leaves his little group alone is that he knows he can crush them anytime he wants to, giving him a word of caution. He advises Hajun to keep his hands out of his pockets whenever he talks to him and dismisses him, saying, run along now. 
After a while, Sohyun returns home and announces his arrival by saying he's back. His mother warmly greets him, saying welcome back and remarks that he must be tired as overnight trips can be draining. He agrees, saying yeah, for sure. Dahyun Kim asks about the resort, wondering if it is as nice as it looks on Instagram. She muses that she never thought the day would come when her son would actually have friends to go on a trip with, as she thought he'd be a loner forever. He jokingly tells his mom that he can hear her, to which she responds that she knows as she meant for him to hear her. She then inquires about what happened to his eyebrows. He explains that he was playing a game with his friends and ended up losing. She instructs him to get changed and wash up. He reclines on his bed, acknowledging her request with an okay, mom and feeling exhausted. Remembering the cards, he recalls obtaining the silver card after breaking open the closet. Realizing he should claim his card first, he commands to claim the card. The quest window notifies him that he has successfully claimed the card, revealing a card labeled Silver Tongue, which increases the user's probability. He inquires about the Silver Tongue card, wondering if it's a beneficial one. Meanwhile, Kuja Ya returns home and announces his arrival by saying he's home. His father warmly greets him, saying welcome back, and inquires about his trip. Hu Jiayao explains that he ended up getting into a fight, feeling as though something inside him had awakened despite having full control of his bodily movements. He questions the secret behind the blood flowing in his veins, pondering if he's truly nothing more than a regular white-collar professional, and demands his father to tell him the truth. He admits that he is indeed just a regular white-collar worker. Suddenly, Keiko Chan interrupts, slapping him and reprimanding him. Stop spouting nonsense and come eat dinner. He apologizes. After a while at West Gangbuk High, a short-haired girl inquires if anyone has heard the rumor. She specifically asks about Sehyun Kim. Confirming that she has heard, she acknowledges it as impressive. Wondering if he got into another fight, she learns that he apparently caused Kyu Jaya to raise North Gangbuk to the ground. Sehyun Kim walks through the hallway, concealing his forehead. A student questions what happened to his eyebrows. Another suggests he must have shaved them to commemorate the raising of North Gangbuk. Feeling embarrassed, Sohyun wonders why it had to be his eyebrows. Another student remarks that the browless Mona Lisa look is off-putting. Someone mentioned that he apparently wanted to be a gangster when he grew up. Sohyun Kim resigns himself, thinking it can't be helped. At that moment, Karen Beek arrives, seizes his hand, and flees from the scene. A student remarks, look over there. Another speculates that they are sneaking out for a little makeout session. She instructs him to sit, and he complies by sitting on a chair and inquiring about the situation. She insists, for heaven's sake, sit down and asks if he recalls her promise to redraw his brows. Taking a pencil, she declares, all right, here they go. He expresses gratitude, to which she responds that she can't draw them from this angle. She settles into his lap, remarking that she needs to sit there to accomplish the task. Just then, Hyondong arrives and reveals that they all shaved their brows in solidarity. After a while, everyone gathers for the Unite Gangbuk meeting and bows down in front of Sehyun Kim, expressing hopes that he had a nice weekend. He confirms that he did and asks how about the others. A boy cries out that they shaved off their brows for him. He responds that he never asked them to do that and suggests they draw some on too. Hyondong says this is only the beginning. Sehyun Kim inquires about the beginning of what? He explained that it was high time he started expanding his territory. Sehyun Kim agrees, stating that he has to unite all of Gangbuk. He asks where he would like to strike first. The quest window notifies that a main quest is available. He thinks that a new main quest is available. The quest window notifies that he can select one of the following three quests, and once he has made his selection, he will be unable to proceed with the other two quests. He thinks that this quest is a little different from usual. The quest window notifies him that he should select one of the three following main quests to proceed. First, attack North Gangbuk Haizo 1, the reward is one platinum card. Second, attack South Gangbuk Haizo 1, the reward is one gold card. And third, attack East Gangbuk Haizo 1, the reward is one silver card. He thinks that the give out quests like this are too interesting, and it's hard to make up his mind since each quest has a different reward. He thinks strategically about where it would be most advantageous for them to strike first. He considers the relationship between each school and West Gangbok High. He thinks that East Gangbok High, where Yi Han is, harbors the most animosity towards him. He wonders if he should start with them, but he'd only get one silver card as a reward. 
he thinks about South Gangbok Hai and Siak Kang. He believes that he and Siak Kang have a pretty good rapport, and he wonders if he should turn around and stab him in the back. He thinks that a gold card is a pretty decent reward, but what if Yi Ha Han swoops in on West Gangbok while he is facing off against Siak? He considers that if getting the best reward is his priority, then he should attack North Gangbok Hai, but he wonders if he will be able to survive the repercussions of provoking North Gangbok. He ponders what if they end up getting their asses kicked. He declares alright, he has made his decision. Hyondong asks if he has. He confirms that's right, that's where they will strike first. Hyondong asks what he means. He responds to let the game of conquest begin and thinks okay let's do this. Hyondong says that finally, it's time for war and asks which district they should attack first. He responds that the district they will be attacking is North Gangbuk. Hyondong Lee advises against his plan to attack North Gangbuk Hai. He asks why. Hyeondong Lee explains that those idiots are of a different caliber altogether, and the guys who attacked Kuja at the resort were pretty weak, weren't they? He agrees, stating that they are low-level thugs at best. The ranked members of North Gangbuk are on a whole other level, and each and every one of them is an absolute beast of a fighter. He adds that, realistically, the only place they could even dare to strike is the Gangbuk Pool Hall, but the leader there is also an incredibly skilled fighter. He asserts that it'd be a problem even if he managed to beat them, and if North Gangbok retaliates by sending their main forces, they are done for. He urges him to reconsider if he is thinking of striking North Gangbok. So Hyun Kim stands up and says he sees that launching a rash attack on North Gangbok will lead to trouble. He knows that they say a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. He suggests not being too hasty in expanding his territory. Hyondong Lee asks which they would like to strike first, East or South Gangbok Hai. He responds that perhaps it'd be best to wrap things up with Yi Ha Han once and for all and prepare themselves. He adds that the place West Gangbok will strike next is North Gangbok Hai. Meanwhile, at Music Town, a boy enters the room and announces they have a crisis. Yi Ha Han asks what it's all about. The boy explains that West Gangbok is on the move. Yi Ha Han questions why West Gangbuk is moving and remarks, so it begins. He instructs everyone to get up, as West Gangbuk is going to come for them, probably thinking they will crush them first, then move on to South Gangbuk. He declares, let's go, this is war. Another boy calls him, and he asks what it is. Meanwhile, at South Gangbuk High, Siak King asks what was just said about West Gangbuk being on the move. Jonyeol Bang confirms, stating that Sehyun Kim will likely go after East Gangbuk first, suggesting they join forces with West Gangbuk to crush Yi Han, or they could attack West Gangbuk since it is defenseless right now. He asks for guidance on what they should do. Siak Kang advises to stand by for now. He inquires about the meaning of this. Siak Kang explains that this could be a trap set by Sehyun Kim suggesting they gather more information before making any decisions as they do not know exactly where West Gangbok plans to strike. The boy in the blue shirt mentions that they do not have that information yet, but they should receive an update soon. Siok Kang reflects that Suhyun Kim is already declaring war when West Gangbok only has a crew of three. He announces that they have found out where Suhyun is planning to strike. Siok Kang asks where it is. He responds that apparently he's headed to North Gangbok High. Thiok Kang is surprised, thinking it's neither of them but North Gangbuk Hai. Meanwhile, So Hyun Kim arrives at Gangbuk Pool Hall with his crew. Hyun Dong Lee asks if he is sure this is the right thing for them to do, attacking North Gangbuk instead of South or East Gangbuk Hai's. He responds affirmatively, stating that they can expand their territory at any time and that what they really need are more people who are good at fighting. They will convince the leader here to join their crew. Hyundong Lee expresses concern about the repercussions of launching a strike against the sizable North Gangbok forces, fearing retaliation. So Hyun Kim reassures him, stating that he has a plan and that there's a very good reason why he has chosen to attack North Gangbok. The quest window notifies that the task is to attack North Gangbok High 01, with the reward being one platinum card. So Hyun Kim thinks it's because attacking North Gangbok will earn him a platinum card. Hyondong Lee agrees, stating that he trusts his decision, but it seems like they will be the ones getting attacked. So Hyun Kim observes that their boss is not here yet. Harusian, ranked 39th in North Gangbok High, arrives and asks what's going on, if someone is here, and what's with the tense atmosphere. She inquires if it is a customer. A boy informs her that these guys are from West Gangbok High, 
they are here to see her. So Hyun Kim thinks to himself that the boss here is a girl and asks her to please join his crew, realizing that he has fallen in love with her. She questions him about his crew. Hyun Dong Lee suggests it might be a little weird to just ask like that. He agrees, saying it's just that it was love at first sight. She moves and kicks him. Hyun Dong Lee and Kyu Ja Ya are shocked to see this. She asks about joining his crew and accuses him of messing with her. She asserts that she sees what's going on here. He is here to mock her because she is only ranked 39th in North Gangbuk and all she does is oversee this little pool hall. Hyun Dong Lee moves to attack her and asks how dare she ambush Su Hyun like that. She attacks him back and reiterates that she is a guy. He kneels down and remarks on her incredible speed, stating that he has never seen a girl move so quickly in a fight, and he supposes he should expect nothing less from North Gangbuk High. She repeats that she's not a girl. Kyu Jaya admits that he underestimated her, acknowledging that even though she's a woman, she is also a warrior, and he should have fought her with everything he had. He gets ready to fight and declares that he shall be her opponent. Sohyun Kim intervenes, saying no, instructs Kyuja to let him deal with this, and then stands up. Kyuja asks if he is certain. Sohyun responds that it was his first time being kicked in the face by a girl. The quest window notifies that the master pleases to get one hit. She tries to attack him, reiterating that she's not a girl. The quest window indicates that he used the weaving technique. He introduces himself, stating that he is tank top Sohyun, and attacks her. The quest window notifies that he threw a straight punch. He thinks she dodged that, finding it cool and hot, and moves to attack her again, pondering if she can dodge this one too. The quest window notifies him that he has thrown a spinning kick. She moves back. Hyun Dong Lee remarks that this is unbelievable. She's evading all of Sa Hyun's attacks. The North Gangbuk High Boy comments that he's just as strong as Haru. Another person says so that's tank top Sa Hyun. He's fast enough to keep up with Haru. They start cheering and encouraging Haru and Sehyun respectively. Sehyun Kim thinks they are evenly matched and acknowledges that he is really impressive. She asks what he means. He inquires if she has studied any martial arts. She responds no, not at all. He deduces that she trained all by herself and remarks that for a girl like her to have worked so hard to become this strong, there must be some kind of tragic backstory. She reiterates that she's not a girl. He acknowledges that she knows he is looking for a member to join his crew. He has assessed numerous people so far, and he believes she is the best out of all of them. He asserts that he is definitely not just saying this because she is so pretty. He proposes a bet. If he wins, she joins his crew. She questions why he keeps asking her to join and asks for his reasoning. He responds, stating that it's because he can see something in her. As she moves to attack, she asks what he sees. The quest window notifies that he used the weaving technique and displays Haru Seong's abilities ranking on the screen. He explains that he sees her incredible potential, of course, and attacks her. The quest window notifies that he threw a hook, initiating the side quest recruit Haru Seong 01. He observes that she keeps trying to land a surprise hit on him and assumes this means she accepts the terms of the bet. The quest window notifies the start of the quest. She attacks him and reiterates that she's not joining his crew. The quest window notifies the weaving technique. He responds, stating that he will give her two choices, yes and yes, and then punches her. She demands to know what the hell is wrong with him. The quest window notifies that he threw a straight punch. He thinks to himself that this is not an easy fight, she is too fast, and he wonders how to wrap this up. She questions if he is kidding her, emphasizing that no means no. He believes he has an idea. She asserts that she is standing right there, urging him to focus on the fight and moves to attack him. He falls on her, shocking everyone who witnesses it. She asks if she won. Hyun Dong Lee responds negatively and calls for Sa Hyun. Sa Hyun Kim grabs him and remarks that she smells like fabric softener. The quest window notifies that he used his maximum capacity card. She questions why he is smelling her. He lifts her up in the air prompting her to ask how he is this strong. He realizes he let his guard down and slams her onto the floor, causing her to become unconscious. He tells her to give up already, as she can't escape him. The quest window notifies the completion of the quest to attack North Gangbuk High 11, rewarding a platinum card and marking the quest as complete. He has received a platinum card. The scene shifts to Harusian's dream, where she stands in an old building and declares that it's not over yet she can still keep fighting. 
She questions why she is only ranked 39th and demands that they fight her properly, including her in their plan. Ranked second in North Gangbok High, a kicker rebukes her and commands her to shut up. He asserts that someone as weak as she is not necessary for their future plans, and she should be grateful for even being ranked 39th. He declares that he will assign her to the pool hall located near West Gangbok High and have her oversee the territory there, stating that's all a weakling like her is good for. He concludes that she belongs at the bottom, but he supposes even trash like her can come in handy sometimes. The scene shifts to the present. Haru Xian opens her eyes, lies on the desk, and asks where she is. Hyun Dong Lee sits in front of her and advises her not to get up yet, as her treatment is not yet complete. He has been studying acupuncture on the side to help serve his liege. She apologizes, explaining that she had a nightmare. Looking around, she asks where she is. He responds that they are at West Gangbok High. She passed out, and they carried her over there, reassuring her not to worry. Sehyun Kim stands near the window and interjects, stating that he does not have a feel or anything, as he wouldn't do that to a lady. She compliments him, acknowledging him as a good guy, and emphasizes that he shouldn't do that to anyone, reiterating that she is not a girl. He reminds her that she lost the fight, and as per the terms of their bet, she is now part of his crew. She declines, expressing her lack of interest in a stupid bet. He turns and asks if she really won't join his crew thinking he can finally trigger the silver tongue card he acquired at the poolside resort. The quest window displays the silver tongue card, which notifies that it increases the user's probability of persuading the other party. He insists that all of this is for her own good. The quest window notifies that the silver tongue card has been triggered, increasing his probability of persuading the other party. He inquires about her age. She responds that she is only 17 years old. He comments that she is young and should dream a little bigger, asking if she is truly satisfied with overseeing just one little pool hall. He suggests that if she joins his crew before he can complete his sentence, she agrees but reminds him that he owes her one for this, promising to cash in later. The quest window notifies that Harusian has joined his crew, marking the quest as complete, and as a reward, he receives a silver card. He hugs her and affirms his agreement. She requests him to stop hugging her. He finally remarks that they have recruited someone with talent, he got him a buddy and expressed astonishment at the fact that he'd ever have such a strong, reliable girl who's just a friend. Hyun Dong Lee expresses his honor. She interjects, pointing out that there's a problem. So Hyun Kim inquires about the issue. She asks if he realizes they are now in big trouble. He questions what trouble she's referring to. She explains that he attacked North Gangbok High and recruited her, so naturally, he's in big trouble. Once North Gangbuk finds out that she is part of the West Gangbuk crew, they will be out for blood, and she asks what he is going to do about it. She asserts that she doesn't have the courage to fight North Gangbuk's top dog, and she won't work with him until he resolves this. He places his hand on her shoulder and reassures her, calling her a cutie pie, and tells her not to worry about that. He has already planned for it. After a while, at the pool hall, a boy tells Harushian that she is amazing. They were worried when Sehyun Kim dragged him along, but he never imagined she would go and crush the West Gangbuk all by herself. The white-haired boy asks if he doesn't think Harusian has been acting a little strange lately. The black-haired boy says no, he doesn't notice any difference from her usual behavior. He remarks that he doesn't really have to talk anymore. He adds that there's no way she is just imagining things. After a while, Sehyun Kim stated that she didn't have to worry about North Gangbuk anymore. She asks how and what he did. He replies that it's a secret. Anyway, she just needs to fight with them in disguise. She questions what this is and says it's not a disguise, he's just making her look like a girl. He tells her she doesn't have to if she doesn't want to and mentions he will spread rumors about how she has betrayed North Gangbuk, putting both of them in trouble. She asks what he means. He responds, alright, welcome to the team. She asks where he is going now. He replies to the bathroom. She wonders why the bathroom, to which he simply states he has got to go. After a while, he sits in the bathroom, spots the cards, and says he's got to go claim his cards, thinking it's time to do so. He says, let's see, he has two cards to claim. The platinum card he obtained from attacking North Gangbuk High, and the silver card he received from recruiting Haru. He decides to start with the silver card. 
the quest window notifies him that he has claimed the silver card, displaying the normal card as table tennis drive, which indicates he is able to execute a drive, a type of stroke used in table tennis, with the current skill rank being F. He thinks to himself that he failed and doubts he'd ever need to play table tennis, he'll just disassemble it later with a card master. He then moves on to the platinum card and says, claim the card. He wonders what the first platinum card he got was peeking at him for, and what his second platinum card will be. The quest window displays the card showing mirror call, prompting him to ask if it's like a shield and ponder if it's a defensive card. The quest window notifies him that a level up quest has been created. He sees the window and wonders, what does this mean? Meanwhile, at South Gangbok High, Siak Kang is exercising and remarks that Sohyeon Kim has moved to attack North Gangbok. He comments that it sounds like West Gangbok's days are numbered, although they might be able to eke out a single victory. He thinks to himself that the idiot won't let a challenge like that go unpunished. Suddenly, the blue-shirted boy rushes in and informs him that there's an emergency. Siak Kang inquires about the nature of the emergency. He explains that their people are under attack. Siak Kang asks what he means and if it is Yi Ha Han. He responds that it's not Yi Ha Han, it's West Gangbok High. Siak Kang is surprised and says he thought they were attacking North Gangbok. He confirms that was the initial understanding, but apparently North Gangbok has not taken any damage and Haru Sion, ranked 39th there, is fine as well. He warns that they are at the Gangbok underpass, and if they don't go and help their people right away, West Gangbok will take over their territory. Meanwhile, at the Gangbok underpass, members of the West Gangbok High face off against members of South Gangbok High. Kyuja Ya suggests that she is free to lean on him if she starts feeling faint. Haru Sian asserts that he had informed them she is not a girl. The quest window indicates that the level-up quest is to identify South Gangbok's business Operation 01 with rewards consisting of two greater level-up cards for strength, speed and endurance, along with one greater random attack card. Suhyun Kim declares, okay, enough chatting, let's kick some South Gangbok, and moves toward them. The quest window then notifies the start of the level-up quest. Jung Bang asks Haru Siong if he is dreaming right now and comments that it's indeed a brave new world. He questions why a woman is in battle. His friend in the black shirt asks if it's the Women's March, and Haru Siong responds by saying the Women's March is keeping up with current events. His friend remarks that she thinks of herself as a regular Joan of Arc, to which Haru Siong replies by jokingly asking about new history and calling himself smart and stupid. The woman refuses his comment, and he asks her what she wants to say. She firmly states that, for the last time, she's not a girl. At that moment, the man in the black shirt rushes to attack her telling her to shut up because the men are talking. She jumps from his head behind and grabs him, leaving him surprised and wondering if she's flying. The boy in the gray shirt asks where she thinks she's going and grabs her hair. Meanwhile, a crew member remarks nice, and the other one mentions he learned it from his dad. He often grabs his mom's hair like this, leaving her in distress. The woman comments that it sounds like his family has issues. He curses, wondering why there are so many of them. She reminds him that this was his idea and urges him not to just stand there but to help her. After a while, Suhyun Kim sits and writes something that catches her attention. She asks why he is taking notes and he thinks that Haru Siang is really fast but her strength and endurance are lacking. She mentions she needs help, noting there are too many of them. He contemplates what's worse, realizing her fighting style is basically street fighting as she doesn't know any actual combat techniques. He decides that the next attack card he gets, he'll give it to Haru Siong while he draws her portrait. She calls him and thinks that with an attack card, even if her stats are pretty low, it would be helpful. Hyuja yet arrives and attacks them, mentioning left hand Sis, right hand Tema together, they are Sistema. He thinks she should be at least as good as Kyuja. Kyuja ya further comments that he thought Sistema was supposed to look cool, so why does it look lame when Kyuja does it? He then says he should get started as well. So Hyun Kim thinks that he needs to beat the level up quest, while the quest window notifies him of the level up quest. Identify South Gangbuck's business operations. The rewards for completing this quest are two greater level up cards for strength, two greater level up cards for speed, two superior level up cards for endurance, and one greater random attack card. He wonders how he will identify their business operations. A person asks what he is doing and tells him to hurry up, saying they don't want to make Siak angry as he would kill them if they are caught. It's all over. 
the person looks at a boy who sits in front of him. So Hyun wonders what those guys are doing. On the other hand, she becomes very tired and says she's beaten, mentioning that it seems like things are about wrapped up here. She then asks about Sehyun's whereabouts, wondering where she went. She regrets joining West Gangbuk and considers joining South Gangbuk instead. Jonyeol Bang, who ranks 18th in South Gangbuk High, says he's totally her type. She replies that unfortunately, he's not her type and thinks he seems stronger than her. He then says die, and she wonders if she will be able to beat this guy. Kyu Jae expresses his boredom as he dances near the dead bodies, mentioning that he did not realize fighting could be this boring, feeling disappointed. Yoongi Bang, who ranks 17th in South Gangbuk High, arrives and punches Kyu Jae. Yoongi Bang declares that he will entertain him, stating that he's Kyu Jae Diablo of West Gangbuk High. Kyu Jae responds by saying it's perfect and mentions that he wants a one-on-one -on -one match with him. He adds that he has to say he's quite pleased with the predicament he's in. Yoongi Bang insults him, saying he's ugly as hell, but Kyu Jaya dismisses it as a lie and thinks he can feel how strong Yoongi Bang is. Kyu Jaya mentions that he's at least of average attractiveness and wonders if he will be able to beat this guy. So Hyun Kim responds with alright, let's see, and asks what these guys were up to, noting they were kicking up a big fuss about not leaving any of this stuff behind as he grabs the bag. He questions if this bag could hold the secret of South Gangbuk's business operations, then searches for something in the bag and suggests taking a look. He also mentions that he shouldn't look through another person's bag. Dong Yu Wang, who ranks 10th in South Gangbuk High, comes from behind and grabs him, calling him a little rascal and stating that stealing is a crime. Sohyun thinks he needs to use maximum capacity. Dong Yu Wang remarks that Suhyun is tank top Suhyun Kim and concludes that he has got him, thinking he didn't expect an attack from behind. He continues thinking that he was too surprised to use any of his cards, but reassures himself that it's okay. The quest window indicates that he used the healing bean as he eats it, thinking he'll recover and fight again. Dong Yu Wang asks if he's trying to get up. Sohyun wonders if someone this heavy crushes him and plans his finishing move, thinking that even with maximum capacity, he won't be able to escape. He sits on him and attacks, delivering consecutive Dong Yu Wang punches. The scene shifts to South Gangbuk High, where Siak Kang asks about the progress at the underpass, mentioning that Dong Yu Wang and the twins should be fighting there. Another student asks if he's worried, and a third student comments that those three work well together. The first student denies being worried about Dong Yu Wang and the twins, stating that the only thing he's concerned about is something else. Fiok Kang asks what's in that bag, questioning if it contains their business operations, because if it falls into the wrong hands, they are in trouble. The other person mentions they received a message from the guys at the underpass. Siok Kang asks how it went, and he replies that they won easily. Jun Yul Bang questions if they really thought they had a chance against the three of them. Dong Yu Wang calls it ridiculous, saying they are trying to attack South Gangbuk when they are weak. He adds a reminder about the bag, stating they don't want to anger Siok, or they'll all be in trouble and hands the bag to Jun Yul Bang, who agrees and emphasizes the importance of not losing South Gangbuk's main source of income. Jun Yul Bang expresses gratitude that they were there and asserts his confidence in their capabilities. Fahyeon Kim remarks, so that's what was in the bag and thinks that he must consider them stupid. He asks why he thinks it's just the three of them going up against all of him. Dong Yu Wang asks what he means by that, and he replies that, as he said, they are pretty weak. He adds that they wouldn't dare attack South Gangbuk without a little trick up their sleeves. He moves closer to her and asks what she is going on about, questioning if she believes in miracles. The quest window notifies him about the normal card, Mirror Call, and asks what he sees. It states that when all crew members are unable to battle, it restores their stamina and increases some stats for one minute. They all begin to heal, while Sohyun Kim exclaims, Behold, the quest window confirms that his crew members' stats have increased, indicating that he used the mirror call card. Dong Yu Wang asks what they did and mentions he thought they finished them off already, so this is the miracle he's talking about, while the quest window informs him that his crew members' stamina has been restored. Sohyun Kim uses mirror call and beats them badly. Another student asks what happened there, mentioning they said they would beat Sehyun Kim and the bag is gone as well. He comments that it seems like the culprits took their business, while Siak Kang says to call Yi Ha Han and adds that the first thing they need to do is take Sehyun Kim down. 
the quest window notifies that he has obtained South Gangbok Hai's business operations. Siok Kang instructs to call Yi Ha Han, telling him that it's really war now and the first thing they need to do is take Sehyun Kim down. The quest window confirms that he has obtained South Gangbok Hai's business operations. Sehyun Kim asks if the bag contains the secret behind whatever business South Gangbok Hai is running and questions if they will open it. Haru Siong suggests they should do it, and Kyuja Ya remarks that it is exciting. Sehyun Kim asks where the zipper is, and she becomes excited and repeatedly says to open it again and again. He replies okay, he's opening it. Take a chill, while Kyuja Ya expresses excitement again. She excitedly asks what it is and wonders if it's a bomb. Meanwhile, he responds that these are pain relief patches, and she asks what those are. He explains that according to the label, they're pain relief patches, and she questions if they are similar to the ones people stick on their bodies. She further asks if this is how they are making money and adds that they aren't mainly used by old people. Sehyun Kim suggests that Siak may have been seriously injured and proposes that these could be cooling patches, speculating that Siak Kang uses them to wake himself up when he's sleepy. She concludes that these patches are for Siak Kang to wake himself up. He interjects, saying to wait a minute as he figures out how they're making money with these patches. He accuses Siak Kang of forcing old people on tour buses to buy these patches and threatening them that they won't be allowed to get off the bus unless they purchase some. He remarks that he should have known as Siak Kang does have a shifty look about him, and Kujaya agrees, saying that it's terrible. Kujaya adds that these patches contain fentanyl, a drug used for pain relief, as he reads the description of the patches. He questions if it is an opioid, and Kujaya confirms, stating that it's incredibly dangerous when misused and emphasizes that it's a drug that should not be abused by any means. He observes that it looks like Siak Kang procured the fentanyl from a doctor, and the secretary sold them to students to make money. He adds that he didn't know these patches were still in circulation and mentions that he heard regulations around this substance had become much stronger recently. She asks how he knows all that, and he replies that his mom knows a lot about this stuff for some strange reason. Sehyun Kim also reads it and condemns Siak Kang, saying that this is the unethical behavior he's been up to, and no wonder he had such a shifty look about him. The quest window indicates that he has identified South Gangbok's business operations and confirms the completion of the level up quest, and he thinks, well, at least he's not bullying the elderly. The quest window further notifies him about level up cards, including greater level up card strength, greater level up card speed, greater level up card endurance, and a greater random attack card level up. The scene shifts to Bobasum Internet Cafe at East Gangbok High where Yi Ha Han, the top dog of East Gangbok High, acknowledges the presence of Siak Kang and asks why he called him and what this could be about. Fiat Kang remarks that from Yi Ha Han's tone, he takes it that Yi Ha has heard. Yi Ha Han asks what he's heard about and mentions that he's not sure what he is talking about, questioning if it could be that Su Hyun Kim has stolen the goods. He responds that this saves him an explanation, and he states that they will strike Su Hyun Kim from the south while he strikes from the east. Yi Ha Han asks if Siak Kang is giving him an order and inquires if he is serious right now. He questions if he doesn't realize the situation he's in, emphasizing that he's the one who's had his supply stolen. Siak Kang responds by saying it sounds like there's something Yi Ha Han wants from him and asks who it is. Yi Ha Han replies that in exchange for East Gangbuk attacking Su Hyun Kim for him, he will give them some of South Gangbuk's territory. Fiok Kang asks what he means by that, and he replies that he doesn't want to pretend that he doesn't understand what he said. He says they should form an alliance since it seems like West Gangbok is too much for him to handle alone. He suggests handing over his territory in the southeast, and he'll take care of Sehyun Kim for him. He agrees, saying okay, fine. Siok Kang asks if that's really fine and comments that he must be really angry. He responds by saying that if he messes this up, he's going to kill him. He thinks about how West and South Gangbok will clash. Siak Kang then asks when East Gangbok will make its move and suggests coordinating to attack West Gangbok simultaneously. He asks if he doesn't know how he operates and mentions that he's starting right now. He thinks that things are working out rather well. Sehyun Kim comments on what a long day it has been and expresses gratitude for having the mirror call card as they would have been defeated by South Gangbok otherwise. He remarks that it's unfortunate he won't be able to use this card again for a whole month. 
As he walks towards his home, he reflects on South Gangbuk's strength and ponders what to do about their business operations. He considers using it against Siak Kang as leverage. Looking at his quest window, he wonders who he should level up this time. He contemplates whether he should use all the cards on himself, reasoning that since he's technically part of the crew, it should work. He notes that he already has a lot of strong cards in his arsenal, and concludes that in a game, the most effective strategy is to level up everyone in his party evenly. He contemplates whether he should allocate all the cards to the newest member of their crew, thinking that leveling up in strength and endurance would significantly enhance Haru Xiang's abilities. He considers that with an attack card, Haru Xiang might become practically unstoppable. Wondering about the next attack card, he recalls the last one, Sistema, which greatly empowered Kuja Ya. He marvels at Kuja Ya's improved appearance and wonders if he should give him all the cards again. This dilemma weighs on his mind until he receives a call, and someone urgently informs him about an emergency, shouting Sohyeon Kim's name. He questions why there's always an emergency, and is informed that East Gangbuk is attacking them, prompting him to ask why Yi Ha Han is attacking them all of a sudden. The other person responds that he's not entirely sure, but it seems like Yi Ha Han made a deal with Siak Kang from South Gangbok High. He explains that they can't defeat the advance party that has been deployed, consisting of a group of individuals who have previously attacked them and have now become even stronger. So Hyun Kim assures them he'll arrive as quickly as possible and asks who is currently facing them off. He rushes to offer his assistance. Additionally, he mentions that one person has already arrived, Hyun Dong Lee, who holds the fourth rank in West Gangbuk High. Hyun Dong Lee expresses his disdain for surprise attacks and contemplates their next move, noting that Jin Su Jang from Siajin High, Min Chen Oh from Dajin High, and Man Yi Wu from Jogang Tech have already been defeated. He acknowledges the effort it took to unite them with West Gangbuk and believes there's only one option left to protect their territory at any cost. Dixiong H. Wang, ranked 14th in East Gangbok High, punches him and asks what he is doing, mentioning that he knows just how weak he is. He continues, stating that he's even weaker than those guys and beats him severely. He mentions Hyun Dong Li, ranked 4th in West Gangbok High, and thinks about their strength, but then corrects himself, saying that's not it. Dixiong H. Wang expresses his disdain, saying he should be ashamed of himself and thinks he's weak. He then puts his foot on his face and questions why he's showing such weakness when he's ranked fourth and weaker than the recently defeated opponents. He acknowledges Dixiong H. Wang's point, asking if he's not embarrassed to show his face around West Gangbok High, labeling him as someone who gained a high rank by merely sucking up to Sohyun Kim. He acknowledges his own weakness even though he claims to serve Sohyun Kim. In the end, he realizes he's nothing but a burden to him. Dixiong H. Wang comments that he's not a good fighter and not particularly smart either, questioning how someone like him is ranked fourth. He compares himself to Qiu Ya or El Diablo, ranked second, Hajun Gu, ranked third, and even Haru Xiang, who just joined them and is ranked fifth. They all contribute effectively while he feels incompetent. Jin Park intervenes, telling Dixiong H. Wang that's enough, and asks him to grab his phone so they can call Sohyeon Kim. Hyun Dong Lee silently thinks he's just a piece of garbage. Jin Park adds that he should be aware of what's happening on his turf, a sentiment with which Dixiong H. Wang agrees. Hyun Dong Lee, frustrated, tightens his grip on his hand, expressing his belief that he's just a burden to everyone. Jin Park asks if he is speaking to the top dog of West Gangbok High, while Hyun Dong Lee lies down on the floor, feeling it's pathetic and completely useless. Sehyung asks who he is and why he has Hyundong's phone while he runs so fast. Jin Park says he's slow on the uptake and asks why he thinks they have his phone. He clarifies that they picked up because his buddy Hyundong is down for the count. If he's curious he can come by later and see what happened here, but from now on this area belongs to East Gangbuk. Jin Park reminds him that they're the ones who started this war, and they'll be taking this person's leg as a little trophy before disconnecting the call. So Hyun Kim asks if he hung up on him, expresses anger, and thinks he'll be there soon. The quest window notifies him that his crew member, Hyun Dong Lee, is filled with conviction and his potential is skyrocketing. He wonders what this notification means. The quest window further notifies that Hyun Dong Lee's potential has reached its peak and congratulates him, saying his potential has awakened. He ponders what's exactly going on over there. 
The quest window tells him that as a special reward for the awakening of Hyondong Li's potential, Jin Park orders Di Xiang H. Wang to finish him off. He confirms that, and the quest window notifies that Hyondong Li's stamina has been restored as a reward for the awakening of his potential. Di Xiang H. Wang runs to punch him and asks why he picked up a stick. The quest window notifies that he has received a Hyondong Li exclusive attack card and that he has claimed it. He checks the details of the attack card, which states that the user gains the ability to handle all tools with ease and increases the user's strength, the degree of which depends on the tool being used. The quest window notifies him again that he used the tooling skill with a piece of wood while he attacked Di Xiong H. Wang. Di Xiong H. Wang asks if that hurt and if he's feeling pain from just being hit by a piece of wood, wondering how this is happening. He says he got back up and expresses determination, mentioning that he may be weak and not have a lot going for himself, but he will become strong. He acknowledges that he's nowhere near the level of the rest of his crew, but he will become stronger and catch up to them. He admits that even so, he knows he won't be able to become the strongest. Regarding Hyundong Lee, he doesn't even think he'll be able to become extraordinarily strong or anything like that. He just doesn't want to be a burden to Sahyun Kim. He throws his jacket away and declares that he's Hyundong Eyebrows Lee while putting his fingers to his forehead. Jin Park asks if he's done monologuing and questions what that was, a one-man show, and wonders if he thinks he can beat them all by himself. Doyok Kang calls him a cringy rascal. Hyun Gu, who is ranked third at West Gangbok High, arrives there and inquires about what cringy is. He mentions that he didn't think so and admires Hyundong Lee, finding him impressive. They both look at him and ask why he is there. He explains that he rushed over and forgot to bring a lighter. He holds a cigarette to his lips and asks them to light it. They question why they should light his cigarette. He clarifies that he didn't mean them, but rather instructs them to tell Yi Ha Han to come and light his cigarette. Di Xiang H. Wang tells Hyundong Li that, as he mentioned earlier, that piece of wood won't suffice to bring him down. He asks if he doesn't know who he is, proceeds to insult him, and declares himself as Di Xiong H. Wang, the tank, before rushing to attack him. He mentions that while he might have caught Hyundong Li off guard initially with that small log, he just needs to avoid headshots and punches him. He asserts that Hyundong Li is far below his level and sarcastically remarks that perhaps Hyundong Li thought he was accomplishing something with that feeble piece of wood, but it won't be enough to defeat him. So Hyun Kim expresses frustration, wondering why there isn't a bike or something similar on the street for him to use while running so fast. He realizes he needs to get there quickly and believes that while Hyundong Li's potential may have been awakened, it hasn't made much difference due to his inherently low base potential. Meanwhile, he thinks that those stats won't be nearly enough to beat Di Xiong H. Wang and wonders what's going on. The quest window notifies him that a change has occurred to one of his crew members, and he wonders what's happening, as Hyundong's stats have suddenly increased. The quest window informs him that he has selected a weapon, resulting in a change in his stats according to the newly equipped weapon. He grabs something from the ground and wonders what the hell is happening over there. Hyundong Li says okay let's play, and the quest window notifies that Hyundong Li used the tooling skill with an exhaust pipe as he attacks Di Xiong H. Wang. Di Xiong H. Wang comments that using a weapon is fighting dirty, and he already knows that. He just hates the feeling of falling behind everybody else, so he lies down on him when getting tired. He thinks he doesn't care, he'll fight dirty if he has to. He says there are still two of them left, and he should help Ha Jun Gu, but he doesn't have the strength to do so and thinks he should hold on. Jin Park remarks, well, this is fun, and wonders why he was even worried. He removes his shirt and gets ready for the fight. Ha Jin Gu defeats Do Yok Kang, grabs his hair, and warns him that it's about to get a lot less fun for him. He emphasizes that this is Ga Jun Gu they're talking about here. Jen Park rushes to attack him, landing a punch and commenting that Ha Jun Gu must have been disappointed the last time they faced off, as he passed out after a single surprise hit from him. However, it'll be different this time around. He declares that he'll show him just how much he has changed since then, grabs his collar, and states that he's Jin Park. He proceeds to beat him and demands to know how dare he ambush him like that while also asking how it feels. He asserts that he's much stronger now and abuses him. Ha Jun Gu responds that he doesn't see it, he hasn't changed a bit, and then grabs his face. Jen Park wonders what the hell is going on with this rascal. 
In response, Jin Park asks what's different and punches him, breaking his ribs and questions what has changed. Jin Park feels his body breaking as he responds that he's exactly the same, realizing that this is how it ends. Yi Ha Han arrives and kicks him away. Ha Jun Gu exclaims to Yi Ha Han, finally, and Yi Ha Han replies of course, holding his own he sees, just as he expected. He adds that Jin Park may be as weak as him, but he's still his friend. Yi Ha Han questions what gives him the right to beat him up so badly. Ha Jun Gu remarks, that's quite the entourage he has got. And he replies of course, they are here to crush him, after all, and says Sajon Kim isn't here yet. He refuses and says, well then, this will be over fast. Yi Ha Han mentions, it's the first time he's meeting the action team, and says he recently trained up these boys. Ha Jun Gu calls him and says to shut his trap and come light his cigarette. Yi Ha Han comments that he's pretty cocky for someone who's about to get his ass handed to him and asks his team what they are waiting for. He adds that they won't get his cigarette lit by just standing there. Hyun Dong Lee tells Ha Jun Gu to get him while he gets up and says they'll prove to be quite a hassle. Ha Jun Gu runs to punch Jong Ti Choi and then runs to punch Yong Siap Jang. He remarks that he sees he created this team with a specific purpose in mind. He also runs to punch Bayam Su Oh and declares their goal to defeat the top dog of each high school. Bayam Su Oh asks what he means by defeating the top dog, and Ha Jun Gu replies that they are nowhere near good enough. Yi Ha Han comments that it's more like Bayam Su Oh is freakishly strong and asks if he knows how hard it is to fight even opponents of their caliber. He warns Bayam Su Oh that he might be running his mouth now, but they will prove their strength, and asks how long he can last against those three. So Hyun Kim continued talking on the call while Hyun Dong Lee informed them that Yi Ha Han was here and had brought the newly founded action team with him. He mentions that Ha Jun Gu has also arrived and is fighting them, but the members of this action team appear to be quite strong. He asks what Bayam Su Oh means by that action team, questioning what it is and stating that it's the stupidest name he has ever heard. He wonders if they are superheroes. He then says that anyway, he'll be there soon, so they should do what they can and cheer him on at least. Hyun Dong Lee responds that he got it and tells Ha Jun Gu to go. He mentions that he can do this. So Hyun Kim intervenes, telling him not to go to him, but to go over to Ha Jun Gu and cheer him on. He thinks that he has run so much, but he still has a long way to go, and at this rate, the fight will be over before he even gets there. Thankfully Ha Jun Gu is there and fighting the East Gangbuk crew but it seems like their new action team is no slouch. He wonders if there is really nothing he can do and stops for a while, thinking that there is something he can do. Yi Ha Han remarks, that's pretty impressive, Ha Jun Gu, but he's pleased with what his action team has been able to accomplish. He expresses surprise that they've managed to tire out the great Ha Jun Gu of West Gangbak Hai. Yi Ha Han mentions that he never expected them to beat Ha Jun Gu. As long as they exhaust him, they've done their job. He questions why he doesn't just join East Gangbok High and offers to meet whatever terms he sets. Yi Ha Han suggests growing the action team together, mentioning that one day, they might even be able to take out North Gangbok. Ha Jun Gu calls to him and puts a cigarette on his lips, requesting a light. Yang Siap Jang responds, well, start again, and rushes to attack him. Yi Ha Han instructs the action team to keep fighting until Ha Jun Gu passes out, noting that if they can wear Ha Jun Gu out, they've basically won this fight. Yang Siup Jang agrees and says he understands, while So Hyun Kim looks at the quest window and says he has got it, mentioning a way to help Ha Jun Gu from all the way over here. He thinks to himself that this is it, the level up cards he recently acquired, and decides to use all of these cards while examining them. The quest window notifies that all level-up cards will be applied to Hajun Gu. Yang Siup asks Hajun Gu why he is suddenly doing that, wondering what this attack card will be. They both start fighting again, and the quest window notifies them that Hajun Gu used the Kisi fighting method. Yi Ha Han thinks to himself that Hajun Gu is using the Kisi fighting method, which was created by a member of the Spanish Special Forces who studied a wide variety of different martial arts. He considers the Kisi fighting method as a close-quarters combat technique created for street fighting and real-life situations. It's a fighting method where the body doesn't rely on weapons. Instead, the entire body becomes a weapon in and of itself. He reflects that the human body is the original weapon. Ha Jun Gu states that he wants his action team to beat Gangbuk's top dogs, even though they can't even beat him. He apologizes but mentions that Su Hyun Kim is stronger than he is. 
Sahyun Kim looks at the quest window and asks what is going on here. He thinks it's strange regarding the level up cards he recently acquired. He is certain that he used them all on Hajin Gu, so why haven't his stats increased that much? He ponders whether it can't be that the cards didn't work and considers whether it's because most of Hajin Gu's stats were already at S rank. He wonders if Hajin Gu does need more cards to level up to an S rank. He concludes that this does make sense. He says whatever and states that he doesn't have time for this. He mentions that he needs to get over there as quickly as possible to help Hajun Gu out, and he starts running again. He wonders if there's a card that grants him the ability to teleport and declares, just wait, Yi Ha Han and Hajun Gu, just hold on a little longer. Meanwhile, Hajun Gu attacks Yang Siup Jang and mentions that tank top Sohyeon Kim is on his way. Jong Ti Choi also runs to attack Hajun Gu and abuses him, but Hajun Gu counter-attacks and thinks it's strange if he knows a technique like this. He reflects that it feels as though he has always known it, with the movements feeling natural, as if he has been boxing for years. He believes he can defeat Jong Ti Choi with these unconventional moves. Ha Jun Gu punches Jong Ti Choi's face, thinking that it doesn't matter as long as he can win, and also kicks him. He warns Jong Ti Choi that he messed with the wrong guy and runs to hit him again. Yi Ha Han gets up and joins the attack, expressing satisfaction as he punches Jong Ti Choi's head and mentions his love for a good kick. He questions why moves like that aren't allowed in tournaments. He remarks, well, that's why he got kicked out in the first place and mentions that Jong Ti Choi must be feeling pretty off right about now. He adds that he heard a hit to the temple, which makes one see double. Ha Jun Gu thinks that his guard is down and is surprised that Jong Ti Choi aimed for his temple. He believes it will take him a while to recover from that hit, but he's somehow still standing, noting that his endurance has improved quite a bit. Yi Ha Han comments that the Kisi fighting method actually comes in handy in a real fight, but it won't be very effective against him. He thinks to himself that he's feeling so dizzy that it's dangerous to be at a distance, so he runs to kick Jong Ti Choi and asks if it's hyper close quarters combat. He believes that if he doesn't get close to Jong Ti Choi, he'll lose. Unfortunately for Jong Ti Choi, Yi Ha Han's legs are pretty long, allowing him to kick him away. He remarks that Hajun fighting isn't just about strength and endurance, it's also about balance. He mentions that no matter how fiercely a bull charges, it can't win against a matador. He then says, well, let's finish this. He tries to kick Jong Ti Choi again, but Sohyun Kim grabs his leg and throws him to the ground, then punches him. Sohyun Kim abuses Jong Ti Choi and remarks that he can see Jong Ti Choi is getting desperate, but punching him in the chin like that was a questionable move. He asks if Jong Ti Choi is too embarrassed to admit defeat before getting in one good hit. Ha Jun Gu admits that he lost, to which Jong Ti Choi asks what he said. Ha Jun Gu responds that there are no excuses, he lost today but won't lose next time. He states that he has done as much as he could, so he'll leave the rest to Sohyun Kim. He then removes his shirt and gets ready for the fight. Yi Ha Han remarks, well, look who they have here, and mentions that he thought he dealt with him last time. He believes he can beat him this time around, especially with tank top Sohyun Kim. He thinks that Yi Ha Han definitely took a lot of damage from that last punch. With all the cards at his disposal, he has a decent chance of winning. He states that it'll be different this time while crossing his shirt straps and thinking that he's going to win. Yi Ha Han responds that it definitely will be and asks what this is about. Some punks arrive there, apologizing to Yi Ha Han for being late. He holds a cigarette to his lips and mentions that as long as he's here, they are all confirmed. Sahyun Kim wonders what's going on as the main force of the East Gangbok has arrived. He replies that they'll take it from here and mentions what Yi Ha Han expected. This is war. He says he thinks he'd let him fight him one on one, believing he'd be able to unite all of Gangbok by just picking fights left and right, with no strategy to speak of. He then abuses him. Hyun Dong Lee calls Sohyun Kim and mentions that he thinks they are in serious trouble. Yi Ha Han adds that he just heard Siak King and his men are on their way in retaliation for their last battle. Sohyun Kim asks what he means by that. Yi Ha Han explains that it sounds like Siak is also making his move right on schedule. He notes that this is what a war between crews looks like, and he doesn't know when an enemy will strike from behind or how that same enemy can turn around and become his ally. He tells Sahyun Kim of West Gangbok High that he has no idea what he has gotten himself mixed up in. 
He then poses a question, asking why Sohyun Kim is being kind enough to explain all of this to him. He explains that it's because today, they're going to wipe West Gangbok high off the map. They plan to permanently disable one of Sohyun Kim's arms or legs so that he'll never even dare to think about starting up a crew again. Sohyun Kim interjects, saying, wait a minute, let's make a deal. He asks what kind of deal Sohyun Kim is proposing. Sohyun Kim responds by suggesting that they let them go. He retorts, questioning why he should do what Sohyun Kim wants. Sohyun Kim offers him a bag, saying that in exchange, he'll give him something. The bag holds the key to South Gangbuk High's business operation. If he makes good use of it, he'll be able to do some serious damage to South Gangbuk. Sohyun Kim says, take this and let them go. He adds that he can crush them anytime, as he doesn't know when an enemy will strike him from behind, and that the same enemy can turn around and become his ally. Those were his words. He calls Sohyun Kim and asks if he doesn't realize that they can always just take that bag by force. Sohyun Kim responds by saying, then take it, but there'll be nothing but ashes left, while he lights up his lighter. He abuses Sohyun Kim, saying, not bad, so he's not a complete idiot, and orders him to drop the bag and get out of there. On the other side, Seok Kang walks with some friends, and one of them informs him that there's an incoming call from Yi Ha Han. Seok Kang instructs to answer it, and he receives the call, saying that he'll put him on speaker. Yi Ha Han informs Seok Kang that he has changed his mind about attacking Sohyun Kim. He acknowledges that in exchange for letting Sohyun Kim go, he handed over that little bag. He further comments that this is what he has been selling and asks if they didn't think he was this hardcore. He adds that he's impressed and believes they've got a lot to talk about. He then calls Yi Ha Han, asking where the hell he is. The scene shifts to West Gang Bakai, where Sohyun Kim apologizes to everyone. He admits that he didn't think he'd get hurt this badly and acknowledges that what Yi Ha Han said is true. He thinks they severely underestimated how tough uniting Gangbuk would be. Kyuja Ya reassures him, saying it's fine, as everyone is safe and sound, and they didn't lose any territory either. She adds that they just need to learn from this experience and move forward. She emphasizes that what's really important is what they do from now on. She mentions that so far, they've simply been fighting their foes blindly, but now they need a strategist on their side. Haru Siong interjects, saying that none of them are good at strategy and that they're all stupid. So Hyun Kim agrees, saying she is right, and he believes Hyun Dong Lee is the smartest out of all of them, but his strength lies in internal affairs, not military strategy. Hyun Dong Lee says he doesn't know of a strategist and mentions that he is basically the Sun Tzu of their time. Not only is he a brilliant strategist, but he is also skilled at handling internal affairs. He replies that they have someone like that around. Hyun Dong Lee confirms this and adds that a crew named God Dog once ruled all of Gangbuk. The strategist he's referring to is the younger brother of Jin Jang, who was God Dog's second in command. Many crews tried to recruit him, but they all failed since he's a bit of a lone wolf. He says that although it's a slight exaggeration, this is what they say about him in Gangbuk. The quest window announces that a level-up quest has been created and asks who's being recruited as a crew member. So Hyun Kim thinks that with him at his side, the world will be at his feet. He also thinks about the superior cards and realizes he needs to get those. He looks at the quest window, which informs him about the reward of two superior level-up cards for strength and speed. So Hyun suggests that they should recruit him right away. He asks Sun Tzu where he lives and how he came. Hyun Dong Lee says he knows where he lives, but recruiting him won't be easy. Both South and East Gangbuk tried to recruit him and failed. He asks what he means by that and says they've already approached this guy. Hyun Dong Lee adds that it was quite a while ago, but yes, and his reason for refusing their offers was simple. He did not want to use his intellect for war. He says they can go see him, but he'll just tell them the same thing, and it'll be impossible for them to recruit him. Kyuja Ya asks if he is suggesting they simply give up and says nothing is impossible for West Gangbuk. Haru Siong says that's right, he managed to recruit him after all. Meanwhile, Hyun Dong Lee acknowledges the determination expected from West Gangbuk's mightiest. Then he supposes there's no other option but to let them go see Jihyuk Jang, the Sun Tzu of Gangbuk. The quest window notifies him that they are starting the level up quest as they all walk to meet him. Ji Hyuk Jang stands there outside and tells them to please go home. Master Ji Hyuk Jang is in the middle of a promotion match and will need a nap afterward, so he won't be able to see them today. 
Kuja Ya asks what he said and how he dares turn away from tank top Sehyun Kim and abuse him. Sehyun Kim says it's okay and introduces himself as tank top Sehyun Kim. He mentions that a promotion match seems like bad timing and asks them to please let his master know he came by to see him. Kuju Ya tries to say something, but he responds with, he knows what they say and asks what they say. He adds that the third time's the charm, so they'll have to try again. Hyun Dong Lee also calls him. So Hyun Kim says they shouldn't give up that easily, they'll come back another time. He mentions that persistence will pay off in the end. Besides, there will be no future for West Gangbuk without a brilliant strategist among their ranks. Hyun Dong Lee interrupts and says, hold on, actually, the Sun Tzu of Gangbuk is that guy right there. So Hyun Kim asks if he is serious right now. Ji Hyuk Jang calls him tank top Suhyun Kim and says he has already lost to him in a battle of wits. He thinks, what the hell, that's him, and realizes he has made a huge mistake. He peeks at him and thinks he's so weak that he'd probably even lose to an ant. Ji Hyuk Jang opens the door and tells them to go home. He states that he will not change his mind and mentions that he doesn't wish to become involved in petty conflicts between Gangbuk's factions. He further adds that such reckless fighting should be a relic of the past. Haru Seong arrives and tries to tie her hair. She mentions that her hair is untied while Ji Hyuk Jang says, or perhaps this is fate. He enters his house and tells them to come in as well. He addresses tank top Sohyun Kim, saying he'll hear him out and invites them to come in, including the lady of course. Sohyun Kim thinks that the rascal just seems like a pervy moron and agrees to enter. Ji Hyuk Jang continues, saying that just as he was about to be decimated by Yi Ha Han and his people, he handed over the bag containing South Gangbuk's fentanyl supply and barely managed to escape with his life. Fa Hyun Kim acknowledges that it's true, he didn't think the consequences of fighting without a strategy would be so dire. He asks how the situation will be resolved, and Ji Hyuk Jang replies that it will resolve itself. Sa Hyun Kim presses further, asking how exactly it will resolve. Ji Hyuk Jang explains that Siok Kang values his business venture almost as much as his own life and that he'll strike East Gangbuk to retrieve the fentanyl. So Hyun Kim mentions that he believes he's a year older than him and asks not to be called a child, as it's starting to annoy him. However, he acknowledges that their war won't last long, especially with Yi Ga Han in possession of the fentanyl, putting Siok Kang at a disadvantage. Ji Hyuk Jang responds with a bit of an overcorrection, but concludes that Siak Kang will ultimately ask Yi Ha Han for a truce and offer either money or territory in exchange for the fentanyl. He explains that East and South Gangbuk will join forces to strike West Gangbuk again, aiming to expand their territory and influence. Hyun Dong Lee asks Master Ji Hyuk Jang what they should do in response. Ji Hyuk Jang reiterates that, as he mentioned before, East and South Gangbuk will invade and if they attack simultaneously, West Gangbok will be in trouble. He points out that they don't even have enough people in West Gangbok to attempt to stop them. Ji Hyuk Jang chuckles and acknowledges the truth in that statement, but suggests there is a solution to both stopping their attacks and expanding their sphere of influence. So Hyun Kim interjects, expressing annoyance at being called a child again. Ji Hyuk Jang clarifies that all they need to do is bring in help from the outside. So Hyun Kim questions who exactly is from the outside, and Hyun Dong Lee dismisses the idea as ridiculous, noting that they are surrounded by enemies on all sides. He mentions that there's North Gangbuk High and suggests asking a group in North Gangbuk for help. He proposes that they assist him in stopping Yi Ha Han from invading his territory. Hyun Dong Lee questions whether North Gangbuk would truly help them and suggests that's why they need to make them a promise. Haru Seong inquires about the nature of that promise, and he explains that they will split any additional territory gained from their enemies with North Gangbuk. Jin Yok Jang points out that while North Gangbuk isn't overly concerned with affairs south of their territory, they wouldn't mind expanding their own territory. He concludes that there's no way they'd refuse an offer like this. Sohyun Kim privately thinks he's just trying to deceive them, but his argument is strangely convincing. So Hyun Kim then asked about their strategy for moving forward. Jin Yuk Jang uncovers the map and explains that this is how West Gangbok will survive. He suggests stationing Hajun Gu and North Gangbok's allied forces at the east-west border so that even Yi Ha Han won't be able to attack them easily. Additionally, he mentions that even if an attack occurs, they won't fall easily. He outlines that the remaining forces will strike Siok Kang of South Gangbok with Hajun Gu 
blocking any potential attacks from both North and East Gangbuk. This setup will allow them to focus on fighting Siok Kang without worrying about other fronts. Jinyok Jang clarifies that he's not implying that South Gangbuk is weak, but he asserts that this is the only viable strategy for West Gangbuk's survival. He further explains that taking over South Gangbuk will set the stage for future actions, enabling West Gangbuk to truly engage in warfare against East and North Gangbuk after securing South Gangbuk. Sehyun Kim agrees, stating that Gangbuk will advance with that plan. He privately thinks that he has never seen someone this ugly before. Ji Hyuk Jang reflects on the era of Three Kingdoms. Sehyun Kim grabs his hand and pleads with him to join their crew. Ji Hyuk Jang reiterates that he has no interest in war, no matter how much they beg. Haru Seong adjusts his shirt and asks if the place doesn't have air conditioning, expressing anticipation about working with him. The quest window notifies that Ji Hyuk Jang has joined their crew, marking the quest as complete. Someone arrives and asks what's going on, questioning if he has friends over, while both Sehyun Kim and Ji Hyuk Jang look at him. The newcomer calls him bro, leading Suhi and Kim to ask who that is, to which Ji Hyuk Jang responds that he's his older brother. He explains that they call him Jin Hyuk Jang, the analyzer, and at one point, he held the position of God Dog's second in command. Suhyun Kim asks if they can also recruit his brother, to which he responds, don't bother trying to recruit him, he already belongs to an organization called the Workers. So Hyun Kim privately thinks that upon looking at him, his brother is a lot stronger. The scene transitions to the combat zone between West Gangbok High and East Gangbok High, where Ha Jin Gu is seated. Jiang Chen Li, ranked 50th in North Gangbok High, calls out to him, mentioning that he looks like it, and laughs. He adds that he heard Ha Jin Gu get defeated by Yi Ha Han and asks why he's glaring at them. Jiang Chen Li further explains that they've heard the story and want Ha Jin Gu to help stop East Gangbok from invading, while Sehyun Kim and others strike South Gangbok, noting that they've managed to find themselves a strategist. He emphasizes that West Gangbok asked them for help, indicating they are above him, so he should show them some respect. Ha Jun Gu stands up and punches him, asserting that he hopes that made things clear and commands him to be a good dog and do as he says. Gangsen Choi, ranked 28th in North Gangbok High, intervenes, telling them to stop and not tire themselves out unnecessarily. He advises them to conserve their energy for when they need to fight East Gangbok. Gangsen Choi then greets Ha Jun Gu, asking how he has been. Ha Jun Gu questions if Gangsen Choi is in charge there and requests that he inform his leader about the situation. Gangsen Choi clarifies that he is not in charge, acknowledging that Ha Jun Gu doesn't pay attention to them. Ha Jun Gu expresses uncertainty about Gangsen Choi being okay with the situation, to which Gangsen Choi confirms and mentions that he's sure it will be fine. He adds that Ha Jun Gu doesn't have anything else to do, and if things work out well for them there, he might even be able to rise through the ranks at North Gangbok. He extends his hand for a handshake and expresses his anticipation of working together, mentioning that they will stop Yi Ha Han. Ha Jun Gu reciprocates the handshake and agrees, stating that he also looks forward to working with him. He then questions whether North Gangbok will really help them. On the other side, Sehyun Kim is seated on a baby swing and informs someone on the phone that North Gangbok has agreed to work with them, just as Jin Yok Jang said they would. Ha Jun Gu confirms this, adding that moving forward, North Gangbok and he should be able to keep Yi Ha Han at bay. The person on the phone marvels at how Ji Hyun Jang managed to negotiate that and remarks that having a strategist truly makes a difference, noting that it was a good decision to recruit him. Ha Jun Gu glances at his phone and dismissively says whatever indicates that he's ending the call. He shouts, asking him to wait, and expresses gratitude for protecting West Gangbok High back then. He acknowledges that if it weren't for him, they all would have been in serious trouble. He adds that he should have told him this right away, apologizing for not doing so earlier due to the fast-paced events back then. Ha Jun Gu responds by telling him not to flatter himself, stating that he simply doesn't like Yi Ha Han anymore. So Hyun Kim agrees, apologizing for assuming otherwise. Ha Jun Gu then says he's hanging up. Meanwhile, So Hyun Kim lies down on a bench, contemplating his dilemma. He realizes that he's the weakest among all the fighters in his crew. He acknowledges that he practically gave all the level-up cards to his crew members, making them stronger, while he remained the weakest. He concludes that he needs to become stronger. He considers whether he should use all the superior cards he obtained from recruiting Jinyok Jang on himself. 
However, he worries about the possibility of becoming stronger and the quests subsequently becoming much harder. He reflects that most games usually operate in such a manner and decides to hold on to these cards for now. He contemplates the realization of Jin Hyok Jang's vision of the era of the Three Kingdoms, realizing that he will need to become significantly stronger. He wonders if there is another way, remembering that he used to train with the copy cloud to become stronger. However, the cloud is currently busy impersonating Haru Siang. In that case, he decides that he should at least engage in some side quests. He notices that he no longer receives quests in the area where he used to encounter thugs, speculating that it might be because he defeated all of them. He thinks that venturing into East or South Gangbok to generate quests is too dangerous, as he is too well known in both areas. He realizes that he needs to find an alternative solution to become stronger while keeping his identity secret. He thinks, wait a minute, there is a way. In North Gangbok territory, a man with yellow hair asks if he is the only one seeing something strange. Another person in a brown jacket confirms that he also sees it and wonders what it is. Someone else remarks that they know a moron, all while they notice Sohyun Kim arriving there while covering his face. He decides to go around fighting people in North Gangbok territory, reasoning that he is not nearly as well known there. He notes that North Gangbok alone is larger than the three other territories put together, which also means there will be many more quests to complete in this area. The quest window notifies him that a new main quest is available. Sanrol comments that it seems like he's asking for trouble and rushes to attack him, thinking that a main quest is like a diamond card. The quest window notifies him about exploring North Gangbok High Territory, and the reward for this is one diamond card. He employs the weaving technique as Sanhurl attempts to punch and abuse him, managing to escape from the attack. Sohyun Kim thinks that he has found the perfect place for himself, and he marvels at how he dodged that attack and asked for his name. The quest window then notifies that he used the driving technique, and he questions if they want to know his name while attempting to kick Sanhurl. He believes that he will be able to grow stronger here as he replies that his name is Bagman Kim, considering this his super level up zone. So Hyun Kim thinks that drives are just as useless as he expected. Sanhurl puts his hand to his face, calling it mean and asking what a drive is since they have just met. The quest window indicates that he used the weaving technique, prompting So Hyun Kim to evade the attack and then counterattack. Another person rushes to attack him, stating that he should at least say hello first. They kick him from behind and call him Bagman Kim. The person requests him to show his face and delivers another kick. Sahyun Kim wonders why these guys are so strong, and the person in the brown jacket also kicks him from behind, advising him not to show his back to the enemy. He contemplates why they are so strong, and a bald person suggests finishing the fight. Sahyun Kim ponders that this strength could be because they are in North Gangbok territory. He questions whether the guys at the poolside resort were weaker in comparison, or if North Gangbok residents are just naturally strong on average. Meanwhile, Sanhirol comments that they don't even know him, yet he hits them with a drive right from the start, and he wonders what they should do with him. He remarks that he's quite a character and questions if they are the ones who initiated the fight. He asks what their next move should be, suggesting killing him. Another person intervenes, suggesting they should just leave as they cannot kill him. He starts walking away, and his partners follow suit, mentioning that the boss instructed them to show mercy to the weak. So Hyun Kim acknowledges that it's fair enough. The quest window notifies that he has received five hits, triggering an effect. He tries to get up, expressing that given the quest's reward, he would have been disappointed if it had been too easy. The quest window then notifies that one stat will increase at random. He further explains that he was the weakest one in his crew, and that he should at least put in this much work if he's going to get stronger. The quest window notifies that his speed has increased from E to C rank and informs him that he used the healing bean. He acknowledges this, saying alright, as they all look at him. He then says, let's get serious and runs to attack. The quest window notifies him that his stamina has been restored. After a while, Kajuya calls him and he asks what's up. Kajuya comments that he seems very out of breath and asks if that is his hobby. He questions what Kojuya is talking about and inquires about what his hobby is. Kojuya responds that it just sounds suggestive, implying that if he's okay with it, they can begin. He replies that if he makes a sound, he's going to kill him. The Hyun Kim explains that he's out of breath because he's training in North Gangbuk and things are going according to Jihyok Jang's plan. 
Kajuya asks why he went to North Gangbuk and what his plan is. Sohyeon Kim elaborates that Yi Ha Han demanded an outrageous amount of money from Siak Kang in exchange for returning the stash of drugs. He mentions that Siak Kang didn't want to pay Yi Ha Han of course, but he had no choice but to do so in order to retrieve his goods. Sohyeon Kim adds that Siak Kang won't take that lying down. As soon as he sees an opening, he'll attack Yi Ha Han. He notes that the relationship between East and South Gangbok High has drastically worsened, which buys them a little time. So Hyun Kim suggests that they can use that time to get stronger, so he plans to become as strong as he possibly can during that period. Ko Ju Ye acknowledges that he understands and mentions that Ji Hyuk Jang is indeed a skilled strategist, but he questions if things are really fine like this. He thinks that, for some reason, he detects something through the phone. Kajuya clarifies that he's asking if Ji Hyuk Jang can really be trusted, expressing concerns about ulterior motives. He wonders if Ji Hyuk Jang has hidden intentions. So Hyun Kim responds by saying he understands what Kajuya is worried about. He reflects on the overwhelming smell of something unpleasant. So Hyun Kim adds that Hyun Dong Lee could have been badly hurt the other day, and he thinks that was his punishment for fighting thoughtlessly. He admits that he doesn't completely trust Jin Hyuk Jang either. But even if it turns out he has ulterior motives, he has another trick up his sleeve. Kajuya acknowledges that he sees and understands. Meanwhile, Sohyun Kim thinks that the trick up his sleeve is for him to become stronger and beat them all. Meanwhile, the quest window notifies him that the quest has been updated. It informs him about exploring North Gangbok High Territory to verify the skills of North Gangbok High Territory fighters 5x5 five five, and to make the name of Bagman Kim famous with a progress goal of 0x1. The reward for completing this quest is one diamond card. He thinks nice, the quest's been updated, and remarks that now he needs to make the name of Bagman Kim famous. He decides that for the time being, he'll have to come straight to North Gangbok every day after school. As he pulls the bag over his mouth again, he comments that he guesses he'll need to keep this bag on for a while longer. He contemplates giving it his all but acknowledges that he's done for tonight, deciding to go home. He resolves to do whatever it takes to get stronger. The scene shifts to North Gangbok High, where byung Su is playing music. Another person arrives there and tells him to turn off the music immediately. He asks why he wants this and mentions that everyone is having fun. The other person points out that something's not right, indicating an unknown individual ranked 20th in North Gangbuk High sitting and reading a book. Chen Hak Yang asks if they've turned off the music and questions if this is an urgent matter. A person approaches him, bows in front of him, and apologizes, confirming that it is indeed urgent. They explain that Sandhul's boys were attacked by a mysterious individual. Chen Hak Yang inquires about the meaning of a mysterious individual, and the person explains that someone with a bag on his head launched a surprise attack on San Hurl's boys. Chen Hak Yang responds by saying they should investigate further and asks if he is referring to the group that has taken over the abandoned factory. He remarks, exactly sir, expressing surprise that he'd remember all of his countless subordinates, acknowledging why everyone respects him so much. Chen Hak Yang replies that there's no need for such flattery and asks what he knows about the mysterious attacker. The person replies that apparently his name is Bagman Kim. Chen Hak Yang comments that he's a bagman, or in other words, a thug who runs errands for other criminals and finds it interesting how such unexpected events occur in a time of peace. He further quotes Nietzsche, saying that one must never forget to repay a kindness or exact revenge. The scene shifts to West Gangbok High where Karyan Beek sits in Sohyeon Kim's lap and uses a pencil to scratch his eyebrows, calling him out. He looks at her, and she asks him to be honest, questioning if he shaved off his eyebrows again just because he said at the poolside resort that he'd draw them for him. He asks if she seriously thinks he would have done something that stupid. She questions what the razor marks are, and he replies that he thinks a cat scratched him. She asks if he's kidding her and abuses him. She says whatever, she's not going to draw them on for him anymore since his eyebrows were growing back, and he's the one who shaved them off again. He reminds her that she promised to draw them on for him, saying she said she'd draw on his eyebrows for the rest of their lives. Da Hyun looks at them and remarks that it sounds like Karen Beek proposed to Sohyun Kim. He asks when he said that and says everyone's interpreting it the wrong way, but she promised, and she still promised. He shouts that he doesn't care if people are interpreting it the wrong way and asks if he is the kind of person who doesn't keep their promises. She slaps him and abuses him, 
asking how long he expects her to keep drawing them on for him. She walks out and he shouts again that he promised. The quest window notifies that the quest has been updated to explore North Gangbok High Territory with a reward of one diamond card. So Hyun Kim remarks, wow so the name of Bagman Kim's already gotten famous and says he doesn't know the full story but whatever as long as it's done. He thinks it's sweet and then he looks at the quest window for the next quest which is about So Ha Young. He asks what the heck. This quest is about exploring North Gangbok. He questions what So Ha Young has to do with it and wonders if it's like an easy filler quest or something. He asks if this is really an easy quest and thinks it would actually be easier to just fight someone. A person looks at him and asks her friend if that's tank top Sa Hyun Kim and she asks if he is the guy who steals toilet paper from public bathrooms. He questions if this is really right and says it's not right to be friends with someone just for a quest. He adds that he feels kind of bad about it since he'd be pretending to be interested in getting to know her. Most importantly, he wonders how he can get in touch with So Ha Young. He texts her, expressing his frustration at her half-hearted replies and thinking he has no interest in her at all. Two girls approach Karen Beek and ask her if she has feelings for Se Hyun Kim. She shouts, no way and asks why they are bringing him up. One of them replied that they had heard a rumor that she had proposed to him, and they were just asking because the two of them always seem to have so much fun together. She says that's complete nonsense as she takes a sip of her drink. She adds that he's got a decent sense of humor, that's all, and it's hilarious how naive he is. She also mentions that it's fun beating him in fights, so he's totally in the friend zone. On the other side, So Ha Young looks at So Hyun Kim and recognizes him. He asks how she got here so quickly and she says she took a cab. He asks why she took a cab and says she called him over so he wants to come as soon as possible. Karen Beek looks at them, abuses her and calls her, asking if she can hear her. He remarks wow she is just like Hyun Dong Lee and says anyway long time no see. So Ha Young says she guesses he can't believe there's a girl willing to give him the time of day. He thinks he feels like he has seen her somewhere before. The other girl tells Karen Beek to sit back down and says she's embarrassing them. Karen Beek complies and asks what they are talking about. She asks how much she loves So Hyun Kim and they both laugh while she replies she doesn't love him. Meanwhile, So Ha Young wonders if the two of them are dating and So Hyun Kim calls her and asks if she saw someone she knows on the second floor. She refuses and thinks this is awkward and she says don't worry about it. He agrees with her while he thinks this is the hardest quest he has ever gotten and thinks how the hell he does get to know her better. He says alright if they should go somewhere and asks if there is anywhere she wants to go while they both walk together. She says she's not really a fan of wandering around and he asks if they should go to a coffee shop then and thinks he doesn't know what she likes. On the other hand, Do Hyun looks at a couch while her mom calls her and asks if she has ever had a boyfriend but she refuses. Her mom says, well, she should date around a bit, and that way, she'll be able to tell who really is a good guy. Dahyun asks why she is suddenly bringing this up, and she replies that she guesses that makes sense. She asks what about her friends, and if they don't have boyfriends. She uses her cell phone, and says they're not interested in dating and relationships right now. Her mom says that So Ha Young hasn't dated anyone either, and she replies that she's way too obsessed with her studies. She gets up and calls her mom, and her mom asks what it is. She asks why she's asking about So Ha Young and says she's a total pervert. Her mom says she doesn't seem that way at all, and she replies she's thought about So Hyun Kim. She has known her since they were in elementary school, but after they started high school, she says she's become really curious about all that stuff. Her mom says it sounds like she will start dating pretty soon then, and she asks why that is happening. So Hyun Kim thinks carefully. Someone like So Ha Young, who is incredibly competitive and highly curious, becomes fixated on someone, and she is called by him while standing at her door. He asks if it is really okay for him to come in, saying this looks like her house. She responds, come on, he's the one who said he wanted to get to know her better, while looking at him. He thinks she will do whatever it takes to make that boy her own. So Hyun Kim comes into her house and starts watching a documentary on bears. In the documentary, they say skilled bears can catch up to a hundred pounds of salmon a day, which surprises him. He tells So Ha Young that her house is really nice, but the television programming leaves much to be desired. 
He asks her if she is going to be in there for a while and says he thinks he's kind of bored and needs to get to know her better. He calls her again and again while sitting in her room holding the door handle. He asks her if she fell asleep or something, and she replies that no, she's awake, but gets scared, thinking she's inviting a guy over to her place, and not just any guy but Sehyun Kim. He calls her again, and she responds with a yes. Meanwhile, he lies on the couch and looks out of the window. He says don't take this the wrong way, but he really needs to get to know her better. He mentions that he's not sure why she invited him to her place if she's only going to stay in her room, but if she doesn't feel comfortable coming out, he suggests she could just talk to him from there. She sits calmly and agrees, and he then asks her to tell him about her hobbies. She responds that she just likes to read, and he replies that reading is good, then asks what her favorite food is. She replies that it's tidiakbaki, and he says yeah, it's pretty good. He looks out the window again and thinks that it's still not complete. He wonders what more the system wants from him and thinks that now he knows she likes reading and tidiakbaki. They are practically best friends at this point. He notices that the quest window is still at get to know Soha Yang better, zero out of one point. He wonders what he should ask about her hopes and dreams and if they need to make friendship bracelets or something. He ponders how well he is supposed to get to know her and recalls that she has always been a quiet kid even back when they were in elementary school. She never said much, and because she was very shy, she'd always be trailing behind them. He remembers that her only friend back then was Da Hyun, and she never even struck up a conversation with him. He thinks to himself that this is going to take forever. Meanwhile, she calls him and asks if he remembers that time back when they were in elementary school. He asks what about that time, and she mentions when Da Hyun stabbed him with a pencil. He clarifies that it was not that incident and asks if she should just drop it. He yawns and refuses, saying, please don't. He's really curious now. Tell me, he really wants to know. She blushes and mentions that he walked her home once. He asks if he did that, and she confirms, saying that he did indeed walk her home. The story goes into a flashback where Da Hyun runs behind him to beat him and shouts at him to stop making fun of her. She challenges him by saying to just try her and adds that there's more where that came from. So Ha Young intervenes by grabbing her to stop her from fighting. So Hyun Kim tells her that she's done with Da Hyun Kim and adds that she's going to go to jail for hitting her brother. She argues that she's a kid and they won't send her to jail. He insists that they will and mentions that they're going to send her parents to jail instead. She retorts that her parents are his parents too, calling him stupid and explains that if they go to jail, they'll become orphans. He replies, saying that he doesn't want that, and she asks if he wants to just make up. He agrees and apologizes, to which she also says she's sorry too. Dahyun Kim looks at Soha Young and asks if she really has to go home right away. She questions if she can't stay and play at her place for a little longer, mentioning that the weird old man is always wandering around in that alley. Soha Young replies that she doesn't want to go, but she has to because her mom asked her to come home early. Dahyun Kim then asks if she wants them to walk her home. So Hyun Kim interjects, saying they don't need to walk her home and mentioning that the old man isn't scary at all. So Ha Yong explains that she heard he was in jail, to which Se Hyun Kim responds, that's scary. So Ha Yong reassures them, saying it's okay and that she'll be fine. She adds that they'll see each other tomorrow at school and walks out while Da Hyun Kim calls her, asking if she is sure she'll be fine by herself. So Ha Yang responds, saying, yeah, don't worry, and Su Hyun Kim says she's fine and tells them to let's go already. Da Hyun Kim calls him and asks if he likes So Ha Yang. He replies that she's not very fun to hang out with because she's so shy and quiet. He mentions that she never plays with them and always hangs back and watches. He says, oh please, what about him? He's big bullied in school. Da Hyun Kim disagrees, saying he's not and questions why they take his money and beat him up. Suddenly, the police arrive there, and they both look over. He asks what's going on, and she explains that it's that man again, referring to the strange man in the neighborhood. A person nearby expresses disbelief, stating that he's so worried for his kids, and hugs his daughter. So Hyun Kim says, thank goodness one of the residents heard her, otherwise that poor little girl would have been in real trouble. He then questions how many times he has done this to one of the neighborhood kids. He remarks that nothing terrible happened this time around, thankfully, but who knows what he might do next time. After a while, Soha Young talks on the phone with her mom and asks when she is coming home. 
Her mom responds by saying that she and dad got roped into a last minute meeting, so they are going to be a bit late, and she apologizes. So Hyeon asks what kind of meeting it is, but her mom explains that she said she'd come to pick her up. Her mom apologizes again, mentioning that it's a really important meeting they can't miss, and she asks if So Ha Young can walk home by herself today. So Ha Young says further that the scary man isn't around anymore, so she should be fine. So Ha Young dismisses it with a whatever. Meanwhile, So Hyun Kim arrives there on his bicycle and tells her not to make him repeat himself. He says to hop on, but she better be prepared as he's a fast rider. He adds that no matter how much she cries, he won't stop, slow down, or let her get off until they reach their destination. Meanwhile, he asks if she has decided whether she is going to hop on or not. She sits on his bicycle, and he takes her with him, expressing his thanks. The story shifts back to the present, where she sits in her room and mentions that she has forgotten all about that alley. She adds that she can't even recall whether it was long or short. She mentions that all she remembers is how fast her heart was beating the whole time and speculates that he probably won't remember. She notes that it was only for a week after all. He expresses that he wanted to spend more time with her and get to know her better, but he ended up moving to this neighborhood. He remarks that it's no wonder he doesn't remember much about it, as it was from a long time ago when they were both little kids. She concludes by saying that most of all, she didn't think he'd fall asleep while she was telling him all this, as he sleeps there in her house. She grabs her jacket and smells it, thinking it's okay if he doesn't remember. It's actually more fun that way. She comes closer to him and looks at his face. The quest window notifies her that the third point has not been gained yet, and another notification tells him to get to know Soha Yang better one by one. He gets up and goes out while yawning, commenting that it was a nice nap, and thinking it's a weird thought. He says that when he woke up, the quest was complete, and he wonders where Soha Yang ran off to as she was not at home. He also wonders why his body smells like shampoo and considers whether he stands or something and if So Ha Yong sprayed something on him while he was asleep. He reads So Ha Yong's texts and asks why she isn't reading any of his messages and if she is mad because he fell asleep on her couch. He says, well whatever, he did get to know her better, so it's all good. Now there's only one more thing left to do, and he thinks about one more task to get that diamond card. The quest window notifies him that the quest has been updated, and he wonders about the final quest. The quest window then notifies him about the fourth quest to take over bar gangbuck zero over one. He thinks about what it means to take over a bar and mentions that it's for adults only. He asks if he's supposed to fight actual gangsters or something. He comments on how kind it is of them to light the way to his doom as he looks in the direction of the road. The scene shifts to bar gangbuck, where Byungsu is playing music. His friend asks him to turn the music off, and he asks why when everyone's having fun. He replies, look, Bagnan Kim is here, while Suhyun Kim arrives there with her face covered with a bag, and they all gather around him. One of them asks, so is this him? And inquires about the guy who attacked Sanhul's boys. Another person remarks, well he has got balls coming here all alone. He asks with an air of confidence, and Suhyun Kim responds, thanks for the compliment guys, but to be honest, he didn't think there would be so many of them. He wonders if he is quite the strategist. Chin Hak Young mentions Nietzsche once said that honesty can easily disarm an opponent. He is asked if he knows what Nietzsche said, and Chin Hak Young replies, nice to meet him, Bagman Kim, and asks if he knows anything about Nietzsche. He questions who Nietzsche is and admits, well he doesn't know anything about Nietzsche or whatever, but he's going to have to take over this bar. Chin Hak Yang asks if he will take over this bar all by himself and comments that there's a thin line between courage and recklessness. He asks if he doesn't know anything about Nietzsche's philosophy, and So Hyun Kim gets ready for the fight, stating that Nietzsche never said that. He tells him to get out of here and mentions that he can forgive him for messing with San Hurl's boys, but he'd do well to steer clear of him. He says he won't be able to handle him while showing his face. So Hyun Kim recognizes him and wonders what the hell is up with his stats, thinking he's Chun Hak Yang. So Hyun Kim considers that he's nearly on Ha Jun Gu's level and mentions he's supposed to beat Ha Jun Gu, reflecting that he only managed to beat him back then because he got lucky. He thinks that he's not the only problem and that the real issue is the final quest, which is to take over this bar, and he contemplates that there are too many of them as he looks at the quest window and his fourth quest. He ponders whether that means he has to beat everyone in here and wonders if that's really necessary. 
Chin Hak Yong calls him, and he turns to look at him, considering if there's an easier way to complete the quest. Chin Hak Yong asks how he dares turn his back to his enemy and remarks on how shocking it is. The other person expresses surprise at hearing him say that and asks what about Bagman Kim shocked him the most. Meanwhile, he replies to everything. The fact that he came here alone, the fact that he was not scared of their boys at all, and most surprisingly, the fact that he got knocked out in three seconds while Sohyun Kim sat in front of him. Another person asks why he was so damn confident anyway, and another person confirms and says they didn't expect him to be such a weakling. Another person arrives there and says not to mock his bravery, mentioning that he entered a battle that he knew he would lose, for which he deserves their respect. The person says, not bad, Bagman Kim, and apologizes to Chin Hak Yong. So Hyun Kim beats them badly, and that person comments that it seems like he's learned a bit of boxing, and that his straight punches were well executed. But he was severely outnumbered and clearly doesn't have enough experience in fighting large groups like this one. Chen Hak Yong states that's why he lost in fighting results are what matter, and no one cares about the journey. It's all about the destination. He adds that now, let's see who he really is. He mentions that once they find out his real identity and why he decided to attack North Gangbuk High, he'll have no choice but to go to war against North Gangbuk. When he tries to remove his face bag, Sehyun Kim grabs his leg. The quest window notifies him that he used the maximum capacity card and says he used the to the moon card while his boys call him. So Hyun Kim puts him on his shoulder and mentions that from the beginning his plan was to take over this bar, pointing out how many of them there are. He asks if he really thought he'd bother fighting every single one of them. He states that all he needs to do is take him down to win this bar, and he throws him on the ground, affirming that his quest will be complete now. His friend becomes shocked and says there's no way, while Sohyun Kim walks away and looks at the quest window. He asks why the quest isn't completed yet, and thinks that he knocked that guy out, wondering if he's totally fine. Meanwhile, Chen Hak Yang says Nietzsche once said, it ain't over till it's over. Sohyun Kim looks behind at him and remarks that he threw him down from so high up, yet he's still fine. Another person mentioned that Chen Hak Yang used to do judo, and his friend added that just grabbing him and throwing him down wouldn't do any damage to him. He replies that it's not that he didn't take any damage. So Hyun Kim considers that Chen Hak Yang used to do judo, while Chen Hak Yang gets up and mentions that it's just that he's built tough to begin with. He acknowledges that Se Hyun Kim got him good and concedes that he has some skills. The quest window notifies him that he threw a straight punch while Sehyun Kim punches him and he blocks the punch. He responds strangely, saying he was able to lift him up earlier. Where did all that strength go? He adds he was practically Herculean, while Sehyun Kim thinks that the effects of maximum capacity have worn off. Chin Hak Yang remarks that he's pathetic now, and the quest window notifies him that he used the weaving technique. Sehyun Kim realizes he's up against a judo master. If he grabs him, it's over, so he decides he can't use his fists and will put some distance between them. Meanwhile, the quest window notifies him that he used the to the moon card, and he throws a spinning back kick while Chin Hak Yong tries to attack him, but he escapes from his attack. He thinks of aiming for his chin for a clean hit while Se Hyun Kim kicks at his face. Chin Hak Yong mentions that he didn't bother dodging that and grabs his shirt, commenting that while that move looked fancy. Chin Hak Yong throws him on the ground and adds that he didn't think it would do any damage, while another person remarks that there is Chin Hak Yong's trademark shoulder throw and suggests they can call it now. He acknowledges that Chin Hak Yong won this fight as he dusts off his hands. He mentions that it was just a simple shoulder throw and adds, don't tell him that was enough to knock him out. Fi Hyun Kim thinks, damn it, if it is over, and expresses disappointment, asking what Chin Hak Yong told him before the fight. Sehyun Kim looks at the quest window and thinks he won't be able to complete the quest, while Chen Hak Yang runs to punch him, reminding him that he said he wouldn't be able to handle him. The quest window notifies that he used the healing beam, and Sehyun Kim thinks he can't let that happen. He looks at the cards and mentions that by recruiting Ji Hyuk Jang, he received these five level up cards. Now that he's home, let's check these out again. He asks if these cards boost his stats by two whole levels, and he exclaims, wow, greater cards have nothing on superior cards. He wonders which attack skill he'll get with this superior attack card and contemplates whether he should just use them on himself right away. He thinks about what if his getting stronger causes the quests to become harder too, 
and he reflects that's how it usually works in video games. He says, yeah, this is not the right time to use them, and mentions that he'll use these on himself when he's in danger. He then kicks Chen Hak Yang. The quest window announces that all level up cards will be applied to himself, and his strength has increased by four levels. He thinks about whether it is the time to use them while looking at his friends. One of his friends asks what that is, and the other one asks if it's a taekwondo kick. Chen Hak Yang clarifies that it's not taekwondo, and then he mentions that it got Chen Hak on his knees. He wonders what kind of kick that was and asks what the hell that was, questioning what that stance is, as he has never seen it before. He asks what martial art that is, while Sehyun Kim uses his level up card, the superior random attack card, which is used on a crew member to grab them a random skill. He also uses the attack card Yetbi Aptikjon, which, when used on a crew member, grants them the ability to use Yetbi Aptikjon, a traditional Korean martial art. The quest window notifies him that he used Yetbi Aptikjon, and Sohyun Kim attacks them and beats them. Chin Hak Young thinks he has never seen a martial art like this before, and he has also suddenly gotten stronger and faster. He wonders if it is a variation of Taekwondo. He decides he'll block for now and wait for the chance to launch a counterattack. Sohyun Kim attacks him, and he thinks it's a yet be Jon, realizing that Sohyun Kim snuck through his guard and went for his nose while Sohyun Kim almost hits him again. He quotes Nietzsche, saying he never lets down his guard, and Sohyun Kim puts his foot on his head, adding that Nietzsche once said this is the finishing move. The quest window notifies that Chen Hak Yang is down, and the main quest is complete. Sohyun Kim then asks about Sistema and Kisi fighting method, saying that all that newfangled stuff is good, but they must not forget their roots. The quest window notifies him that he has received a diamond card. Chen Hak Yang asks what T Joan is, and he lets down his guard. He thinks he only decided to get stronger because of his sister, and he thinks that he thought he had to protect her, so he learned judo. His men say, let's go bully some nice kids, and mention they'll tickle them from behind when they're peeing. He thinks that once he becomes strong, people begin flocking to him and say, don't bully the nice kids, and his men say sorry to him. He thinks he has no regrets, and they say he can bully the mean ones, adding he's so cool. They say see, he never bullies the nice kids, and say hurry, let's go bully the mean kids. He thinks it's because he was able to become strong. He remembers his sister So Ha Young and calls her while she reads a book. He tells her that's not what's important here and asks if she is okay, confirming that she's not hurt anywhere. She asks why he bursts in like this, saying she gets scared. He explains that he heard a bunch of East Gangbuk punks had cornered her. She responds with oh that, and he asks what she means by oh that, stating he's going to kick them all. She reassures him, saying it's okay, someone already took care of them. He is surprised and asks who took care of them. She confirms it was Tank Top Sahyon Kim who saved her. Returning to the present, he reflects that he didn't want to lose to anyone before meeting Tank Top Sahyon Kim and believes he won't ever lose again. Sahyon Kim steps out of the bar and notices a cafe, remarking, yes, Koreans must not forget their roots, and thinking that he's the only one who can protect Soha Young. After a while, he returns home, sets down his bag, and collapses onto his bed, commenting that the bag stinks off his spit and saying anyway, he's home now, and thinking, finally, it's over. He mentions that Chen Hak Yang, ranked 20th in North Gangbuk, was incredibly strong despite being only ranked 20th. He wonders just how strong the people ranked above him are, thinking that North Gangbuk is on a whole other level. He acknowledges that he would have been in trouble if it hadn't been for yet be up Tikjon and reflects on beating someone as strong as Chen Hak Yang. He admits that he got him with a series of surprise attacks, but he believes that in a fight, the ends justify the means. He looks at an attack card and declares that from now on, he'll use yet be up Tikjon extensively. It's an unconventional and relatively lesser known martial art, so it should be plenty effective against any strong fighters he might face in the future. He wonders if this is why Teak Joan was classified as a superior level up card and not just a greater one. He pauses, pondering what to do with his boxing cards while looking at them. He decides against getting rid of them, reasoning that it took a lot of work to collect these boxing cards and it would be foolish to discard them just because he's not using them right now. He expresses confidence that they'll come in handy again one day. He then states, alright, time to claim his card, referring to his reward for defeating Chen Hak Yang. 
As he looks at the card, he exclaims that it's a diamond card, reflecting on the challenging quest and claiming the card with excitement. Meanwhile, the quest window notifies him that he has claimed the diamond card with congratulations. He looks at a card. It's a trigger card, a card festival where a magical show happens and it tells him to get ready to see something amazing. He wonders what the card festival means and the quest window notifies him that the card festival card has been triggered. He thinks about what the heck this is. The scene shifts to West Gangbuk High, where Ji Hyuk Jang declares that it's time to wage war. So Hyun Kim tells him to pipe down and suggests that since he's standing up there anyway, why he doesn't dance for them. Kajuya asks what war is, and Haru Seong remarks that she didn't take him for a warmonger. Ji Hyuk Jang replies, no, everyone, focus, and says they don't have time to joke around. He mentions that Ha Jun Gu is currently defending them against East Gangbak Hai. He asks what they do in the meantime, and they should suggest cheering him on. He replies, no, that's not it. He believes this is the perfect opportunity for them to strike South Gangbuk High, while Ha Jun Gu is holding East Gangbuk at bay. He emphasizes that if they don't do it now, when will they get a chance to expand their territory? Sehyun Kim admits that he hates to admit it, but he's right. He then asks why he hates to admit it. For Hyun Kim inquires about how they should attack South Gangbuk, and he responds by first taking a look at the map. He points out that there are two routes labeled as A and B on the map that will get them to South Gangbok High the most quickly. Kajuya suggests that they all strike Rauta together and that there's no need for them to split up. He firmly states, absolutely not. Kajuya asks why not. He explains that if they attack Route A, those on Route B will send reinforcements, and vice versa if they attack Route B. He further explains that routes A and B are the quickest ways to South Gangbuk, and South Gangbuk's advisor knows this too, they got a little clever. Hyundong Lee interrupts to mention advisor Ji Hyuk Jang while cutting his words and laughing, saying as expected from Hyundong eyebrows Lee. He asks if Hyundong has already realized what the strategy is, to which Hyundong Lee agrees and confirms he's right. He responds that if they strike both routes A and B at the same time, they won't send any reinforcements. Kajuya turns to Sahyon Kim and exclaims, did he hear that? This guy's a genius. That delivery was perfect, other than the creepy smile at the end, and asks why they didn't think of that. Sahyon Kim thinks to himself that he's good, and Ji Hyuk Jang says, alright then, let's begin. Hyungdong eyebrows Lee will stand by at West Gangbuk High with reinforcements. He assigns Kajuya, also known as El Diablo, to strike Route A along with first-year fighters, while Sohyun Kim and Haru Seong will take Route B. After a while, Sohyun Kim and Haru Seong reach a building, and she asks if this building is Route B's base. He confirms that's right and mentions that he's not sure who they'll find in there, but if they manage to take control of this place, their attack on Route B will be a success. He then admits that it's a little awkward being alone with her, to which she responds seriously, cuts that out, and asks anyway, who is guarding Route B. He responded that Ji Hyuk Jang had said he didn't have any intel about who they were. She says she's curious to see who they'll end up fighting, not at all. He remarks that she's really bad at holding back her curiosity, and although her lips say no, her dilated pupils say yes. She moves forward, opens the door, and says she can't wait while he calls her. She says she shouldn't just open the door like that. Inside, Dong Yu Wang, Yung Yi Bang, and Jon Yeol Bang of South Gangbuk High sit there. Yung Yi Bang asks if Soo Hyun Kim is there while they look at Haru Seong. They say they came to South Gangbuk again, noting that there are only two of them this time. He notes that only two of them have arrived, not even three, and she also looks at them, recalling their previous fight and thinking of them as rascals from back then. Jun Yul Bang remarks that today seems to be their lucky day, and Dong Yu Wang adds that this time, they'll really beat them up for good. She calls Su Hyun Kim, who quickly enters and uses Yet Be Up Tikchen, kicking Yung Yi Bang's face while the other punks look at him in shock. He becomes excited and exclaims, claiming the card. The quest window notifies him that he has claimed the diamond card, congratulating him. He also receives another card with details of the card festival on which he reads that with this card in his possession, all other cards owned by the user are upgraded. The quest window notifies him that the card festival card has been triggered and all other cards in his possession are upgraded. He wonders what this means and ponders the concept of upgrading. He looks at his cards, all of which are upgraded. He calls Haru Siang and says he'll handle these three, getting ready for the fight, and he asks her if he can take care of the rest. 
She tries to say something, but he asks if she doesn't trust him, calling her sweetheart. She replies for the last time she's not a girl, while both punks laugh, and Dong Yu Wang comments that he must have picked up a few fighting skills somewhere, questioning if that will make a difference and stating that he's still the same weakest loser. So Hyun Kim asks if he really seems like the same guy he fought back then, while another punk informs Dong Yu Wang that they have a problem. West Gangbuk has invaded Raude as well, and he doesn't think they'll be able to send reinforcements. Dong Yu Wang questions who they sent over there and exclaims, what does he say? West Gangbox is on Raude too. Who the hell did they send over there? On the other side, Kojuya and his first year fighter attack Raude. He uses his left hand for Siz and his right hand for Tema, stating that together, they form Sistema, and they launch attacks on their opponents, knocking them all out. One of the first year fighters remarks that it never gets old, while another fighter notes that it's Kajuya's Sistema. A third partner comments that he's looking even more handsome today. Kajuya responds that flattery will get them everywhere and mentions that he has taken care of the small fry, leaving only her. He understands her duty is to protect Raude, but he suggests it might be wise for her to surrender now. Jihyun Lee looks at him and insults him. He remarks again about what a vision she is, adding that he can tell at a glance that she's much stronger than one of his fighters. One of his team members warns him to be careful, mentioning that she may be a girl, but is still ranked 9th in South Gangbuk. He adds that she rose through the ranks with nothing, but that wooden practice sword in her hand, and she's the master of kendo at South Gangbuk High as she runs to attack him. Kajuya also gets ready to block her attack and asks what it means to be a master of kendo, finding it ridiculous. He states that in his eyes, she is like a delicate fawn with a branch in her mouth, and he won't go easy on her just because she's a woman. He mentions that they always give their all, even if they were to fight a kid in elementary school, while the quest window notifies him about starting the quest. Chapter 40 Jihyun Lee points his sword at Kajuya and says, shut up and bring it on, while Hak Jinju arrives, covering his face with his hand and saying no stay out of this, he adds that she's too soft. Jihyun Lee insists that they need to teach them a lesson about what happens when they encroach on someone else's territory. He tells Hak Jinju to step aside, as he'll handle this. Kajuya tries to recognize him, and as Hak Jinju comes closer, he scares Kajuya. Haru Siong sees some people lying on the ground and thinks, no way, just when did Sahyun Kim get this strong? Meanwhile, Jun Yul Bang runs to attack him. She recalls hearing that he went off to do some training in order to become stronger, but she finds this beyond belief. Sahyun Kim punches Jun Yul Bang back. Jonyeol Bang asks what Sohyeon Kim is doing, and he responds that he can see all of Jonyeol Bang's attacks coming from a mile away. He suggests they end this now. The quest window notifies that he used the Dempsey Roll technique, and another notification indicates that a side quest has been created. Sohyeon Kim beats Jonyeol Bang badly and also defeats Dong Yu Wang. The quest window notifies that the revenge fight and defeat of Dong Yu Wang are zero out of one, with a reward of one gold card. Dong Yu Wang asks if this isn't traumatic for Sehyun Kim and reminds him of what happened the last time he grabbed him like this. He tries to grab Sehyun Kim, but Haru Seong says she can help and runs toward him. Sehyun Kim replies that he's okay and grabs him, stating that he's got this. Haru Seong thinks to herself, no way Sehyun Kim is holding him back. Dong Yu Wang asks what's going on and questions how he beat him last time, considering he was a weakling back then. He wonders how Sehyun Kim has become so strong now. The quest window notifies that Sehyun Kim used the maximum capacity card. Dong Yu Wang thinks to himself, wait a minute, he's not just as strong as he used to be, he's even stronger. Sehyun Kim grabs him, lifts him up in the air, and throws him to the ground. Dong Yu Wang thinks about the incredible strength he just experienced, recalling a similar sensation from Siok Kang. The quest window notifies him that the side quest is complete and he has received a gold card. Haru Siang thinks about Siak Kang and apologizes, telling Sohyeon Kim to be careful. Dong Yuang asks how Sohyeon Kim was able to become so much stronger in such a short amount of time. She thinks this guy might even beat him as she looks at them. Sohyeon Kim puts his hand on her shoulder and asks what's wrong, questioning why she is worried about him and suggests they move on. She thinks he's strong and acknowledges that he's gotten so much stronger so quickly. She considers that if it's him, he might actually be able to make it happen. 
He mentions that Route B's been taken care of and that he'll give Kajuya a call to check on how things are going on Route A. He expresses his intention to unite Gangbuck and believes he could achieve that goal. He looks at his phone and remarks that something is strange. She asks if something is wrong, and he responds that he thinks something's gone wrong because Kajuya isn't picking up the phone. The scene shifts to Raude, where Hyun Don Lee looks at Sohyun Kim and says he heard too. Sohyun Kim asks what happened, and Hyun Don Lee replies that, as far as he can see, Kajuya is defeated. He explains that it's not just Kajuya but also the first years with him who have been badly hurt, possibly struck with a metal weapon. So Hyun Kim asks if Ji Hyun Lee did this, and Hyun Don Lee replies that he checked, and it wasn't Ji Hyun Lee. So Hyun Kim then asks who did this. Hyun Don Lee responds that Hak Jin Ju ranked 8th in South Gangbok High. He adds that Hak Jin Ju is well known for being cruel and conniving, and even Siok Kang doesn't like him much. Hyun Don Lee expresses surprise that Siok Kang would send him of all people and mentions that Ka Ju Ya is severely injured. He further adds that he thinks Hak Jin Ju struck Kyuja Ya way more than necessary, noting that Kyuja Ya must have been in a lot of pain. So Hyun Kim comes closer to Kyuja Ya and sits near him. Kyuja Ya recalls an incident where some punks threw him away and took his tablet. Chang Dong Choi mentions that he told Kyuja Ya he'd give it back after watching his movie and that he never said he was going to take it. So Hyun Kim questions why it would take Kyuja Ya a month to watch one movie. Chang Dong Choi retorts he's hurt and asks how Kyuja Ya could talk back to him like this as he tries to slap him. Kyuja Ya arrives and tells Chang Dong Choi to use his tablet instead, handing it over and asking for his tablet back. Chang Dong Choi gets up and punches Kyuja Ya Wei, abusing him and saying that he won't treat him like a beggar. He warns everyone to listen up, stating that if he sees any of them hanging out with these two shitheads, they will face the same fate. He emphasizes that they all understand, and if they don't want to get beaten up every day until they graduate, they should stay away from them. Chang Dong Choi puts his foot on Ku Ya. One of Chang Dong Choi's friends tells him that the bell has rung, suggesting they should go. Chang Dong Choi expresses irritation and asks if they can believe those two losers. He mentions that he'll deal with them in the next period. So Hyun Kim comes closer to Ku Ya and helps him to get up, asking why he helped him. Kyuja Ya replies that he just wanted to be friends with him. So Hyun Kim introduces himself as Gukja Yang and asks for Kyuja Ya's name. Kyuja Ya replies that his name is Su Hyun Kim, and Gukja Yang says, Nice to meet him. The scene returns to the present as Su Hyun Kim walks out and tells Hyun Dong Lee that he'll leave it to him to take care of these guys. The setting shifts to South Gangbok High, where Ji Hyun Lee, ranked 9th in South Gangbok High, comments that there was no need to go that far, just scaring them a little would have made them run away. Hak Jin Ju, ranked 8th in South Gangbok High, sits in front of her and responds that it's just her opinion. He adds that if they had just chased them off, West Gangbok might have returned, but this way they won't dare mess with them again. He asks if Siok Kang agrees. Siok Kang responds that Hak Jin Ju is right and acknowledges that while he's usually not a fan of the way Hak Jin Ju handles things, he thinks he did well this time. He adds that now West Gangbuk knows what happens when they try to mess with them. Hak Jin Ju asks, by the way, if today is his birthday or something. He remarks that this is the first time he has ever agreed with Siok Kang. Another student quickly opens the door and informs Siok Kang that they have a problem. West Gangbuk is attacking them. The student says things are not looking good as both their 13th and 15th strongest fighters are down. Fiat Kang asks what the student is talking about and why West Gangbok High would suddenly invade them, managing to take out both their 13th and 15th strongest fighters. He quickly gets up from his place and asks if it is Hajun Gu, wondering if Hajun Gu showed up. The other student replies, well it's Sehyun Kim and he's alone. He's already gobbled up three districts all by himself, and at this rate, he'll be here in no time. The student adds that there's no one who can stop Sahyon Kim and mentions that he's not sure what happened, but Sahyon Kim is furious. Fiat Kang asks if Sahyon Kim attacked them all by himself and questions if he's that strong. Ji Hyun Lee says she'll go, mentioning that she didn't get to finish warming up anyway. Hak Chin Ju replies no, he should go. He explains that he brought this on and adds that, besides, he knows that idiots who are all worked up are easy prey for him. On the other hand, Ji Hyun Jang asks what this means. 
He questions why Sehyun Kim went into the enemy's territory all by himself when he explicitly told him to only attack routes A and B. He asks why they didn't stop him and demands an answer, while Hyun Dong Lee lights up his cigarette. He expresses frustration, asking what the point is of carefully crafting a plan if none of them choose to follow it. Hyun Dong Lee says he can't stop Sehyun Kim, and Ji Hyun Jang asks what he means by that. Hyun Dong Lee explained that he'd never seen Sehyun Kim so angry before. Meanwhile, Sehyun Kim attacks some punks and thinks he was bullied simply because his bullies wanted to show off. Chang Dong Choi arrives and asks if he's got that, stating that he's going to stay exactly like that until all the girls come back after class. Kyu Ja Ya agrees while they sit on the ground naked. Chang Dong Choi asks Su Hyun Kim why he is not answering him, while Su Hyun Kim thinks that Kyu Ja Ya was bullied too for helping him. Chang Dong Choi asks how much time they have until recess, and his friend says about 10 minutes. He replies that this is going to be funny. His friend confirms and asks how he came up with this plan. So Hyun Kim asks what they should do now, and Kyu Ja Ya tells him to run. He adds that it's better to run away and get beat up than be labeled as a couple of perverts. They stop and look behind them. Before starting these quests, So Hyun Kim could only muster the courage to come to school every day. This wasn't because of his parents or the teachers, but because of Kyu Ja Ya. He believes it was thanks to Kyu Ja Ya that he could endure day after day of cruelty and go on living. To So Hyun Kim, Kyu Ja Ya isn't just a friend, but also his savior. The scene shifts to the present, where So Hyun Kim beats Hak Jin Ju, grabs his collar, and asks him one last time, where is Hak Jin Ju? Hak Jin Ju responds that he knows, and So Hyun Kim releases him. Hak Jin Ju then asks if Su Hyun Kim is looking for Hak Jin Ju and says he knows where that rascal is. Su Hyun Kim tells him to take him there, but Hak Jin Ju punches him in the face and throws him away, revealing that he is, in fact, Hak Jin Ju. Hak Jin Ju abuses Su Hyun Kim, stating that if he's looking for someone, the first thing is to find out what they look like. He emphasizes that Su Hyun Kim can't find them by just searching blindly and adds that rascals who have gotten all worked up are easy to beat. He then licks his iron punch. Hak Jin Ju questions why one hit with brass knuckles has taken Sa Hyun Kim down, remarking that he's weak. He asks how Sa Hyun Kim managed to get all the way here and mentions that he knows Sa Hyun Kim was looking for him because of Kyu Ja Ya. Hak Jin Ju comes closer to Sa Hyun Kim and says he beat Kyu Ja Ya because that fat ass was getting on his nerves. He continues to beat Sa Hyun Kim badly, mentioning that he beat him up really well and recalling how Sa Hyun Kim was begging him. Hak Jin Ju then puts his foot on Sa Hyun Kim's head. He laughs and mentions that Sa Hyun Kim was crying and begging for help, apologizing like a fat, stupid person squealing like a pig. Now it's Sa Hyun Kim's turn. He almost punches him again, but Sa Hyun Kim interrupts, telling him not to lie. Sa Hyun Kim asserts that Kyu Ja Ya would never say those things and adds that he won't let out a single scream against trash like Hak Jin Ju while grabbing his hair. So Hyun Kim further explains that all the begging was just wishful thinking on Hak Jin Ju's part. Hak Jin Ju gets angry and abuses him again, punching his face once more. So Hyun Kim warns him that he messed with the wrong guy and activates his normal card, Berserker, transforming into a Berserker who can't feel pain for two minutes. Hak Jin Ju questions how So Hyun Kim is still standing, looking at him in disbelief. The quest window notifies that for the next two minutes, So Hyun Kim can't feel any pain. Hak Jin Ju runs to attack him again, saying that he'll still beat him. So Hyun Kim grabs his face and says, listen up. For the next two minutes, he's going to beat the crap out of him and scratches his eyes. Hak Jin Ju puts his hand over his eyes and cries out, saying that his eyes are hurting. Meanwhile, So Hyun Kim uses Yetabi Up Tikjon, specifically move number 116 Marup Chigi, to kick Hak Jin Ju away. He follows up with Yobiup Tikjon, move number 115, Hangjong Chigi, to punch at his neck. Finally, Sehyun Kim uses Yobiup Tijon, move number 114, Sanbyup Chigi, to punch and throw Hak Jin Ju away. He walks towards Hak Jin Ju and puts his foot on his face. Using Yobiup Tikjon, specifically move number 112, Hanul Bapki, he grabs Hak Jin Ju's shirt and tells him to get up. Sehyun Kim mentions that he still has 110 seconds left noting how fast time goes by. The quest window notifies him that the effects of the Berserker card have ended. Suhyun Kim warns Hak Jin Ju that if he messes with Kyu Ja Yut again, he'll kill him. 
The quest window then notifies Sehyun Kim that Hak Jin Ju will now be rendered unconscious as a penalty. Seong Min Lee, ranked 7th in South Gangbok High, arrives there and asks if Hak Jin Ju has lost. One of his friends responds that they think they are too late. Seong Min Lee looks at Sehyun Kim and asks if that's Sehyun Kim. His friend confirms, adding that Sehyun Kim is not wearing a tank top. Seong Min Lee replies, All right, let Seok Kang know that they've caught Sehyun Kim. Haru Seong says she needs to save him and mentions that she can't get in touch with Sehyun, indicating that something terrible must have happened. Ji Hyul Jang responds, saying that Suhyun is literally in the heart of enemy territory, which is crawling with South Gangbuk's strongest fighters. He explains that if they send a middling fighter, they'll just be captured along with Suhyun Kim. She asks, then what do they do? He replies that he has already sent someone, and she asks who it is. He thinks that the only person capable of surviving and bringing Suhyun Kim back is Ha Jun Gu. On the other hand, Ha Jun Gu puts Sehyun Kim on his shoulder, and Seong Min Lee remarks that it's unbelievable. He asks Ha Jun Gu if he really thinks he'll be able to go through all of them by himself. Ha Jun Gu tells them to get out of his way. Seong Min Lee asks Ha Jun Gu what he is doing here and wonders if he thinks he can take them all on by himself. He remarks that Ha Jun Gu seems to believe he can fight his way through with all that dead weight. He further inquires who Ha Jun Gu thinks he is, Superman. Ha Jun Gu then makes Su Hyun Kim sit down against a wall and rushes to attack him, and Su Hyun Kim counterattacks and abuses him. He asks what Seong Min Lee wants him to show, to which Seong Min Lee responds, sure whatever, but he realizes that Ha Jun Gu is hopelessly outnumbered. He asks, let's see how long he lasts, and they all run to attack Ha Jun Gu. Meanwhile, another person calls Seong Min Lee while he lights up his cigarette and informs him of urgent news. Seong Min Lee asks what it is, and the person approaches him, whispering in his ear. He laughs, saying that it tickles when he whispers. Meanwhile, Seong Min Lee's cigarette falls from his mouth, and he asks what he said. The scene shifts to South Gang Bak Hai, where Seong Min Lee quickly arrives, opens the door, and asks Seok Kang what has happened. He questions what he means and what happened and asks why Seok Kang is there. Seok Kang replies that he thought he was dealing with Ha Jun Gu. Seong Min Lee reassures him that his boys are taking care of Ha Jun Gu and mentions that he came as soon as he heard. Ji Hyun Lee asks what he heard, and Seong Min Lee responds that East Gangbuk is attacking them, questioning why they are just standing around. Seok Kang interrupts, saying that East Gangbuk isn't attacking them. If they were, he would be the first to know, as East Gangbuk hasn't moved at all. He then replies, who's spreading false information? Siak Kang says he can hazard a guess, suggesting it was probably a ploy by West Gangbuk to help Sehyun Kim and Ha Jun Gu escape. On the other side, at West Gangbuk High, Ji Hyuk Jang sits at a table and states they can't just sit back and wait. Haru Siang asks if they shouldn't go help them. He thinks that helping Ha Jun Gu is all they can do, but they need to be careful about taking military action. She expresses frustration and says, Grab him, he's getting away. He hopes they will come back safely as Ha Jun Gu runs towards them with Sehyun Kim at his back. Seok Kang arrives there and confirms that Sehyun Kim and Ha Jun Gu. He says they can't let them slip through their fingers and must catch them, no matter what it takes. He emphasizes that this might be their only chance to capture Sehyun Kim and Ha Jun Gu. He instructs them to spread the word to everyone in South Gangbok and tells them to deploy their fighters to the route leading to West Gangbok High. He orders every last fighter they have to chase after Ha Jun Gu, knowing that with Sehyun Kim on his back, Ha Jun Gu won't be able to put up much of a fight. He declares that they will wipe West Gangbok High off the map today. Yung Yi Park, ranked 14th in South Gangbok High, asks if he is late, while Seung Hyun Jin, ranked 16th in South Gangbok High, refuses and says they're right there. She suggests hurrying over to join them and runs to attack Ha Jun Gu. Ha Jun Gu kicks a person away and wonders why he has been fighting to protect Su Hyun Kim since they have been friends. Yung Yi Park asks Ha Jun Gu if he is sure he can keep going, and Ha Jun Gu thinks Yung Yi Park is a strange one, strangely endearing. Ha Jun Gu says, well, stop running his mouth and come at him. He thinks this is the first time he's fighting to protect someone, puts his hand to his head, and says, come on, there's only one of him. Yungi Park calls him an idiot, asking why they would attack him, and says they'll just attack Sohyun Kim because he's the one they are really after anyway. They both run to attack Sohyun Kim and bid him farewell. 
However, Ha Jun-gu quickly comes up to Sehyun Kim and blocks their attack. On the other hand, Hyun Dong Lee says they need to hurry and help because so much time has already passed. He mentions that if Siak Kang shows up too, not even Ha Jun-gu will be able to fight his way through. He asks why they aren't going over there to help them and wonders if there could be another trick up their sleeves. He further speculates that it's probably the case and asks what the plan is this time. Ji Hyul Jang thinks they have nothing left and believes they're fresh out of tricks. He thinks all they can do now is place their faith in Ha Jun Gu's fighting skills. Haru Siang says she can't take this anymore and decides she'll go. She mentions using herself as bait to try to lure the enemies away from Ha Jun Gu. She acknowledges that she might not be as strong, but she's fast. Ha Jun Gu arrives there and says, Wait, Miss Haru Siang, prompting her to look behind and ask who's there. He throws Se Hyun Kim to the ground and also falls down. Hyun Dong Lee expresses disbelief thinking that Ha Jun Gu managed to fight his way out of that hellscape all by himself. After a while, Siak Kang asks if Ha Jun Gu managed to get away before they arrived and wonders how he was carrying Se Hyun Kim. He guesses they underestimated him. Ji Hyun Lee asks, well if now what and Siak Kang replies that it doesn't matter either way, stating that they should head straight to West Gangbuk High. Siang Min Lee notes that right now Ha Jun Gu and Se Hyun Kim are both down for the count, which means West Gangbuk is ripe for the picking. He says, okay then. Another student arrives there and calls Siak Kang, informing him that East Gangbuk is attacking them. Siak Kang responds that they fell for West Gangbuk's tricks again. The other student insists it's real this time, mentioning Yi Ha Han, who believes he can take over West Gangbuk High whenever he wants. The student explains that South Gangbuk is Yi Ha Han's prime target, and he deployed his forces there while they were distracted. He says that if they attack West Gangbok now, their headquarters will be at risk and asks what they should do. He replies that Yi Ha Han should be attacking Sohyun Kim, not him, and abuses him, saying, damn him, Sohyun Kim. After a while, Sohyun Kim opens his eyes while lying on his bed and says he's starting to feel a bit better now. When he came home, he was already home, thinking about how Ha Jun Gu had fought through all those people and rescued him. He thinks he can't believe all that happened in the span of a single day and decides he should get some sleep. He says he has basically become a total thug and falls asleep while a girl comes into his room. The quest window notifies him that the copy cloud has summoned itself and gives him a warning message. The quest window notifies him that upgrading the summon card copy cloud allows the user to summon clouds that can be copied and pasted, and the card festival effect is that the copy cloud gains sentience. The quest window notifies him that the copy cloud has gained sentience, and she sits on his chest and comes closer to him, while the quest window notifies that the copy cloud is behaving of its own accord. Sahyon Kim gets up and sees her closing in on him. He kicks her away and asks what the hell he is doing here. He asks what that was and if she was trying to kill him. He wonders if it is South Gangbuk and if they paid her to attack him in his sleep while wrapping his blanket around him. He says okay, that's probably not it. We're still family after all. He pauses, considering if this is because he took some money out of her wallet the other day and asks how she could kill her own brother over something like that. He looks at a sign on her neck and realizes that it is her, the cloud. He thinks this is definitely the copy cloud's tattoo, but he never summoned it and wonders if he summoned it in his sleep. She calls him and asks what's wrong. He wonders if it just spoke and listens to his mom's voice who asks why he is up so late. He says he's coming in and quickly grabs her, putting his hand over her lips and says it's nothing, just that he was watching porn. His mom scolds him. After a while, he gets up in the morning and thinks about how the card festival effect gave the cloud sentience. He wonders what he should do now as he looks at the copy cloud summon card. He ties her up and shuts her mouth. He thinks, why did it have to turn into his sister of all people? He says to the cloud that he'll take the tape off her mouth, but she has to be quiet. She asks why he wants this. He replies that he guesses it's capable of communicating to some extent. She asks again why she has to be quiet. He thinks for a while and then says well the reason he has to be quiet is that out that door, there's another person who looks exactly like her, and it's kind of a big deal. If other people saw him, well it would turn the world upside down. He further states that he can't have her showing up whenever she wants either. Right now, she's a stand-in for Haru Siang. He explains that if people realize she's not the real Haru Siang, North Gangbuk will find out too, and they'll probably tear him limb from limb. 
He asks if she understands what he's saying and says he'll solve the stand-in problem as soon as possible, so please don't show up unless he summons her. He asks if she can do that for him. She says no, she feels trapped in there, and she's not going back. He thinks he sees that the copied cloud is now sentient and realizes he never considered how it might feel when it isn't summoned. The space that the copy cloud usually occupies might be nothing but a dark, empty void. He gets up from his place and proposes a solution. They could spend five hours a day together. He says he'll summon her, and they'll hang out for five hours each day. He suggests getting her a hat to wear and going outside so she can see the world, it'll be fun. He puts his hand on her shoulder. He asks, how does that sound? She agrees and says it sounds good. He responds that's great. Their five hours start now. He thinks right, today's Monday. He recalls saying they'd just hang out for five hours, but it took all night to explain what it can and can't do while he sits in class. He feels exhausted and sarcastically remarks, what fun indeed. However, it's sentient now, so he can't exactly send it away, and he says he didn't get a wink of sleep. Kujaya arrives there and observes that he seems rather tired. Kujaya remarks that they are at an age where they spend many sleepless nights. He asks Kujaya if he is okay and inquires about what the doctor said, adding that nothing is broken. Kujaya says it could very well be that his hardened muscles managed to protect his bones from damage. He asks again seriously, that's what the doctor said, and suggests that maybe he should see a different doctor. Kuja, ya asks what's gotten into him this time. He thinks however, that his wounded heart will not heal. He thinks that his heart surely still beats in his chest, so why does it feel as though he has left it behind with her, recalling Jihyun Lee. So Hyun Kim asks why he is staring at the ceiling, while he thinks he supposes this is love. Karen Beek enters the class, and Sohyun Kim looks at her, saying wow she's not late for once. She blushes and slaps him while the cloud notifies her that the master hit for once. He thinks she slapped him for no reason and wonders if she is offended by his very existence. But more importantly, he wonders what's gotten into her today as he sits at her place in anger. The two girls ask if she had a dream that she was dating Sohyun Kim. She says to keep their voices down and responds, that's hilarious. One of the girls says, well, it's hardly surprising, and Karen Beat confirms, adding that the two of them have been spending so much time together. She asks what they did in her dream with Sohyun Kim. Karen Beek says they just went on a date and laughs. She asks if they made out, and if things got hot and heavy. Karen Beek tells her to shut up, confirming that they have totally made out. She wonders what she is going to do now. Sohyun Kim gives some food to Hajun Gu and says, here Hajun have his share. Hajun Gu asks why he does that, and Suhyun Kim replies that he knows after having a dream like that about a guy, things can get pretty awkward. Hajun Gu confirms, saying he ends up becoming interested in him, even if he wasn't at all before. He says, totally, if he knows, he knows. He mentions having had a dream like that about a celebrity he wasn't even a fan of. Suhyun Kim says he'll never forget what he has done for him, as since then, he gets butterflies in his stomach whenever he sees him on television but a dream about dating Soohyun Kim, of all people. On the other side, the girls tease Karen Beek, saying that explains it. It's no wonder she gave him the cold shoulder. Another girl wonders why she dreamed about him, and asks if it could be that she actually likes Soohyun Kim. She responds that she told them he and she are just friends. One of them says she thinks she's mad and laughs, calling it scary. The scene shifts to South Gangbuk High, where Siak Kang says it's been a while. He has asked everyone there today because he's the true strength behind South Gangbuk. Ranked 4th in South Gangbuk High, Jinggu Oh and Changju Min ranked 5th in South Gangbuk High sit in front of him. Jinggu Oh remarks that he has always been able to handle things with just the lower ranked fighters, so he never expected him to summon all of them like this. Baim Sang Jiang, who is ranked 3rd in South Gangbuk High, says he thinks he knows what this is about the upcoming Gangbuk conference. Yu Jong Na acknowledges Baim Sang's insight, saying he's good and he's right. He gathered them here because of the Gangbuk conference and Sohyun Kim. He replies that Sohyun Kim has been a thorn in his side lately. He asks what he's asking them for, which is simple, and Siak Kang says he needs their help as South Gangbuk's elite fighters to crush Sohyun Kim. On the other side, Sohyun Kim comes out of school with Karen Beek. He yawns and says finally, it's time to go home. Today was such a long day. He adds that he didn't get any sleep and had cleaning duty on top of that. 
He then asks by the way she is feeling okay. Karen Beek asks what he means, to which he replies that she's been acting a bit strange today. She asks if she did something to piss him off. He responds that it doesn't sound like it and mentions that she has been mad at him all day, but he can't apologize until she tells him what he did wrong. He urges her to tell him and requests her to do so. Suddenly, a basketball comes towards them, almost hitting Karen Beek. Sahyun Kim quickly comes between them and saves her. He then asked what that was and asked if she wasn't about to say something, mentioning that he missed it because of the basketball. He throws the basketball toward other students and scolds them, saying they should be more careful. They apologize and thank him, saying they'll work hard to become great basketball players and make him proud. Karen Beek calls out to him from behind and tells him to stop doing things like this. He asks what he did and she insists he just stops because it's weird, then walks away. Confused, he asks what's weird, but she doesn't respond. Later, she asks if he's doing anything after school. He apologizes, saying he already has plans. Just then, Soha Yang arrives and he explains that she's a friend of his sister's and they're just grabbing a bite together. Karen Beek looks at Soha Yang and asks who's a friend of his sister's, mentioning she feels like she has seen her before. Soha Yang grabs his arm and jokingly says, well he slept over at her place. Karen Beek asks if he slept over at her place, causing Sohyun Kim to step back quickly. He tells her that Soha has to think about how that sounds and clarifies that it's not what she thinks. Karen Beek asks, so what is it then? Sohyun Kim explains that he did sleep over at her place in a sense, but he just went over to hang out and fell asleep on her couch. Karen Beek acknowledges that it's technically true and then jokingly suggests that by that logic they have kissed. Sohyun Kim reacts, telling her that she also needs to think about how that sounds. Karen Beek questions if an indirect kiss doesn't count, to which Soha Young replies that's what she meant and asks who Karen Beek is. Karen Beek introduces herself as a classmate of Sohyun Kim and Soha. Soha Young said, well she is sorry, but Sohyun Kim has plans today, so they really should be going now. She suggests that Karen Beek could come along with them, and Soha Young asks why she would join them. Karen Beek explains that Sohyun Kim's sister will be there too. So Ha Yang mentions that the three of them have been close since they were kids, so they meet up like this pretty often. She questions Karen Beek, saying she's acting really weird. Karen Beek responds that she and Sohyun Kim are just classmates, so she wonders why Soha cares about what he's up to. Soha asks if Karen Beek is interested in Sohyun Kim and suggests that it seems like she's trying to come between the two of them. She adds that a classmate wouldn't usually behave like this. Karen Beek replies that if she does feel something more than friendship for Sohyun Kim, all she feels is pissed off at Soha's attitude. She asserts that she's got that. Karen Beek says what the two of them do is none of his business, then adds that whatever, she's going home. After a while, Karen Beek reaches her home and takes a bath while sitting in the bathtub and talking on the phone with her friend. Her friend says, seriously, that's what that Soha Young girl said to him. Karen Beek confirms it and mentions that Soha was also giving her the dirtiest look. She asks her friend what the hell is wrong with that girl and says she totally flipped out. What the hell did she do? Her friend asks what does she mean by that? Her friend says she doesn't see it that way and adds that no listen, yeah she can understand why Karen Beek would be annoyed at seeing Soha link arms with Sehyun Kim as soon as she saw her but that doesn't seem to be what she's really angry about. Karen Beek asks what she is talking about and mentions that if Soha didn't like her attitude, she could have just said so, but instead she didn't want to lose to her, so she told her that she and Sohyun Kim kissed. Her friend says that was a pretty strange thing to say and also questioned why Soha would insist on tagging along with them. She concludes that if Soha didn't feel anything towards Sohyun Kim, she wouldn't care what he did with that girl. Her friend says to be honest, and Karen Beek asks about what. Her friend asks how she would feel, and Karen Beek replies that she feels pissed off. Her friend insists and says she's not asking how she feels right now, but how she would feel if Suhyun Kim started dating that girl. She mentions that Karen Beek even had a dream about Suhyun Kim and keeps denying that she feels anything for the guy, but that doesn't seem necessarily true, or maybe she just hasn't realized how she feels about him yet. Her friend continues, saying that she wants to ask Karen Beek this. If Suhyun Kim were to start dating that girl, going on dates and making out, how would that make her feel? She asks if Karen Beek would really feel nothing. 
Karen Beek gets irritated and says, shut up, and her friend laughs and says she was right. She's totally crushing on him. She thinks she likes Sehyun Kim seriously, but quickly dismisses the thought, telling herself she's wrong. Her friend playfully says, Sehyun Kim and Karen Beek, sitting in a tree, kissing and laughing. After a while, the teacher stands in class and remarks that it looks like everyone's here. He begins roll call, calling out names like Ji Hyok Jang and Haru Siong, and teasingly asks why he is blushing, mentioning it's a little off-putting. He calls Guk Ju Yang and Hyun Dong Lee, then questions who Guk Ju Yang is, noting he thought Kyu Ja Ya was his real name. He then calls Ha Jun Gu and humorously asks how come Ha Jun Gu's the only one who gets to look all cool like that, jokingly saying baby, he was born that way. He continues, saying anyway, now that all of the West forces are present, let him explain why he has summoned them here today, and directs his serious attention towards Su Hyun Kim, stating that the day has finally come. Pyong Dong Lee asks what he means by the day. He replies that's right today is the day of the Gangbok Conference. He explains that once again, it's time for the Gangbok Conference, a gathering of all leaders from Gangbok's high schools. He mentions that all the leaders present last time will be there today as well, and they might even have the opportunity to meet the leader of North Gangbok High. He concludes by saying anyway, that's why he has asked all of them here today. However, he adds that he had a promotion match planned for tonight. Ji Hyok Jang interjects, saying, next time, Sehyun Kim, notify them in advance about things like this. Sehyun Kim responds, calling him an ungrateful rascal and then states that now Ji Hyok Jang, their advisor, will say a few words. Ji Hyok Jang expresses his gratitude and mentions that he heard all they did at the last conference was introduce themselves to the other leaders, but things will be different this time around with Sehyun Kim on their side. He states that at today's Gangbuk conference, there is one objective West Gangbuk High must accomplish. She asks what the objective is, and he replies that the objective is forming a complete alliance with Yi Ha Han of East Gangbuk High. He explains that they are still at war against South Gangbok High, and the way things are now, East Gangbok High is a constant thorn in their side. He mentions that Ha Jun Gu might be effectively holding them at bay, but frankly his talents would be better used elsewhere, and they'd be better off if they took this opportunity to ally with East Gangbok High. He adds that if they were to make an offer to Yi Ha Han and form an alliance, then join forces to attack South Gangbok together, they wouldn't be able to stop them and this war would end with Siak Kang's defeat. Sehyun Kim calls him a genius and says alright they all heard what their advisor said. Now it's time for the conference. He says they need to head over there right away and adds, let's do this and says their destination is the Gangbok conference. Yi Ha Han, the leader of East Gangbok High, greets Siak Kang from South Gangbok High, commenting on how they arrived early and were waiting for everyone else to arrive. He mentions that it's nice to see Siak Kang again as it has been a while since the last conference. Yi Ha Han asks how Siak Kang has been and expresses that he misses him so much. Siak Kang responds by calling Yi Ha Han a shameless rascal and asks if he doesn't think he owes him an apology. Yi Ha Han counters by saying he has no idea what Siak Kang is talking about and questions why he would owe him an apology. Siak Kang becomes angry and accuses Yi Ha Han of stealing territory from right under his nose, mentioning that Yi Ha Han had a golden opportunity to crush Sehyun Kim and Ha Jun Gu. Yi Ha Han dismisses Siak Kang's accusations and suggests leaving those hard feelings at the door since this is the Gangbok conference. Siak Kang puts his hand on Yi Ha Han's shoulder and mentions that unfortunately, it seems like he'll have to be very nice to him today because the outcome of today's Gangbok conference will depend on him. Sehyun Kim, from West Gangbok High, arrives with his team, and one of Yi Ha Han's men asks if he seems surprised. Sehyun Kim replies that of course he is, and the man asks why. Sehyun Kim explained that in the last conference, only three people from West Gangbok showed up, but they managed to double their numbers in a short amount of time, and those six weren't just anybody. He adds that they're all highly skilled individuals, so it's only natural that he's surprised. Yi Ha Han notes that there's tension in the air and comments that it looks like today's conference is going to get really interesting. Siak Kang tells Sehyun Kim that he didn't think he would show up to today's conference, knowing full well that he'd also be in attendance. Sehyun Kim replies, long time no see. Siak Kang extends his hand for a handshake and suggests they put aside their differences for today. 
Sehyun Kim responds that this is the Gangbok Conference, and an unwritten rule of the conference is that they should not bring any grudges or hard feelings to the table. Siak Kang adds that fighting at the conference is also forbidden and clarifies that he's only here to talk, nothing more. Sehyun Kim shakes hands with him and agrees, saying fine, then just for today. Siak Kang expresses his approval, saying that's great. He hopes the same goes for him too, Yi Ha Han. Yi Ha Han sits down and questions what Siak Kang is up to this time, asking if he seriously expects him to trust him. Meanwhile, Sehyun Kim remarks that it's a little rude and emphasizes that he's being sincere here. Bam Sang Jiang advises that they need to show goodwill to Yi Ha Han and Sehyun Kim, as that's how they can take over both West and East Gangbuk. Siak Kang adds that in order to dominate both West and East Gangbuk, they need to show goodwill. Bam Sang Jiang agrees, stating that's correct, considering that both factions are targeting them. He explains that East Gangbuk, with whom they've always had conflicts, is ready to strike from the East, while West Gangbuk, with whom they've recently clashed, is preparing to attack from the West. He emphasizes that this is not the time to worry about maintaining appearances. He further asserts that they must propose an alliance with them. Fiat Kang asks about forming an alliance with East and West Gangbuk and questions what purpose that would serve. He suggests proposing to both factions that instead of fighting over their limited territory, they should join forces to strike North Gangbuk. Siak Kang questions if he's kidding, noting that even with an alliance, they wouldn't be able to defeat North Gangbuk, and asks if he wants North Gangbuk to conquer them all. He responds that it's not the case, it's a trick. Siak Kang inquires about the trick, and he explains that it involves luring Yi Ha Han and Su Hyun Kim into a false sense of security. He elaborates that by pretexting an attack on North Gangbuk together, both West and East Gangbuk will lower their guard. He adds that meanwhile, they will secretly organize a unit to ambush both Sehyun Kim and Yi Ha Han, incapacitating them so they can never fight again. Consequently, the leaderless West and East Gangbuk highs will become theirs. He says that all is fair in love and war, noting that no tactic is too dirty. In fact, it would be foolish not to play dirty. Sehyun Kim asks if he's seriously proposing that the three of them form an alliance and attack North Gangbuk together. Yi Ha Han responds that it's an interesting proposal, suggesting that they all advance into North Gangbuk territory together. He asks them to think about it, questioning the point of fighting fiercely over their limited territories individually. He adds that they are all interested in uniting Gangbuk, emphasizing that if they continue fighting amongst themselves, that dream will never come true. He asks if they shouldn't start by aiming for North Gangbok High, which is the strongest among them all. He says that the only party benefiting from their ongoing conflict is North Gangbok, and after they work together to take over North Gangbok, they can resume their individual conflicts. Siak Kang asks what they think about it and states that they can't stand back and let North Gangbok High unite all of Gangbok. He says that's all he has to say, and now he'd like to hear what each of them thinks about his proposal. He starts with Sehyun Kim from West Gangbuk. Sehyun Kim responds with a no thanks. Siak Kang asks what he means, and Sehyun Kim repeats that he said no thanks, questioning if Siak Kang takes them for a bunch of idiots. Ji Hyuk Jang comments that the goodwill Siak Kang shows at the conference won't be genuine since West Gangbuk High is attacking them from the west and East Gangbuk High is attacking them from the east. He says he'll swallow his pride and suggest that the three of them form an alliance, but that suggestion is most likely a trick. He warns that once they form an alliance with Xia Kang and let their guard down, he may very well ambush them when they least expect it. He refuses whatever Xia Kang offers, stating that he knows the real reason they are attending today's Gangbuk conference. So Hyun Kim mentions that this guy previously said they shouldn't listen to him, that he'd stab them in the back, and that they should listen to his advisor because he's the brains of West Gangbuk High. Ji Hyuk Jang comments that he's done for, and Sehyun Kim asks who else he should listen to if not his own advisor. He wonders if he would disagree with Bam Sang Jiang, the advisor of South Gangbok High, and contemplates if he has done some digging into South Gangbok, pondering how he knew he was Siak Kang's advisor. Sehyun Kim apologizes, but mentions he didn't come to today's conference to see Siak Kang. Siak Kang asks what he means by that and wonders just what Sehyun Kim is thinking. Yi Ha Han asks what he wants and says, as Siak Kang said, his grudges have no place at this conference and asks if he wants a rematch. Sehyun Kim proposes an alliance between West and East Gangbok High and suggests they join forces to strike South Gangbok. 
Yi Ha Han calls him an idiot and asks what he has to gain by forming an alliance with him when he could easily take over both West and South Gangbuk by himself. He mentions that Sehyun Kim may not know this, but he and Siak Kang go way back and they've been friends since middle school. Siak Kang calls out to Yi Ha Han, who responds by saying that if he were to form an alliance with anyone, it would be Siak Kang. Yi Ha Han asks if Siak Kang really thinks he'd team up with a nobody like him. Siak Kang insists that he would, and he shakes hands with Sehyun Kim. Yi Ha Han explains that while his first priority is kicking Siak Kang's ass, an alliance with him is going to cost him. Sehyun Kim says to just name whatever he wants. Yi Ha Han appreciates the way Siak Kang does business, and Sehyun Kim reciprocates the sentiment, saying he likes Yi Ha Han too. Yi Ha Han asks if they want to grab some food after the conference, and Sehyun Kim agrees, mentioning he knows a good place around there. Siak Kang says that's fine, expressing that he expected as much. Haru Seong asks what that was all about, while Hyun Dong Lee and Ji Hyuk Jang inquire about what's going on, mentioning that they are totally exhausted. Fa Hyun Kim asks Siak Kang what he thinks he's doing, and Siak Kang responds by asking why he bothers waiting until later, stating he'll crush him here and now. Hyun Dong Lee intervenes, mentioning it's an unwritten rule not to engage in fighting during the Gangbuk conference, and he berates Siak Kang, questioning if he dares to go against that rule and warning that the Gangbuk gods will punish him for his insolence. Meanwhile, Yu Jong now rushes to attack Hajin Gu, who blocks the attack and greets him, saying it's been a long time. Ji Hyok Jang expresses disbelief, noting that they didn't anticipate Siak Kang ambushing them during the conference and blaming him for the situation. Kyu Ha-ya asks Sehyun Kim what they should do next. Siok Kang warns Sehyun Kim that he'd better get ready because there are quite a few of them. He commands Group 1 to attack. Today, they are taking down both West and East Gangbuk. Yi Ha Han lunges at him, kicking him away and knocking out the others. Sehyun Kim wonders if Yi Ha Han has become even stronger. Yi Ha Han challenges him, lighting up his lighter, and asks if Sehyun Kim is just going to stand there. He encourages them to show their strength as the top dog of West Gangbuk. The quest window notifies him that a new main quest is available. Escape the Gangbuk conference with Yi Ha Han 0 out of 1, with a reward of 1 gold card. Sehyun Kim declares that their first battle as allies is beginning as the quest officially starts. Fahyun Kim acknowledges that there are too many of them at the moment, so their priority should be to leave now and resume the fight another time. They successfully escape the conference, and Yi Ha Han reveals that he has a plan. Sehyun Kim inquires about the plan, and Yi Ha Han explains that they are not far from East Gangbuk territory. He suggests that after breaking through South Gangbuk's forces and reaching East Gangbuk, his crew will be waiting for them there. Sehyun Kim clarifies that Yi Ha Han is proposing they head north. Yi Ha Han expresses concern about Siak Kang's large group and questions whether they can reach East Gangbuk territory. Kyuja Ya utilizes his left hand, Siz, and his right hand, Tema. Yi Ha Han asks for further proposals and questions if they should let South Gangbuk defeat them, to which Suhyun Kim reassures him not to worry about the plan. Yi Ha Han asserts that he will initiate their escape from the current location. Suhyun Kim inquires about his plan for accomplishing that. Yi Ha Han explains that he will have to utilize his trump card. He then calls for Myung Ti and Dong Xiao, who promptly respond and ask if he needs anything, urging him to give them instructions. Yi Ha Han instructs one of them to sacrifice themselves for the team, emphasizing that they should not hesitate. He then grabs Sehyun Kim by his shirt and urges him to run. Sehyun Kim reflects on the fact that Yi Ha Han used his own comrades as bait while they engaged in battle with their enemies. Yi Ha Han expresses confusion and questions the situation pointing out that his comrades sacrificed themselves to facilitate their escape. Sehyun Kim acknowledges their loyalty and selflessness, but notes that there are still more opponents ahead, indicating the approaching South Gangbok High students. Fahyun Kim observes that it feels like their opponents are increasing in number, and that the situation won't be easy. Meanwhile, Yi Ha Han swiftly attacks Dong Yu Wang, prompting Sehyun Kim to marvel at Yi Ha Han's speed. Yi Ha Han also knocks out Yong Bang, causing one of their comrades to remark that their opponent is indeed Yi Ha Han. So Hyun Kim acknowledges Yi Ha Han's incredible speed and strength. He advises everyone to stay focused, realizing that having the powerful Yi Ha Han as an ally is advantageous. He expresses gratitude for their alliance and acknowledges Yi Ha Han's formidable abilities, describing him as a beast. 
Yi Han then urges Seo Hyun Kim to join the fray and not just stand there watching, indicating that he has cleared the way. He proceeds to attack their opponent with a straight punch, as indicated by the quest window notification. He realizes that Yi Han moves too fast for him to follow and notes that Yi Han seems different from before. The quest window indicates that Yi Han threw a spinning back kick using the Dempsey roll technique. He acknowledges that Yi Han has become much stronger and is no longer the same opponent he faced earlier. He anticipates that Yi Han will be quite challenging to deal with. Yi Han asks him how he managed to get so much stronger in such a short time while defeating Junyol Bang and Yongi Bang severely. He considers that once they are no longer allies, they will face a difficult battle. Suhyun Kim addresses everyone, stating that things aren't looking good and the enemies keep coming. He suggests that they won't be able to escape together and proposes that they split up now. He suggests that they split up and each make their way out of there safely, agreeing to meet back at West Gangbuk High. However, he wonders about his liege, Siak Kang. Suhyun Kim mentions that Siak Kang has hidden his crew members at every turn and suggests knocking them out and running away. Yi Ha Han warns that if they waste any more time, Siak Kang will send more of his people, advising them to keep running to avoid getting surrounded. Some people run behind Haru Siang, commenting on her speed and suggesting capturing her, but she jumps to the other side of the wall, reiterating that she's not a girl. Some punks say, grab them, it's Ha Jun Gu and Hyun Dong Li, while they both attack them. Hyun Dong Li says he's honored to fight side by side with Ha Jun Gu, and Ha Jun Gu tells him to shut up. Meanwhile, Kyu Jaya also runs and sees a cat on the way. He sits near it and makes it eat some food, saying he can't resist those eyes and telling the cat to enjoy the food. Ji Hyun Lee comes from behind and hits him, and the cat gets scared and runs away. He asks who dares to do this to him, looks at her, and says so, this is to be his fate. Before she strikes him dead, he asks for her name. He thinks it is her who will meet her end at his hands and thinks it's not a bad way to go out. She abuses him and tries to attack him again, but the cat attacks her, causing her to slip. He grabs her and says, careful, such a bad kitty, scaring her like that. He further remarks that even someone seemingly as perfect as her would have such a human flaw and calls her a bad kitty too. Meanwhile, Sohyun Kim and Yi Ha Han run together and he tells Yi Ha Han to hold on. He mentions that he thinks they have lost the South Gangbuk crew. Yi Ha Han asks him and starts laughing. So Hyun Kim asks what it is and why he is suddenly laughing. Yi Ha Han replies that if he were Siak Kang, he would have hidden some of his people around there. So Hyun Kim reminds him that he said that earlier too, and they ended up getting ambushed. He tells Yi Ha Han to stop saying stuff like that, as he might jinx them. Yi Ha Han replies that they do not need to worry because they are now in East Gangbuk territory, where some people come there and tell Yi Ha Han to welcome them back. After all the fighting and running, they manage to escape the Gangbok conference. The quest window also notifies that the quest is complete, and he becomes happy to see this. The quest window notifies him again that he has successfully escaped the Gangbok conference with Yi Ha Han, completing one out of one quest, which rewards him with one gold card. He receives the normal card CHCH changes, is this real him, and wonders what it means. Haru Siong arrives and calls out to him saying she spotted him here while she was running away, so she dashed over. He runs towards her and grabs her, relieved that she made it out, and asks if she's not hurt anywhere. She replies that she's fine, and everyone else seems to be holding their own too. She says she thinks they will all be able to meet back at West Gangbuk High safely, and he replies that's great. He then says, wait a minute, what about Ji Hyuk Jang? Meanwhile, some crew members capture Ji Hyuk Jang and gather around him. One of them asks who he is, and the other one explains that he's West Gangbok's advisor. He then asks what Ji Hyuk Jang is doing there all by himself. Another crew member suggests calling Siak Kang and informing him about the situation. Baeun Sang Jeong arrives and tells Siak Kang that their boys caught West Gangbok's advisor Ji Hyuk Jang. He explains that Ji Hyuk Jang is the advisor to West Gangbok, the one they saw earlier. Baeun Sang Jiang mentions that Ji Hyuk Jang has been making their lives difficult lately and insists that, for South Gangbok's sake, they need to eliminate him immediately. Jiak Kang asks if they are attacking Ji Hyuk Jang right now, and he replies that Ji Hyuk Jang is standing right in front of them. Siak Kang declares that he will end that little prick himself. He instructs them to wait for him, as he'll be right there. 
but in the meantime, they should make sure Ji Hyuk Jang can't run away by breaking his kneecaps. Ji Hyuk Jang becomes emotional and thinks that this is the end of the line for the genius strategist of Gangbuk. A boy runs to attack him, but Ji Hyuk Jang counterattacks and punches him away. Meanwhile, Sohyun Kim says he wanted to use it, but there's no other option. He then gets the upgrade details of the card and sees that it allows the user to switch two crew members' stats for two minutes. It can only be used once per day, and its effect duration is increased by one minute. He considers switching Hajun Gu's stats with Ji Hyuk Jang's while he attacks the Sea Boys and beats them badly. He wonders if this could really happen, feeling like he was a loser in real life, but has been transported to another world where he is the ultimate warrior. He questions if this is a dream, noting that his body feels strange while they all look at him. They ask what just happened, expressing disbelief that he could be this strong, and speculate that he might just go ahead and unite Gangbuk himself. One of the boys attacks Ji Hyuk Jang and asks what he means by uniting Gangbuk, saying not to make him laugh. Another boy also tries to kick him, but he manages to escape from that attack as well, and the boy questions if a nobody like him has any chance. Ji Hyuk Jang thinks there's something inside him fighting to get out, while another boy says to stop acting cool as Ji Hyuk Jang again escapes from their attack. He wonders what this feeling could be, and now he sees it. He kicks that person away and says he is actually cool, realizing that this is what power feels like. Another boy asks if that's it, and he replies that it is anticlimactic. He feels his body burning and wonders why they bothered getting him all excited, feeling like his heart is about to burst. Meanwhile, one of them asks what's up with that little guy and mentions those are Hajun Gu's moves. His friend wonders how he's using Hajun Gu's moves and describes him as an ugly version of Hajun Gu. Another boy questions how this is possible and what's happening. He wonders how an advisor could be that strong. Ji Hyuk Jang laughs and tells them not to worry. After he defeats all of them, Siok Kang will be next. He mentions they'll have the honor of witnessing that moment. His leader begs him to spare his life, and Ji Hyuk Jang tells them to finish it. They reply that he looks like a stone-cold villain. So Hyun Kim arrives there, slaps him, and says that's enough of that, mentioning he's out of time. The quest window notifies that CHCH changes has reached its time limit. Ji Hyuk Jang asks how they dare do that, abuses him, and asks what's gotten into him. So Hyun Kim replies that he's acting like an asshole now that he's not a weakling anymore. He says anyway, they don't have time for this, and they need to make a run for it. He says let's get out of here now and runs so quickly, while Ji Hyuk Jang follows him and says just be ready to apologize to Hajin Gu. Ji Hyuk Jang says that's not him, those are his glasses. On the other side, Kyu Ya grabs Ji Hyun Lee and says careful, such a bad kitty, scaring her like that, and reflects on how even someone seemingly as perfect as her would have such a human flaw and says she's a bad kitty too. She pushes him back, tells him to get off her, and says she'll shut him up once and for all and runs to attack him. She thinks, how dare he touch her with those filthy hands. What's that cat again? The cat comes in between and growls at her. He says he sees that she's afraid of cats and acknowledges that a day may come when she'll cut him down with her sword, but it is not this day. He says it seems the heavens have decided that their fight is not to go further today, so until they meet again, he walks away. She thinks parting is such sweet sorrow and tells him to stop right there, asking if he's running away. He replies to what she means by running away and says it's preposterous to think he'd run from her, squeezing his heart. He thinks how she could accuse him of such a thing when he has clearly left his heart with her. Byungmin welcomes him back and thanks him for his hard work, and Yi Ha Han sits on a bench while holding a cigarette to his lips. Some boys come to light it up, and he says it was nothing. Byungmin says it was too risky and asks why he didn't bring more people with him to the conference, mentioning that Siak Kang could have seriously hurt him. He asks Byungmin if he knows why he only took a small group of people with him to the conference. Byungmin replies that he doesn't know, and he explains that it's because he knew that Siak Kang would ambush him. He further explains that when Siak Kang gets angry, he'll do whatever it takes to get even, and he fully expected him to launch a surprise attack at the conference. Yi Ha Han asks if he knew it, shouldn't he have taken more of them along with him? He puts his hand on Byungmin's shoulder and says he wouldn't stand to gain anything by doing that, telling him to use his brain. He adds that Siak Kang would only move his troops when there's something in it for him, and Byungmin says he's not sure he follows. He asks what Siak Kang did in order to ambush them, 
and Byungman explains that Siak Kang summoned all of his fighters to the conference. He then questions who's left in South Gangbuk, to which Byungman responds with confusion. He clarifies that their main crew is moving out to claim the currently unoccupied South Gangbuk territory, which is how they ultimately profit from all this. Byungman remarks with admiration, saying that Yi Ha Han is incredible and calling him a genius. Yi Ha Han responds, acknowledging that he didn't think he'd attend the conference, and he specifies that he's talking about South Gangbok's second strongest fighter, Yujo Ma. Meanwhile, Hyuja Ya runs swiftly and reaches other team members of his. They notice him and become happy, welcoming him back. Fo Hyun Kim expresses his happiness at seeing him and is impressed that he managed to run all the way there, even though he's hopelessly out of shape. He asks if he's not hurt anywhere. The person replies that he left his heart behind. So Hyun Kim asks what he's talking about. The person replies that he's happy to see that everyone made it out safely and asks if they are heading to West Gangbak High then. So Hyun Kim confirms that they are, mentioning that Ha Jun Gu and Hyun Dong Lee will join them soon and adding that the Gangbuk conference is now over. Kyu Ja Ya laughs and says they should power through now. Yu Jong Na arrives there, grabs Hyun Dong Lee's coat and pulls him with him in a badly injured condition. They all look at him. On the other hand, Byung Min asks Yi Ha Han what kind of guy Yu Jong Na is exactly and Yi Ha Han replies that he is in juvie. Byungman asks for clarification on what that means. Yi Ha Han says he didn't know he had gotten out, and that complicates things, he didn't expect him to come back. They ask how strong he is. He replies that he's not ranked second in South Gangbuk because he's weaker than Siak Kang, he simply chose not to claim the title of top dog. He says Yu Jong Na is about as strong as Siak Kang, and he is. Meanwhile, Yu Jong Na throws Hyun Dong Lee on the floor, and So Hyun Kim abuses him. Kyu Ja Ya also tries to use his left hand sis, but Yu Jong Na kicks him away. Ji Hyok Jang also runs to attack him, but he counterattacks and kicks him away. He says he was a loser in real life, and he turned back into a loser, quickly attacking Haru Siong and knocking her out. She thinks he's strong, she supposes he's ranked second in South Gangbok High for a reason. She thinks she's still faster than him and runs to attack him again. Her attack doesn't affect him and she asks if she is too weak. She thinks her kick didn't affect him at all and realizes this is kickboxing. He grabs her head and kicks her in the face. He tries to punch her, but she escapes and falls down, and So Hyun Kim grabs her unconsciously. He gets up and abuses Yu Jong Na, saying he heard he was a criminal, but never expected him to stoop so low as to hit a girl. The quest window notifies that a side quest has been created, titled Fight and Defeat Yu Jong Na, with a reward of one gold card. He asks what the hell, not in a chatty mood, and says he'll make him talk then. Yu Jong Na tries to punch him, while the quest window notifies him that he is using the weaving technique. So Hyun Kim thinks, so this is what S plus speed feels like and realizes that this fight nearly ended before it even started. He thinks he needs to fight back with a low kick, but when he kicks, he realizes Yu Jong Na is so strong. He attempts to kick him again, but Su Hyun Kim finds it difficult to escape. He feels like his legs are about to explode and wonders what he should do next, but before he can think further, Yu Jong Na kicks him again and flips him in the air upside down. As he falls to the ground, he looks at Yu Jong Na and realizes he needs to fight back. Meanwhile, So Hyun Kim kicks him and pushes him back. He gets up again and prepares for another attack. The quest window notifies that he used the healing bean, and he can't believe he had to use it so early in the fight. He acknowledges Yu Jom Na's strength and asks if he can do him a favor, but Yu Jom Na remains silent and walks towards him. So Hyun Kim thinks there was a beast in South Gangbok High. Yu Jom Na tries to kick him again, but he quickly uses Yet Biap Tijon, Gomak Chigi, and grabs Yu Jom Na's face with both hands. He says, let's do this, and realizes he needs to be relentless, attacking him again and again. He believes he has to overwhelm Yu Jom Na, noting that the biggest advantage of using Yet Biap Tijon is that it's a little known martial art. Yu Jom Na attempts to block his attacks, but So Hyun Kim continues to punch him. He kicks Yu Jom Na away and believes his attacks are definitely working, thinking he can beat him. The quest window notifies him that he used the maximum capacity card. He reflects on Yu Jom Na's endurance, ranked as plus, the same as Chin Hak Young, and remembers when he defeated Chin Hak Young. He believes if it worked on Chin Hak Young, it would work on Yu Jom Na too. He pushes Yu Jom Na back, causing him to bump into the wall. 
the quest window notifies him that he used the moon card, enhancing his strength. He charges at Yujom Na, who weighs 344 pounds and kicks at his face with full force. He apologizes as he uses Hanil Bapki, but Yujom Na takes his arm in front of the attack. He realizes Yujom Na dodged the attack and got hit on the arm instead because he's faster than Chen Hak Yang. Yujom Na punches him back, and he thinks he let his guard down while Yujom Na kicks at his face, and he thinks he should have considered the possibility of him dodging his attack. He realizes he has already resorted to using the second bean. The quest window notifies him that he used the healing bean. A boy gives the phone to Siak Kang and says that it's his phone. Siak Kang replies that he knows it's his phone, and the boy clarifies that he means someone is calling him. Siak Kang says hello, and Yujom Na takes the phone near Sohyun Kim, who says he can do this and keep going. Siak Kang replies good work, Yujom Na, and Sohyun Kim says he can still fight. Siak Kang adds that he'd expect nothing less from him and mentions that he managed to take Sohyun Kim down. Meanwhile, Sohyun Kim thinks it's not over yet and believes he still has the Berserker card left. Once he stops feeling any pain, he'll be able to keep going. But if he uses the Berserker card, he wonders what will happen once his two minutes are up. Siak Kang says he succeeded where others have failed and tells them to grab him and bring him over there. A boy comes near Siak Kang and calls him, and Siak Kang asks what it is now. The boy replies that they have a problem. Their headquarters is under attack by East Gangbok Hai. Siak Kang asks what he means, and the boy replies that it seems like Yi Ha Han knew they'd ambush him at the Gangbok conference. He says Yi Ha Han sent his elite fighters to attack their headquarters, knowing there wouldn't be many of them around to defend it. Siak Kang then asks what they should do now. Baeum Sang Jiang acknowledges that Yi Ha Han knew what they were up to, and he praises Yi Ha Han's skill. Siak Kang suggests taking it one step at a time and asks if Yu Jong is still listening. He notes that it looks like they'll need to finish off Se Hyun Kim first. Yu Jong Na attacks Se Hyun Kim, and Ha Jun Gu approaches from behind. Siak Kang asks if he finished off Se Hyun Kim and inquires why he isn't answering. Yu Jong Na looks behind, and Ha Jun Gu mentions that during their earlier fight, all strength suddenly left his body for some reason. He suggests they go at it again. Siak Kang hears Ha Jun Gu's voice and instructs them first to crush him if Ha Jun Gu is there. Baeum Sang Jiang arrives from behind and informs Siak Kang that their headquarters is under attack, and they need Yu Jong Na to return and fight East Gangbok Hai. Siak Kang hesitates, stating that this is their chance to crush Se Hyun Kim, as they've finally managed to back him into a corner. Baeum Sang Jiang acknowledges that they don't have any other choice at the moment. He reassures him not to worry about Se Hyun Kim, stating that they didn't have him around before, and with his help, they'll be able to take him down whenever they want. He crushes his cigarette and suggests letting West Gangbuk go for today. Meanwhile, Haru Siang sits in her room, holding her bow and feeling defeated as she couldn't do anything during the fight. She questions what she's doing and realizes she needs to become stronger, especially after being badly beaten by Yu Jom Na. She expresses frustration, stating she wants to become stronger and feeling angry. The quest window notifies him about the side quest to fight and defeat Yu Jom Na, which hasn't been completed yet, with a reward of one gold card. Another notification informs him that he failed the side quest as he lies down on his bed. He reflects on his failure, acknowledging that if that were a main quest, he would have been in real trouble. He expresses disbelief at failing the quest, but notes there are no penalties since it's a side quest. He didn't anticipate Yu Jom Na being that strong and acknowledged that Yu Jom Na was a lot stronger than before. He had thought he'd be able to beat anyone in a fight, but Yu Jom Na easily defeated him. He considers that without East Gang Bok Hai's intervention, he would have been in a dire situation, leading him to question if he still has a long way to go. He wonders if he should go to North Gang Bok to train more, and if he needs to put a bag over his head again to get into fights by himself. He considers what he can do to become even stronger, and then the quest window notifies him that a level up quest has been created. He ponders what this could be about and takes a moment to look at the quest window, confirming its contents. He realizes that focusing solely on making himself stronger might not be the complete answer. The quest window then notifies him about a level up quest, stating the objective of awakening crew members with potential rank day or higher, including Guk Jia Yang and Haru Siang. The reward for completing this quest is two superior level up cards for strength and endurance, along with two superior random attack cards. 
he understands that this is an awakening quest and decides that it's time to awaken his crew. The quest window confirms the start of the level up quest. Fahyun Kim asks, but how exactly do they awaken them? He wonders what they are all excited about because he doesn't even know how to make it happen. He recalls that Hyun Dong Lee was the first person to reach awakening and wonders how he managed to do that. He considers if they just need to get the stuffing beaten out of them. His potential is ranked F, so he was really surprised to see Hyun Dong Lee awaken and become stronger. He notes that Haru Siong and Kyu Jia Ye's potentials are ranked a plus and S, respectively, and speculates that once they awaken, they might become as strong as Hajin Gu. The problem is that he doesn't know how to get them to reach awakening. Meanwhile, he asks Cloud if she knows when she reads a book, and she says she doesn't know. He thinks Cloud has been talking funny ever since she started reading that book. He asks if she doesn't know anything about awakening, and she replies as she tells him she doesn't know, calling him a buffoon. He calls her, and she asks what it is. Sehyun Kim asks if he cannot lie down beside Ha Jun Gu's form, and Cloud asks why not. Sehyun Kim said never mind, and Ha Jun Gu said he'd rather it be Ha Jun Gu than Da Hyun. Sehyun Kim asks if that is something he can do too, and Cloud says to sleep well. After a while, in the morning, they all go to school, and the teacher tells them that school sucks. He hates it, and tells them to stop whining. He asks if they are really that annoyed about the new seating arrangement. He says well, it's been a while since they switched things around and asks if they don't fight with their new desk mates and if everybody gets along now. They say okay and Soo Hyun Kim asks what a crazy random happenstance it is and to think they'd end up sitting beside each other. So Ha Young agrees and says sure, asking if he's still angry with her and if he's that pissed about having to sit beside her in class. Karak Beek thinks about what to do, and she recalls that her friend said she was right. She's totally crushing on him and laughs. She thinks seriously, she likes Sehyom Kim. So Ha Young asks if he is crying and wonders if he hates being her deskmate that much. She thinks that now that she has realized how she feels about him, she can't even bear to make eye contact with him. She wonders why she had to get a sign to sit beside him, of all people, and considers what she is going to do now. A student sits with her, points at her hand, and says it's a bug bite. She asks what it is and why he is touching her all of a sudden. He explains that it looks like she has a bug bite on her wrist and suggests that she knows it'll itch less if she presses on it with her nails, asking if she wants him to show her. He adds that he won't if she doesn't want him to. She replies that she doesn't need it, so he makes a cross at her bug bite mark and says there they go, stating it's perfect. He says he thought she said she didn't want him to touch her and asks if she was just being shy. She replies to stop touching her and wonders why she can't tell him no. He says she's welcome and assures her it shouldn't bug her anymore, getting it and laughing. She blushes and thanks him, thinking she can't refuse him at all. Ji Hyuk Jang announces they will now begin the meeting, and Hyun Dong Lee comments that it looks nice, much better than that ribbon, while he tries to scare Haru Siang. Sahyun Kim mentions she told her that the ribbon gets in the way during a fight. Jin Hyak Jang asks if she wants him to start the meeting or not. Sahyun Kim agrees, saying okay, and asks what today's meeting is about. Ji Hyuk Jang explains that Siak Kang has divided his forces into two. He says Siak Kang has entrusted South Gangbuk's western region to Baeom Sang Jeong, and meanwhile Siak Kang is staying in charge of the eastern region to keep East Gangbuk at bay. He explains that some of South Gangbuk's fighters, including Yu Jong Na, are in the west along with Baeom Sang Jian, while others, including Ji Hyun Lee, are with Siak Kang in the east. He notes that it's good for them as they can attack South Gangbuk right away, but it's too risky since Baeom Sang Jian is in the west. He thinks if they attack South Gangbuk now, Baeom Sang Jian could ambush them from the west. So Hyun Kim tries to say something, and he responds that they indeed need to take care of Baeom Sang Jiang before they fight Siak Kang. So Hyun Kim says to wait a minute, and he agrees, acknowledging that fighting Yu Jong Na is inevitable. He adds that he has seen Yu Jong Na's fighting prowess for himself, and it won't be an easy battle. Da Hyun Kim arrives there and opens the door, finally finding So Hyun Kim, and she starts scolding him. He asks why she is freaking out over something so minor and tells her to grow up. She accuses him of going through her wallet again and asks if he is seriously telling her to grow up when he's the one stealing money from his younger sister. He responds that her brother was in dire need of those funds and that they were for the greater good. 
Jihyuk Jang asks who the comely woman is, and Kujaya explains that she's Dahyun Kim, Sehyun Kim's younger sister. Kujaya then grabs her by the shoulder and pushes her out of the class. Jihyuk Jang remarks that at last, the heroine of his heart has appeared, and Dahyun Kim asks who said that about her being a heroine. He apologizes, but Sehyun Kim tells him to just get out of there. Dahyun Kim then looks at Haru Seong and compliments her on being so pretty, noting that there's another girl here too. She looks inside the class and tells him that he'd better replace the money he took. If he doesn't remember, she knows where he lives. He agrees, saying he'll replace it and promises to do so, mentioning that she's such a child. Hyun Dong Lee calls Sahyun Kim and informs him that somebody wants to meet him. Sahyun Kim asks who wants to meet him, and Hyun Dong Lee responds that he doesn't know either, which is why he said somebody. Sahyun Kim acknowledges that it makes sense and wonders who this could be. The scene shifts to the South Gangbuk territory, where Sahyun Kim meets with Hyun Gu Lee, Jif Won Choi, and Dong Soo Park. They confirmed that they were the ones who wanted to meet him, and the reason for their request was that they wanted to join West Gangbok High. Hyungu Lee elaborates, saying it's hard to believe, and Sehyun Kim asks why they want to join West Gangbuk, to which Hyungu Lee explains that it's partly because South Gangbuk seems to be going downhill. But there's a bigger reason as well. He explains that it's because of the dues, and Sehyun Kim inquires about what the dues are. He clarifies that the high schools in South Gangbuk's jurisdiction have to pay monthly dues to Siak Kang. He elaborates that they want to join West Gangbuk because they can no longer afford the unreasonably high dues demanded by South Gangbuk. Sehyun Kim asks if West Gangbuk doesn't collect any dues, and he confirms, saying it's weird to collect dues in the first place. He mentions that Hyun Dong did collect dues initially, but put a stop to that quickly. He expresses that they can no longer tolerate Siak Kang's tyranny and that they don't want to join forces with Yi Ha Han. He pleads with Sehyun Kim to let them join the West Gangbuk forces, and Sehyun Kim agrees, saying sure, why not, and he wonders why he would refuse free territory. He takes hold of his hand and notes that it's freezing, offering to warm it up for him, and expresses gratitude, saying thanks so much. He continues in that case, but before he can finish, someone attacks Sehyun Kim from behind, bidding him goodbye. Haru Siang intervenes and kicks the attacker away, mentioning that their advisor warned them about potential tricks and the need for caution. Ji Huan Choi inquires about who their advisor is, and Hyun Gu Li questions if the advisor already knows what they are planning. She acknowledges that their advisor is quite clever. Kyu Ya checks if Sohyun Kim is hurt anywhere, and Sohyun Kim retaliates using Yet Biap Tichon and Hanyul Babki and attacks them, remarking that they are good. He questions if Baeum Sang Jiang put them up to this and criticizes the resort for cheap tricks, calling him a sneaky individual. A group of boys arrives and comments, look, it's West Gangbuk. It's impressive that he figured out their plan, but unfortunately for him, there are way more than three of them here. The quest window notifies him that a side quest has been created, and Sohyun Kim tells them to convey his thanks to Baeum Sang. They ask what he's thankful for, and he replies that he doesn't know why they're asking that. The quest window notifies that the task is to beat South Gangbok High Thugs, with rewards including one bronze card for beating 10 thugs, one silver card for 15 thugs, and one gold card for beating all thugs. He says it's because, thanks to him, they're going to gain a whole lot of experience. The quest window confirms that the quest is starting and shows him both the level up quest and the side quest. He thinks to himself that today, he's going to awaken these two, no matter what. He calls Haru Siang and Ku Jaya, and they nod their heads. He says it looks like these guys underestimated West Gangbok High and suggests they go. He thinks, just wait, Baeum Sang Jiang. Meanwhile, Baeum Sang Jiang calls Siak Kang. Siak Kang asks why he called and mentions that he must be busy handling things in the east. Siak Kang adds that now that he's overseeing the western region, he wanted a status update and asked if everything was going okay there. He also asks how Baeum Sang's plan to destroy Sohyun Kim is going. Baeum Sang Jiang responds that all is well and explains that he's doing a little test run just to warm up. He mentioned that he was going to launch the main part of his plan right away, but he discovered something very interesting. Siak Kang inquires about what it is, and Baeum Sang Jiang reveals that Sehyun Kim of West Gangbok High has a little sister named Dahyun Kim, as seen on her social media reels. He thinks to himself that things are about to get very interesting indeed. 
Fo Hyun Kim says let's go, while Kyu Jae Ye uses his left hand, Sis, and his right hand, Tema, together forming Systema. They attack a thug and throw him away, clarifying that they meant Systema. Two thugs insult him, saying he just messed up, and another one adds that he definitely heard him say Systema just now. They mention they outnumber them and plan to tear him apart, saying today is the day they crush West Gang Bakai. One of them tries to kick Kyu Jae Ye, but he dodges the attack, replying that he's the one who will tear them apart. Kyu Jae Ye questions if he has to keep dodging like that and mentions that his heart's already been torn to pieces, knocking them all out. He comments that it sounds like they have a complicated backstory, but he doesn't want to know anything about it. Meanwhile, one thug remarks about Ku Jaya, also known as El Diable, expressing surprise at how good he is. Another thug doesn't understand and questions how someone as fat, ugly, and pathetic as Ku Jaya can be so strong. He expresses frustration at how someone so disgusting can also be so strong. Ku Jaya responds, saying, Let's finish this, and the quest window notifies him that he used the driving technique. Sehyun Kim slaps Ku Jaya's bump, and Ku Jaya asks why he did that. Sehyun Kim replies that it was for no reason, which Kyu Jaya finds strange. Sehyun Kim tells him not to mind it and to do what he needs to do, saying he just randomly felt like giving him a slap for some reason. He adds that if Kyu Jaya feels like awakening, he should let them know in advance. Kyu Jaya asks what Sehyun Kim means by awakening. Haru Seung rushes to attack them, and they realize it's a girl. She clarifies that she's not a girl and kicks one of them away. One of them points out Haru Siang from North Gang Bakai and thinks she's going to get stronger. He remarks she's so fine and thinks he won't lose anymore. She attacks another thug and he says, hit him too please, adding that he has been a bad boy. She thinks she's going to win no matter what and focuses on beating Yu Jong Na. She expresses that it's not enough and says she needs to fight stronger opponents no matter what. The quest window notifies him that he used the drive technique while Suhyun Kim slaps Haru Siang. She asks why he did that, finding it weird. He replies that there's no reason for that and tells her to ignore him and get back to whatever she is doing. She asks how she can do that and mentions that he hit her out of nowhere. He asks if that made her want to awaken and stuff, and she asks what he is talking about. He wonders why none of them are awakening and considers if there is a specific condition that needs to be met to awaken a crew member. He thinks he thought getting hit in the middle of a fight would do it and wonders if maybe he should have hit them harder. He suggests trying a Dempsey roll, but then quickly adds, please don't try anything weird. The quest window notifies him that he has beaten all of his enemies, completing the quest. He thinks to himself that it's already over. Sehyun Kim sits at one of their chests and expresses frustration that he wasn't able to awaken either of them. He cries out, please don't kill him. Sehyun Kim asks how exactly he is supposed to awaken them and how he can complete this quest when he has no idea how awakening works. He thinks he did manage to complete this quest at least. He receives a gold card, which is a normal card, strong against the weak and weak against the strong. He says he despises people who are strong against the weak and weak against the strong, and its details will be disclosed in another card. After a while, Sehyun Kim lies down on his bed and says, finally, it's the weekend. It feels like it's been a while since he was able to relax like this. He thinks it's been a long week. He says he's tired of trying to figure out this awakening thing and asks if the system can give him a hint or something. He wonders if they need some kind of trigger or catalyst to awaken as that's how it usually works in video games. He wonders when he will be able to take Bam Sang Jiang down. Da Hyun Kim asks where their mom is and calls out to her as a mom. He replies that she's out with her friends, so he's the useless bum watching television. She responds that he's just stating facts and asks if he's trying to pick a fight. So Hyun Kim interjects, saying if anyone's the useless bum here it's her, as she's the one leeching off mom while trying to make it as an influencer or whatever. She asks what the hell he is talking about and insists that she actually makes money from her content. He replies, please, his cell phone plan costs more than whatever he makes, and tells her to stop bullying him, but she kicks him. He asks if she is trying to kill him. She retorts that he better be nice to her and asks why he should do that. She then shows him her social media account and says Venus Kim asked her to collaborate with her. He asks who that is and she responds that he doesn't know who Venus Kim is. She adds that she's 19 years old and an up-and-coming YouTuber. 
She mentions that she's reached over 500,000 subscribers by showcasing her many talents and says she's very popular right now. She continues, saying she guesses she's been keeping an eye on his channel and asks if he wants to collaborate with her on a live stream over the weekend. He asks if they're going to live stream together for two days straight. He gets up, scratches his head, walks out and says, do whatever she wants, mentioning that being featured on her live stream won't turn him into a successful influencer. She responds, shut up. Once she makes it big, she's never speaking to him again. He retorts, go ahead and make it big. He'll tell the world what an asshole he is. After a while, Dahyun Kim and Venus Kim come on the live stream. Venus Kim says alright, now they'll be taking a quick break, and some people comment on them. She adds don't worry, the two of them are streaming all weekend, and don't forget to subscribe to Dahyun's channel. Venus Kim stops the live stream and says okay then, see them soon. Dahyun Kim expressed that it was terrible, and she was so sorry. She adds that she didn't expect so many people to be watching, and she got too nervous to say anything, completely ruining the vibe. Venus Kim reassures her, saying it's okay. She mentions that they might be leaving rude comments, but to be honest, all they care about is looks. She adds that as soon as they restart the stream, they'll all come back. She concludes by saying they just like to talk negatively. Dahyun Kim acknowledges that it was still really nice of her to invite her to her live stream, but she's not feeling great about it. She says don't worry about it. It's his first time doing this after all, and they're going to be streaming all weekend anyway. She adds that once she gets into the swing of things, her energy levels will naturally go up. Dahyun Kim asks Venus Kim if he could ask her for a favor, and she inquires about the favor. Dahyun Kim asks if her friends can join the live stream too, mentioning that she's way more upbeat and energetic when she's with his friends if they are cute. Venus Kim replies, absolutely. She adds that the next part she has planned will be better with more people, but she asks if her friends are okay with being on a live stream. Dahyun Kim assures her that she'll keep them in line, and Venus Kim replies, let's do that then. She mentions that with a little bit of effort, they should be able to have a super fun live stream, and says she's just going to step out for a moment. Dahyun Kim says it sounds good and mentions he's going to text his friends the address. She steps out while talking on the phone and says it's her. Baeum Sang Jeong asks her how things are going with Dahyun Kim. She responds that she's streaming with her, obviously and he asks for her impression of her. She says she's a complete moron, she's got nothing between the ears, and he comments that's good. She says she'll get closer to her by live streaming with her over the weekend, and that she's going to ask her friends to join too if that's okay. He replies sure it doesn't matter either way and mentions he just needs Dahyun Kim. He asks when's going to be a good time to do this. She responds that she and Dahyun should be plenty close by tomorrow, so he can probably do what he needs to do tomorrow. He says okay then, they'll get everything ready for tomorrow. Baeum Sang Jeong asks, who was that, and Jingu Oh arrives there, saying, there he is. Jingu Oh asks if he was talking to a girl just now, mentioning that it sounded like a girl's voice. He replies that it was So Huey Lee, a client of theirs, and she's live streaming with Dahyun Kim. Jingu Oh comments to Dahyun Kim that she's hot, and he responds that he's disgusting. He adds that So Huey's gotten pretty close with Dahyun Kim, and anyway, everything's going according to plan. He mentions that they are going to target Dahyun Kim tomorrow, and says So Huey will bring her here under the pretext of the post stream party. They'll ply Dahyun Kim with alcohol, then get her to do drugs. He specifies fentanyl, an opioid, and their bread and butter, adding that they'll give her quite a few doses over a period of time and get her hooked. He explains that not only will getting addicted ruin her life, but she'll also be looking for more drugs. He mentions they'll then use her to threaten Sahyun Kim, and they'll be able to score both West Gangbak High and a new client without any bloodshed. On the other side, Dahyun Kim says, come on in and adds, here they are when Soha Yang arrives there with Venus Kim. She introduces them as her friends and thinks her plan is foolproof. She says this is Soha Yang and Haru Siang. Haru Siang wonders what she is doing there. Soha Young asks why it's taking her so long and mentions she should be here by her side. Dahyun Kim says excuse her. Haru Siang asks if she's talking to her and Soha Young clarifies that she's a member of Sehyun Kim's posse. Haru Siang agrees saying yeah she is. Soha Young asks for her name and she replies that her name is Haru Siang, adding that she should give her number. 
Haru Siong asks why she wants her number, and she replies that it's because she wants to be friends with her. She gives her the phone and says, here she goes. So Ha Yang remarks that she said her name was Haru Siong and thinks she's pretty, suggesting she should invite her to join next time she's filming a video. Dao Hyun Kim asks what the hell this is and why she is here while looking at Haru Siong. So Hyun Kim hugs Ha Jun Gu and says, it's too hot in here, copy cloud. The quest window notifies that a new main quest is available and instructs him to save his sister and rescue Da Hyun Kim with an ally, which rewards one platinum card. So Hyun Kim asks what this means, why it's asking him to rescue Da Hyun Kim, and if the quest window is half asleep too. He wonders what a rescue quest with an ally is. Chin Hak Yong asks why So Ha Yong isn't picking up his call, while So Hyun Kim asks who the ally is. He asks what's going on here. The quest window notifies that the main quest is starting. In the morning, So Hyun Kim gets up and remarks, now it's the weekend, can't he sleep in? His mother replies, pipe down, he can sleep in if he wants, but he should still eat on time. He agrees, saying he'll go back to bed after he eats. She mentions she's going to vacuum after breakfast. He asks his mom why she has to be like that. He wonders where his sister has gone. His mother scolds him not to call his sister an asshole and explains that Da Hyun Kim is doing some new YouTube collaboration or whatever all weekend. He acknowledges and asks if he can't make Da Hyun Kim stop all that live streaming and dancing in front of the camera, saying it's a disgrace to the family. She asks why not, suggesting they let her enjoy her youth. She also questions why he thinks they are the royal family and why he doesn't do anything with his life. Meanwhile, he explains that he's trying to unify Gangbuck, and the quest window notifies him again about rescuing his sister with an ally, with a reward of one platinum card for that quest. He thinks he got a quest in the middle of the night. He asks his mom for Da Hyun Kim's number, and she replies that he doesn't know his sister's phone number. He thinks he's supposed to save her and calls her while eating food, wondering what he has to save her from. She picks up the call and asks who it is. He replies that it's her brother and thinks she sounds completely fine. He asks where she is and what she is up to right now. She replies that she's at Venus Kim's house, getting ready to livestream again, and asks if he already let mom know, questioning why he cares. He says whatever he wants and asks who is telling him what to do. He says, cut that out and come home right now, while he cleans the dishes. He tells her to listen to her brother and come home, and she replies no way. She says they are live streaming until the evening and mentions they made a promise to the viewers. He responds fine, saying he doesn't care whether she streams or not, and adds that she should buy him something nice with all the money she earns. She retorts that she doesn't waste her time talking to scammers. She compliments Venus Kim on her dress, and Venus thanks her, saying she looks cute too. She replies that she knows, and he thinks it doesn't sound like there's anything for him to worry about, so why is he being asked to save her? After a while, they both finish their livestream, and Venus Kim says they are done. Dahyun Kim thanked her for all her hard work, and she replied that she was welcome. Dahyun Kim compliments everyone's good work, and she asks why she is here. Dahyun Kim explains that she was really surprised and got way more upbeat and energetic with her friends around. She thanks them both for joining them. Dahyun Kim says she's welcome, and she replies that they should check her subscriber count, as it should have gone up quite a bit after all the streaming they did yesterday and today. Dahyun Kim checks her phone and confirms the increase, saying this is all thanks to her. She modestly refuses and says it's because she was good. Haru Siang asks why she is here, and So Ha Yang asks if this means she's going to become a celebrity. Venus Kim asks what the three are going to do now that the live streams are over. Dahyun Kim and So Ha Yang try to get Haru Siang up, and she says they'll probably head home. She says she doesn't care what she does and why she's asking. Venus Kim suggests celebrating a bit. Dahyun Kim says that she does and asks if they want to go to an after party. Dahyun Kim asks what's meant by the after party, and Venus Kim replies that they all worked really hard today, and it'd be a shame to just go home without having a little fun first. She suggests Haru Siang should come to a party with her friends instead. Dahyun Kim tries to say something, but Venus Kim insists, saying it's going to be super fun. Sehyun Kim texts Kyu Ya to ask if he is interested in the awakening by any chance, and he replies by asking about his back muscles and if he has been working out lately. Sehyun Kim says it doesn't look like he wants to awaken and asks how the heck he does awaken them. 
He says maybe he could get another fateful meeting card and asks how he does get another one of those. He thinks he doesn't recognize the number but picks up the call and says hello. The other person says it's him, Bam Sang Jiang and Sehyun Kim thinks, how did he get his number? He shouts, asking how he got his number, and abuses him, saying that's right. Bam Sang Jiang says it was on his Instagram, and he replies, so what is this about and asks what he is planning. He says thanks for sending a welcome party by the way. He asks how dare he try to trick him by making them lie to him about wanting to join Gangbuck. Bam Sang Jiang replies yeah he did that and says he should give up on whatever he has planned as their advisor is way smarter than his. Bam Sang Jiang says he's not an only child, which shocks Sehyun Kim. He continues, saying that he has an adorable little sister at home who is a live streamer. He has watched her videos and she's very hardworking, but it seems like the two of them aren't very close. Bam Sang Jiang adds that Ji Hyok Jang might be smarter than him, but he's capable of playing dirty. Su Hyun Kim asks, messing with his family, that's stooping a little low. Bayom Sang Jiang counters, asking why he shouldn't mess with his family when he knows how much money they stand to make in dues if they take over West Gangbok High too. Su Hyun Kim replies that he's going to take him down. If he messes with his family, he's going to beat him up and says he's going to beat him to within an inch of his life. He says he won't stop even if he begs for mercy, so he thinks it over carefully. Bam Sang Jiang says just to try him, he can threaten him with anything he likes, but the wheels are already in motion. After a while, Dahyun Kim and So Ha Young sit together at the after party. Dahyun Kim wonders what this is about and thinks he came along because Venus said this was an after party. Venus Kim pours some drink into a glass and asks where her pretty friend is. She asks where her friends are and thinks that all they're doing is drinking. She says she was tired, so she went home. Venus Kim agrees, saying that's too bad, it would have been fun if she had joined them. She replies right, but she is tired and thinks they're talking about Haru Siong. Jingu Oh remarks that she's pretty, and she apologizes. He asks what her name is, and she replies that her name is Dahyun Kim. He says even her name is pretty, and she thanks him but thinks, what the heck is up with this rascal? He asks if she has always been like this, and she asks what he means by that. He asks if she always comes out to drink booze with guys she doesn't know, and if she has always been a bad girl. She says she didn't know there would be guys here and thinks, seriously, what is this? He's a total creep. She says she only came along because Venus Kim said this was an after party. He asks if she has a boyfriend, and she refuses. He asks if she's not lying to him, and she replies that she has never even had a boyfriend. Venus Kim hugs Dahyun and calls her, saying making money is tough and if she doesn't think so. Dahyun replies she doesn't know about all that, she just enjoys live streaming because it's fun. Venus Kim asks oh really, and if she wants to know how much money she makes. She asks if it's okay for her to tell her, and Venus Kim says sure, why not, and says she makes 8 million won every month. She asks if she makes that much. Venus Kim says at first, she was floundering like her, not getting many new subscribers, but after she figured out how to be more engaging on live streams, her channel really took off. Venus Kim asks how about it and if she wants to know her secret. She asks really, and she confirms and says to tell her, as she wants to make lots of money too. Cheng Ju Min says okay, he brought them with him anyway, and they both ask what those are. He replies don't worry, it's nothing sketchy, it's like a different sort of thing, breathe it in, and they'll start feeling good, and says they won't find anything like that in South Korea. She replies it's not something weird. Venus Kim says this is her secret, and she got way more subscribers after she started using it while whispering in Dahyun Kim's ear. She further says that her subscribers loved how fired up she was, and Dahyun Kim asks really. She asks if she wants to try it too saying it helps her focus, so she'll be able to study better too. Cheng Ju Min thinks she's good. He has lost count of the number of people Venus has managed to get hooked on this stuff. She says still, something doesn't feel right, and here, just take one. He thinks this is fentanyl, their bread and butter. Once she gets hooked, it's practically impossible to stop, and it doesn't matter how smart she is. He says anyone can become addicted to this stuff. They both take it, feeling sketchy, and he says they have both got on, and they confirm, and he thinks it's time to turn them into addicts. He says to breathe it in slowly while Haru Siong comes in between and kicks him away, and Dahyun Kim and Soha Yang become shocked. Haru Siong says that's fentanyl, 
It's said to be a hundred times more potent than heroin, and it's a very popular drug these days. They were trying to get the two of them addicted. He gets up and says they almost had those bitches, and asks where did she come from. Jinguo says she's pretty and asks what her name is, and she replies she's not telling him. She recalls that when she talked on the call, she seemed a little fishy, so the after party was a trap. She asked how long it would take her to get here, Sohyun Kim. He replies he thinks it's going to take him a little while. Haru Seong puts a card in front of Dahyun Kim and So Ha Young, and she thinks okay, don't worry, she will manage somehow. She says to stay behind her, and she'll protect her. The scene shifts to a bar in North Gangbok territory, where a boy arrives and firmly states, absolutely not. Why is he heading there alone? He adds it may only be South Gangbok, but it's still enemy territory if something were to happen to him. Chen Hak Yong interjects, mentioning that Nietzsche once said it is a brother's duty to save his younger sister. If that's what Nietzsche said, he guesses it can't be helped. However, he still questions why North Gangbuk would need to worry about that if this escalates to an all-out war with South Gangbuk. Deciding quickly, he announces, well then, he'll be right back, and rushes there on a bike, thinking, So Ha Young, wait just a little longer. Meanwhile, Yoong Yi Oh attempts to attack So Ha Young, but Haru Seong kicks him away and instructs her to step back. Haru Seong ponders her next move, realizing there are too many of them. Soon, some punks arrive, and one of them says, kill the hottie, adding that they shouldn't just focus on that one hottie, but also go after the other hotties to ensure they don't feel left out. Meanwhile, Haru Seong grabs So Ha Young and says, get out of the way, thinking that she needs to keep these girls safe. She realizes she can't fight properly, but decides to lead the way and punches a boy. Another boy runs to punch her, but she manages to escape from his attack, telling So Ha Young to watch her back. Haru Seong acknowledges that she has no choice, she needs to hold out for as long as possible and expresses that he's gross, thinking to wait for So Hyun Kim to get here. Jingu Oh asks if he's sure about something, and Chang Ju Min encourages him to be positive. Chang Ju Min recalls the pretty ones, and Jingu Oh confirms that the person in question is Haru Seong from West Gangbok High, who attended the Gangbok conference. Chang Ju Min picks up the call, and Baeum Sang Jiang inquires about how things are going over there. Chang Ju Min replies that some rascals, including Haru Seong, showed up and complicated things. He adds that apparently Haru and Dahyun Kim are friends, which surprises Baeum Sang Jiang, as that information wasn't included in the intel he received about Dahyun Kim. He responds that Haru Seong is fighting by herself and mentions that he guesses she's trying to hold out until So Hyun Kim gets here. Baeum Sang Jiang interjects, stating that So Hyun Kim won't be able to arrive right away. He explains that they have stationed their boys on the route So Hyun Kim is likely to take to get there, and it'll take some time for him to get through them all, which means they have plenty of time to work on Da Hyun Kim. Baeum Sang Jiang insists, still finishing Haru Seong off as quickly as he can. He doesn't want any more surprises. Chang Ju Min reassures him, saying, Don't worry, Jingu's already on it. Jingu Oh runs to attack her and comments that she makes pretty noises, which she finds different. Cheng Ju Min notices the difference in Jingu Oh and affirms that they do too. Da Hyun Kim and So Ha Yan beat some punks and look at him. He declares that he may not be as strong as Siak Kang or Yu Jong Na, but he's the third strongest fighter in South Gang Buk Hai. Jin Hu Oh grabs Haru Siong and kicks at her face. She thinks he's strong, but she's confident and spits at his face. Haru Siong then comes from behind, grabs his face and punches his back thinking that she'll be faster and attack at maximum speed. She punches him again and again, believing that one hit to the jaw will end it all. Jin Hu Oh remarks that even her spit is pretty and asks if this is the kind of thing she's into. Haru Seong wonders if he saw her punch coming, but she doesn't believe it. He punches her away, saying something about spitting on guys, grabs her tightly, and accuses her of being a bad girl before throwing her on the floor, thinking that he's faster than her. Haru Seong wonders how he can say such things, and he asks if she really knows how to drive a man wild. He grabs her hand and tries to remove her shirt, saying she must be all hot and bothered from the fight and offering to help her cool down. Cheng Ju Min orders them to stop fooling around and emphasizes that they need to finish this before Su Hyun Kim gets here. He agrees, saying right, these two were first, and walks towards Da Hyun Kim and So Ha Yang. Jin Hu Oh asks what Bam Song Jiang said, and he responds, well the plan to turn them into addicts failed. They need to make sure Sohyun Kim can't try anything, even if he gets here. 
Do that thing you're good at, he instructs, take some pictures of them. We'll use them to blackmail Sohyun Kim once he arrives. Jin Hu Oh expresses his enthusiasm, asking if he has to take some photos, as that sounds good to him. He mentions that he has been wanting to take some nice pictures of girls for a while and asks who wants to go first. Da Hyun Kim slaps him and berates him, suggesting he just take some selfies if he loves taking pictures so much. She continues to abuse him while he punches her and also abuses her. Jingu Oh remarks that they are the ones who show their midriffs and dance in all sexy ways. He further comments that they are the ones who came to drink with guys they don't even know and suggests they were clearly trying to seduce him. He asserts that, as he told her before, she is beneath him. He adds that she should be grateful for even being ranked 39th and asks how she dare try to come at him again, telling her to know her place. He states that he'll never be able to be beaten and she can try all her life but she'll never even come close. He says she still doesn't get it while grabbing her up in the air. He apologizes for hitting her but justifies it by saying she started it by wearing clothes like this and acting all innocent. He urges them to hurry up and take those pictures. Meanwhile, Sehyun Kim runs so fast that he knocks out the punks on the way. He thinks he needs to hurry and use the CHCH changes card on Haru Siong. The quest window notifies him that his crew member, Haru Siong, is filled with conviction and her potential is skyrocketing. Jingu Oh looks at Haru Siong as she stands there, and the quest window notifies her that Haru Siong's potential has reached its peak. Congratulations are in order, and it informs that her potential has awakened. The quest window further notifies that as a special reward for the awakening of Haru Siong's potential, her stamina has been restored. She adjusts something at her buttocks and comments that it's a pain in the ass. Chang Ju Min tells him to keep going and assures him that he'll deal with this one placing a hand on Haru Siang's shoulder. He suggests further that in addition to Da Hyun Kim, they can use this girl to threaten Sa Hyun Kim while she grabs him by the neck and throws him in front of her on the floor, placing a hand on his head. Jingu Oh runs to attack her and comments that she's cute. The quest window notifies that as a reward for the awakening of Haru Siang's potential, he has received a Haru Siang exclusive attack card. Jingu Oh announces that he'll start by taking her pictures. The quest window further notifies him that he has claimed a Haru Siong exclusive attack card, the Capoeira card, which grants the user the ability to use Capoeira. If the opponent's speed is lower than that of the user, the opponent receives critical damage. The quest window then notifies again that she used the Capoeira skill to kick Jingu Oh and throw him away, noting that the opponent's speed is lower than that of Haru Siong, and she punches at his neck as well. Da Hyun Kim lies down on the floor in the lap of Soha Young, crying as she says, Stop crying, Soha, and expresses disbelief that she got punched in the stomach like that. She also thanks Haru Siong for saving her. Sa Hyun Kim arrives there and calls Jingu Oh and Chang Ju Min, saying that Sa Hyun Kim is here and that they can't stop while he looks at Haru Siong. He pauses as a punk, suggests that he might be at the wrong construction site, and apologizes, claiming to be an innocent bystander minding his own business and having nothing to do with North Gangbuk. Sahyon Kim punches him and throws him on the floor. Dahyon Kim sees him and calls him, and he also sees her and calls her sister, grabbing her hair and asking why she is not answering his phone, and he abuses her. She tells him that it hurts and to take it easy, mentioning that one of those rascals got punched her, which he knows. He explains that he ran all the way here from home because of her, and she threatens to tell mom that he was drinking alcohol. He pleads with her not to tell and asserts that he didn't even drink anything. Meanwhile, Soha Yang arrives there and quickly hugs him, expressing that she is very scared and winks her eye. He replies of course she was and adds, none of this is her fault. He mentions that her only crime is having a ugly friend like Daehyun Kim and puts a hand on her head, apologizing for what she had to go through. Haru Siong arrives there and asks about herself, stating that she's the one who really went through it and he looks at her. He agrees, saying yes of course and thanks her for keeping them safe. He then asks if she wants to go get something to eat as he'll buy it. She refuses, saying she's good and he thinks she's so strong. They tie up Venus Kim and discuss starting the after party. She refuses and tells Dahyun that it's all just a misunderstanding, explaining that she only did it because they threatened him, as he's a drug addict with a tragic backstory. 
Da Hyun Kim punches her and says, see for herself how that feels, adding that it looked and felt incredible, and no wonder people are always gut punching each other in movies. Haru Seung asks So Hyun Kim what he is doing, and he replies that he is doing nothing. She says it seems like he's looking at something, but he denies it, saying he's not looking at anything in particular. He thinks that's weird and wonders why the quest isn't showing up as complete. The quest window notifies him that rescuing Daehyun Kim with an ally isn't complete yet. He wonders why the quest isn't complete yet, as he believes he saved Daehyun Kim. Daehyun Kim suggests to Soha Young that she try it too and says it feels exhilarating, but Soha Young replies that she can't do it. He wonders if it is because he hasn't met this so-called ally, or if he is supposed to hunt down Baeum Sang Jiang since he's the one who came up with this whole scheme. He wonders where Baeum Sang Jiang is and realizes he has no idea where he is right now. He looks at the quest window while Haru Siang comes from behind and suggests just checking the floor. He contemplates if there is a way to find out and concludes that yes, there is while looking at Venus Kim. He tells her to stop that and Daehyun Kim asks why he wants that. He replies, cut it out and explains that he has a plan and he's going to need her help. The scene shifts to the South Gangbok High Warehouse, where Baeum Sang Jiang is looking at some documents and comments, so he manages to escape from Sohyun Kim. Chang Ju Min confirms this, saying that's right, and adds that he didn't expect him to be that strong. He reflects on how close it was, mentioning that he almost had him, and then asks, where is Jingu O? Oh? Chang Ju Min explains that he's trying to lose Sohyun Kim and mentions that he said he'd buy him some time so he could make a run for it. He continues, saying anyway, where are they, and adds that he didn't know they had a place like this. Baeum Sang Jiang responds that this is South Gangbuk High's warehouse and mentions that only Siak Kang knows its location. He explains that this is where they store their fentanyl supply and says he had no choice but to tell him about this location because he said he brought that girl with him, and this was the only place they could keep her confined. He adds that he better not be lying to him. Zhang Ju Min then instructs Venus Kim to bring her over there, clarifying that's Da Hyun Kim. Baeum Sang Jiang looks at Da Hyun Kim and confirms that she is indeed Da Hyun Kim. He suggests they can use her as a hostage to get to Sa Hyun Kim and remove the tape from her lips, saying, Now then, let's hear her voice. However, she reveals that she's not Da Hyun Kim, but a copy cloud. He reacts with surprise, asking if he drugged her or something. Chong Ju Min expresses that this is the worst, and he's so sorry. Baeum Sang Jiang asks what's going on and why he is sorry. Chang Ju Min replies that he wasn't able to withstand the cruel torture and sold out South Gang Bakai. The scene shifts to some time earlier, and So Hyun Kim says, let him explain the plan. He continues, saying, first, Da Hyun Kim and So Ha Yang go home. He mentions that their parents must be worried sick. Daehyun Kim asks what he's talking about and says he said he needed their help. She questions if they aren't part of the plan too. Sehyun Kim clarified that this was the plan and urged them to hurry up and go, pointing out that the cab driver was waiting. Daehyun Kim replies fine, they are going. Sehyun Kim notes that now that Daehyun Kim and Soha Yang are safely on their way home, the quest window notifies him that the copy cloud is being summoned. Horu Siung announces that he's back and mentions that she did what he asked by waking those two up. He responds great, thanks honey. She adds that they don't know where Baeum Sang Jiang is either, and he explains that there's a way for them to find out. He suggests that first, they need to tie her up while looking at the copy cloud. Haru Siung expresses confusion, saying she thought she had gone home. He assures her that he'll explain as she's tying her up. He elaborates that the story they will tell is that Da Hyun Kim was captured by South Gangbuk, tied up, and Se Hyun Kim failed to rescue his sister. He continues, saying next is Chang Ju Min. He instructs him to contact Baeum Sang Jiang and tell him he's bringing Da Hyun Kim. Baeum Sang Jiang, wanting to use Da Hyun Kim as a hostage, will then reveal his location. Chang Ju Min agrees, saying fine, he'll do it, and warns him not to give the game away. He emphasizes that if he fails to find out Baeum Sang Jian's location, he's going to start by beating the two of them to a pulp. He thinks about how he'll use the two of them. The scene shifts to the present, where So Hyun Kim mentions that Baeum Sang Jiang found him and reflects on finding out where Baeum Sang Jiang is. He expresses frustration, saying he's laughing at him. Baeum Sang Jiang questions if this was his master plan, using his sister as bait to find him, and calls him a dipshit along with mentioning his precious little sister. They all walk away. 
The quest window notifies that the copy cloud is being recalled, and the copy cloud disappears. Sihyun Kim realizes that Dahyun Kim was right here just now and asks where the hell she is, mentioning that she was tied up until just now. Haru Siang asks what he is doing while Sohyun Kim puts his hand over her eyes. He calls Baeum Sang Jiang and asks if he still hasn't figured out what's about to happen here. He explains that it's simple, he's going to beat the crap out of him. Baeum Sang Jiang lights up his cigarette and asks if he really thinks he's that stupid. He mentions that after Cheng Ju Min called him, he had a bad feeling, so he got in touch with a few of their guys. Sohyun Kim thinks it's not over yet and says his plan is foolproof, he questions if Baeum Sang Jong really thought he'd be all alone in a huge warehouse like this. Sohyun Kim says he'll introduce Baeum Sang Jong to South Gangbok's special unit, the Top Dog Hunting Team. He explains that after hearing that Yi Ha Han created an action team to go after the top dogs of each school, they at South Gangbok High created a team of their own for the same purpose. He mentions that he didn't think he'd end up putting them to work today, and orders his crew to kill them. So Hyun Kim thinks to himself that a true strategist turns a threat into an opportunity. Meanwhile, Chen Hak Yang arrives there on his bike, removes his helmet, and quotes Nietzsche, saying, Who the hell messed with his sister? Bam Song Jiang throws his cigarette away and shouts, asking what North Gangbok High is doing there. So Hyun Kim realizes that Chen Hak Yang is the ally he has been waiting for as he looks at the quest window. He notes that it looks like they are both after the same thing and says, Alright, let's do this. The quest window notifies him about starting the quest. Bam Sang Jiang asks if this is them, and Chang Ju Min confirms that it's correct. He explains that among all the high school students in South Gangbok territory, he selected a bunch who are known to be pretty decent fighters, forming the top dog hunting team. Bam Sang Jiang asks why he had them all put on South Gangbok High's uniform, and Chang Ju Min replies that many of these guys dropped out of school, so he thought it would be difficult to tell them apart from the enemy forces during a fight. He suggests that they should put them in uniforms. Chang Ju Min expresses irritation at Yi Ha Han's action team and notes that at last, they have a special team in place too. He suggests sending half of them to Siak Kang. Meanwhile, Baeum Sang Jiang states that he's keeping the rest and emphasizes the need to take So Hyun Kim down. So Hyun Kim wonders how their special top dog hunting team could have so much difficulty beating that one guy. Chen Hak Yong beats two crew members using the Nietzsche choke while putting his hand on these two punks. One of them asks who he is, and So Hyun Kim thinks he's strong. Chen Hak Yong asks who dared to mess with So Ha Yong, considering endurance, strength, and even technique while beating some other punks. Baeum Sang Jiang questions how someone who's only ranked 20th could be so damn strong. He adds that Nietzsche is such a dope fighter, but tells them to forget about Nietzsche and focus on capturing the cutie to steal her headband and sell it on eBay, making them rich. So Hyun Kim initially thought that Haru Siong, ranked 39th, was the target, but as she attacked the punks, he realized it was a present. He thinks to himself, but it can't be Haru Siong. She can't be that strong or fast. It's impossible, while one of the punks tries to attack her, but she manages to escape his attack. Chen Hak Yang remarks that, most importantly, if someone like her were part of North Gangbok High, they would be ranked much higher than 39th. He ponders how she could become that powerful in such a short amount of time. Bam Sang Jiang asks what they are doing and insists that all of them should attack at the same time and use their brains. So Hyun Kim quickly punches his face and asks how dare he hit him, and he responds by taking out a packet of cigarettes. Baeum Sang Jiang finds it amusing, but points out that Su Hyun Kim seems to have forgotten that he is also one of South Gangbuk's strongest fighters. Su Hyun Kim punches him again and tells him to prepare for a fight. He gets a normal card that is strong against the weak and weak against the strong, which means he dislikes people who are strong against the weak and weak against the strong. With the help of this card, the user's strength is increased by one level if the opponent's endurance is lower than the user's. The quest window notifies that his strength has increased by one level, and he beats Baeum Sang Jiang badly. He grabs his collar and says he told him that if he messes with his family, he's going to kill him. Baeum Sang Jiang says he tried to mess with them, but he never actually did. Haru Siong calls Sehyun Kim and says he seemed calm, so she thought he wasn't that angry, but she guesses not. She thinks he's fiercely protective of the people he cares about as she sees him beating Baeum Sang Jiang so badly. 
After a while, Haru Seong says they are definitely different, and Sohyun Kim says they are scary even though Baeum Sang Jeong is down and they are still fighting. She asks if it is because they are the top dog hunting team and says, by the way, where's that ally of his? He says good question and looks around. Baeum Sang Jeong says it's all over for him. The top dog hunting team isn't the only people he called, and he contacted him too, just in case. Yes, he's coming. Yujul Na is coming. He arrives there and attacks Chin Hak Yong while Sohyun Kim and Haru Seong start running, but some punks block their way and ask where do they think they are going and say they'll need to go through them first. Yujom Na asks him where he is looking, and Chin Hak Yong says they are only getting started. He thinks this stupid is about as strong as he is, but incredibly fast, so he punches him again. Chen Hak Yong tries to block his attack and thinks he can't catch him. He further thinks that he's slower, so he can't block his attacks in time, and he'll increasingly be at a disadvantage the longer this fight goes on. But he has a trick up his sleeve, a powerful attack, and tries to counterattack him, but he escapes from his attack. He thinks that's capable of taking anyone down, while Yu Jong Na again punches him. And he says Nietzsche once said, sometimes, one good hit is enough, and now it's time to land that one good hit. He says he's trapped and thinks he's not confident in his speed, and there is only one thing he's confident about in a single throw with everything he has. Shin Hak Yang grabs him and puts him on the floor, saying he didn't expect to find a monster like him, and that he was at risk of embarrassing himself with that fight. He says he's glad he managed a tie at least, and they are both tired and lie down on the floor. Yu Jong Na gets up and looks at him while he thinks he's getting up. He says how greedy he is, having all that strength and speed and being good at taking hits too. He thinks that is why he wasn't phased even when he was cornered, while Yu Jong Na puts his foot at his mouth. He thinks it's because he was just that confident. So Hyun Kim arrives there, but Haru Siong comes in front of him and tells him to stay back, saying she'll handle this. He questions Dearest if she is sure she doesn't need help. She replies, please don't call her that, Sohyun Kim. He replies, yeah, he gets this, and he runs to attack Yu Jong Na, who also tries to counterattack her, but she escapes from his attack. The quest window notifies him that a side quest has been created, which is revenge, in which crew member Haru Siang fights and defeats Yu Jong Na and gets a reward of one platinum card. She kicks at his face, while the quest window notifies that Haru Siang used the capoeira skill, resulting in a critical hit, and he falls to the ground. He says see he's fine, while Sohyun Kim inquires he would look at that. Haru Siang's so cool, while she says he's too slow for her. Yu Jong Na gets up and punches Haru Siang, and she also punches him back. They both try to defeat each other, and Yu Jong Na grabs her leg, but she jumps to the other side and kicks him. Sohyun Kim sees them and says they both look so badass. She says she thought he was mainly a striker, but he's a grappler too and challenges him to catch her if he can. She then runs to attack him. The quest window notifies that Haru Siong used the capoeira skill, while Pyongwa Peace Kim, who is not ranked at South Gang Buck High, hides behind a pillar and looks at them. He says Yu Jong Na is losing the upper hand, and at this rate, South Gang Buck will really be in trouble. Meanwhile, Sohyun Kim's phone rings, and he takes it out to see who's calling. He checks the screen and wonders why he is being called at this moment. Ji Hyuk Jang is the one calling, and Sehyun answers the call. Ji Hyuk Jang asks Sehyun Kim if he is currently in the South Gangbuk territory. Sehyun Kim confirms that he is indeed there, fighting alongside Haru Siang. Ji Hyuk Jang then informs him that now is not the appropriate time for that. Sehyun Kim asks for clarification on what he means. Ji Hyuk Jang gestures with his hand, attempting to convey something, and Sehyun Kim asks him to explain further and inquire about what he should do next. Ji Hyuk Jang mentions that the fight was intensifying just as Haru Siong kicks Yu Jong Na. Ji Hyuk Jang asserts that they have no alternative. So Hyun Kim acknowledges this and utilizes Yet Biok Tik Jong, executing So Biok Chigi to push back the opposition. Ji Hyuk Jang questions So Hyun Kim's actions, to which So Hyun Kim responds that they cannot afford to waste time on this matter. He states that they need to defeat Yu Jong Na and depart from this location, and she questions why he desires this. He explains that South Gangbok High is en route, and she inquires about its significance. He responds, affirming that this indeed is South Gangbok High's warehouse, where they stash their drugs, and mentions that Ji Hyuk Jang and Siok Kang, aware of this, are sending more of their people their way. 
he expresses concern that all of South Gangbok's high-ranking fighters might be heading their way, and given their current exhaustion, they cannot possibly combat all of South Gangbok. He emphasizes the need to incapacitate Yu Jong Na and vacate the premises promptly, and she attempts to interject, but he insists that they must join forces against him. They both rush to attack him. So Hyun Kim remarks that it's two against one and questions why he is solely targeting him, attempting to punch him, but he evades the attack. So Hyun Kim realizes he doesn't have much time and states that he has to use his cards. The quest window notifies him that he has used the Berserker card for the next two minutes, making him impervious to pain, and another card, the Maximum Capacity card, which increases his weight limit by 220 pounds for the next five seconds. He then uses another card called CHCH Changes, swapping his stats with those of Hajun Gu's. Although he knows this effect will only last for 5 seconds, these stats are his best ones. Prong Hua Peace Kim observes them, and remarks that even Su Hyun Kim has joined the fight, indicating that Yu Jong Na is in trouble at this rate. Su Hyun Kim thinks that's it and tells Haru Siong, let's go. She suggests a war cry, asking if they really need one, to which he responds that it would be nice to have one. They both run together to kick Yu Jom Na, while he sarcastically comments, Go West Gangbuck, that's so lame. He thinks this is it. Yu Jom Na and some other punks are coming here, and one of them asks why all the lights are off. He replies that he thinks someone else is also present, and another person says they can't see anything. Pyong Hua Peace Kim turns on the torch of his phone and says, Yu Jom is over here. He points out Yu Jom Na, and the latter admits to being the one who turned off the lights. So Hyun Kim suggests looking for the light switch first, but she advises him to calm down and warns that if he keeps pushing her, they'll both trip and fall, telling him to stop touching her. He then claims to have found the light switch and urges her to hurry up and flick it, calling her honey. He turns on the switch and confirms that he did, but the lights don't turn on. She asks what that person did and then exclaims that they're back on. He remarks that he guesses Yu Jong Na managed to sneak out while they were distracted and praises the clever trick he pulled with the light switch, suggesting they should perhaps recruit an electrical engineer. She remarks that he's not here, and Baeum Sang Jiang is gone too, questioning how he managed to carry two people out of there in such a short amount of time. She wonders if he's a professionally trained weightlifter, to which he replies that it's also a possibility. He states that if he's carrying two people, he's bound to be slow, and if they give chase, they'll be able to catch them. He adds that it would take too much time for them to finish them off and suggests they leave before the rest of South Gangbok High arrives. So Hyun Kim declares that they've won this round. The quest window notifies him that two quests are complete, with one main quest being to rescue Da Hyun Kim with an ally and the second quest being crew member Haru Siong fighting and defeating Yu Jong Na. The quest window also indicates that he has received two platinum cards and gained two new cards. A normal card called Camera, which is used to show him all this, and another card called Lucky Bag, as the new year approaches. Chungak Yang thanked him for keeping Soha Yang safe and expressed that North Gangbuk is indebted to West Gangbuk. He assures that he will also report this to his higher ups. Sehyun Kim thinks, thank God, while he responds that Chun Gak Yang says Nietzsche once said that even if he forgets those who have wronged him, he must never forget those who have shown him kindness, and then Chun Gak Yang leaves. Sehyun Kim reflects that he never realized he was Bagman Kim. Haru Siang mentions that she supposes the two of them weren't particularly close, and that they had only run into each other a few times, but it's strange that Chun Gak Yang must know who he was. He responds, pondering why Chen Gak Yang would show up and thinking that he has become too strong now. She remarks that they ended up fighting all day yet have very little to show for it. He asks what she means, stating that they have gained a lot, pointing out that they have captured these guys while he looks at the top dog hunting team from South Gangbok High. She asks why he brought them along, and he explains that they have already moved the fentanyl so that they can release them now, and he mentions he has another use for them. He addresses the top dog hunting team, reminding them that they all witnessed how they both defeated Baeum Sang Jiang and Yu Jong Na. He emphasizes that it only took the two of them to take down both opponents, even though West Gangbok High's strongest fighters weren't present. He adds that if Qiu Jia or El Diablo as he may know him, were there, they would all be dead, indicating that he must feel the impact now and stating that South Gangbok High is on the verge of collapse. 
He asserts that although Baeyam Sang Jiang and Yu Jomena might have returned to Siak Kang, they alone will be sufficient to halt the combined forces of West and East Gangbuk. He states that he'll get right to the point and invites them to join West Gangbuk High, mentioning that he's telling them this for their own good. The quest window notifies him about a silver tongue that increases his probability of persuading the other party. They express their willingness to serve, and the quest window indicates that the 15 members of the top dog hunting team have joined West Gangbok High's forces. Later in the morning, the teacher in the class delivers a lecture announcing that they are learning something today. Sehyun Kim sits in the class, reflecting on what a tiring weekend it has been. He never imagined that South Gangbok would target his sister and wonders if they will try to fight even dirtier from now on. He contemplates that they might attempt to harm his family and feels grateful that Haru Siang has reached awakening, although he never expected Haru Siang to gain the upper hand in a fight against Yu Jom Na. He reflects that although they didn't manage to fight all the way to the end, he must say West Gangbok Hai has gotten pretty strong too. Kisik Beek asks if she can borrow his eraser, and he replies that she is sure. She recalls her deskmate who pointed to her bug bite and mentioned that it itches. He asks if there is another bug bite and offers to press on it with his nail again, asking if she wants him to help. He says alright, let him work his magic, and inquires where she was bitten, suggesting the back of her hand again, to which she replies no on the sole of her foot. Karen Beek is lying down on the desk, and Sahyon Kim asks what she means by that, and if she wants him to do it on the bottom of her foot. He says they are all friends, but it's still difficult for her. She asks why he said he'd work his magic. She suddenly feels shy and says never mind then. He refuses and says he doesn't care, but he can't exactly be touching her foot during class, so he'll do it during recess. She moves her foot forward and says just do it, and he asks her if she's sure about that. She confirms it while the teacher is delivering a lecture to the class. He says fine, but if the teacher sees them, he's blaming her, and she agrees to that as well. He says all right then, he's doing it, and he tries to grab her foot. He says that it is all done, and she replies that it shouldn't itch anymore. Meanwhile, the teacher sees them and asks the two of them in the back to stop fooling around in class. The teacher then asked what the two of them were up to just now when Sehyun Kim started reading a book and writing something. The teacher again asks what they did, and he replies that they didn't do anything. The scene shifts to South Gangbok High, where Baeum Sang Jiang bows and says he's sorry. He adds that he lost to Sehyun Kim and mentions that there were some unforeseen variables. He asks for punishment for his failure. Siang Kang says to forget it and that he's not going to punish him. He asks if he has ever seen him slap one of their own. Baeum Sang Jiang thanks him, while Siak Kang slaps him and says he supposes now is a good time to start. Siak Kang asks how he dares to be so confident that he could crush Sehyun Kim, yet he is defeated even with Yu Jong Na and the top dog hunting team. He adds that not only that, he lost the entire top dog hunting team to the West Gangbuk. Siak Kang mentions their supply of fentanyl as well. Bam Sang Jiang apologizes while Siak Kang tells his team and all of them listen carefully. This matter is getting serious because Su Yon Kim has defeated Bam Sang Jiang and claimed their turf in the West. Meanwhile, Yi Ha Han is coming for them from the East. He adds that their main territory is exposed to the West Allied forces. Bam Sang Jiang tells him that he has a plan and asks him to trust him one last time. Siak Kang agrees and says they can't retreat any further. He emphasizes that if they lose this time as well, it'll mean the end of South Gang Bakai. He declares that this is their final battle. On the other side, Sehyun Kim sits in his house and says, Come on, what's wrong? He calls Copy Cloud while she lies down on the bed and doesn't talk to him. She says he used her and explains that she appeared when he summoned her because he told her they were going on an outing, but then he restrained her and subjected her to humiliation. She continues, saying that he, her master, turned her over to the enemy, recalling that incident. He replies to Copy Cloud, saying he was looking forward to it and thinks that if he were in her shoes, he'd be angry too. He thinks Copy Cloud was probably waiting for him, all alone in the dark. He says, okay Cloud, he'll do whatever she asks. Tell him if there's something she'd like to do. He adds also to stop reading so many books. She is more articulate than he is. He wonders why she threw his cell phone and says take a look peasant. He looks at his phone and asks what this is, thinking it is the Seoul World Culture Festival. 
After a while, they both arrive at the festival, and he comments that it is a cultural festival with a large crowd, thinking it is the kind of event Copy Cloud wanted to organize. He then asks Copy Cloud if she is feeling better now. She nods in agreement and says she's glad. He responds, telling her there's no need to nod so much as she's acting like a bubblehead. She acknowledges this and mentions that he's perfectly disguised. He suggests they do some people watching. So Ha Yang arrives and calls him, and he asks if she's also here for the festival. She confirms and mentions she came with a couple of friends from school but lost them in the crowd. Meanwhile, one of her friends asks where So Ha Yang went, and the other friend says she went off by herself, mentioning that she had some business to take care of while they both ate ice cream. She further explains that So Ha Yang suggested they go ahead and have fun without her. The other friend replies all right, it's not like So Ha Yang would ever get lost anyway. So Ha Yang asks if he is here with Da Hyun Kim. Copy Cloud disappears while he asks what she means by Da Hyun Kim. The quest window notifies him that Copy Cloud is recalling, and she says that's strange. She could have sworn she just saw her behind him. He thinks he's sorry, he'll summon her again as soon as possible. So Ha Yong asks if he can help her look for friends. He thinks first he needs to deal with So Ha Yong and says okay, let's find them quickly, walking forward. He thinks he needs to hurry so he can summon the cloud again, and he calls her, grabbing onto his arm like that it's a little hurried. She responds that she doesn't want to lose him too, and he says that it's fair enough. He supposes there are a lot of people around. The quest window notifies him with a blurred message that he is summoning the copy cloud while she calls him and asks what it is. He replies it's nothing. He thinks that was not a notification window popping up just now and says he thought he saw something, but he was mistaken. He realizes he might be just seeing things. The copy cloud reaches a crowded place where many people are shouting a name, Alyssa, and becoming excited, saying they love her, and so on. She moves forward and sees Alyssa, a member of the girl group Parfait, standing on stage and singing a song. She watches her singing while So Ha Yang paints a heart on So Hyun Kim's cheek. He considers this situation as bad, feeling that she's like a force of nature, while she instructs him not to move to prevent the paint from smudging, and he agrees. They then visit an astrologist lady who checks the cards and declares that they are a perfect match. He asks what they are a match for and finds it strange that spending time with her is draining. They both enjoy eating ice cream and she licks the spoon. He tells her that it's his spoon and she apologizes to him. He feels totally overwhelmed by the situation. She expresses that she finds it nice as she didn't expect to end up spending time at this festival with him. He replies that he didn't expect it either and laughs, but in his mind, he feels that he doesn't have time for this and needs to summon the cloud again. He informs her that he needs to use the washroom, and she agrees. He thinks to himself that he doesn't want to disappoint her again. He mentions that he'll be quick while she points out something over there. They both look in that direction and see everyone admiring Alyssa, commenting that she's even prettier in person and mentioning that she's coming their way. Alyssa calls out to Sohyun Kim, surprising him as he asks if she called him and inquires if she knows him. She responds affirmatively, and he wonders who she is. She then explains that she's not someone close to him and asks if he can spend time with her. He pauses, asking her not to tell him and expressing annoyance. He questions how much longer he has to do this girl group stuff and wonders why he can't pivot to acting. She questions if they think she doesn't have what it takes and suggests that maybe she should just quit and go back to her home country. Alyssa's cloud arrives there, and So Ha Yang asks who this is. Alyssa responds that it's none of her business and states that this person is her master. However, she refers to So Hyun as a peasant. Alyssa grabs his hand and takes him with her, causing everyone to become shocked at seeing this. They put their hands over their mouths in surprise, including So Ha Yang, who thinks he is her master. The people start gossiping and So Hyun Kim looks at them. One of them asks if he heard correctly, stating that he's apparently Alyssa's master and wonders if this is really Alyssa. Another person whispers and questions what she means by that, while another girl asks if this is a social experiment or something. So Hyun Kim grabs the hands of So Ha Yang and Alyssa and runs very fast, stating that they need to get out of there. He explains that she's actually his cousin from France and her name is Cloud. So Ha Yang asks if he means Claude, but he refuses and explains that her name is Cloud because her parents were hippies. Meanwhile, she asks if this isn't Alyssa. He replies, no way, she is not Alyssa. 
She responds that he just looks like Alyssa, and he explains that they're both half Korean, which is why they look so alike. He shows her his phone and says see, Alyssa's doing a live stream right now. The people ask her who the guy at the festival is, and she replies what they are talking about. She's been in her car all this time. She then asks if Alyssa really is his cousin, and he confirms yes exactly. She apologizes for her rudeness earlier, expressing that she didn't know he had a French cousin. He laughs and says no worries. She approaches Copy Cloud and speaks in French, asking when she came to Korea. He asks So Ha Young if she has just spoken in French and wonders what to do, realizing that Cloud doesn't know French. She comments on how strange it is, mentioning that she's from France, so why can't she speak French? He mentions that he can explain and wonders how he will talk his way out of it this time while So Ha Young's friends arrive there. One of them remarks that there she is, and another friend says they have been looking all over for her. They mention that they thought she was coming right back after doing whatever it was she had to do. They ask if she's feeling down, mentioning that her mom called. She replies that she should be heading back now. So Ha Young says it looks like it's time for her to go home, and he agrees, waving his hand and saying bye to her, adding that they'll see each other later. He tells Cloud that they are going to enjoy some cousin bonding time and suggests that she should also say goodbye. Cloud responds by saying they should get going, while one of So Ha Young's friends asks what's wrong. She explained that she had been friends with Da Hyun Kim for years, but she had never mentioned having a French cousin. The copy Cloud mentions that they staved off foreign invasion, and Sehyun Kim remarks that he told her to stop reading so much. She wonders why their relationship is different. So Ha Young grabs a spoon in her hand, and her friend asks what she's holding. She replies that she won't give it to anyone and licks the spoon. So Hyun Kim comments on what a disaster it is, thinking that this was supposed to be an ordinary outing, but somehow she ended up copying a K-pop star. She apologizes, addressing him as master, and explains that she thought it would be a good solution, not expecting the situation to escalate to such a degree. He reassures her, saying it's okay and that there's no need to apologize, adding that she must have really wanted to come out. She asks why his face has reddened, and he replies that it's the first time he has seen a celebrity up close. She asks if he likes it, and he becomes shocked, saying copy cloud, this is a bit too much. She grabs his hand and thanks him. He asks what she's thanking him for, and she replies what else, for allowing her to exist in this world, adding that someday she will repay him for what he has done for her. The scene shifts to the club room where Sahyon Kim and his teammates sit together, Kyuja Ya asks if they can meet somewhere else for once, expressing his dissatisfaction with always having meetings in this room. Hyun Dong Lee agrees, mentioning that he's coming all the way from Gangbuk. So Hyun Kim acknowledges that it's a fair point, and Kyuja Ya asks why they always meet there and suggests looking for a new meeting place. He asks, for example, where they should meet when suddenly someone quickly opens the door and shouts that it's an emergency. Sohyun Kim asks what the hell as he is scared and inquires about the matter. He replies that things are really getting out of hand and waves their hands to convey something urgent. Sohyun Kim responds by saying okay, telling them he got the message and thinks that the situation has escalated as the troublemakers have taken to miming. The scene shifts to South Gangbuk High where Siok Kang tells Bam Sang Jiang that everyone's here so he should start the briefing. Bam Sang Jiang replies that he got it and explains, as he points to the map, that South Gangbuk High is in a hopeless predicament. He elaborates that they have lost most of their territory and currently only hold a few areas, with the morale of their troops significantly low. He also notes that it's unlikely that West and East Gangbuk aren't aware of their situation and won't hesitate to attack them. He mentions that this situation is different from their previous small-scale skirmishes, emphasizing that they'll need to battle the combined forces of West and East Gangbuk. He instructs everyone to remember that if they lose this fight, South Gangbuk High will be no more. Siak Kang responds, addressing Baeum Song Jiang and asking about his plan. Baeum Sang Jiang replies that those adversaries are smarter than he is, which is why he knows this plan will work. At that moment, a person enters the room and declares it's an emergency. Siak Kang asks what's going on, and the person responds that East Gang Bak Hai is making their move. Siak Kang wonders if they're coming for Yi Ha Han. Yi Ha Han intervenes, saying that they have already won. Dong Tak Seo suggests letting it be, acknowledging that he can be overly caustic. Si Jong Ryu puts a hand on his shoulder and asks if he doesn't mean overly cautious, 
questioning if it doesn't mean the same thing. Yiha Han remarks that he's an embarrassment to their crew, explaining why people think East Gangbok High is full of idiots, with him being the worst among them. Changgong Yom arrives there as well, while Sijong Ryu states that he'll teach them. He inquires if Su Hyo Kim was called, and Sijong Ru confirms this, adding that his crew is now on their way too. Yiha Han expresses that it's good and suggests going to get Siok Kang to lead them all. On the other side, Hyongdong Lee describes East Gangbok High as having strength in numbers compared to South Gangbok High, which is comparatively few but mighty. He explains that South Gangbok High has many fighters and other talented individuals at its disposal, while East Gangbok High is a group made up of only the most elite fighters. He mentions that those ranked fourth and up in East Gangbok High are scarily talented and are valued and trusted by Yi Ha Han. So Hyun Kim responds by saying well, they've got some good people on their side too. The quest window notifies them of the main quest, which is the fall of South Gangbok High. The first quest is Sehyun Kim's crew fighting and defeating 50 regular combatants of South Gangbok High, and its reward is unknown yet. He adds that they should get going anyway and mentions that today is South Gangbok High's last day. The quest window notifies that the main quest is starting. Ji Hyuk Jang quickly runs and arrives there, saying he can't attack South Gangbok High first. So Hyun Kim asks what he is talking about and mentions that he promised Yi Ha Hang he would attack. Ji Hyuk Jang responds by saying that's precisely the reason he can't attack South Gangbok High. If they strike South Gangbok High, they'll be attacked by Yi Ha Han. Sa Hyun Kim asks why Yi Ha Han would attack them and mentions that West and East Gangbok High are allies. Ji Hyuk Jang explains that South Gangbok High will certainly fall today and they'll be destroyed by the allied forces of East and West Gangbok High. But he asks if Su Hyun Kim has considered what would happen after that. So Hyun Kim explains that after West and East Gangbok High formed an alliance to bring down South Gangbok High, it's crucial to note that this alliance is not permanent. It will end the moment South Gangbok High falls. He tries to say something else, but Ji Hyuk Jang agrees, saying that's right. Ji Hyuk Jang elaborates, stating that once South Gangbok High is no longer there, East Gangbok High might immediately attack them next. He mentions that Yi Ha Han instructed them to strike South Gangbok High first to make them exhaust themselves in battle against South Gangbok. Once they are all worn out, East Gangbok High will come after them, and there's no way they'll be able to fend off both Gangbok Highs in such a state. Ji Hyuk Jang emphasizes that Yi Ha Han is more than capable of resorting to such underhanded means. So Hyun Kim acknowledges Ji Hyuk Jang's advice by telling everybody a round of applause for their advisor, and they all clap for him. Ji Hyuk Jang modestly responds by saying they're making him blush, but he adds that they still need a good excuse. He inquires about what that good excuse is, and he responds that they need to convey that they are not going to be the ones striking South Gangbuk High first. He explains that if they outright refuse their request without providing a reason, it will negatively impact their relationship with them. So Hyun Kim assures them not to worry about that, as he has an idea. He asks if that's really the case, while he thinks alright, first, let's finish this quest. The quest window notifies him about the main quest again. After a while, Yi Ha Han asks a person what Su Hyun Kim said. The person replies that Su Hyun Kim asked him to inform Yi Ha Han that he won't be able to strike South Gangbuk High first. Yi Ha Han asks why that is. The person explains that there are still a few scattered groups loyal to South Gangbuk High. He adds that if Yi Ha Han were to proceed with attacking Siok Kang, those groups might strike him from the rear. He further explains that he will deal with those groups first before turning to Siok Kang, so East Gangbuk High should go ahead and attack him first. He confirms that's the whole message and mentions he'll be going to them, then quickly runs off. Cheng Gong Yong comments that Su Hyun Kim is smarter than they thought, as he caught on to the fact that they were planning to attack him. He adds that it seems like Su Hyun Kim's crew has a half-decent advisor. Yi Ha Han agrees, mentioning someone named Ji Hyuk Jang while he lights up his cigarette. Cheng Gong Yong asks what they are going to do now and asks if they are going to strike South Gangbok High first, as Su Hyun Kim suggested. Yi Ha Han declines, saying there's no need to waste their troops. Instead, he states they'll take care of the South Gangbok High riffraff first. Baeum Sang Jeong states that the alliance between West and East Gangbok High is fragile, assuming the collapse of South Gangbok High is inevitable. He mentions that they will be warily circling each other, both attempting to keep the other in check. 
Baeyong Sang Jiang plans to take advantage of this situation by catching them off guard with an ambush, emphasizing that it's time to divide and conquer. He addresses the West Gangbuk scum, and Hyun Dong Lee responds, saying all right, get ready. The quest window notifies that Hyun Dong Lee uses the tooling skill with a metal pipe, and they attack each other. Hyun Dong Lee mentions that it's not time to play yet and adds that he still has a long way to go if he hopes to catch up to his brother. He commands them to fight and defend South Gangbuk High, calling them the top dog hunting team. They all agree and shout yes, get rid of them. They all agree with him and start attacking them. He asks who these guys are, and he explains that they are the top dog hunting team that used to be on their side. Hyun Dong Lee calls So Hyun Kim and informs him that they have found a South Gangbuk affiliated group and are taking care of it. He asks how things are on his end. So Hyun Kim replies that it's about the same, mentioning that he didn't think there would be so many of them still left and adds that there seems to be no end in sight. Hyun Dong Lee then inquires about East Gangbuk High, and So Hyun Kim responds that they don't even get him started. He explains that East Gangbuk High is now doing the exact same thing. They are trying to buy time so that they won't have to attack South Gangbuk High's main forces first. He further remarks that this situation is serious, wondering if they'll be able to wrap up this battle today. He responds that he knows what a headache it is. Sihyun Kim then asks what it is and questions if he stepped in poop. He also asks what Siak Kang is doing here. Siak Kang recalls that Baum Sang said they would divide and conquer. He explains that currently, both West and East Gangbok High have scattered their forces, supposedly to hunt down the smaller groups in their territory. He mentions that they are too preoccupied with each other to pay attention to South Gangbok High. He states that this is exactly what he anticipated would happen, adding that the high-ranking members of the South Gangbok High crew will ambush East and West Gangbok. He concludes that defeating them will both reduce their numbers and raise their soldiers' morale once more. He states that for this plan to work, he needs to fight too, including Sia Kang. He emphasizes facing off against the top dog, which will strike fear into their enemies' hearts. He believes that for South Gangbok High's sake, its top dog needs to step up. He then comes back to the present and asks if he has finished, finding it unbelievable. Hyun Dong Lee reflects that his attacks didn't phase him at all, while Sia Kang attacks him. He questions if he passed out after a single tackle, and Siok Kang grabs him tightly, causing him to get scared. Siok Kang remarks that South Gangbuk High was bested by weaklings like him, and Hyung Dong Lee's top dog hunting team asks who they have there. He responds that it's the traitorous dog hunting team and removes his shirt, challenging them to see if they can hunt this top dog. On the other side, Chen Gong Yom asks Yi Ha Han if he and Siok Kang fight, who'd win? Yi Ha Han replies that war is fought with brains, not brawn. He questions what does it matter which one of them is stronger, and says he'd like to know just how strong Siak Kang is. He mentions Rhino, his nickname, the Wrestling Rhino. The top dog hunting team gets scared and thinks this is impossible. They say it's the Rhino and warn them to run, or he'll run over them all. They think they can't win against a monster like him. He informs Sahyun Kim that they have a problem, as Siak Kang showed up at Hyundin Lee's current location. He adds that it looks like he's stepping up to divide and conquer, and they were ambushed while their guard was down. Sehyun Kim responds that he never lets his guard down and apologizes, knowing that they might be ambushed. He was careful about how he paired up his best fighters. Kyu Jaya states that he paired Haru Siung with Ji Hyuk Jang and with himself Kyu Jaya. The top dog hunting team runs and says it's the rhino, warning them to run or he'll run them over. He thinks the third and final pair is Hyun Dong Lee and Ha Jun Gu. Ha Jun Gu arrives there, and the quest window notifies him that he used the camera card. He uses a normal card camera, which is really okay to show all this, allowing the user to put up a holographic screen and monitor the surroundings of the crew member of their choice. Fia Kang and Ha Jun Gu come in front of each other, and the quest window notifies him that he used the camera card on Ha Jun Gu. He asks if this is their first fight and says he believes so. Siak Kang replies that their plan was to divide and conquer, but he was hoping to avoid a match with him. He thinks South Gangbok High might have Siak Kang, but they have got Ha Jun Gu, saying it looks like he's starting off with a boss fight. Siak Kang and Ha Jun Gu are fighting each other, and So Hyun Kim remarks that it scared him and that it's finally begun. He thinks that Ha Jun Gu can beat him and believes that Ha Jun Gu is pretty tough. 
he thinks it's time to unleash it, and they both attack each other while he says Hajun Gu, stop making so much noise. Hajun Gu punches Siok Kang's face and beats him badly. A crew member looks at them and comments that it was a clean hit, and this fight might be over fast. His friend replies that no matter how tough Siok Kang might be, Hajun Gu's punches are on another level. He cheers Hajun Gu, he has the upper hand and urges him to finish the fight. He thinks there it is, the Kisi fighting method, and believes that one more hit and he'll win this fight. He considers there's no point in dragging it out while Hajun Gu runs to attack them again and removes his shirt. Yi ha Han asks if he knows why they call Siok Kang the Rhino. He explains further that it's simple. His opponent could beat the crap out of him, but a single tackle from Siok Kang and it's all over. Sahyun Kim looks at the quest window and thinks he's got Hajun Gu, but then he hesitates and says he tackled Hajun Gu. A crew member interjects, saying no, looking closely, and notes that Hajun Gu's keeping Siok Kang at bay, adding that Hajun Gu is strong of course. He thinks he is this close to winning, and his opponent might be the wrestling rhino, but Hajun Gu's strength is nothing to sneeze at either. However, he was also this close to losing, and Siok Kang was pretty fatigued from taking all those hits. If Hajun Gu manages to slip out of Siok Kang's hold and land one good punch, he thinks Hajun Gu will win. Meanwhile, Yi Ha Han explains that they call Siok Kang the Rhino not only for the power on his shoulders, but also because of his personality. He adds that they might be herbivores, but rhinos are aggressive as hell. So Hyun Kim thinks that if Siok Kang's tackle doesn't work the first time, he will keep trying over and over again until it does. As Siok Kang punches Hajun Gu and pushes him back, Hajun Gu realizes he has lost his grip on Siok Kang's hands. Siok Kang grabs him tightly, but Hajun Gu thinks it's okay, he can take one suplex. First, he needs to get Siok Kang off him. However, he realizes there might be an infinite loop of suplexes coming his way as Siok Kang throws him back in a backflip. Hajun Gu exclaims to Rhino, he wins, and he falls to the floor. Siok Kang then calls Baeum Sang Jiang and informs him that he took care of Hajun Gu. Baeum Sang Jiang notes that it's good news as they have successfully divided and conquered and West Gangbuk Hai has lost one of their strongest fighters. He asks Siok Kang how he is doing. Siok Kang replies that he's pretty badly hurt. Baeum Sang Jiang acknowledges this and tells him to come back to base, he'll send a few of their people over there. He also mentioned that he had just received a call from Yu Jom Na. So Hyun Kim thinks that Yi Ha Han doesn't seem so confident now, considering he defeated everyone in East Gangbok High's action team by himself. He tells Yi Ha Han that Yu Jom Na is here, prompting Yi Ha Han to ask for an explanation. So Hyun Kim explains that Yu Jom Na ambushed action team A, who were separated from the rest of their group, and they proved no match for him. None of them are capable of any further battle. Meanwhile, in terms of West Gangbuk High, Hajun Gu has been defeated. He explains that's right, and it seems South Gangbuk High took advantage of the situation between them and West Gangbuk High. Chang Gung Yom comments they got them good. Not only that, West Gangbuk High lost Hajun Gu and asks if he needs to step in. After a while, So Hyun Kim arrives there, and Siok Kang looks at him, saying they have a guest. They ask if he is from West Gangbuk High and inquire if that isn't Sahyun Kim and if he came there all by himself. One of them wonders if he thought they weren't on good terms with West Gangbuk High, while another responds that he's not afraid of them at all and thinks he's so cool. Siok Kang thinks about Sahyun Kim and finds him an interesting guy, wondering what he's doing there all by himself. He suggests that they should focus on taking down South Gangbuk High first, and Ji Hyuk Jang calls Sahyun Kim. So Hyun Kim informs him that he had a discussion with Yi Ha Han, and they have agreed to remain allies after taking down South Gangbok Hai. He explains that now they have clarified what each of them wants, South Gangbok Hai won't be ambushing them anytime soon. Ji Hyuk Jang then asks what they should do next, and Su Hyun Kim replies what else. Meanwhile, members of South Gangbok Hai talk among themselves. Jun Yul Bang asks if they have heard, and Yung Yi Bang mentions that Ha Jun Gu got his ass kicked. Yung Yi Bang wonders what Sehyun Kim is doing there, while Sehyun Kim uses Yet Be Up Teak Joan and Hanul Babki. The quest window notifies him about the main quest, stating that the second quest is for West and East Gangbok High to fight and defeat 20 high ranking combatants of South Gangbok High. Sehyun Kim mentions that it's payback time, and the quest window notifies him that the quest has been updated. He then asks Haru Seong how she is doing, and she replies that she's good. 
He follows up by asking Kujaya how he is feeling, to which Kujaya replies that he feels strange. The quest window then notifies him about the level up quest to awaken crew members with potential rank A or higher, which offers rewards such as superior level up cards for strength and endurance, as well as superior random attack cards. Kujaya mentions that there is something stirring inside him, and the quest window notifies that Kujaya's potential is twitching. Fiat Kang applies bandages to his wounds, reflecting that he had not expected his opponent to be that strong. Baem Sang Jiang notes that he can't continue fighting in his current condition, and Siok Kang agrees, stating that he thinks he needs to take a break. Siok Kang wonders aloud if he had been a bit more desperate to win, he would have defeated his opponent. Siok Kang then asks what happens next, to which Baem Sang Jiang responds simply by saying that he's going to make West and East Gangbuk high fight each other. Siak Kang expresses skepticism about the feasibility of this plan, and Baum Song Jiang acknowledges that it won't be easy. However, he explains that their alliance is fragile, so they need to drive a wedge between them and force both parties to withdraw from South Gangbuk territory. He concludes by saying that they'll need to rebuild their forces once more. Meanwhile, a person quickly enters their room and announces that something terrible has happened. Siok Kang asks what it is, and the person replies that Si Hyun Kim went to see Yi Ha Han and had a confrontation with him about their alliance. They explain that West and East Gangbuk High are now completely united and have turned against them. It's mentioned that they will likely begin attacking them for real now. Baeum Sang Jiang remarks that he didn't expect Si Hyun Kim to manage to persuade Yi Ha Han and advises Siok Kang to rest up. He assures Siok Kang that he will prepare the next plan. Siok Kang then instructs him to boost their people's morale by informing them that he defeated Hajun Gu as soon as he recovered. Siok Kang also mentions that he's going to go after Sehyun Kim. After a while, Dong Yu Wang addresses everyone, telling them to listen up. He announces that Siok Kang defeated Hajun Gu, signaling the beginning of South Gangbuk High's era. He expresses confidence that they will ultimately emerge victorious and urges everyone to show East and West Gangbuk High what they are made of. They respond enthusiastically, affirming their support for South Gangbok High. Sejong Ryu also expresses support, cheering for South Gangbok High. Dong Yu Wang inquires about the person cheering Sejong Ryu and then engages in a fight with them. During the fight, Dong Yu Wang realizes that Sejong Ryu is a formidable opponent and thinks of them as a monster. Despite the challenging fight, Dong Yu Wang acknowledges that it's pointless to continue since he knows he will lose. He reports that they have successfully taken down the fighters ranked 16th. A person runs towards them and informs Sehyun Kim about a victory. They mention that Yi Ha Han and his high-ranking fighters have defeated five of South Gangbuk's strongest fighters, all ranked 15th or higher. The messenger emphasizes that even though they are few in number, they are powerful and cause chaos on the battlefield. Sehyun Kim praises Yi Ha Han, expressing his confidence in him. He asks if they should target the one ranked ninth next, and the messenger confirms that they should go after Ji Hyun Lee. They explain that Ji Hyun Lee is currently leading a small group of South Gangbuk fighters against East Gangbuk. The situation is tense, and a battle seems imminent, but Ji Hyun Lee is outnumbered, and it's likely she will lose to East Gangbuk High. So Hyun Kim acknowledges their concerns and asks Kyu Jaya if he's okay with the plan. Kyu Jaya expresses his desire to go save her despite knowing he shouldn't, as she means something to him. He pleads with Sehyun Kim to allow him to go and rescue her. Ji Hyuk Jiang questions if he heard correctly about where Kyu Jaya intends to go. He firmly states that he won't let him go, and Kyu Jaya wonders where he came from as if he was waiting for the right moment to intervene. Kyu Jaya reiterates his desire to save Ji Hyun Lee emphasizing that she's on the brink of war with East Gangbuk High, and if he joins her, he'll be fighting against East Gangbuk. He reminds them that they've only just improved relations with East Gangbuk, and going against them could sour their newfound rapport. He acknowledges that they may not be able to take down South Gangbuk High today, and understands how Kyujaya must feel. He notes that one might want to do anything for love, but they can't allow that. So Hyun Kim mentions there is a workaround. On the other side, a person approaches Baeum Sang Jiang and informs him that Ji Hyun Lee has requested backup, as she seems outnumbered by the East Gangbuk forces. He asks what they will do. Baeum Sang Jiang responds that he has no troops to spare for her, so they should deny the request and come up with some excuse. Meanwhile, Ji Hyun Lee continues to fight with them and defeats them. 
Dixiong Hwan comments that it was incredible and acknowledges her skill with the wooden sword. Doyo Kang remarks that she's ranked ninth for a reason, considering she was able to take down so many opponents. Dixiong H. Wang observes that she has exhausted herself significantly and suggests finishing her off now, addressing Jin Park. Jin Park questions why she couldn't dodge that attack and speculates that she must be quite tired. He questions the point of wasting time and moves to finish her, attempting to punch her, but Kyujaya intervenes, stepping in between and taking her with him while covering her mouth with a bag. Ji Hyuk Jang asks why Kyujaya let him go and reminds him that East Gangbok High is their ally, emphasizing that this action could not only jeopardize their alliance but also endanger Kyujaya. Kyujaya reassures them, saying not to worry as the alliance is safe, and jokingly refers to her as a bad kitty because of the bag over her mouth. Jen Park recognizes Kyujaya as the person who previously appeared in North Gangbuk territory alone and defeated Chen Hak Yong. He introduces himself as Bagman Kim, a master of Teekjon. She inquires about his identity and the reason for his assistance, to which he responds that there's something she must return to him. She asks for clarification on what he means. Sehyun Kim checks his quest window and contemplates awakening. He remembers a conversation where Haru Siong mentioned beating Jingdu Oh. She expressed uncertainty, recalling moments of loss and belittlement, yet feeling a sudden surge of strength. Hyun Dong Lee shares a similar experience when he realized he was falling behind the rest of their crew, but suddenly felt powerful and won the fight. He attributes his newfound strength to anger and frustration. In the present scene, Sohyun Kim reflects on having a vague understanding of how to trigger an awakening and believes that Kyujaya has awakened today, saying she took his heart. Yu Jong Na arrives and asks Hak Jin Ju why he asked them to meet him here, saying they're in the middle of a war. He confirms that something very important has happened, and their future depends on it. One of them asks about their future, and he replies that's right. He says everybody should calm down and listen to him, and he was thinking about why they don't betray South Gangbuk High. He says he knows as well as they do that there's no hope for South Gangbuk. East and West Gangbuk have begun attacking South Gangbuk's members, and they'll be coming after them too. He says they are fair game, being high-ranking fighters and all, but what about the rest of their boys here? Meanwhile, he questions how they can ask them to sacrifice themselves for South Gangbuk when they know it's on the verge of collapse and they can't keep fighting for their people's sake if nothing else. He mentions that East and West Gangbuk are after Siak Kang. Once they have him, this war will be over, and they should end it for the sake of their troops. He suggests this as a viable strategy, but another person punches and abuses him, saying Siak Kang has done so much for them and the entire South Gangbok faction, including him, owes him a lot. He asks if they have forgotten that, and how dare he suggest they betray Siak Kang, stating they will not become traitors. Another person asks if he's confiscating his troops and if he wants to surrender and join West Gangbok, he can do so alone. He dismisses the conversation as a waste of time and leaves with his troops. On the other side, Kyujaya tells Jihyun Lee that she has taken his heart. She pauses, recognizing the voice and recalls Kyujaya. She remarks that he's that rascal from back then with the stray cat and questions why he is here and what he thinks he's doing. She expresses disbelief that he would laugh in her face and mock her while their opponents cut her down, emphasizing that they are enemies. He interrupts her, urging her not to say another word for the moment and to at least see him as something other than her enemy. A person nearby whispers, commenting on what a line it is and getting goosebumps, while another suggests writing it down to use it later. Kyujaya continues, expressing his hope that his feelings can reach her, and remarks that what she's seeing right now is the back of a man madly in love. Dixiong H. Wang and his troops arrive there, cautioning all of them to be careful as their opponent is rumored to have even defeated Chin Hak Yong, who is a master of Tikjon. Kyujaya thinks to himself that it begins and prepares to counterattack. One of them looks at Kujaya in surprise, questioning how this could be happening, and calls for Dixiong H. Wang. Dixiong H. Wang asks what's happening, and if Kujaya is too strong. They all attempt to capture Kujaya, exclaiming that he's unbelievably weak, and they attack him together. Haru Siong intervenes, telling them to leave the place to her, and declares that what they're seeing is the back of a man madly in love. She draws her sword and attacks them while Kujaya expresses his appreciation and thanks her, realizing that he was able to recover some of his strength thanks to her intervention. He thinks to himself that it begins again. 
she tells Kujaya to go back to where he belongs and assures him that she can handle these weak scoundrels on her own. She attacks Dee Young H. Wang and his troops, thinking to herself that Kujaya is a moron for loving her. It's ridiculous. She asserts that she doesn't need any help and wonders who would ever love her. She then attacks Jin Park and questions why of all people. The quest window notifies that Kujaya's speed has increased for reasons unknown. Dee Seong H. Wang asks what he just witnessed and remarks that Kuja Ye sent Jin Park flying with incredible speed. Jin Park questions what just happened, calling Kuja Ye a fatty and stating that such speed isn't possible for his body. He asks if Kuja Ye pulled some kind of trick. Haru Seong also wonders what happened, acknowledging that the move was good and noting that her body is feeling strange again. He insists that he shouldn't be told to leave, stating that this is where he needs to be, and he contemplates something stirring inside of him. He recalls his father, Paul Bong Yang, and suggests that it's time they told their son the truth. His mother questions why they should, believing it's better for him to remain blissfully ignorant. Paul Bong Yang persists, wondering if Kyu Jia Yang deserves to know his lineage and who he's descended from. He expresses a desire to reveal this information to him. His mother reveals that there is Yakuza blood in his veins, asking if she can truly look him in the eye and tell him that he carries the blood of the Yamanzaki, the most powerful Yakuza syndicate in all of Japan. He questions what would happen if their son becomes a white ghost and asks if she will take responsibility for that. His father inquires about who the white ghost is. She dismisses the topic, instructing him not to mention any of it to Kujaya, to which he responds with an okay. He contemplates telling Kuja the truth about what flows through his veins and takes a sip of tea. The scene transitions to Kuja Ya battling with Jin Park. Jin Park expresses confusion about Kuja Ya, calling him ugly but strong. Meanwhile, Kuja Ya reflects on the blood of the Yakuza syndicate that has long dominated Japan and decides to go after Ji Hyun Lee. However, she refuses. Kuja Ya wonders about the Yamazaki blood within him, speculating that something might happen to trigger it. The quest window notifies that Kyuja Ye's potential is pulsating. After some time, Sehyun Kim and Haru Seong stand together, and she inquires about the situation on his end. He confirms that things are happening as she described and mentions that they already took down their opponents, but they keep getting back up persistently. She remarks that they are not much of a threat, but are indeed a nuisance. He thinks it's even stranger that these opponents were weak before their confrontation. The quest window notifies them that South Gangbuk High is rising again and seems energized by unknown powers. One of them states that they cannot give up now, while he ponders that their opponents are standing up again, even stronger than before. He wonders if this is the end for South Gangbuk High, questioning if they are pushing themselves to their limits for the sake of the faction. He also wonders if their high-ranking members will become stronger as a result. He asks if Siak Kang will also become stronger. Meanwhile, Hakjin Ju arrives and attacks them, leading Haru Seong to question if it is Hakjin Gu, and Sohyun Kim is also surprised to see him there. He tosses a screwdriver onto the ground, and Sohyun Kim asks what he is doing there. He replies that Sohyun Kim should listen to what he has to say first and states that he surrenders. Sohyun Kim expresses skepticism, but the man insists he is serious and reiterates that there's no hope for South Gang Bakai. He wants to become a member of West Gangbuk's crew. Hakjin Ju adds that the man is skilled with tools in a fight and offers to stab Siak Kang in the back if allowed to join the crew. He also claims to know the locations of all the high-ranking fighters of South Gangbuk High and proposes to be West Gangbuk's trump card. He asks Sohyun Kim what he thinks and if he will allow him to join the crew. The quest window notifies Sehyun Kim about the side quest to recruit Hak Chin Ju as a crew member, but it warns that the outcome is uncertain. The reward for completing the quest is one gold card. Hak Chin Ju urges Sehyun Kim to make a choice, while the quest window prompts Sehyun Kim to decide whether to recruit Hak Chin Ju as a crew member. Sehyun Kim signals to Hak Chin Ju and calls for a timeout. He then asked what both of them thought about accepting Hak Chin Ju as a member. He admits honestly that he would rather not, as Hak Jin Ju beat up Kyu Jaya. Ji Hyuk Jang informs him that there's something he has not mentioned yet. Haru Seong inquires about it, and Su Hyun Kim questions why Ji Hyuk Jang didn't mention it earlier. Ji Hyuk Jang apologizes and explains that he heard Hak Jin Ju was punched by one of South Gangbuk's high-ranking fighters. He further explains that Hak Jin Ju proposed the idea of betraying Siak Kang to them. 
but he couldn't persuade them because the other members were loyal. Despite any opinions they may have about the South Gangbuk crew, they are not traitors, as evidenced by a crew member named Xiangmen Li punching Hak Jinju in the face. Meanwhile, he adds that he was beaten up in front of his own subordinates, who were then taken away by the South Gangbuk crew. He mentions that considering all that, it's not surprising that he might want to betray South Gangbuk. He must feel embarrassed and angry about the humiliation he endured. He expresses his vote in favor of allowing Hak Jinju to join their crew. So Hyun Kim questions if that's part of their plan, and he responds by asking what if he got beaten up intentionally so he could join West Gangbuk High. He wonders if all of that was a strategy to deceive them into a false sense of security. So Hyun Kim points out that looking at Hak Jin Ju's face, he appears deceitful, and they are aware of how untrustworthy he can be. He acknowledges that such a scenario is indeed possible, and if that's the case, it complicates things even more. He responds by saying never mind, as he just had a brilliant idea, and he welcomes Hak Jin Ju to their crew. Ji Hyuk Jang wonders if his liege is sure about this. He mentions that Hak Jin Ju will become their trump card, considering it's Hak Jin Ju they're talking about. The quest window notifies him that Hak Jin Ju has joined his crew, and he confidently says of course, leave it to him. He thinks to himself, observing Hak Jin Ju's sly smirk, and the quest window notifies him that the quest is complete. Meanwhile, Ji Hyun Lee and Ku Ja Ya are defeating Di Song H Wang and his crew members. He asks her if she is alright, and she replies that she's fine. Then she says to hold on just a little longer because reinforcements from South Gangbok High will be arriving soon. She mentions that they may have her cornered now, but she's still the ninth strongest fighter in South Gangbok. Bam Sang Jiang needs every fighter at his disposal, and he won't abandon her there. Jin Park interjects, saying that, unfortunately for her, reinforcements aren't coming. He explains that they just received intel indicating that South Gangbok's high-ranking fighters have all gotten into position. He adds that any reinforcements they sent would have been there by now, suggesting that they have abandoned her. He asks if she didn't find it strange and questions how she was the only high-ranking fighter they sent this close to the front lines. He adds further that she was expendable to them, and the quest window notifies him that Kujaya has used Systema. Kujaya says before he says anything that might startle the lady, he whispers it in his ear first. He beats him badly, abuses him, and punches him away. He says he doesn't need to see his face to know that he's some ugly, gross, nasty rascal. He found him entertaining enough, so he played with him a little and thought he had lost his touch. Jin Park asks what made him think he could beat him, and he wonders how he was able to move so quickly before. Jin Park runs to attack him and says to go ahead, and he thinks danger, his love is in danger, while Do Yok Kang runs to attack her. Jin Park says come on, try to attack him like he did before. She asks what's up with that weird hand gesture, and Kyu Ya thinks, let's think, he must defeat this villain and help her. But how does he do that? Jin Park grabs his hand and asks if he thinks he can beat him. He asks what the hell is up with this scoundrel, as this is way too easy. He mentions hearing that he beat Chen Hak Young of North Gangbok High and asks if he isn't Bagman Kim. Kyu Ya wonders if his arm is broken, and he replies that he's going to need to take a look at that face and tries to remove his mask. Kyuja Ya thinks about what would happen if his identity is discovered while she steps in between and attacks him. Kyuja Ya considers that she protected his identity, and she mentions that they have unfinished business. He realizes that he can see that his lady is suffering, while Jen Park grabs her and says he'll deal with her first. Do Yok Kang joins in and punches her, saying not to forget about him. Kyuja Ya worries that the woman he loves is getting hurt. Di Xiong H. Wang also punches her face and questions how she dares to attack Jin Park. Kyu Jia Ya recalls that his father asked him if he was in love, and he confirmed that but mentioned that there was a problem. His father asks what it is. He states that one should be capable of protecting one's mate, and a man should be able to protect the woman he loves. He thinks that the woman he loves is stronger than him. Jin Park asks why she was swinging this thing around, and Do Yok Kang says it's about time they finish this. He agrees and says let's wrap this up, mentioning that he was in the same boat. Kyu Ya's father says he is weaker than his mother, and Kyu Ya surprisingly asks really. His father recounts that this reminds him of that fateful day when he was studying abroad in Japan and working as a newspaper delivery boy. He explains that she was a member of the Yamazaki Yakuza Syndicate and they came from different backgrounds and were destined to live in different worlds. 
however, he was still able to protect her. He adds that he fell in love at first sight, and Jen Park attacks her again. He thinks he sees that woman as himself and steps in between, blocking Jen Park's attack. The quest window notifies him that his crew member, Kuja Ya, is filled with conviction, and Kuja Ya's potential is skyrocketing. It has reached its peak. The quest window congratulates him because Kuja Ya's potential has awakened, and as a special reward for the awakening of Kuja Ya's potential, his stamina has been restored. The quest window notifies him that as a special reward for the awakening of an S-rank potential, he has received two attack cards. The quest window notifies that he has claimed Kyuja Ya's exclusive attack card, which is a Yamazaki-style Kyokushin Karate. The user gains the ability to use Yamazaki-style Kyokushin Karate, which was created by one man. He executes Yamazaki-style Kyokushin Karate, delivering straight punches and two hits. He thinks about it and realizes they probably never properly introduce themselves. He asks for her name, and she replies that it's Jihyun Lee. He removes his bag and introduces himself as Kyuja Ya, known as El Diablo. Kyuja Ya mentions that there is something he would like to ask her, and Jihyun Lee inquires about it. He explains that South Gangbuk High is already on the decline, and worse, its leaders abandoned her. However, West Gangbuk High is different. It's led by someone who values his people. He proposes her joining West Gangbuk's crew. She apologizes and attempts to say something, but he interrupts her by placing a finger on her lips, stating that his heart is not strong enough to handle such rejection. He presents her sword and leaves. She calls out to him, asking him to wait, especially considering that West Gangbuk Hai and Ji Hyok Jang need her skills. He suggests that if they manage to rescue her, she could become a member of their crew as a way of repaying the debt to West Gangbok High, which they could use as leverage to convince her to join them. Meanwhile, he states that as a man of honor, he cannot, in good conscience, take advantage of this situation. Kyujaya thinks to himself that he is sorry, he refuses to stoop so low with her. On the other side, Hak Jinju recalls Su Hyun Kim saying he would become their trump card. Hyun Dong Lee affirms of course, leave it to him. Bam Sang Jiang expresses satisfaction by saying that he has done great, good work for South Gangbok High. Hak Jin Ju adds that it was easy. He did as he said, and they let him join just like that. He mentions that normally, they would have been suspicious, but his plan worked perfectly. He explains that by fabricating a scenario to make it seem like he had a problem with Siok Kang and provoking Siung Min Lee, who is loyal to Siok Kang, into punching him, combined with his reputation, Su Hyun Kim had no trouble believing he was a traitor. He acknowledges that he'd expect nothing less from their genius advisor, and Byam Sang Jiang tells him to pipe down and asks if he knows what to do next. He replies of course stating that their plan involves leading Haru Siang into a trap, now that El Diablo has gone off to who knows where. West Gangbuk's only remaining fighters are Sehyun Kim and Haru Siong. He explains that since they're together, it's challenging to take them out, so his job is to lure Haru Siong away from Sehyun Kim and into a trap. Bam Sang Jiang expresses that he doesn't care how strong Haru Siong is, she must fall into their trap and then it will be all over. Sehyun Kim asks what Haru Siong needs to do next, and he replies that's right thinking she's their only hope. He adds that South Gangbok High is preparing a separate unit to lead an ambush, and they are waiting for Bam Sang Jiang's orders to strike from the rear. He emphasizes that things will be a lot easier if they take them out first, otherwise they'll be the ones coming after them. After a while, Sohyun Kim asks if they shouldn't all go together and says he, Haru, and a few more fighters should be enough. Haru Siong says that if they don't take out the ambush unit first, they'll regret it. Bam Sang Jiang says to trust him while he lights up his cigarette and mentions that if he insists, thanks to the trump card, he replies no worries and thinks that West Gangbuk High will be finished today. He adds that all of this is for West Gangbuk's sake and mentions that Hak Jin Ju should be luring Haru Siong away by now. He continues, saying that the last thing they'd expect is for Hak Jin Ju to stab them in the back. He explains that the trap consists of their blitz attackers, who are currently standing by, and mentions that those guys are the best in South Gangbok High at fighting with tools. He concludes by saying that no matter how quick-footed Haru Siang might be, the rascal won't be able to do anything with both legs broken. Another person asks if it was all part of his plan, and says now he feels bad about punching Hak Jinju. Yujong Na says there's no need for that, he'll get his due once they pull this off. 
Another person remarks about how he came up with such a plan, saying that they were completely in the dark. He replies that they shouldn't take it personally and explains that in order to pull things off perfectly, it had to be on a need-to-know basis. He says they'll wait here until they take out Haru Seong, then it'll be Sohyeon Kim's turn. He adds that they will attack Sohyeon Kim. Yu Jong now mentions they have a big problem. West Gangbuk has discovered their location. Sohyeon Kim and his crew reach there and say it's been a while, Baeum Sang Jiang. He replies, Sohyeon Kim, how he did find them and abused him, saying he told him only to pretend to betray them, but he did it for real and abused him again. He thinks he has no other choice, and Soohyun Kim says he already knows what he is up to idiots. He thinks Soohyun Kim is aware of their entire plan. He recalls Hak Chin Ju asking if he knows what to do next and leading Haru Siang into a trap. Soohyun Kim says this is exactly why he let him join his crew since he can spy on his crew members with this card, and he looks at the camera card and thinks it's the camera card. He says wait a minute, he's sorry. He was just following Baeum Sang Jiang's orders while Sohyun Kim grabs him. He says Haru Siang should use capoeira on him, and she has to do the dance first. He replies everybody calms down and says he'll do whatever he wants. Sohyun Kim asks if he understands now and says he has eyes everywhere. He says he already knew about his little plan, and there is a way for him to save his ass. Hak Chin Ju asks how he can do that, and he replies that he is going to end this war as quickly as possible, so tell him, and they will run to attack South Gang Bak Hai. He thinks about where his high-ranking fighters are hiding out. Hak Chin Ju says to go West Gang Bak, he's totally their trump card. Haru Siong looks at him and asks seriously, what's wrong with that guy? Sihyun Kim says he's literally the worst. Baeum Sang Jiang asks how he failed again and shouts what they are doing, saying they still outnumber them. He says to gang up on them, and they all follow his instructions and run to attack them. Kyuja Ya uses Yamazaki style Kyokushin Karate, a straight punch, and punches them away. He says he's back as the leader, and Suhyun Kim says he has become stronger El Diablo. The quest window notifies that the quest is complete. He says that's great and thinks it's time to use up all the cards. The quest window notifies him about a level up quest to awaken crew members with potential ranked A or higher. Kyuja Ya is ranked 1 over 1, and Haru Siang is also ranked 1 over 1. Its rewards are 2 superior level up cards for strength, 2 superior level up cards for endurance, and 2 superior random attack cards. He checks the cards. The superior level up card for strength, when used on a crew member, increases their strength rank by 2 levels, and another superior level up card for endurance, when used on a crew member, increases their endurance rank by 2 levels. The quest window notifies him that all level up cards will be applied to himself. He says alright, everybody gets ready and says to Yu Jong na let's do it. The two crew members of South Gangbuk High run to attack them and abuse them while Kyuja Ya uses a Yamazaki style Kyokushin karate forward stance and punches them both when they almost attack him. They ask why he is acting like he managed to block their fists when they hit him and Kyuja Ya says to reverse their thinking. He says it's not that he struck him in the face, but that he struck their fists with his face using Yamazaki-style Kyokushin Karate, a straight punch, two hits. He says he's still an ugly loser and won't be tricked by his lies. He says next up that he sees there is no need for him to intervene. Haru Xiong asks if he took care of everybody over there, and Kuja Ya says he did. He asks what about her, calling her beautiful, and she replies that she should not call her that. He apologizes. The quest window notifies him that South Gang Bak Hai is right again, energized by powers unknown. Jingu Oh says they are getting back up. Kyuja Ya says so basically. Everyone from South Gang Bak Hai has two lives. Haru Siang says their vibe is totally different, and their resolve has made them stronger. Kyuja Ya says he's worried, and she asks about them. He refuses and says he's concerned about what's going on over there. Fahyun Kim thinks she's strong, even after using all the level up cards, and thinks he's not fast enough while Yu Jong Na punches him so hard. The quest window notifies that he used the weaving technique, and he thinks he can't attack him from afar. He checks the trigger card's maximum capacity, which increases his weight by 220 pounds for 7 seconds, and the card festival effect increases its duration by 2 seconds. Meanwhile, he thinks he will use maximum capacity from up close and attack Yu Jong Na. He thinks he uses kickboxing, solar plexus push kick, while Yu Jong Na kicks him away. 
Yujom Na kicks him again with kickboxing, tie clinch, and knee strikes and beats him so much. The quest window notifies him that he used the healing bean, and he kicks Yujom Na. The quest window notifies him again that his stamina has been restored, and he has one healing bean remaining. He thinks he almost got him and wonders about the kick to the solar plexus. He thinks that without the healing bean, the next hit would have taken him out and reflects that he didn't use that technique during his fight with Chin Hak Yang. He considers if he was keeping it hidden because it's the ace up his sleeve and realizes Yujom, Na doesn't know that he has recovered his stamina. He thinks he needs to act like he's close to being knocked out and believes that's the only way he's going to beat him. Hak Jin Ju asks what that kick was just now and expresses concern that Soo Hyun Kim might lose at this rate. He says he can't let that happen, not after the way he betrayed South Gangbok Hai. He thinks no, it's a lost cause and considers that he must be exhausted by now. He says he can't lose, if he loses, he's screwed while Yu Jong Na kicks him. He thinks there's too much of a skill gap between the two of them. Hak Jin Ju asks what he is doing and questions why he's getting close to him like that. He says he'll do another solar plexus push kick while Yu Jong Na again kicks him. After a while, Sohyun Kim sits in his room and wonders how he can increase the number of his attack patterns. He mentions that the martial arts he currently uses are boxing and yet be at Tikjon while he checks his card, which includes rank a red jab, red straight punch, rank B red hook, rank a red spinning back kick, yet be up Tikjon, and the trigger card maximum capacity. He says lately, he's been using yet be up Tikjian mostly and notes that according to Ju Hyuk Jang, Siak Kang mainly uses wrestling techniques in combat, which means he may be at a disadvantage if he uses yet be up Tikjon. He says that, as things currently stand, if he fights Siak Kang, he'll lose. So Hyun Kim says he needs to beat him and asks if there is an attack that might catch him off guard. He also asks if there is a way he can combine the cards he currently has to create a new attack and check the card. He thinks that's it by combining cards while Yu Jong Na kicks him again, and the quest window notifies him that he used the maximum capacity card. He thinks he has come up with a new attack combination and thinks the first move is a 344 pound strike to the moon. So Hyun Kim punches at his chin while he uses two cards, maximum capacity to increase his weight by 220 pounds for 7 seconds and another card to the moon that he's able to perform a high standard vertical jump, so Hyun Kim hits him again and he puts a foot in his mouth. He thinks the second move is a 344 pound Hanul Bapki while he kicks him away and he says he wins. Yu Jong Na goes into a flashback where Siak Kang arrives there and says nice to meet him and says good work, Yu Jom Na. Siak Kang says it's not much, but he put in a little extra. He heard he has no family and that things are kinda tough for him. Siak Kang says he's so grateful to him and credits him for South Gangbuk High's growth. The scene comes back to the present, where the quest window notifies that South Gangbuk High is rising again, energized by powers unknown, while Yu Jom Na runs to attack him. He says the claim card and the quest window notify him that he has claimed the superior random attack card. He checks the level up card, the superior random attack card, which when used on a crew member, grants them a random attack skill, and he punches him so hard. Yu Jom Na lies down on the floor unconscious, while Sihyun Kim thinks just he waits, he'll be there soon Siak Kang, and thinks this will be their final battle. Hak Jin Ju asks what this is and thinks it's unbelievable. Yu Jom Na lost, and Chang Ju Min, Jing Guo, and Seong Min Li lost too. Hak Jin Ju says he thinks West Gangbuk Hai was this strong, and he'll be its lapdog forever, and he thinks he's so glad. So Hyun Kim says they are cool, and Haru Seong says totally, while he thinks he betrayed South Gangbuk Hai, and they tie up Bam Song Jong. So Hyun Kim says it's all over, and tells him now to tell him where Siak Kang is. Bam Sang Jiang asks how he dares tie him up in such a suggestive manner and says this is so embarrassing. So Hyun Kim says well, if he doesn't want to tell him, that's fine and says Siak Kang must be at South Gangbuk Hai. Meanwhile, he asks how did he know that and So Hyun Kim says it's obvious. Haru Seong asks if they are heading to South Gangbuk Hai immediately and he replies no, not yet and says to go warm up for a bit. She asks what he means by warm up and why she needs that, and they start exercising. So Hyun Kim checks his card and thinks he needs to check out his new card. He thinks he has not had a chance to examine it, and he thinks about the card he got from recruiting Hak Jin Ju and what it could be. 
he checks a normal card and hits those super high notes, which he is able to produce even higher pitched sounds, and it may be extremely loud. He thinks this is the souped up version of the hit that high notes card and thinks he got rid of that since he was not using it. He wonders if this one will come in handy at some point and thinks anyway. He wonders when the opportunity will arise for him to use the lucky bag card while he checks that card. The unknown card is a lucky card that comes as the new year approaches. The scene shifts to East Gangbok High, where Yi Ha Han sees Sehyun Kim and his crew, who say they got there first. Yi Ha Han asks what the hell West Gangbok is dragging over there while he looks at Bayom Sang Jiang. Bayom Sang says Merry Christmas, they are filthy animals, and Sehyun Kim says sorry they are late. It took a while to deal with the high-ranking fighters. Yi Ha Han said that they were doing good work and taking care of the rest of South Gangbok's forces. Sehyun Kim says it's a good job. He says the rest of South Gangbok's forces must have been a pain, and their territory isn't exactly small. He says, well, his crew handled the high-ranking fighters, and thanks to that, they had a relatively easy time. So Hyun Kim asks, wait a minute, if he doesn't think he's taking over way too much of the South Gangbok territory. He says he thought he might say that, and he has not officially taken over anywhere yet. He says they can divvy up the territory after the war's over. So Hyun Kim asks what about Siak Kang, and Yi Ha Han replies he's definitely somewhere in that building. He asks why they aren't going in, and Yi Ha Han replies they did and says they were annihilated. He asks what does he mean by annihilated. Si Jong Ryu comes closer to Haru Siang and says look, there's a girl here as well, and she replies she's not a girl. Yi Ha Han says yeah completely and says it's not just Siak Kang in there. Chang Gong Yeom comes closer to Kyu Ya and asks if he is really a high school student, and Kyu Ya says he could ask him the same. Fa Hyun Kim mentions that the last of South Gangbok's troops are waiting for them. Yi Ha Han states that they'll stop at nothing to protect South Gangbok, and he replies that they are Siak Kang's personal guards. Once they take them down along with Siak Kang, this war will be well and truly over. Yi Ha Han says all right then, let's move, and adds that West Gangbok High will enter from the left. They all walk away, and he says East Gangbok will go in through the main entrance. So Hyun Kim thinks whichever crew finds Siak Kang will contact the other to let them know, and he enters the building with his crew. Kyu Jaya comments that it's really dark in there, and So Hyun Kim confirms. He replies that it's totally understandable when he's in the dark like this. So Hyun Kim asks what it is when some punks say that they'll get ambushed and asks if it's West Gangbuk this time, while So Hyun Kim thinks he's fast, these are the last of Siak Kang's fighters. So Hyun Kim warns his crew to watch out for everyone, as they don't seem like ordinary crew members. He thinks to himself, peek at him, what the hell, as they are all awakened. He wonders how they can be nobody's yet awakened, as he thought his crew members were the only ones whose potential could be awakened. He thinks that they overcame their own limits to protect South Gangbok High. One of them asks Sehyun Kim why he is so surprised. Kyu Jaya uses Yamazaki-style Kyokushin Karate upper block, while one of them tries to hit him. Sehyun Kim acknowledges that he already got hit, and Kyu Jaya replies yes, but he looks cool. Kyu Jaya says enough fooling around, and Sehyun Kim retorts that he's the one who's fooling around. Kyu Jaya says things aren't looking good for them, as they also have enemies coming at them from behind. He states that the fight will only end when they take down Siak Kang and mentions he'll stay here, saying that would be for the best. Haru Siang says they can't just leave him here all by himself, and she tries to say something to him, but he puts his finger to his lips and says don't say another word. He asks where the hell did he pick that up from. So Hyun Kim says let's go, honey and grabs her hand. He says he's sure Kyu Jaya has something up his sleeve, and she replies he doesn't know that. He thinks he does because he knows about the second exclusive card, while Kyu Jaya says he can finally get serious. He thinks about the awakened Kyu Jaya and remarks that his breath stinks, while the quest window notifies him that Kyu Jaya used El Diablo and a normal card, Kyu Jaya exclusive El Diablo, which decreased all stats of everyone in the vicinity, including allies, by one level for three minutes. After a while, Sahyon Kim kicks at the door and says come out here, Siak Kang, it's all over for him now. Dong Taxio runs to attack Sahyon Kim and almost hits his neck, while Chang Gong Yom arrives there and grabs his hand, saying to stop because they are their allies. Sahyon Kim thinks he was not able to react in time. Yi Ha Han arrives there and apologizes to him, saying he mistook him for the enemy while putting a foot on a punk. 
he says everyone's on edge, looking for Seok Kang, and he asks if it's just the two of them. So Hyun Kim confirms that, and says their third member is taking care of the rest of South Gangbok High's fighters. He replies the same as them then. Yi Ha Han says there's no point in drawing this war out, and that it is necessary to find Seok Kang as soon as possible. He says they entrusted the first floor to Sijon Ryu. Fa Hyun Kim says they can sweep the fifth floor together, while one of the punks laughs and says Seok Kang is not here. He says this is South Gangbok High's final stage and asks if they really think they waited for them to show up without a plan. He says that's right, they were waiting for them to split up. On the other side, Kujaya beats some punks while Siak Kang arrives there and grabs him from behind. So Hyun Kim thinks from the start, Siak Kang has been on the first floor. Haru Seong says Kujaya is on the first floor, and she says they have to go save him right away. He replies of course they do, but Siak Kang is the one who's in danger, not Kujaya. She asks what he means, and he replies that as far as he knows, Kujaya is the worst opponent Siak Kang could ask for. Meanwhile, Siak Kang tries to push away Kujaya, but he can't, and Kujaya says excuse him while he thinks, what's up with this stupid situation? Kujaya asks what he thinks he's doing, while Siak Kang thinks he can't grab onto him because of his huge belly. Kujaya says if he's quite finished, while the quest window notifies that Siak Kang's stats have decreased. The quest window notifies him about a main quest, the fall of South Gangbuk High, in which the third quest is to fight and defeat Siak Kang. He says he believes it's his turn. Fiak Kang thinks it doesn't make him laugh and calls him a pig. Kujaya says he's not a pig, he's just chubby. Siak Kang thinks in that case, he'll use his technique to topple him while he tries to attack Kujaya and thinks he's withstanding it. He thinks no, the noises he makes are disgusting, and he kicks Kujaya and pushes him away. He says in terms of strength, they are pretty evenly matched and says it's fine by him. He says he's not a fan of fights that involve pansy-ass footwork and crap like that. He thinks it's been a long time since he had a fight this interesting. He says let's have a proper battle, he and him. Kujaya punches at his face so hard and says he looks displeased. He says he understands and thinks he's fast too and so ugly. He says he must be surprised by his speed and Kujaya beats Siak Kang badly. Meanwhile, Sehyun Kim watches them fighting on his quest window and he thinks it's good. He believes Kujaya has the upper hand and Suhyun Kim says it's a nice try. He thinks he might be able to beat Siak Kang easily. He says the outcome of this battle has already been decided. He notes that he attacked his vital points, yet he's still standing. What a terrifyingly sturdy body. Kujaya says in that case, let him tear a hole in it, and he uses Yamazaki-style Kyokushin Karate, a straight punch, while Siak Kang tries to grab him. He thinks what a passionate embrace and hits his head with his head. He says if he really thinks his half-decent physical ability is all he needs to defeat him. He mentions that fighting is all about experience and he has faced off against countless opponents like him. He says he didn't become the top dog of South Gangbok High by winning a game of cards and throwing him away while beating him so much. Kujaya asks how he has such power and Siok Kang runs towards him again to attack. He thinks this is his chance and thinks he's weak, believing he'll be able to throw him this time. Siak Kang tries to grab his leg while Kujaya kicks him away and says he can sense how determined he is to win. He says unfortunately for him and uses Yamazaki-style Kyokushin Karate, a crescent kick. He says he can't afford to lose this fight either while Kujaya kicks him so hard. He says he too, like him, must win while Kujaya uses Yamazaki-style Kyokushin Karate Brazilian kick. Kujaya says he made a promise. Ji Hyun Lee arrives there, and he says that as a man of honor, he can't, in good conscience, use this situation to his advantage. He says that he would like to ask him a question, and he understands her position. However, if they were to defeat South Gang Bak Hai, he asks if she would join them. She confirms that, and he thanks her, saying this will be the first promise they make to each other. He says for her, he will defeat Siak Kang, and he runs to attack Siak Kang, using Yamazaki-style Kyokushin Karate spin kick and kicking him so hard. Siak Kang falls on the floor while he says he was a worthy opponent, but it's a pity. She says he would have been stronger if he had love in his heart, while Kujaya asks if it is over. Siak Kang says let him summon his subordinates, while Kujaya walks away and says this war is over. Kujaya looks behind while Siak Kang gets up again, and he asks how this could happen. 
He quickly runs and grabs Kujaya, pushing him back. The quest window notifies him that South Gangbok High is rising again, energized by powers unknown. Meanwhile, Sehyung Kim runs towards the first floor and Haru Seong follows him, asking him what's going on. He replies that they need to get to Kujaya right away. He thinks a strange notification window has popped up, while she says he said they should trust Kujaya. She says he said he was the worst opponent Seok Kang could ask for. Sehyun Kim says he did, but things have changed, and says he's sure they were fighting somewhere around here. On the other side, Seok Kang punches Kuja, yeah while the quest window gives him a warning notification. It notifies him that Seok Kang is filled with conviction. The quest window notifies him that Seok Kang's potential is skyrocketing, and that his potential has awakened. The quest window notifies him that he used the peek on his card, and he says peek at him and thinks, for the first time ever, that he fears he may end up failing this quest. Siok Kang says there he is, while Yi Ha Han arrives there and kicks at his face. He says he doesn't even seem like he did any damage. He says further that he has a really bad feeling about this, so be on his guard, both of them. He says he has never seen Siok Kang like this before. The quest window notifies him about the main quest which is the fourth quest, which is to fight and defeat the awakened Siok Kang. He says let's do this, and Yi Ha Han says let's hunt themselves a monster today. The quest window notifies him that they are starting the fight against the awakened Siok Kang. The story goes into a flashback where Siok Kang sells fentanyl for money. He thinks at first it was just a means to make a little pocket money. Young Yi Oh eats some food and says it's not bad. Siok Kang thinks he was a student athlete back then and always hungry. Bam Sang Jong calls Siok Kang and asks if he wants to do this on a bigger scale. He says he might be dangerous and says it'll be fine as long as they don't get caught. He asks if he doesn't want to make more money and thinks that money begets money. For fun, they expanded their business. He thinks they got more and more pocket money and it was no longer just pocket money. Then one day he began to wonder and think why he had to keep competing as an athlete while he sat in a bar with some girls. Meanwhile, he thinks about why he has to study, and he thinks why when he can make money this easily, earning far more than what his teachers or even doctors or lawyers make. He thinks he can't give this up. The scene comes back to the present, where Siok Kang punches Haru Siong, says South Gang Bok Hai is his business, and says it's his business. He says his money, whoever his opponent is, he won't give it up, and he thinks he's strong. So Hyun Kim says wow, he's a completely different person now that he's awakened and opened his eyes and thinks he's a monster. Haru Siong asks what they do now, and he replies just in 5 minutes. She asks what he means by 5 minutes, and he replies if they just hold out for 5 minutes, there will be hope. Yi Ha Han says So Hyun Kim is right, and that in 5 minutes, his people will be there. So Hyun Kim says that's not what he was talking about, and he replies that either way, they need to hold out until then. They all attack Siok Kang while he asks if they seriously think they have a chance against him. He thinks the one who's holding out is this guy, a rhino. Siok Kang says all that's waiting for him at the end is despair, and he thinks he's a legit rhino while she kicks at his face again. The quest window notifies that Haru Siong used capoeira. She says whatever and thinks she's confident he can't beat her speed. She thinks no matter how tough he is, he won't be able to withstand a strike to his vital point. She thinks it's a kick to the temple. She kicks him again and again and thinks she'll knock him out in one go. He grabs her foot and says as he said, he's not a fan of pansy ass footwork and throws her away. Sahyun Kim uses yet be up Tikjon and Murup Chigi to attack him, and Siok Kang says he has been wanting to get his hands on him. He thinks he caught him and wonders what to do. Siok Kang says everything started going wrong after he showed up and says he's going to end this. So Hyun Kim shouts that he bets his farts stink really bad. The quest window notifies him that he used to hit those super high notes cards and he leaves him and goes back. He thinks his body might be tough, but the same can't be said for his eardrums. So Hyun Kim runs to attack him, calls him a monster, and punches him in the face. He thinks he reacted in time and Siok Kang also punches him back, asking if he's trying to match him blow for blow. He thinks no, he can't hold out, and asks if he has a death wish as he punches Siok Kang, who in turn asks if he is still standing. The quest window notifies that he used the Berserker card, and he thinks he has no other choice as he checks the details of the normal card Berserker, which transforms the user into a Berserker who can't feel pain for two minutes. 
He thinks that even if it means he ends up passing out, he must continue. Yi Ha Han asks Su Hyun Kim why he screamed so loud and says thanks to him. All of South Gangbok's lackeys come running. Yi Ha Han asks why they only need to hold out for five minutes and what the hell he is thinking. He says they are at a greater disadvantage the longer they hold out, yet he still has a way to get them out of this mess. He wonders how there can still be so many of them and how they know if it's even going to work. He thinks something strange is going on and the quest window notifies him that he threw a hook. Fahyeon Kim thinks he doesn't feel any pain and wonders if it's because of the adrenaline from the fight, but he believes it doesn't matter either way. He knows he can't win against him and notes that five minutes have passed while Siak Kang runs to kick him, declaring that it's over. Hajun Gu arrives there and kicks him from behind, asking if he is okay as he falls down. Sehyun Kim says they've come. He receives a warning message that as a penalty for using the Berserker card, he will be rendered unconscious in 40 seconds. Hyundong Lee agrees that they haven't fully recovered yet and Siak Kang laughs, questioning if that's it and asking if that's why he held out for five minutes. He taunts Sehyun Kim, mentioning that time goes by so quickly and sarcastically questions if his plan was to wait for his half-dead buddies. He asks what Siak Kang is talking about and says they are just getting started. Sehyun Kim looks at the quest window and asks what he should do because even after dealing with all the high-ranked fighters, he still has so much time left. He mentions he's supposed to meet Yi Ha Han at South Gangbok High and asks if he should go see him first. He thinks he can use this opportunity. He checks a normal card called Mirror Call that tells when all crew members are unable to battle, restores their stamina, and increases some stats for one minute. Its cooldown decreased by one week, and the cooldown time is 51 minutes and 32 seconds. He asks Siak Kang if he believes in miracles, and the quest window notifies him that he used the Mirror Call card. Siak Kang asks what miracles are, mentioning that even if they all got back up, that changes nothing, and he reaffirms that South Gangbok High is his while Sehyun Kim continues to beat him. Sehyun Kim checks the level up card superior random attack card, which when used on a crew member, grants them a random attack skill. He also checks another attack card of Calironies, which allows the user to gain the ability to use Calironies, a traditional Filipino martial art that emphasizes weapon-based fighting. The quest window notifies that he used Calironies and attacks Siak Kang again and again, while reiterating that, as he said, today, South Gangbok High will fall. Yi Han attacks some punks and knocks them all out, while Changong Yong calls him and asks if he's not dead yet. He replies by asking what took them so long, and Chang Yong Yong explains that they were busy cleaning up another floor. He remarks that there are still a lot of them left and expresses his frustration, mentioning that he should expect nothing less from South Gangbok. He then asks Dong Tak Seo what Kali is, and Dong Tak Seo explains that it's Kali, also known as Arnie's, which is a traditional Filipino martial art. He adds that it's more than just fighting with weapons and describes it as a highly complex martial art that requires combining feints with moves. He also comments on how impressive it is that he knows Kali, let alone is adept at it, while they observe Suhyun Kim hitting Siok Kang repeatedly. Meanwhile, Kyujaya intervenes and uses Yamazaki-style Kyokushin Karate as a human shield to block Siak Kang's punch. Siak Kang asks if he didn't take him down, and Kyujaya responds that it's good and they should begin. He punches Siak Kang back. The quest window notifies that Kyujaya used El Diablo, while he punches him away and says let's go. The quest window notifies again that all of Siak Kang's stats have decreased and notifies that Haru Siong used capoeira and kicks at his face. The quest window notifies him of a critical hit and Haru Siong says everyone should gang up on him. He grabs her shirt and says he told her that he doesn't like pansy-ass footwork. She kicks him again, saying they need to gang up on him. She repeats that they need to gang up on him. Hajun Gu shouts gang up on him and she confirms that he said it. The quest window notifies that Hajin Gu is using the Kisi fighting method, and he kicks Siak Kang away. Siak Kang thinks he's going to lose, while the quest window notifies him that Kyujaya is using Yamazaki style Kyokushin karate, and he is using Yet Be Up Tikjon. She kicks him again and thinks don't be ridiculous, adding that she won't let anyone take South Gangbok high. Ji Hyuk Jang arrives there, and Siak Kang punches him. He says South Gangbok High, don't be discouraged, and asks if they want to hand over South Gangbok High to these scoundrels. He emphasizes that if they lose now, it's all over, but they can win. 
He asserts that South Gangbuk High is still strong and they will be the ones to unite Gangbuk. He concludes by saying they need to put their lives on the line. One of Siok Kang's crew members calls him and says he will take care of Sahyun Kim. Siok Kang responds that this war will end once he takes out the leader. If he kills him, all of this will be over. Sahyun Kim remarks that he took the words right out of his mouth, or in other words, he jinxed it, so he owes him a soda. He replies that he does not joke with him while Siok Kang runs to attack, and Suhyun Kim counterattacks and throws him on the floor. He thinks he has a long reach but can weather his attacks. He says it's a waste of time while he punches him again and again and comments that it looks like his strategy is to withstand his attacks and slowly approach him. However, his liege knows this, which is why he won't let him get any closer. Ji Hyok Jang says go, his liege, it's time to end this war once and for all. Fa Hyun Kim pushes Siak Kang away and bumps into the wall, and his blood falls on his face. He thinks this is the nosebleed that was dripping down into his mouth. Siak Kang grabs him, and he thinks he got him, but Si Hyun Kim says that it is the infinite suplex, and he thinks he won, that he got a good hold on him one more time. He says he's going to make him live out the rest of his life as a cripple, while Siak Kang grabs him again and throws him upside down. Si Hyun Kim thinks one more suplex, and he'll win. Haru Seong looks at him and says it's not good, while the quest window notifies him that he used the healing bean and his stamina has been restored. He also used the To the Moon card to escape from Siak Kang's attack. He thinks he escaped with a high standing vertical jump by stepping on his knee. He wonders where he got the strength to pull that off and thinks he's completely fine even after everything he did to him. He believes he didn't take any damage and berates Siak Kang. He thinks Sehyun Kim is a crafty rascal and there's no way he wouldn't have taken any damage from his suplex. He believes he's acting and he'll grab him again and finish him while Siak Kang again runs to attack him. Sehyun Kim blocks his attack and plans to do exactly what he did last time, closing the distance while taking his blows. Siak Kang tries to grab his neck and he realizes he has two weapons. He holds two iron rods and runs to attack Siak Kang. The quest window notifies him that he used the To the Moon card, and he thinks if he had known from the start, Suhyun Kim would have beaten him. The quest window notifies him about a main quest in the fall of South Gangbuk High, the fourth quest being to fight and defeat the Awakened Siak Kang complete. The quest window notifies him that the Awakened Siak Kang has collapsed. Yi Ha Han says Siak Kang is down, and tank top Suhyun Kim won, saying the war is over. The quest window notifies him that the quest is complete and has been updated. Sehyun Kim says to hurry up and give him the next quest. Sehyun Kim mentions the rascal, making him pull out the big guns, meaning his tank top, and checks the quest window, which has not shown the fifth quest yet. He thinks alright, what's the next quest? He asks if this is the last quest and thinks this is going to be fun. Haru Xiong comes there and jumps on his back in excitement. She says it's all over, and they won, and he replies yes, it feels great. He tells South Gangbuk High's crew members to throw down their weapons, and they say damn it, Siak Kang is down. So Hyun Kim asks if they are here, referring to Yi Ha Han, and asks what took him so long. Ji Hyuk Jang replies that the members of East Gangbuk High have just arrived to move Siak Kang, and he replies that he understands. Ji Hyuk Jang informs him that the war has ended and says it's time to bring everything to a close. He confirms that and says let's wrap this up. Meanwhile, Suhyun Kim asks why everyone is trying to look all cool, and he replies that it is in order to conclude this war, and the disposal of the defeated enemy forces is the highlight of any war. He says the recruitment of talent has begun while he looks at Yongi Bang and Jun Yul Bang. He further explains that South Gangbuk has collapsed, which means its high-ranking members no longer have any affiliation, and as the spoils of war, West and East Gangbuk High can recruit those high-ranking members of South Gangbuk High. He says he needs to proceed with caution because recruiting members indiscriminately may do more harm than good. Haru Siang is asking what would happen if the member doesn't want to be recruited. Then, they must leave Gangbuk, and they will have to leave everything behind and start from scratch. Yi Ha Han mentions that even their names are trash, and East Gangbok High doesn't want them. Ji Hyuk Jang remarks that it looks like East Gangbok High has made their decision and asks how he would like to proceed. So Hyun Kim states that they will take them, and he replies pardon, he wants to recruit Jun Yul Bang and Yong Yi Bang. He asks if he may ask why he would do that. 
Sohyun Kim explains that their territory has recently expanded and they need people to help manage it. He remarks that those two are about as capable as a couple of slugs, but if they are recruited and given some responsibilities, each of them should be able to pull at least half their weight. Fahyun Kim emphasizes that, most importantly, once rumors spread that they have bothered to recruit even individuals considered as trash, the talented people of Gangbuk will come knocking on West Gangbuk High's door. Ji Hyuk Jang acknowledges this as a brilliant and effective way to use his intellect. He believes that, most importantly, this is the next quest, while the quest window notifies him to recruit talent from South Gangbok High. The more members he recruits, the better his rewards, the reward being a bronze card. He thinks that recruiting more high-ranking members will yield better rewards, and they need more high-ranking members anyway, so he feels he is killing two birds with one stone. Junyul Bang remarks that they are a couple of trash slugs, and Yungi Bang expresses that he is looking forward to working with him. So Hyun Kim welcomes Yungi and Junyul Bang to the crew, and the quest window notifies him that they have joined his crew. He thinks he will maximize his rewards. Ju Hyuk Jang mentions that next is Seung Hyun Jin, ranked 16th, and Dijil On, ranked 15th. Yi Ha Han declines, but Su Hyun Kim says they want them as well. The quest window notifies him that Seung Hyun Jin and Dijil On have joined his crew. He then mentions that next up are Yungi Park, ranked 14th, and Dong Su Hong, ranked 13th. Yi Ha Han dismisses them, but Su Hyun Kim welcomes them to West Gangbuk. The quest window notifies that Yungi Park and Dong Su Hong have joined his crew. Finally, he says the next targets are Dong Yu Wang, ranked 10th, and Ji Hyuk Lee, ranked 9th. Yi Ha Han doesn't respond, but Su Hyun Kim says so, and it begins. Meanwhile, Su Hyun Kim comments here they go, Dong Yu Wang and Ji Hyun Lee both of whom are highly capable fighters, they will both more than pull their weight for sure. Ji Hyuk Jang emphasizes that they can't afford to miss out on either of them, and undoubtedly East Gangbok Hai is thinking the exact same thing. Yi Ha Han acknowledges Dong Yu Wang and Ji Hyun Lee's capabilities and expresses agreement. He gets up from his place and declares that they'll take Ji Hyun Lee. He questions whether West Gangbok will be fine with just Dong Yu Wang and suggests that East Gangbok High might be a better fit for Ji Hyun Lee. So Hyun Kim intervenes, stating that they want both Ji Hyun Lee and Dong Yu Wang. He points out that Yi Ha Han only made that comment because he doesn't need Dong Yu Wang, to which Yi Ha Han insists they want both Ji Hyun Lee and Dong Yu Wang. So Hyun Kim asks if he truly wants that, and Yi Ha Han questions his approach, asking so that's how he's going to play this. So Hyun Kim asks Ji Hyuk Jang what they should do in situations like this. Jang replies that they could go through several different processes. However, first and foremost, they should ask Ji Hyun Lee what she wants. If she wants to join East Gangbok High, they have no choice but to let her go. Yi Ha Han approaches Ji Hyun Lee and invites her to join East Gangbok High, assuring her that they will treat her well. He mentions that they have left the seventh position open for her. Su so Hyun Kim intervenes, stating that West Gangbuk High will treat her even better and promises to make her the top dog of West Gangbuk. Yi Ha Han questions him, asking if he will give up his position as the leader of West Gangbuk. Su so Hyun Kim responds by saying that they will carry her around all the time so she doesn't have to walk anywhere. She tries to say something as she looks behind, where Kyu Jae sits with a rose held in his lips, and she recalls that he asked her if she would join them if they were to defeat South Gangbok High. She comes back to the present and states that she made a promise that she will join West Gangbok High. Yi Ha Han warns her not to get cocky while Kyu Jae looks at her. She clarifies that she's not joining West Gangbok High because of him. The quest window notifies him that Ji Hyun Lee has joined his crew, and Hyun Dong Lee expresses excitement, noting that their crew is growing, which Su Hyun Kim confirms. Ji Hyuk Jang remarks that they almost lost her to East Gang Buk High, and Su Hyun Kim acknowledges, mentioning that he got chills down his spine. He adds that indeed, considering that from today, East Gang Buk High is effectively their foe. He further explains that recruiting those two would have seriously boosted their offensive power. Yi Ha Han approaches two crew members, one of whom expresses dislike for West Gangbuk High and mentions that Jingu O oh, and they will be joining East Gangbuk. Yi Ha Han acknowledges their decision and appreciates them, reassuring them that they will have their revenge. So Hyun Kim adds that they are welcome anytime. Ji Hyuk Jang remarks that they lost those two almost immediately, to which Sehyun Kim responds that it's what they wanted. 
He further explains that he was not interested in recruiting them anyway, as they are considered bad apples. Ji Hyok Jang then inquires about Baeum Sang Jiang and Seong Min Lee, as they mentioned they didn't want to join either crew. So Hyun Kim explains that he thinks Seong Min Lee is acting out of loyalty, while Baeum Sang Jiang is tired of the crew life, so they won't be able to see those two again. Jang agrees and mentions that next up are Yu Jong Na, who has been a constant thorn in their side, being brought there by two guards, and Siak Kang, who managed to hold his own in a battle against everyone. After a while, Sahyun Kim asks Yi Ha Han if they can discuss who will take Siak Kang. The quest window notifies him that the quest, the fall of South Gangbok High, is complete, and they return to the West Gangbok High building. Ji Hyun Kim remarks that they have finally returned to West Gangbok High and mentions that it was a truly lengthy battle. Su Hyun Kim agrees with him and adds that they got a lot out of it too, specifically the 11 new members of West Gangbok High. He explains that he asked the rest to wait outside, while only Dong Yu Wang, Ji Hyun Lee, and Hak Chen Ju came inside. Su Hyun Kim looks at them, and Ji Hyuk Jang comments that they seem disappointed. Su Hyun Kim confirms this and acknowledges that it can't be helped they failed to reach a deal. The scene shifts to East Gangbok High, where Yi Ha Han sits and asks Siak Kang how it feels to be a member of East Gangbok High. Siak Kang replies that, as he said before, he's not a member of East Gangbok High, but he intends to keep the promise he made to Yi Ha Han. Yi Ha Han reassures him, saying he doesn't need to worry about that. All he needs to do is keep his head down and work diligently for East Gangbok High. Meanwhile, So Hyun Kim remarks that with Siak King, East Gangbok High is now even stronger. However, everything is not lost for their side, as they have gained a trump card of their own in Yu Jong Na as he looks at him. Hyun Dong Lee expresses confidence, stating that West Gangbok is stronger now, and they have what it takes to unite Gangbok. So Hyun Kim agrees, saying, let's do it, while Kyu Jae notes that their family has gotten bigger, and Ha Jun Gu remarks, what a nuisance. Hyun Dong Lee declares that he will work even harder, and Haru Seong comments that things are starting to get really interesting. Yu Jong Na and Ji Hyun Lee simply look at them without saying a word. Suddenly, Su Hyun Kim begins running, ignoring Hyun Dong Lee's call from behind. Lee asks what is happening and where Kim is going, wondering why he's running off, and Haru Seong jokingly suggests that maybe Kim had to go really badly. Sahyun Kim thinks to himself that he is going to claim his cards, of course, and explains that to complete the fall of South Gangbok High Quest, he received two diamond cards. He decides to see what he has and opens the cards. The quest window notifies him that he has claimed the cards. As he reads one card labeled Summon Card, Slime, Soft and Squishy, he asks aloud what's this, Squishy Slime. Sahyun Kim wonders aloud what the hell, what's soft and squishy exactly. He thinks he can't wait to find out and decides to summon it. The quest window notifies that the slime is being summoned and a bubble like bear slime appears. He marvels at how this is even possible while the slime emits a blub sound. The quest window then advises him to try giving the slime an item to hold. He reaches out and takes something from his head, asking the slime to hold it. He gives a currency note of 10,000 to the slime, saying it won't hurt to try. The slime takes the note and eats it, while the quest window notifies that the slime has consumed the bill. He holds the slime and shakes it, asking where his money is and demanding that it gives him back his money. He expresses his frustration, saying he thought the slime was just holding it, not gobbling it up. Eventually, the slime spits his money back at him. The quest window then notifies that the slime has excreted his bill and becomes upset. Meanwhile, he wonders aloud what this is and questions whether the slime gave the money back to him. He confirms that there's no doubt about it, this is the bill he had just given to the slime. He expresses disbelief, considering that it could be a slime, and wonders if it is some kind of inventory item. He looks at the card again and realizes that he'll be able to use it for all kinds of things. Ji Hyuk Jang arrives at the door of the washroom and asks if he is alright. Quickly, he puts the slime in his pocket and replies yeah he's fine. Is something wrong? Ji Hyuk Jang confirms that there is something wrong and they must speak about it. He asks what the serious problem is, and Ji Hyok Jang insists that they talk about it in the club room. He wonders what this could be about as they head to the club room, where So Hyun Kim tells Ji Hyok Jang that he just needs to talk to him and suggests they discuss the serious problem he mentioned. Ji Hyok Jang then begins explaining the situation, and he responds by saying he's on the edge of his seat, ready to listen. 
Jang elaborates that they are currently facing two problems. He asks who the two problems are, and Ji Hyuk Jang explains that they have a shortage of funds and need money to run the crew. He mentions that Siak Kang generated funds by selling fentanyl, while Na Yi Han does so by managing a number of bars and clubs. Each crew runs its own business. Ji Hyuk Jang adds that they don't have any similar source of income and need money to sustain the crew. He affirms his understanding of the situation, and Ji Hyuk Jang confirms this, stating that West Gangbuk High needs to start a business as well. He agrees to think about that and then asks about the second problem. Ji Hyuk Jang explains that it's directly related to the first problem and concerns their crew members' loyalty, particularly their loyalty to him. Starting with Hak Jin Ju, they recruited several members from South Gangbok High's crew. Although it's not the case now, their loyalty may diminish over time. He inquires about the reason, and Ji Hyuk Jang explains that Siak Kang used the money to maintain their loyalty. If they are unable to run a profitable business, they might leave the crew. He concludes that they need to start a business and generate income because gaining the loyalty of their newest members won't be possible without it. Ji Hyuk Jang disagrees and mentions that not all of them joined West Gangbuk High for the money, referring to Yoo Jong Na and Ji Hyun Lee. He speculates that Ji Hyun Lee probably joined because of Q J Ya, but he has no idea why Yoo Jong Na agreed to be part of West Gangbuk High's crew. He adds that he plans to investigate Yoo Jong Na's background further. So Hyun Kim suggests that first, he needs to establish a closer bond with them. Now that they've joined West Gangbuk High's crew, they are like family. The quest window notifies him that a side quest has been created. He checks the details of the side quest, which aims to increase Yoo Jong Na and Ji Hyun Lee's loyalty, with its reward being one gold card. He calls his advisor, and Ji Hyuk Jang confirms this plan. He thinks it's a good idea, going on a trip together is one of the easiest ways to get to know people better. He wonders why they haven't considered it before. P realizes his own oversight and jokes about it being a silly idea, while Haru Siang playfully calls herself the silly one as they pour water on each other. Ji Hyuk Jang agrees that it's an excellent idea to express a desire to cultivate stronger relationships rather than merely transactional ones. However, he notes that they still need to come up with a business idea nonetheless. After a while, Sohyun Kim sits in his room with Copy Cloud, who asks what ails him, master. He responds that his advisor mentioned they need to start a business because they need money to keep their crew running. Copy Cloud suggests starting a business, to which he replies why didn't he think of that earlier and asks if she has come up with an idea. He explained that he could use the slime, and she asked what slime was. He takes it out of his pocket and shows it to her. She then asks how he will use it, and he explains that the slime is in inventory. It can hold an infinite number of items. For instance, he could start smuggling drugs, and with a slime acting as his drug mule, he wouldn't get caught, even at the airport. The slime swallows the bag, and the quest window notifies him that the slime has consumed the bag. He explains that since no one else can see the slime, he could use it to become the greatest drug kingpin of the century. She asks if he plans to become a drug kingpin then. He clarifies that no, that wouldn't be right. She inquires about what he means, and he responds that he has become much happier since starting these quests, so he doesn't want to misuse the rewards he has received. He asserts that he won't do anything unethical or immoral, as he doesn't want to cross that line. He adds that he'll have to think of another way and wonders why he can only think of criminal activities. She compliments him, calling his mindset admirable, but he insists he was not fishing for compliments. They all get ready to go on a trip, and Sehyun Kim mentions that it's been a while since their last trip. Kyu Jaya expresses excitement, saying his heart is already fluttering with anticipation. Sehyun Kim observes the scene and asks what's going on over there, noticing the amount of luggage Haru Siang has. He wonders if no one told Haru Siang that it was only a three-day trip. He recalls that he definitely did mention it, but he is unsure whether he should be impressed or frightened by the amount of luggage. Haru Siang responds that she's not excited about the trip, and he asks when he never asked. Sohyun Kim then turns to Dahyun Kim and asks why she is tagging along. She replies that it's none of his business, thinking to herself that she needs to see for herself. He insists that he's not excited at all about the trip, and she responds by saying okay, she believes him. Just then, Kyu Jaya confirms their arrival, referring to them as the man and woman of the hour. Suhyun Kim greets Yoo Jong Na and Ji Hyun Lee, expressing relief that they have joined them, 
as he was worried they might not come along. Jihyun Lee explains that he's only present because he considers this an extension of his responsibilities to the crew. Sehyun Kim agrees, adding that since they are already there, they might as well have a good time. She dismisses his statement with a whatever, while Kyu Jaya brings up a concern. Kyu Jaya asks Suhyun Kim if it's really okay for them to leave their advisor behind. Suhyun Kim clarifies that by the advisor Kyu Jaya means Ji Hyuk Jang. He explains that if Ji Hyuk Jang were to come along too, West Gang Buk Hai would be left defenseless, as they don't know when they might face an attack. Sehyun Kim further mentions that he asked Ji Hyuk Jang and Hyun Dong Lee to stay behind and hold down the fort. He then declares that he has now begun their team retreat and expresses anticipation for what will happen on this trip. They depart for their trip. The scene shifts to North Gangbok High Territory, where two people sit. Daniel asks if he has heard something, and the other person asks what he heard. Daniel responds that the South Gangbok High crew was wiped out, and the other person asks by whom. Daniel explains that West and East Gangbuk worked together to take them down, to which the other person sarcastically comments how adorable. Daniel inquires if their leader knows about it too, and the other person replies that he's sure the leader must know. Daniel then asks for the second in command's opinion on the matter. The second in command responds that he's thinking about how surprising it is that tiny little West Gangbuk High managed to defeat South Gangbuk. Daniel suggests that it's time to pay a visit to Sohyeon Kim. They all arrive at their destination, with Haru Siang exclaiming, Ready, steady, go, it's the sea. So Hyun Kim tells her to calm down, mentioning that he was carsick the whole way there, yet he looks fine now. Kyu Jaya expresses her excitement, jokingly suggesting that maybe he was a fish in a past life. So Hyun Kim responds by saying he didn't know Haru Siang was such a fan of the beach, they should have come here earlier, considering it's just a three day trip. Kyu Jaya remarks that it should be a good trip as Hyun Dong Lee booked everything. So Hyun Kim acknowledges this and adds that they'll be able to uncover the truth today. Kyu Jaya agrees, asking if Haru Siang is a guy or a girl because she claims to be a guy, but she's way too pretty for them to believe that. So Hyun Kim replies that they have no choice but to confirm it with their own eyes and take this opportunity to make sure that Haru Siang isn't pulling a Milan. Meanwhile, Haru Siang mentions that she has already changed and claims to be the fastest among everyone in their crew. They both enter the room, and someone asks how she manages to change so quickly since they just checked in, suggesting changing one more time. Haru Siang asks what they are talking about and threatens to deliver a Kapora kick to the face if they continue. They ask if they can at least see what's in her bag, and Kyuja Ya reassures them that it's too early to despair since they still have three days and two nights ahead of them. Sohyun Kim suggests changing one more time, but Haru Siang declines, indicating Hak Jin Ju and Yu Jong Na. She expresses her irritation, stating that they are just showing off now by changing clothes. Kyu Ya comments that girls don't appreciate guys with bodies like that, and Haru Siang acknowledges his self-confidence. Sohyun Kim remarks that he should probably get changed too, as he searches for something in his bag. He thinks about how they are finally on their trip. But having fun isn't the only thing on his agenda. He recalls that it's not the main reason he decided to organize this trip. His real objective is to become friends with Yu Jong Na and Ji Hyun Lee. He acknowledges the need to strengthen their loyalty, so they won't abandon the group and wonders where Ji Hyun Lee is, placing his hand on Yu Jong Na's shoulder. He reflects on how Siak Kang never did anything like this for him and notices that he used the camera card, as notified by the quest window. Yu Jong Na suggests that it's better to look for Ji Hyun Lee, and he notices Da Hyun Kim and Ji Hyun Lee changing clothes. Sa Hyun Kim slaps him and corrects that she's Da Hyun Kim. She apologizes, explaining that there was a bug on his back just now. Yu Jong Na looks at him and thinks that was a close call. He reflects that Siak Kang never did things like catching bugs for him, and concludes that he needs to be more careful about using the camera card. After a while, they all head to the beach. So Hyun Kim expresses relief, to which Kyu Jaya agrees, mentioning that she thought things might be awkward between them, but they became friends pretty quickly. She adds that girls usually become friends with each other quicker than guys do. He further comments that they probably won't contact each other once they go home. He wonders why she is there with them, as he feels out of place with those two, and just seeing them makes him feel pathetic in comparison. He mentions seeing some girls ask for Hajun Ju's number earlier. So Hyun Kim interrupts, telling him not to share such things as it makes him feel even worse. 
Kyu Jia chimes in, expressing surprise at Daehyun Kim's sociability and outgoing nature, noting that she has surprised him. He confirms, stating that he's seeing a whole new side of her here, which he never wanted to see before, but now considers it a positive development. He then remarks on Jaehyun Lee's increasing loyalty and asks if others can see that as well. Kyu Jia confirms that it's noticeable, and the quest window notifies him that Jaehyun Lee's loyalty has indeed increased. He wonders if Yujo Na is having fun, noting that his expression doesn't reveal much and speculating that he might not be a good swimmer, which was unexpected. The quest window then notifies him that Yujo Na's loyalty has also increased. He thinks to himself, thank goodness their loyalty is going up, but he has another problem to solve. He reflects on how there is finally some peace and quiet, and he should enjoy this moment because there has been so much to deal with lately. He recalls Ji Hyok Jang's advice about starting a business and realizes that he needs to come up with an idea as soon as possible for a business that will generate funds for the crew. He understands that if he doesn't do this, West Gang Buck will eventually collapse. Haru Siang arrives and calls for Seo Hyun Kim and Kyu Jae Ya to join them. Despite everything, he decides that, for now, they should have some fun. On the other side, Daniel is sitting in his room playing chess when a guard enters and informs him that they have located Seo Hyun Kim, as he had requested. Daniel responds affirmatively, stating that it's good news and inquires about Seo Hyun Kim's whereabouts. The guard informs him that Soo Hyun Kim is currently at the beach with his crew. Daniel expresses surprise, asking where the beach is and calling them naive fools. The guard continues, mentioning that they also stumbled upon something unusual. Curious, Daniel asks what exactly is unusual. The guard explains that there's a rumor circulating about Haru Siang, ranked 39th at North Gangbak High, possibly defecting to West Gangbak High. Moreover, the guard adds that Haru Siang appears to be at the beach right now with Sohyun Kim. Daniel remarks that it has been a while since someone dared to provoke them. Meanwhile, Haru Siang goes to a club where two boys are looking at him. One of them asks if he doesn't think Haru Siang has changed a lot recently, and the other boy asks if he feels it too. He replies affirmatively, mentioning that she has started talking all old-timey as well. The other boy adds that's not even the weirdest thing about her these days, as she plays snooker. Sahyun Kim tells Copy Cloud that he can do this, referring to pretending to be Haru Siang at the pool hall. He instructs Copy Cloud to unsummon himself to where he is if anything happens. Copy Cloud responds, saying he understands and that Sahyun Kim can trust him. Sahyun Kim asks what is happening, and the other boy looks at some people and exclaims that it can't be, instructing everybody to stop. They all greet Daniel as he enters, causing them to get scared. They ask what brings him here and mention that he must be pretty busy at the moment. Daniel asks if he is here to see Haru Siang. He says it's strange how Haru Siang is meeting his gaze and adjusts her hair from her face. Daniel notes that this is definitely Haru Siang, yet it doesn't seem like her. A boy enters and calls him, asking if he can find out where the West Gangbok High crew members are. Meanwhile, Suhyun Kim is sleeping in his room when the quest window notifies him that the copy cloud has summoned itself. She jumps at him and slaps him, urging him to wake up. He wakes up and asks what's wrong. She says it's an emergency, explaining that the second in command of North Gangbok High came to the pool hall. He asks who the second in command of North Gangbok High is and wonders why he would come to the pool hall as he holds her and shakes her. She says he's making her dizzy and mentions that he was looking for Haru Siang. He says he thought she was Haru Siang, yet she also was not and wonders how this could have happened. He thinks he said Copy Cloud was Haru Siang, yet not Haru Siang, but he doubts he knew that it was the cloud. He ponders on the relationship between that guy and Haru Siang and wonders why the second in command of North Gang Bok Hai is so obsessed with a member who's only ranked 39th. He thinks that this is serious stuff anyway. She asks if this is how he does it and says one learns something new every day. He thinks that if North Gangbok High finds out they poached one of their members, they might launch an attack against them. Fahyun Kim asks where Haru Siang is now, while a short-haired girl comes up to Haru Siang and says this is a bit sudden, let's not drag this out, and tells her to tell the truth and asks if she is a guy or a girl. Haru Siang and another short-haired girl sit together at the beach, and she says the sea is so beautiful. She expresses her gladness for deciding to come on this trip. She mentions wondering about the organisms living in the depths of the oceans and asks if she has ever wanted to go into the deep sea, adding if he doesn't mind. 
The short-haired girl thinks this is awkward and wonders why she is sitting right beside her. She asks if she knows what. Haru Siong asks what it is, and she replies she doesn't want to come here, prompting Haru Siong to ask why she came then. She replies that it's because she's interested in her and again asks if she is a girl. She says she's not a girl, and she asks her why she is growing out her hair. She says there's a reason for that, and she asks what the reason is, wondering if she's planning on donating it or something. Meanwhile, she mentions there's a hair salon she used to go to, and the hairstylist there is sick right now. But she believes she'll get better eventually, so she is growing it out until that day comes. She asks Haru Siong if this is a bit sudden, let's not drag this out, and she tells her to tell the truth, asking if she is a guy or a girl. Haru Siong says she doesn't know why she's so curious about that, but if she really wants to know, she'll tell her. Haru Siong tries to say something when Sohyun Kim arrives there and calls her, saying they're in big trouble. She asks what he means by big trouble and asks if East Gang Bak Hai has invaded. The other girl says she knew that, while Sahyun Kim says no, something even worse than that, and he breathes heavily. Sahyun Kim mentions that North Gangbuk is on the way, and says he's out of breath. He explains that a guy named Daniel from North Gangbuk High is coming here. He takes her with him and asks all right now to tell them the truth about her relationship with Daniel. He points out that Daniel is ranked second in North Gangbuk High and wonders why he is so concerned with what she's up to. He mentions that she's only ranked 39th there and questions why he is so obsessed with her. So Hyun Kim speculates that Daniel probably wants to meet him too, but he's sure she is the main reason he's coming here because she's a member of North Gangbuk's crew, yet she's here with them. He asks if she can tell them what her relationship with Daniel is like. Haru Xiong recalls when Daniel put his hand on her head, and Se Hyun emphasizes again that they'll need to know that to deal with him. Meanwhile, she asks if it's okay if she tells him next time, but Had Yoon Gu asks why she hesitates to tell. She refuses as he walks towards her, but Se Hyun Kim steps in between and blocks his way. He says stop and adds that if it's too hard for her to talk about, it's okay, Haru Siong. He taps her head and says they'll discuss this at a later time. He goes to his room and Had Yoon Gu asks what he is going to do about Daniel, mentioning that he'll be here soon. Sohyun Kim agrees, saying he's right, and adds that he thinks they'll have to hide Haru Siang somewhere. He also mentions that he's thinking of meeting him himself first. He acknowledges that they are way too weak to face off against North Gangbuk Hai, and that he'll have to try and talk his way out of the situation. Ha Jun-gu says he doesn't know what kind of guy Daniel is, and he asks what kind of guy he is. He replies that going by just his name, he sounds like a nice guy, kind of like a boy next door. Ha Jun Gu walks out while he calls him from behind. On the other side, Ju Hyun Lee walks to the beach and Ku Jaya arrives there. He says she is here and asks if he may walk with her. She says he already is and he replies that she has already given him implicit permission. He asks what made her pick up a sword while grabbing her hand. She says this is all she had and he asks what the meaning of all she had is. She replies she was betrayed and wanted revenge but she was too weak. When she came to her senses, she found herself holding it, so he should keep his distance from her. She says she doesn't trust anyone. Kuja Ye says he understands, so she doesn't, while a wave of water comes behind her. Kuja Ye saves her, and she says it's fine if he doesn't run away. He says he will make her trust again, and she looks at him. He asks what she is even talking about, and they laugh. Meanwhile, Yujong Na sits in the park and sees a message from Siak Kang, who says to stand by until he asks for him. The scene shifts to East Gangbuk Hai, where Yi Ha Han asks if it is true that he'll be able to bring Yujong Na over to their side. Siak Kang is eating noodles and says, Yep, he and Yujong Na are still tight, and he only joined West Gangbuk Hai because he had no other choice. He says his loyalty to him remains unchanged, and he'll be able to bring him back to stand at his side whenever he likes. Yi Ha Han lights up his cigarette and says that's excellent. It looks like the wheels are in motion and West Gangbok High will crumble from the inside while a boy quickly enters and says they have a problem. Yi Ha Han asks what it is and he replies that Daniel's on the move. Yi Ha Han asks what he means by that. Siak Kang asks why Daniel of North Gangbok High is going there and he replies it appears he wants to meet Sohyun Kim. Yi Ha Han says that's interesting, and it looks like they won't need to do a thing because Daniel will end West Gangbuk High. 
Meanwhile, Daniel mentions Suhyun Kim of West Gangbuk High and someone who looks like Haru Seong, saying this should be fun. He asks what Ha Jun Gu is doing there, and he asks as well where he is going. Daniel replies that he's going to meet his leader. Ha Jun Gu asks if he can meet him and decides he doesn't like him, and Daniel replies he'll have to wreck him. He says that he won't let him go. Daniel says wow, he's here to protect Sohyun Kim from him when he couldn't even beat Siak Kang. Ha Jun Gu gets angry and tells him to shut his trap and bring it on. The quest window notifies that Ha Jun Gu's potential is pulsating. Daniel asks Ha Jun Gu if he's sure about this because things have changed. Ha Jun Gu rushes to attack him and he blocks the attack, mentioning that he's no longer his old self and neither is Ha Jun Gu. He attacks again, but Daniel manages to evade it. Daniel reflects on being lazy and steps on Ha Jun Gu's foot. He attempts another attack, but Daniel escapes once again, commenting that it's cute and asking if Ha Jun Gu is done. He then suggests they finish this. Daniel thinks to himself that this can't be happening and recalls that this isn't the first time. He thinks back to their previous fight when they were evenly matched and both tried to defeat each other. Daniel attacks, thinking that Ha Jun Gu's moves are predictable. He wonders when he got this strong, noting that they are typical boxing moves, just as he thought. He counters with another attack and Daniel retaliates, pushing him into a wall and wondering if it's because he's been lazy. Meanwhile, Daniel remarks that Ha Jin Gu has not changed a bit and acknowledges his efforts, stating that he will now go to see Sehyun Kim. He walks away, but Ha Jin Gu gets up and insists that they are not finished yet. Daniel questions Ha Jin Gu's actions, asking what he is doing and why he is trying to protect someone. Ha Jin Gu firmly responds that he already said they are done. Daniel questions if this is really the selfish and arrogant Ha Jun Gu he knows, and he wonders why Ha Jun Gu is sacrificing himself for Sa Hyun Kim. Ha Jun Gu explains that it's because he's transparent. Daniel seeks clarification on what he means by transparent, and he explains that he is willing to do whatever it takes to achieve his goal. Yet he's proud and unashamed about it, and he's transparent because he doesn't deceive or manipulate others. Daniel remarks that being transparent sounds like a rascal to him, asserting that he is leagues better than all of them. He explains that Suhyun Kim doesn't judge people or treat them like objects, and unlike some people, Suhyun Kim doesn't hide and deceive. He describes Suhyun Kim as a transparent scoundrel who will fight, even at great personal loss, to protect one of his own. This perspective leads Daniel to consider what it would be like if someone like Sehyun Kim were leading a crew, suggesting that being under such leadership wouldn't be so bad. The quest window notifies that Ha Jun Gu used the Kisi fighting method. Daniel expresses that Sehyun Kim will be the one to unite Gangbuk, emphasizing that this fight must start and end with Sehyun Kim. He then addresses Ha Jun Gu, sarcastically commenting on the touching tale he just heard, implying that he cannot allow Ha Jun Gu to go to Sehyun Kim. After a while, Ji Hyuk Jang mentions over the phone that he must avoid fighting Daniel. So Hyun Kim inquires about what he means, asking if he shouldn't fight Daniel. Ji Hyuk Jang affirms that's correct and explains that Daniel is a monster. If they fail to convince him to leave them alone, the conversation will escalate into a fight. Ji Hyuk Jang warns that West Gangbok High will be decimated. Even ganging up on him won't be effective. So Hyun Kim acknowledges how strong Daniel is, and Ji Hyuk Jang adds that the high-ranking fighters of North Gangbok High are absolute monsters. It took everything they had just to beat Siak Kang, and they had no means of defeating Daniel. For the sake of West Gangbok High's future, the moment he sees Daniel, he needs to prostrate at his feet. So Hyun Kim agrees and says he understands. Ji Hyuk Jang mentions that he'll try to prepare something to mitigate this problem on his end as well. So Hyun Kim asserts that they need to prioritize and think they'll have to hide Haru Seung somewhere. He calls her under the table, but Kyu Jaya responds that there's no one under the table. The quest window notifies him that Ha Jun Gu's potential is pulsating, indicating that he used the camera card. So Hyun Kim wonders why Ha Jun Gu is suddenly fighting him and doesn't inform him. Kyu Jaya asks if he is hallucinating, and Su Hyun Kim takes a moment, grabs a card and thinks for his sake. He then runs and instructs him to take Haru Siong and hide. Ji Hyuk Jang expresses surprise, stating he didn't expect North Gangbok Hai to show up this soon and wonders if West Gangbok's luck has finally run out. Daniel punches him and comments that it's over now, finding the situation amusing. He thinks that Ha Jun Gu is too strong and that he needs to be stopped. 
He counters the attack on him and wonders why Hajun Gu, who usually acts high and mighty, is acting so desperate. He believes that if he lets him through, the entire crew will be crushed, so he can't allow that to happen. Daniel decides that enough is enough, especially since no one knows about his actions and he activates his powers. The quest window notifies him that his crew member Hajun Gu is filled with conviction. At East Gangbak Hai, Yi Ha Han expresses surprise at the outcome, as he had only heard rumors and didn't expect Ha Jun Gu to lose. Siok Kang speculates that if he had been more desperate to win, the fight might have turned out differently. Yi Ha Han mentions that this indicates Ha Jun Gu has the potential to become even stronger, and someone replies affirmatively, stating that the day will arrive soon. Daniel remarks that once Ha Jun Gu finds his motivation, Gang Buk will experience significant upheaval. The quest window notifies him that Ha Jun Gu's potential is skyrocketing. Daniel attacks him and slams him into a wall. The quest window then sends a warning message indicating that he failed to awaken. Daniel comments that it was a close call. So Hyun Kim arrives and attempts to attack Daniel from behind, but Daniel notices him and throws him away as well. Daniel addresses Sehyun Kim, asking if he is from West Gangbuk Hai. Sehyun Kim wonders what is happening and is astonished by the damage he sustained from that attack. Daniel mentions that he has heard about the plan to unite Gangbuk, and he observes the intimidating aura emanating from him. The quest window notifies him that he used the peek at him card. Daniel expresses his hope that Sehyun Kim is okay with him erasing West Gangbuk Hai from existence today. Suhyun Kim wonders what is happening as the quest window notifies him that the peek at him card failed due to the opponent's high stats. The quest window notifies him that a new main quest is available, the main quest Survive Daniel, which rewards one gold card. Daniel punches him so hard that Suhyun Kim can't breathe and wonders what hit him. He asks Daniel what he is doing and questions why he isn't fighting back. Suhyun Kim feels like he got hit by a truck and realizes Daniel is too strong, he can't move. Daniel declares him dead. The quest window issues a warning that if he fails to complete the main quest, all rewards will be forfeited and quest windows will no longer appear. Daniel notes that Sehyun Kim is still alive, and the quest window notifies him that he used the healing bean to restore his stamina. Sehyun Kim resolves not to give up on those precious memories. The quest window indicates that he used the Dempsey roll technique and attacks repeatedly, but Daniel blocks all of his attacks. Daniel asks if he has started, commenting on how unorthodox it is, while Sehyun Kim uses yet be up Tijong on Young Suyugi. Daniel remarks that he's using Tikjon and finds it fun. Sehyun Kim then employs yet be up Tikjon and Murub Chigi to attack him, and Daniel questions if it's a tackle. Sehyun Kim follows up with a strike to the moon, launching himself high into the air, but Daniel manages to escape. Daniel decides he's done showing what he's got and grabs Sehyun Kim's leg, noting the dust and expressing his dislike for him. He further comments that Sehyun Kim is not his type, finding him bothersome to play around with, and mentions that individuals with fire and spirit like him are hard to break due to their strong convictions. He responds by saying he likes Daniel, to which Daniel replies that, regardless, it's time to end West Gangbuk Hai. The quest window notifies that the copy cloud has summoned itself and she arrives there and kicks Daniel. She asks if he is okay and says she'll buy him some time, so he should run, he is a worthless creature. Daniel grabs her neck, expresses surprise, and asks where she came from. He throws her on the floor, dismissing her presence. The quest window notifies him that the slime has excreted the wooden sword and also notifies him that he used the healing beam. Another notification indicates that he used Kalernis while Sohyun Kim takes out a wooden sword. She calls for Copy Cloud, and the quest window notifies him that he used the To the Moon card. Daniel remarks that he's too angry, commenting that it's easy to shake off an angry opponent. He kicks Sehyun Kim away, declaring it's the end. She looks at him and says Master, use the lucky bag, prompting him to wonder what she means by the lucky bag. He checks the lucky card, which is for the new year approaching, and increases one stat at random to S rank. He thinks that if the copy cloud is telling him to use this card, one of his stats will become S rank. He believes he can't beat that monster, so he has no other choice. The quest window notifies that he used the lucky bag, and one of his stats has been increased to S rank. Kyu Jaya Yu Na and Ji Hyun Lee arrive there and ask if he is fighting Daniel. They question why he went to see him alone. Kyu Jaya says he should have called them, 
as there was no time to waste. He insists they need to hurry, hoping they are not too late. He thinks, Sohyun Kim, please be okay. Sohyun Kim stops them while Daniel beats Hajin Gu, and she says, please stop, he won. She admits they lost. Daniel responds that it's too late. He accuses them of going around, saying he was going to unite Gangbuk. He points out that they shouldn't have said that when they knew perfectly well that North Gangbuk High was around. He admits that he can't take those words back and declares that West Gangbuk High ends today, but the rest of his crew isn't at fault. Kyuja Ye remarks that they are here, and Daniel expresses surprise that his friends came to help, telling them to get out of there. Kyuja Ye asks what he means by that, while Suhyun Kim thinks that they'll all get hurt because of him and says they don't stand a chance against him. He knows he can't let that happen. The quest window notifies him that his crew member, Sehyun Kim, is filled with conviction, and Sehyun Kim's potential is skyrocketing. The quest window then notifies that his potential has been increased to S rank and Sehyun Kim's potential has reached its peak, congratulating him. Finally, the quest window notifies that Sehyun Kim's potential has been awakened, and he warns Daniel not to dare to touch them, stating that they are his babies. Fuhyun Kim notes that Daniel is like a wild beast, and the quest window notifies that he has claimed two Suhyun Kim exclusive attack cards. He checks the Beast Mode Weasel card, which allows the user to borrow the power of a wild beast, making their attack skills rapidly and abnormally strong for five minutes. He also checks another card, the Trigger Card One Man Army, which increases the user's stats by the number of opponents. The quest window notifies him that he used the Beast Mode Weasel card and that the One Man Army card has been triggered. He uses Beast Mode Face Slash and Beast Mode Gut Rip, followed by Beast Mode Skin Hide and Beast Mode Hide Grab. He then uses Beast Mode and Yet Be Up Teak Joan Marup Chagi while Suhyun Kim attacks Daniel. Daniel counterattacks, but Suhyun Kim manages to escape from his attack. Meanwhile, Daniel grabs his shirt and kicks him away. Kyuja Yes says he's strong, it hurts his neck, and he wants to step in, but he can't. He expresses concern that they might only get in the way if they try to protect them. Sohyun Kim uses beast mode and yet be up Tikjon Dakajil. He thinks he'll protect them and states that he'll follow him to the end. He believes in the people who rely on him. He adds that he'll follow him wherever he goes, even to the depths of hell, if it's about uniting Gangbuk. Haru Xiong expresses happiness that she got to know him, Sohyun Kim, and expresses trust and liking towards him. She thinks of them as her friends and calls them his babies. Jihyun Lee says she'll be watching. He reads the attack card Stun Fist Chaos, a crowd control connection at the chaos level. When a punch lands squarely on an opponent, it immobilizes them for three seconds. He thinks of them as his children. The quest window notifies that he used Stun Fist, and he thinks he won't let anyone mess with them. Daniel says he's surprised and didn't think he'd need to take this fight seriously while attacking Suhyun Kim, but he grabs his hand. He admits that he would have lost the old one, and Daniel puts his foot on Suhyun Kim's face. He asks who's next while looking at Kyuja Ya Yu Jong Na and Ji Hyun Lee. Daniel calls Jiang Du Ma and says it's him stating that West Gangbok High needs to be destroyed and that Sihyun Kim is too dangerous. He asks how things went over there. Jiang Du Ma replied that he had just wrapped things up and had not found anything unexpected. He asks if he orders him to destroy West Gangbok High, and he can do so immediately, even though he thinks everyone is down. He says to give him the go-ahead and wonders how he is so damn strong. Daniel says good work and asks him to wait just a moment. He mentions he's still the head of West Gangbok High and suggests giving him a chance to say his last words. Daniel then asks if he has anything to say. If not, perhaps he'll start by ripping out his eyes. He sits near Sohyun Kim and wonders if this is the end, thinking about how it all ends. He receives a phone call and wonders who it could be. He notices Daniel looks nervous. Daniel picks up the call and says he is speaking, while the other person asks what he thinks he's doing. He replies that he's not sure what they mean while they all look at him. The other person asks where he is, and he replies that he is in the process of eliminating West Gangbok High. The other person asks why he is doing something he never asked him to do. He replies that Suhyun Kim is much more dangerous than they think, and he calls him while Daniel says they need to destroy West Gangbok High now. He says he's sorry and acknowledges that he was out of line. The other person orders to bring him, saying again to bring Sahyeon Kim to him, while the quest window notifies him about the complete quest, and Sahyeon Kim stands up. 
The quest window notifies him that the main quest, Survive Daniel, is complete, and he receives one gold card. After a while, Sehyun Kim reaches there, and he thinks that he's finally meeting the top dog of North Gangbuk High. Yunjo, the top dog of North Gangbuk High, looks at him and asks if he's Sehyun Kim, while Sehyun Kim thinks, what the hell, he's huge, peek at him. Junjo tells him to choose, will he become a subordinate of North Gangbuk High, or does he want to die here? The system notifies him that the peek at him card failed and the opponent's stats are too high. He thinks he can't see his stats either and he won't be able to beat him in a fight. He asks what his meaning is by becoming a subordinate of North Gangbok High and thinks there's a way, while Yanjo asks if he doesn't want this. The Copy Cloud notifies him about summoning the Copy Cloud and he thinks the top dog of North Gangbok High is the strongest person in Gangbok. Yunjo asks why he doesn't become a subordinate of West Gangbok High, and he thinks he'll copy the top dog of North Gangbok High. The quest window notifies him that the copy cloud is searching for an object to copy, and the copy cloud arrives there, thinking he's off, master. He thinks he will copy the heck out of that human, that's good. The quest window notifies him that the copy failed for an unknown reason, and this subject can't be copied, while the copy cloud apologizes to him. Yunjo asks what he just said and asks if he wants him to become a subordinate of West Gangbok High. He thinks no way the copy cloud can't copy this guy to hell with pride, while Sehyun Kim bows down in front of him. He says it's been his life's dream to become a subordinate of North Gangbok High. If he sees someone as lowly as himself as being fit to work for him, he will happily do so. He is thinking right now that he needs to survive and says he is looking forward to serving him. He thinks he will not forget this moment. After a while, Sehyun Kim comes back to West Gangbok High, where he tells Ji Hyuk Jang and asks if he told North Gangbok High that they would become their subordinates. He replies that is correct and says Yun Jo said he would destroy them if he did not agree to do so. He couldn't think of another way to get them out of that situation and said he knew as well as he did what he meant by those words. He says he wanted to save everyone and apologizes, saying if he had been stronger, none of this would have happened. Meanwhile, Haru Siong says it is her fault, and she is to blame for all this. If it had not been for her, none of this would have happened. She says she has ruined everything by joining his crew and apologizes, stating she will leave the crew. Sohyun Kim calls her name and asks what she means by leaving the crew, saying he won't allow that. He asks if what has happened is already done and says her leaving the crew won't solve anything. He takes responsibility for what happened that day, admitting he was not strong enough, and reassures her that she shouldn't feel any guilt over it. He acknowledges that this is their current situation even though he had vowed to unite Gangbuk and ended up becoming a subordinate of North Gangbuk High due to yielding to a stronger power. She replies that she knows she's pathetic and says she won't drag this out any longer. He responds by saying if they are disappointed in him, they are free to leave West Gangbok High immediately. He emphasizes that he won't try to keep them there and says they are free to go. Yu Jomna and Ji Hyun Lee look at him. They wonder what he means by leaving West Gangbok High after witnessing all that. Yu Jomna says it's up to them whether they leave or not and asserts that he doesn't order them about it. The quest window notifies him that Yu Jong Na and Ji Hyun Lee's loyalty has increased, and a side quest appears that increases their loyalty, with the reward being one gold card. He wonders if they like the fact that he groveled in front of Yun Jo like a dog and ponders what has gotten into these two. On the other side, Daniel comes to Yun Jo and says he doesn't understand why Sehyun Kim may still be weak, but he has the potential to become a major threat to North Gangbok High one day. He asks why Yun Jo went easy on him, why he didn't destroy West Gangbok High, and what his plans are regarding how he plans to use Suhyun Kim. He asks if Yun Jo will do to him what he did to the former top dog of North Gangbok. Yun Jo asks when he has the right to question him, and he replies with an apology, saying he understands he overstepped his bounds. Yi Ha Han asks how Suhyun Kim became a subordinate of North Gangbok High. Chang Gong Yom confirms it saying he just received the news and explained that Sehyun Kim met with Yun Jo and got down on his knees to beg for mercy. Theok Kang questions if, from now on, West Gangbok High will be part of North Gangbok High and asks what is going on. Yi Ha Han admits he doesn't know either, acknowledging that North Gangbok High's power is absolute. He expresses surprise at Sehyun Kim's submission, stating that he knew the guy was not exactly normal but wonders what he was thinking. 
Chun Gong Yom asks if he has given up on uniting Gangbuk and if that was not his ultimate objective. Meanwhile, Su Hyun Kim arrives at school, where some students look at him. One of them asks him what he thinks on earth and if he has heard the rumor. His friend asks what the rumor is, and he replies that West Gangbok High is now a subordinate of North Gangbok High. His friend responds by saying how embarrassing it is, mentioning that Suhyun Kim was apparently on his knees, begging for his life. Suhyun Kim confirms that he heard he's making Yun Jo's lunches from today on. His friend expresses disbelief, stating that everything he is going on about uniting Gangbok is all talk. Ji Hyuk Jang also arrives there and looks at him, asking what's going on as they don't have a meeting today. Ji Hyuk Jang expresses his desire to leave the crew and explains that the reason he joined in the first place was to unite Gangbuk along with West Gangbuk Hai. He replies that he joined because of Haru Seong. Either way, he can't remain at West Gangbuk Hai now that it has become a subordinate of North Gangbuk Hai. Ji Hyuk Jang tries to say something, but he puts his hand on his shoulder and says he can decide after hearing what he has to say. He recalls where he bows down and says it's been his life's dream to become a subordinate of North Gangbok High. If he sees someone as lowly as himself as being fit to work for him, he will happily do so. He says he looks forward to serving him, however, he has a favor to ask. Yun Jo asks what the favor is. He responds that he would at least like to finish their war against East Gangbok High. He mentions hearing that Yun Jo is making some plans of his own and notes that East Gangbok High may strike as he's about to set those plans in motion. Yun Jo acknowledges this, stating that East Gangbok High will fall to his might, but questions if there is any need for him to waste his power on such a small fry. He responds by asking Yun Jo to leave East Gangbok High to him and to lend him the monsters of North Gangbok High. He gets up and remarks that after all, there's no need to use a sledgehammer to kill a fly. Yun Jo agrees, saying all right. The scene returns to the present, where Sehyun Kim mentions that Yun Jo gave him permission to attack East Gangbok High and agreed to send him North Gangbok High's forces, including some of his strongest fighters. He states that he will use them to take down East Gangbok High and mentions they will be able to defeat East Gangbok High easily without spilling any blood. He then plans to betray Yun Zhou. Ji Hyuk Jang wonders whether he is a hero or a villain, to which he responds that as the advisor of West Gangbok Hai, Ji Hyuk Jang can swear his continued fealty to him. He considers that he might simply be a real rascal and reflects on the reward he received for surviving his fight with Daniel, realizing he would receive that card a second time. He checks the one-time use card, Fateful Meeting, which is a challenger card, the highest ranking card available, and notes that this card will disappear once used. The quest window notifies him that he used the Fateful Meeting card and acknowledges that it's indeed a Fateful Meeting card. He opens the card, which informs him that he has become stronger. Do Hyun Kim asks if there is something he wishes to ask this time as well, and he replies yes. Taking down South Gangbok High left him with a lot of questions, and he would like to hear that voice again, the one from back then. He requests to talk to them again. The card responds, asking what he would like to talk about. He replies that it's a deal. After his encounter with North Gangbok High, he came to a realization and wanted to make a deal with them. The card inquires about the deal, expressing interest and stating that it never expected him to say that. So Hyun Kim responds affirmatively, saying he knows he's cool. The card then confirms that it will now connect him to them, commending Suhyun Kim's work. He thinks there it is, and the card states that he has brought South Gangbuk High to ruin. He asks if it has not been forgotten, mentioning the promise to trust him if he took down both South and East Gangbuk High. He explains that he has defeated Siak Kang, and Yi Ha Han is the only one left. The card assures him that it has not been forgotten. However, he adds that there's a problem. The card asks what the problem is. He explains that he ended up becoming a subordinate of Yun Zhou at North Gangbok High. The card asks what he means, and he replies that he didn't do it because he wanted to. He attempted to copy him with the copy cloud, but that didn't work. He explains that he had no choice but to submit to North Gangbok High's overwhelming might. Since that's how things have turned out, he's going to use North Gangbok High to his advantage by borrowing their power. He believes he should be able to take down East Gangbok High easily with their help. However, the problem arises with what happens after East Gangbok High falls. He has not the faintest idea of how to defeat the behemoth that is North Gangbok High, which is why he needs their help. 
The card asks what he means by that. He replies, asking the card to lend him its power. The card questions what he means by lending him its power and why it should do such a thing. He responds that he thinks that the card isn't just giving him these quests for his own good. The card prompts him to continue, and he explains that the card is giving him these quests not just for himself, but because it wants him to stop something by completing them. The card responds that he's smarter than he looks while he ponders what it is trying to say about how he looks. The card clarifies that it is just as he said, the quests are not solely for his sake and there is still much it can't reveal to him, but they must use each other to their advantage. It agrees, saying all right then. He continues, mentioning that he no doubt despaired upon witnessing the staggering might of North Gangbok High, however, he can convince him to aid him. Sahyeon Kim considers if he is going to help him. The card adds that he has a special bonus, stating that he will raise the level of one card that is currently in his possession to its maximum. He asks what the card means by maximum level. The card explains that it is something he could never obtain at his current level, but his eloquent words have moved it. It concludes by saying now then, chooses which one of his cards he will raise to the maximum level. Meanwhile, some cards appear in front of him, and he states that he'll choose, thinking that this is amazing. Joyok Jang calls the meeting to order, stating that as of today, West Gangbuk High is a subordinate of North Gangbuk High. Originally, they were at risk of disappearing altogether. However, thanks to their liege and his quick thinking, they got a second chance. Nevertheless, they could not avoid becoming an affiliate of North Gangbuk High. He mentions that their objective still remains unchanged, and as before, their goal is to take down East Gangbuk High as they must keep their promise to Yunjo of North Gangbuk High. He suggests that they should launch an offensive against East Gangbuk High immediately, but others caution that attacking East Gangbuk High now isn't a good idea. So Hyun Kim raises his hand and asks what that is, prompting Hyun Dong Lee to explain that they don't know what Yunjo will do. Even if they succeed in taking Yi Han down, Yunjo may still decide to eliminate them afterward. He tells him that they are just an expendable tool to be used to get rid of East Gangbuk High. Ji Hyuk Jang agrees, stating that their priority is to become stronger so that if Yun Jo attacks, they aren't helpless. He suggests that the best course of action is for them to grow their strength before attacking East Gangbuk High. Haru Siang interrupts, asking what's going on. He points out the expression on Haru Siang's face and suggests that they all make her feel better. They then throw Haru Siang in the air and encourage her to cheer up. He mentions that there's no point in feeling guilty about what's already happened. Haru Siang acknowledges this and asks to be put down, expressing disbelief that he let her go just because she said so. Ji Hyuk Jang remarks that he must be under a lot of stress and trying to think of a business idea for the crew. He suggests that if they need money, they can try borrowing some from Yunjo. So Hyun Kim mentions that he has already come up with a business idea and believes that everything will work out for the best. He'll see to it because he has a card. After a while, So Hyun Kim arrives at his home and calls out, stating that he knows someone's in the house. He warns any potential thieves to come out now, adding that if they show themselves, he won't call the police. He asserts that he already knows what they're up to and declares that there is no one home. Since he's alone at home, he decides to examine the card he received from the Challenger card, specifically the Summon Card Master Copy Cloud. This card allows the user to summon five clouds that can be copied and pasted. He commands the summoning of all the copy clouds, and the quest window notifies him that the copy cloud has been summoned successfully. He asks how the upgraded copy cloud is different from the old version, and she explains that as before, while he could copy as many people as he liked, he could only have one copy summoned at a time. She adds that now there are five different copy clouds, which means the possibilities are endless, and most importantly, he has friends now. He congratulates himself, stating that it's good, and thinks about how huge the gift from the challenger card is, asking if he has five whole copy clouds. He decides to give names to the other clouds too, because he doesn't want them to feel left out. He believes that with these clouds he can do anything, even use them for his business, but he reminds himself that first things first. He suggests that they get copied, and she agrees, while he thinks they should make them into humans. He calls upon the challenger card and expresses his desire to become stronger. He asks what he needs to do to become stronger than he is now. The card responds that he can indeed become stronger. He questions what he means by that and adds that he has already awakened.
The card clarifies that awakening is not the end, it simply means that he has awakened an ability that previously lay dormant. The card assures him that he will not worry, although Suhyun Kim tries to say something. The card explains that he has not even received any of the master cards yet, and those are the cards that will lead him to real power. He continues, stating that once he obtains the master cards, he will then be strong enough to face North Gangbok Hai. He inquires about the meaning of North Gangbok Hai, and the card replies that the same goes for his stats, he will overcome his limits in due course. He asks if this is only the beginning, and then addresses the card as Challenger Darling and asks what kind of quests he needs to complete to obtain the master cards. The card responds that those are all the hints he is going to give. With that bonus, he has already given special treatment and suggests they conclude this fateful meeting here. He insists not to leave yet and expresses frustration, thinking he will see him next time and wondering what the Challenger card meant. He believes he will get a lot stronger and thinks this is only the beginning. Awakening is not the limit. He also ponders whether Hyondong Lee will be able to grow stronger as well. He reflects on how he's been looking down lately and wonders if something's been troubling him, possibly due to North Gang Buk Hai, as according to rumors, they crushed him. He wonders why he should care whether he's feeling down or not but notes that eating spicy food is the best cure when he's feeling down, and the tidiak baki he makes is really spicy. Karen Beat calls him and asks if he wants to come over to her house after school and eat tidiak baki there. He questions if it will be at her house, and she replies by asking why he would go over to her house. She then thinks about why she just said that. At the same time, the quest window notifies him that a new main quest is available, and he asks what it is. The quest window notifies him about the main quest to kiss Karen Beak, but indirect kisses are not valid. He wonders what this means, and if he fails a main quest, he thinks it's all over. He finally says well, come if he wants, and wonders if this is really going to be okay. Karen Beak asks why he took so long and thinks her friends will like her tidiak baki. Her friend thanks her and says they'd die without her tidiak baki. She responds by telling them to shut up and eat. She thinks that, apparently, eating it puts them in a good mood or something, and they both start eating. She reflects that it's something she only offers to her friends when they are feeling down. She recalls when she invited Suhyun Kim to come over to her house after school and mentioned that she'd make him some tidiak baki, saying he should come if he wanted. The scene shifts back to the present and she expresses disbelief, calling him a rascal and thinking he should have said no. She can't believe he actually accepted and she wonders how things turned out this way. Suhyun Kim arrives at her home building, calls her, and asks how he can get into her building. Meanwhile, she blushes and wonders what the hell she was thinking by inviting a guy to come over to her place. He says he can come in, and she replies that he can come in or not. She doesn't care and asks for his bag. He hands it to her and thanks her while she wonders what she should do next. She then tells him to go inside. He asks if she is always this bossy, and she feels a tingling sensation throughout her entire body. As he walks inside, he wonders if it's right for him to come over to a girl's house like this and notes that this feels totally different from when he went over to So Ha Yong's place. He mentions that he's forgotten how to walk and thinks, most importantly, about what's with this quest. The quest window notifies him again about the main quest, which is about to kiss Karen Beak. He asks if he should sit there, and she questions what else he's going to do, wondering if he plans to wait standing up. He offers to help, and she asks what he can do to help her. She instructs him to take out a dish, and he clarifies that if it's the dish nearby, then he should take it out. She confirms and specifies the big dish. She remarks that maybe she can be helpful sometimes, and he jokingly replies that he feels like she could have reached it herself, though he adds that it already smells delicious. She asks if he thinks so, and they both come closer but quickly turn their faces to the other side and blush. She tells him to just sit back down and wait, and he agrees, mentioning he was planning to. He thinks to himself that it was a close moment and finds it strange. She serves him food and tells him he can eat, to which he thanks her. He admits that he was surprised, as he assumed she had no interest in cooking. He reflects that the only thing that's changed is the setting, yet they are being awfully conscious of each other. She questions the sudden compliment and tells him to just hurry up and eat. He agrees and says he's going to dig in, noting that the atmosphere feels charged. He comments on how good the food is, and she also acknowledges that it's good. 
He asks why it's so good, jokingly suggesting she spiked the tediak baki with fentanyl. She laughs and asks if it's really that good, to which he enthusiastically responds that it's so good that she could make tons of money if she sold it. She laughs again and mentions that the dishes are done. He thanks her for the tediak baki and says it's been a while since he last ate tediak baki that good. Curiously, he asks where she got the fentanyl to put in it, and she clarifies that she didn't put any of that in there, thanking him for doing the dishes instead. He says it's the least he could do after she cooked him that delicious tediak baki, and she agrees, acknowledging that he's perceptive. He responds, saying it's all thanks to being bullied for years. She asks so now what? He is going to go home. He replies that he wonders what else he is going to do, even though he did receive that quest, and thinks about how he could do something like that with her. The quest window notifies him about the main quest to kiss Karen Beak. She inquires if he knows his way home, and he replies of course by then, and thinks that he'll need to think of another way to complete the quest. He adds well, thanks for today, and says have a good night, mentioning that he'll see her at school. She responds with okay, get home safe, and adds that he shouldn't get into any more fights. She calls her friend, who asks if Soohyun Kim is at her place right now. She responds by telling her to pipe down because he can hear her. Her friend remarks that she's even louder than usual and uses Tidiak Baki as an excuse to invite over the guy she's crushing on. Her friend scolds her and says she's going to ask him out today, finally getting herself a boyfriend for the first time in her life. She hesitates and asks what the hell she should do, feeling a tingling sensation throughout her whole body. Her friend asks what else she's an idiot and she suggests making a move. Her friend asks if she likes Sehyun Kim, noting that as far as she can tell, that dude is completely oblivious and he'll never realize it unless she's direct with him. Karen Beek asks how she can do that and her friend suggests she just stays friends with him for now. Otherwise, she might miss her chance and end up getting friend zoned. Her friend reminds her that Soha Yang was also trying to make a move on him, and she adds that he really doesn't get what she sees in the guy. However, if she doesn't do anything, Soha Yang might steal him away right from under her nose. She carefully considers the situation now that she has him at her place and asks if he wants to play. She decides not to let him leave, no matter what. They both watch television, and he finds it awkward. She had told him to come back in, so he sat down, but now he's unsure what to do. He realizes that their hands have touched and wonders if she has not noticed yet. Thinking that she has not, he decides to pull his hand back first. She questions why he's being so conscious of something like this, considering that their hands have been touched many times at school. She wonders if her hands are always this soft. She calls his attention, and he asks what it is. She then asks if he watches that series too, referring to a specific show. He thinks about how she doesn't seem to mind that their hands touched. He acknowledges that it's a popular trope these days, where a guy and girl who were just friends suddenly start seeing each other in a romantic light. She notes that he's aware of it, and he personally admits that he's not a fan of how a friend could ever be seen in a romantic light. She questions if it doesn't seem weird to him, and he inquires if she would date a guy whom she was friends with if they both were interested in each other. She affirms that he might just be a friend, but he's still a guy, and once she starts liking him that's it. He asks if she thinks so, and she replies that's how it is for her, at least. She recalls her friend saying she likes Sohyun Kim, and as far as she can tell, that dude is completely oblivious. She suggests being upfront and direct with him about her feelings so that he can't run away. She inquires how he would feel if she told him she's into him, and he dismisses it, asking her to quit messing around. He questions if she's really into him, telling her to get real, and he assumes she is just trolling him. She asks what he means by that and how he sees her then. He responds by saying she's pretty and popular, with a lot of Instagram followers making her well known in school. He wonders how a girl like her could ever be into him and she expresses frustration, agreeing that he's so frustrating. He asks what she means by frustrating and she responds by coming closer to him and kissing him. She reveals that she had been dropping so many hints, making this her first kiss. The quest window notifies him that the main quest to kiss Karen Beak is complete and informs him that the quest is now complete. She asks if he minds going home for today, and he complies, going out and sitting in the park. He thinks no way, she kisses him and ponders that she must be interested in him. He wonders when realizing that she didn't just think of him as a friend. 
The quest window notifies him that a new main quest is available, and he thinks, another quest, what the hell, as he contemplates what he's supposed to do next while holding the card. The quest window notifies him about a side quest that has come up, create a business plan with Karen Beek with a reward of one gold card. He thinks about creating a business plan with Karen Beek and wonders if it refers to her Tidiok Baki. He acknowledges that her Tidiok Baki is amazing, but after everything that happened yesterday, including his kiss with Karen Beek, he wonders if it would be okay to bring this up with her now. He contemplates what will happen between the two of them. The next morning, Karen Beek thinks she couldn't sleep at all last night and recalls her kiss with him, pondering what she has done and feeling she can't meet his eyes as he comes up behind her. The teacher enters the class and says all right, take a seat, everybody. He then asks where they got to in the last class, and they both reply that they don't remember. She finds it strange, even now it feels like he and she are kissing. He responds that he doesn't recall either, and she asks what they should do then. She inquires if he got home okay yesterday, and he confirms that and asks about her. She replies that she's the one who came over to his place remembering. He acknowledges this while she questions if he told anyone. He asks about what, and she clarifies that it's about the two of them. He asks what she means by the two of them, and she responds that she never mind. The teacher addresses both of them, telling them to cut the chatter, and they apologize. She asks what he thinks, and he asks about what. She writes down on paper and asks how he feels about her. He replies that she's pretty and popular, and she's not asking him to list a bunch of facts. She asks if he feels nervous when he sees her. He asks what she means by nervous and what she means by that. She puts her hand on his hand and asks if his heart is beating faster, and he says he needs to talk to her. She asks what he wants to talk to her about, wondering what's going on and why he asked her to meet him outside. She wonders if he's going to confess his feelings, and they meet after class. Meanwhile, he asks her if she wants to start a business together. She asks what he wants to do for a business, and he confirms that, saying her tidiak baki is delicious. She says it's a shame not to share it with the world, and he suggests opening a snack bar, noting that many students start businesses these days. He acknowledges there's a lot they'll need to learn about running a business, but with her cooking skills, they can't fail. He mentions finding the startup capital and knowing someone knowledgeable about this, named Ji Hyuk Jang, who doesn't look very impressive. She asks if that's what he wants to talk to her about, and he confirms, receiving a punch from her right in the solar plexus. She states she's not interested in business and leaves. He tells her to wait, as he has no idea how he feels about her, and he wonders about it. The quest window notifies him that the quest is complete. He then goes to Ji Hyuk Jang and finds it interesting that he is suggesting they open a snack bar to fund their crew operations. Ji Hyuk Jang confirms this and asks what he thinks. He also mentions that Karen Beek's Tidiak Baki is exceptional. Ji Hyuk Jang warns that while he's serious about it, opening a restaurant is no easy task. He elaborates that they need to find a good location for the restaurant, and there is much they need to understand and study about running a business. So Hyun Kim is impressed, saying wow, as he realizes that Ji Hyuk Jang knows a lot. Ji Hyuk Jang adds that, most importantly, they don't have the necessary startup capital, and without it, they won't be able to hire any employees. He agrees, saying he will try to speak to Karen Beek about this. So Hyun Kim asks if he will do that, and thanks him, noting that their business will start then. Suddenly, a boy rushes in and exclaims that he found them, pointing out their presence. He asks if the newcomer is a freshman and what the matter is. He responds that it's an emergency, mentioning that Yun Jo from North Gangbok High is looking for him. So Hyun Kim questions what he's saying and why Yun Jo would be looking for him as he stands up. Ji Hyuk Jang speculates that Yun Jo is getting impatient. So Hyun Kim asks why he would become impatient, and Ji Hyuk Jang explains that he promised Yun Jo he would take down East Gangbok High. So Hyun Kim acknowledges this, and Ji Hyuk Jang declares that the time has come to strike East Gangbok High. The scene shifts to East Gangbok High, where Yi Ha Han mentions that West Gangbok High will be coming for them. He adds that he has a plan in place to deal with them. All that's left is to strengthen the unity of East Gangbok High. He states, so finally it begins. Make sure to remember the opponents he's assigning each of them. He orders Cheng Gong Yom to fight Ku Ya and assigns Si Jong Ryu to deal with Haru Siang. He tells Siak Kang that he'll take on Hajin Gu, and Dong Tak Seo has a few other tasks to take care of. 
Dong Takasio responds with understood and asks if West Gangbok High is coming now. Yi Ha Han denies this, stating that they won't be able to attack them that easily. He mentions having deployed a number of action teams to their border with West Gangbok High, with so many fighters there that even Sehyun Kim would be overwhelmed. He mentions that West Gangbok High will take the long way into East Gangbok High to avoid facing them head on. When they do confront each other, he believes they'll be able to defeat West Gangbok High easily. Yi Ha Han adds that this war is going to be over quickly. Suddenly, a boy runs in and announces that West Gangbok High is attacking them head on. Yi Ha Han expresses disbelief that they would do something so reckless and asks how many of them there are and who the leader is. The boy responds that it's just Sehyun Kim leading them, and they all prepare for the fight. Yi Ha Han recalls Ji Hyuk Jang mentioning a way for them to win this war without direct fighting, referring to a major battle rather than small skirmishes. However, before they implement that plan, there's something they need. He further explains that at this point, West Gangbok High's morale is at an all-time low since they became subordinate to North Gangbok High. He states that they need to show West Gangbok High that they're still strong and must instill fear in East Gangbok High while boosting West Gangbok High's morale. When asked about morale, he explains that he has an idea. Ji Hyuk Jang asks what that idea is. Back in the present, crew members of East Gangbuk High ask Sehyun Kim if he thought he'd be busy licking Yun Jo's boots all day. He thinks to himself that he'll remind them that it was Yun Jo he lost to, not East Gangbuk High. He calculates that there are about 30 of them and says he has been hoping for a chance to use something properly. He then checks a trigger card called Sehyun Kim Exclusive, One Man Army, which increases the user's stats by the number of opponents. The quest window notifies him that the one-man army card has been triggered. He remarks on how intriguing it is that there's a way to end this war without a big battle and says let's do it. Dee Seung H1 questions why everyone is so scared as it's just one guy and warns them to watch out for his boxing and Teekjeon moves. The quest window notifies him that his stats have increased according to the number of opponents, boosting his strength to SSS level, speed to SS+, and endurance to SS+. He knocks out crew members effortlessly. Dee Seung H. Wang is puzzled by what's happening, noting that these moves aren't boxing or Tijong. He wonders if he doesn't even need to use those moves on them and rushes to attack Sohyeon Kim, hurling abuse at him. Sohyeon Kim responds by kicking him in the face, asking how dare he underestimate the great Dee Seung H. Wang. Meanwhile, a guard arrives and informs Yi Ha Han that something terrible has happened revealing that Sehyun Kim defeated Dee Seung H. Wang and his action team. Yi Ha Han thinks it's impossible. Sehyun was not that strong back then. He ponders how Sehyun managed to face the entire action team by himself, while the guard states that they were completely annihilated, emphasizing that no one is capable of going up against Sehyun Kim. Yi Ha Han reflects on how those teams were created to take out the top dogs and wonders how Sehyun managed to defeat them so easily. He concludes that Suhyun is literally a one-man army, and they need a new plan quickly. Yi Ha Han grabs the guard's face and tells him to stop talking. He asserts that Suhyun Kim won't stop and asks if their fighters have been lying in wait for him on the street corners he's likely to pass through, all while squeezing the guard's face. Another guard arrives and informs Yi Ha Han that there's a phone call for him from Changgong Yom. Yi Ha Han instructs the guard to bring the phone to him and then takes the phone, asking him what happened. He reports that he's at the area where Su Hyun Kim just swept through. Yi Ha Han asks where he is and Chen Gong Yom replies that he retreated. Yi Ha Han expresses confusion, questioning why he is saying that Su Hyun Kim retreated. He admits he doesn't understand it either, explaining that everywhere Su Hyun Kim went, he spared a small number of their forces and it seems like he left a few standing on purpose. He further mentions that Sohyun Kim returned to West Gangbok High, even though he could have continued fighting. He admits he doesn't know what Sohyun Kim is trying to do, but it all seems to be part of West Gangbok High's plan. Ji Hyuk Jang remarks that by now, East Gangbok High would have realized something strange is going on since Sohyun Kim retreated, even though he was fully capable of continuing the fight. He acknowledges this, and the quest window notifies him that a side quest has been created to succeed in executing Ji Hyuk Jang's plan, with the reward being the fall of East Gangbok High. Ji Hyuk Jang explains that his plan to end this war with minimal bloodshed has now begun. 
So Hyun Kim asks what exactly that plan is, and Ji Hyuk Jang laughs, saying to just sit back and watch how East Gangbok High meets its end. He adds that Yi Ha Han will be scratching his head in confusion. On the other side, Yi Ha Han exclaims damn it, what the hell is going on? He adds that he'll be furiously trying to figure out the plan, but it will be of no use. He remarks that the storm has already begun and notes that there's trouble. Yi Ha Han then asks what the trouble is this time, wondering if Su Hyun Kim is attacking them again. He replied that no, North Gangbok High had just shown up, and it appeared that Su Hyun Kim had asked them for support, with Chin Hak Yang leading the charge. Yi Ha Han instructs everyone to get ready and emphasizes the need to stop North Gangbok High at once. While he is on a call with his crew member, something weird happens. He mentions that North Gangbok High has stopped their attack after Chin Hak Yong received a text, and they are now behaving very strangely. He reports that North Gangbok High is now retreating. Yi Ha Han questions what they are thinking and wonders what's going on. He asks why both Sehyun Kim and Chin Hak Yong retreated right when things were going well for them. He concludes that they are retreating again. A crew member expresses that it's hard enough defending themselves against West Gangbok High, and now North Gangbok High is attacking them too. They state that this is the end for East Gangbok High. He thinks to himself, don't tell me, that was their plan all along. Meanwhile, Ji Hyuk Jang reveals that his plan is to make them surrender. So Hyun Kim asks what he means by surrender. Ji Hyuk Jang clarifies that if not for this plan, in order to defeat Yi Ha Han, they would need to take over the 10 bars managed by East Gangbok High. He points out that it will take too much time to take over all the bars, and they also run the risk of falling into traps that Yi Ha Han may have prepared. So Hyun Kim suggests that if they were to get East Gangbok High to surrender, they wouldn't have to engage in any more fights than strictly necessary. However, he questions whether East Gangbok High will surrender that easily. Ji Hyuk Jang responds that Yi Ha Han will not surrender, but they can get the rest of East Gangbok High, minus Yi Ha Han, to surrender to them. He explains that, first of all, he scared East Gangbok High with his fighting prowess, and the terror of facing him in battle has been imprinted on their minds. He continues that they experienced their first instance of fear with him, and next, Chin Hak Young would have instilled in them the overwhelming panic and fright that North Gangbok High would also be involved in this war. He further explains that this was East Gangbok's second instance of fear. He states that these two significant scares have already crippled East Gangbok High. If they manage to frighten them a little more, a few will even break ranks and defect. He predicts that East Gangbok will be left with a general capable of giving out commands, but no soldiers to fight for him in battle. Haru Seung becomes excited and tries to say something, while Ji Hyuk Jang confirms this and asserts that Yi Ha Han will have no one to fight for him and will end up surrendering. After a while, Siok Jang suggests that this must be Ji Hyuk Jang's plan. He adds that Ji Hyuk Jang is the reason South Gangbok High fell. Noting that every time Bam Sang Jong came up with a plan for them, they were bested by Ji Hyuk Jang. Siok Jang remarks that if they had gotten rid of Ji Hyuk Jang first, South Gangbok High would still be theirs. He points out that East Gangbok High's morale is at an all time low and asks what they are going to do about it. Yi Ha Han responds confidently, saying they'll show them what East Gangbok High is truly capable of. Si Yong Ryu adds that they just need to give him an hour. On the other side, Hyundong Lee comments that it's peaceful there. Ji Yok Jang agrees, adding that the liege and the others are all following Se Hyun Kim's plan. He lists Ha Jun Gu, Haru Seung, Ji Hyun Lee, Yu Jong Na, and the rest, mentioning that they are all working hard to terrify East Gangbok High. Ji Yok Jang predicts that a few of them will no doubt begin surrendering soon. He remarks that it's excellent and mentions that they are at the rear. He tells the advisor that they simply need to wait there for the news of their victory. A guard falls down inside, and Hyun Dong Lee asks what this is. He hides Ji Hyuk Jang and gets ready for an attack upon seeing some East Gangbok High crew members. Si Jong Ryu notes that Hyun Dong Lee let down his guard since he was hiding out at the rear. He addresses Si Jong Ryu of East Gangbok High, expressing surprise at how he managed to make it all the way to the rear of their territory. He responds by saying that he should not tell him that Siyong Ryu created a special team to break through all the way to the rear. He instructs the advisor to stay behind him, emphasizing the need to protect him. Siyong Ryu asks if he really thinks he can take him on. So Hyun Kim attacks a crew member and throws him away, but the quest window notifies him that the side quest has failed. 
He questions what is happening while Sejong Ryu and his crew attack Ji Hyuk Jang. The quest window then notifies him that Hyun Dong Lee is down, and Ji Hyuk Jang is down as well. He realizes he failed the quest. Taking down East Gang Bok Hai won't be as easy as he had hoped. He suggests kidnapping the clever advisor instead. The quest window informs him that his advisor has been kidnapped, and it also indicates that West Gang Bok Hai's morale has decreased. A guard rushes in and urgently informs Sehyun Kim that advisor Ji Hyuk Jang has been kidnapped. The quest window updates show that East Gang Bok Hai's morale has increased. Sehyun Kim reacts, questioning what they should do now that their advisor has been kidnapped. The quest window further updates to show that West Gang Bok Hai's stats have decreased, raising concerns about who will devise their strategy. It also shows that East Gang Bok Hai's stats have increased. Sehyun Kim instructs everyone to gather for an emergency meeting after a crew member seeks clarification. On the other side, Ji Hyuk Jang is tied up and tells them to go ahead and kill him now. He states that he doesn't think they'll get away with kidnapping him, and he refuses to play into the hands of East Gang Bok Hai. Yi Ha Han responds by saying that he is both an advisor and a general, choosing to die an honorable death, with his name going down in history books. Ji Hyuk Jang acknowledges that his liege, his advisor, will meet him in the afterlife, thinking this is the end. Yi Ha Han then apologizes for their rudeness, addressing Ji Hyuk Jang as the advisor of West Gang Bok Hai, referred to as the Zhu Liang of their time. He praises Sehyun Kim as a fount of wisdom, and an extraordinary genius and expresses his desire to meet him, having heard a lot about him and noting his handsome appearance, or rather, his humanity. Ji Hyuk Jang asks what Yi Ha Han is playing at, and Yi Ha Han responds that he has a favor to ask of him. He mentions that he doesn't believe Ji Hyuk Jang harbors any ill will towards East Gang Bok Hai, and they need someone like him, so he pleads for him to join them. Ji Hyuk Jang interrupts, saying that's enough, and accuses Yi Ha Han of running his mouth. He declares that he pledged his loyalty to his liege long ago and questions if Yi Ha Han truly expects him to bend his knee to someone like him. He asserts that he'll die before he helps the likes of East Gang Bok Hai. Two guards hold Ji Hyuk Jang and take him out of the room. Another crew member arrives and curses, asking what they should do now. Yi Ha Han questions what he means, and the crew member repeats the insult, telling him to eat dirt and asks how they should proceed. Yi Ha Han responds by instructing them to treat him with the utmost courtesy. Ji Hyuk Jang remarks on the imprisonment in a place like this and questions if they plan to discover West Gang Bok Hai's weaknesses by mercilessly torturing him. Another crew member is asked to look into Ji Hyuk Jang, and Yi Ha Han confirms this, attempting to say something more. The crew member notes that Ji Hyuk Jang doesn't seem to have any particular ties to Sohyun Kim and mentions that Ji Hyuk Jang only joined West Gang Bok Hai because he fell for a girl named Haru Siong, implying that women are his weakness as Yi Ha Han lights up his cigarette. A girl is sent to Ji Hyuk Jang, who recognizes this as East Gang Bok Hai's specialty and realizes he's in grave danger. She inquires about West Gang Bok Hai's plans, urging him to disclose them, but he refuses, sweating profusely and thinking urgently for someone to save him. Meanwhile, Sohyun Kim looks at his quest window and wonders if he is having the time of his life, seeing him sitting with a girl. He feels relieved, thinking at least Yi Ha Han isn't torturing him. He remarks that it looks like he's at a karaoke bar, but he can't figure out his exact location. Hyun Dong Lee bows in front of him and admits that it's all his fault, stating that he was too weak to protect their advisor and deserves to be punished for his shortcomings. He further expresses that he doesn't deserve to be a member of the West Gang Bok Hai crew and requests to be punished, believing he must be taught a lesson. So Hyun Kim calls him over and approaches him, saying that what happened today is his fault. He acknowledges that he should have had more people guard Ji Hyuk Jang, but he did his best. Unfortunately, his opponent happened to be stronger than him. So Hyun Kim tells everyone to please focus as he explains the situation they are in. He mentions that their advisor was kidnapped, their morale is down, and as a result, their combat power has taken a hit. He admits that this is his fault and he plans to fix it. He says there's a simple way to boost their crew's morale and bring their collective combat power back up to normal. So Hyun Kim emphasizes the need to rescue Ji Hyuk Jang, and the quest window notifies him that a new main quest is available, which is about the fall of East Gang Bak Hai. The first quest of this main quest is to rescue Ji Hyuk Jang. 
He explains that Ji Hyok Jang will be imprisoned in one of the five bars that Gangbok High manages, and their first step is to find out which bar Ji Hyok Jang is in and then secretly get him out of there. He tells Haru Siang that she will be playing a central role in this operation. Surprised, she asks if it will just be her, and he replies that he will fill her in on the details later. For now, everybody should get ready to move out. He says they will begin the mission to save their advisor now. The quest window notifies that the main quest is starting. Ji Hyok Jang says first he will try to rescue him and that way morale will improve again and they will regain their combat power. Ji Hyok Jang lies down in that girl's lap and thinks about his liege, he's sorry. The other crew member asks what they should do now and suggests using West Gangbok High's plan to their advantage. Yi Ha Han says West Gangbok High will come to the five bars managed by East Gangbok High so he has his troops lying in wait in all of them. He explains that those troops will attack West Gangbok High, and that way, he will be able to decimate West Gangbok High before their fighters recover their combat power. He says this plan will require all the high-ranking fighters of East Gangbok High. Yi Ha Han says alright, time to move out. Meanwhile, that girl asks if he is okay, and he thinks he's sorry, he tried his hardest. Sehyun Kim sees him on screen and says he knew he'd fold, and says Yi Ha Han knows they are going to rescue Ji Hyuk Jang. He says further that he plans to have his troops stationed at his bars and ambush them once they show up. Kyu Ya asks how he knew that and says never mind, that's not what's important right now. Sehyun Kim asks where Haru Siang is, the ace up their sleeve. He mentioned that Haru Siang had just messaged him to confirm that he had arrived, and he stated that he was going to start executing the plan shortly. Yi Ha Han says alright, let's go get Sehyun Kim, and he instructs to contact all the high-ranking members as he will be going after Sehyun Kim himself. He tells them to find the West Gangbok High crew member assigned to each of them and take them down. They agree with him, and Yi Ha Han asks about the karaoke bar where Ji Hyuk Jang is located. He replies that there are no problems there because West Gangbok High has not made a move yet either. Yi Ha Han says they will shortly get Ji Hyuk Jang back, and he advises them to wait until they approach and then ambush them, stating that today they will end Se Hyun Kim. They confirm that when a crew member arrives, they inform him that they have a problem. Yi Ha Han asks what it is, and he replies that the karaoke bar Ji Hyuk Jang is under attack. He asks what he is talking about. He says he thought he said West Gangbok High had not made a move yet, so who's attacking them? He replies that's what they can't figure out and they have no idea who's attacking them while he sees some crew members on the floor. Yi Ha Han asks what is happening, and he replies it's true, their boys are down. He asks who the hell attacked them and says West Gangbok High isn't doing anything right now. A crew member who fell on the floor says, watch out, and he asks to watch out for what and asks what's going on and who the hell she is. He says they need to find the rascal who ambushed them, and this is an emergency, stay out of this. Haru Siang kicks him away and says she's not a girl. He asks what she is doing, and they all ask who she is, saying hold on, could it be? Haru Siang asks if they seriously don't recognize her and thinks this is so embarrassing. She recalls Sohyeon Kim saying the plan is called Operation Drag Haru Siang, and she asks what this is and why he gave her this. He replies she's their only hope, and she asks why the hell she has to dress up as a girl again. She asks why that is the plan and what idiotic thing he is trying to do this time around. He says to calm down and listen to him. She asks what's calm down, he can't be serious. He says if they start moving out to rescue Ji Hyuk Jang, East Gang Bak Hai will catch on and raise their defenses. But if she goes dressed up as a girl, East Gang Bak Hai will be none the wiser and their security will be lax. He pleads, saying he wants to see her in a skirt while putting his hand on her shoulder. She comes back to the present and thinks that's the real reason. She doesn't want to do this. The crew members run towards her to attack. She thinks that she owes him one to protect Ji Hyuk Jang, while the other girl asks what's going on out there. Meanwhile, a guard comes to Yi Ha Han and says he found out who ambushed them. It was Haru Siang of West Gang Bakai, and it looks like she snuck in, pretending to be a girl, and ambushed their men. But apparently, she actually is super pretty. Yi Ha Han says that's a relief and that he left behind Si Yong Ryu, who says it's pretty loud there. He says he supposes he should check out what's going on. The quest window notifies him about starting the quest, the fall of East Gangbok High. 
Haru Siong declares today that she will repay her debt while they all run toward her and ask who said she could come in here. She kicks him away and says fine. She concedes that today she may look a little bit like a girl and grabs his face and punches him away. She says now, let her go over the plan, and she recalls where she gets ready. Sehyun Kim states that Haru Siong, ranked 5th in West Gangbak High, has a mission to get Ji Hyuk Jang out safely. She asks, but he just needs to help the advisor escape. He confirms that's right. Once he's out of there, word will travel, and West Gangbak High's morale will recover. She asks again, saying he just needs to get the advisor out of the building. He confirms and says it'll all be fine as long as Ji Hyuk Jang is able to escape, but it won't be easy. He explains that he'll need to fight off their enemies in their own territory while keeping Ji Hyuk Jang safe and says she's their only hope. He pleads, please stay safe. Meanwhile, Haru Siung reaches the room where Ji Hyuk Jang is with that girl. Haru Siung says she found him, and Ji Hyuk Jang responds that's enough. She asks how she dares to ask him to betray West Gangbak Hai. He notes that these East Gangbak Hai rascals are resorting to using honey traps, and he sees that. He adds that unfortunately for her, his body and soul already belong to West Gangbak Hai. She questions why he is suddenly yelling. He explains that Miss Haru Siong, although they tortured him mercilessly, he didn't tell them anything, and she thinks it's a load of crap. She says okay, but more importantly, they need to get out of here now because, due to his kidnapping, their morale is at an all-time low. He responds that they are deep in enemy territory and asks how they can ever hope to escape. She grabs his hand and runs, saying let's go, and he thinks Haru Siong is the cutest of them all. Siyong Ryu arrives and asks if they are leaving already, expressing disappointment. She tells him to listen carefully, explaining that the advisor needs to make his way out of there by himself. He asks if she isn't coming with him, and she replies that what's most important right now is that he's able to escape. He asks about her, and she says she'll handle things here, then runs to attack Sejong Ryu. He asks if those are panties, to which she responds they are just shorts. He throws her away, saying that's too bad, and mentions that Yi Han asked him to take care of her, asking if she's okay with that. She thinks to herself that this is bad, as he's a strong opponent, and realizes she needs to fight him and let the advisor escape. She says son, advisor, and he starts running, replying, understanding. Sejong Ryu asks if she knows why he's letting him go without a fuss. She asks why, and he replies that their boys have that door surrounded. She thinks that someone as weak as her advisor will be able to fight his way through all of them. She questions if that's so, asking if he knows why she sent their advisor to escape by himself. Sejong Ryu asks why she wants that, and she says their leader said he had a solution. Sejong Ryu asks what the solution is while some other crew members say to get that rascal with the hairy mole. Ji Hyuk Jang thinks this is the end of the line for the genius strategist of Gangbuk. So Hyun Kim looks at the quest window and says it's time to use the CHCH changes card, and the quest window notifies him that he used the CHCH changes card. He checks the normal card CHCH changes, which allows the user to switch two crew members' stats for two minutes, and the card festival effect duration is increased by one minute. He thinks he will switch his stats with Ji Hyuk Jang's, and Ji Hyuk Jang becomes stronger and attacks them all, knocking them out. He says to bring Yi Ha Han out here, and a crew member asks if there is no way their advisor was supposed to be a weakling and asks what the deal is with West Gangbok High. Ji Hyuk Jang says he's sorry his liege, it looks like he will be the one to fulfill his dream of uniting Gangbok while he again attacks the crew members. He thinks his body is burning, and his heart feels like it's about to burst, and he thinks he sees, so this is what true strength feels like when he knocks them out quickly, one by one. He instructs to bring Daniel out here, while Sehyun Kim looks at him and remarks that he's incredibly off-putting, thinking that it's nice when Ji Hyuk Jang comes out of the building. He states that at this rate, he should be able to escape easily and mentions that Ji Hyuk Jang has his stats, after all, dancing with excitement. He adds that he'll hide out somewhere until then, with Ji Hyuk Jang's stats, and will lose to whoever wants to fight. Yi Ha Han arrives there and kicks him from behind, throwing him on the ground. He exclaims that he's really here and acknowledges that he owes Ji Hyuk Jang one, thanking him for enabling him to take him down and mentioning that he'd actually tell him where he is. 
Sehyun Kim wonders what this Jihyuk Jang is, abuses him, thinks this is bad, and comments well, look who it is, stating that it's Yi Han in the flesh, and thinking that Jihyuk has his stats right now. He inquires if he is sure about this and wonders if he really thinks he'll be able to beat him on his own, realizing he has no other choice and needs to buy some time. He asks again when even Siak Kang is no match for him, while Yi Han moves towards him. Yi Han questions if he is trying to buy himself time, while the quest window notifies him that he has an A-plus intelligence level. Yi Han says it's a battle between two top dogs, which is what he wanted, while he thinks he's screwed and realizes in his current stats, he won't be able to dodge that attack. Yi Han attacks him, but he tries to escape from the attack. He asks what this is while Hajun Gu comes in between and blocks his attack, and he wonders why Hajun Gu is here. Hajun Gu remarks that a battle between two top dogs sounds good, but it's the top dog of East Gangbuk High against the former top dog of West Gangbuk High. Siak Kang arrives there and attacks him, pushing him back. Sehyun Kim calls out to Hajun Gu and thinks this can't be happening, while Siak Kang addresses Sehyun Kim, saying it's been a while since they met, and that Sehyun Kim won't be able to hold the two of them at bay until Ji Hyuk Jang escapes. Siak Kang tells Hajun Gu to give up now, insisting that he won't be able to beat him either. Hajun Gu says to let him go, while Sehyun Kim asks what he just said, wondering if it could be true. He clarifies by saying he meant to let him go while Sehyun Kim helps him stand up. The quest window notifies that his crew member Hajun Gu is filled with conviction, and he wonders if today is the day. He responds that it's because he's pissed off. The quest window again notifies him that the aura of an overlord is beginning to surround Hajun Gu. Hajun Gu moves to attack him and asks if he thinks he can be taken. Siak Kang also tries to attack and says he does not see a reason to win, he simply does not want it badly enough. Sehyun Kim, shocked to see their fight, finds his abilities rank falling to an F rank. He believes that, with his current stats, he can't be of much help. Yi Han moves to kick Sehyun Kim and asks where he is looking. He realizes that Yi Ha Han is here too. Ha Jun Gu intervenes and kicks him in the face. Sehyun Kim says he will endure the blows and urges them to come up with a plan quickly. Sehyun Kim agrees and thinks he is counting on Ji Hyuk. Meanwhile, Haru Siong attacks Sejong Ryu and assesses him as average. He comments that was a quick kick. She observes that he isn't particularly fast, and she can't sense any power from him either, so she proceeds to attack him again. He acknowledges her impressive speed and prepares to counterattack, stating that now it's his turn. She wonders why this guy is ranked third and kicks him away. She ponders whether he's hiding something and resolves to make him reveal his true abilities if he is. The quest winder notifies that Haru Siong utilizes Capoeira. She continues to attack him, urging him to show what he's hiding. He agrees, saying that's right, give it his all. Otherwise, it wouldn't feel like a proper fight. He grabs her and beats her to the ground. She is shocked to see his attack. He says he supposes that takes care of things here, and he kinda feels bad though. A black-haired boy arrives and says things are not looking good. Siyong Ryu asks what happened now. He explains that West Gangbok High's advisor is an incredibly skilled fighter, and at this rate, they won't be able to hold him off. Sejong Ryo moves from there and says he had better check it out while they handled this one. Haru Siong stands up and tells them to wait, insisting it's not over yet. He asserts that it's already over. She asks what he means. He explains that right now, West Gangbok High is being attacked from all sides. Meanwhile, Yujong Na and Yuja Yo arrive with their team. Yujom Na remarks that things are not looking good. He asks if the advisor has not escaped yet, stating that their morale is at its lowest. Yujaya expresses concern that if the advisor can't escape, they will be crushed. Yujaya wonders where he is. At that moment, Jihyok Jang runs from there and announces that he sees him. A man warns that the advisor is about to make his escape. The black-haired boy moves to attack Jihyok Jang and orders him to move out of the way, calling him a small fry. Ji Hyuk Jang tries to retaliate, but the punch lands on him. The quest window notifies that CHCH changes has reached its time limit, and Se Hyung Kim and Ji Hyuk Jang's stats have returned to normal. He finds it unbelievable that the exit is right in front of him. The black-haired boy asks how he pulled off something his seniors could not, and if he is more powerful than he thought. Ji Hyuk Jang reflects on the fact that he'd be stopped at the last possible moment. 
Meanwhile, a boy with a red tie approaches Yi Han and announces that they've got him, referring to the idiot with the hairy mole, spelling doom for West Gang Bakai. He suggests that if they attack now, they will be able to take them down for good. Hajun Gu declares that he will withstand their blows, so they should get the hell out of there. So Hyun Kim disagrees, saying nope. Yi Han asks what he means. So Hyun Kim responds, it ain't over until it's over, and he learned a big lesson today. He won't ever lose their advisor again. Meanwhile, Ji Hyun Lee attacks the boy to save Ji Hyok Jang and informs So Hyun Kim that she has secured the advisor. The quest window notifies that they have recovered the advisor, resulting in an increase in West Gangbuk High's morale. So Hyun Kim states that his debt has been repaid. The boys cheered up, exclaiming that they had done it and that they had gotten their advisor back. The quest window notifies that West Gangbuk High's stats have been restored. Yi Ha Han disagrees, stating that they lost their advisor to Ji Hyun Lee. Kyuja Ya moves to attack and announces a Yamazaki style Kyokushin karate straight punch. He remarks that he'd expect nothing less from the woman he fell for. Haru Siong attacks some boys and declares, now it's their turn. Siok Kang moves to attack and thinks that at this rate, they will lose. He will capture Sehyun Kim and lower West Gang Nook High's morale again. Sehyun Kim punches him, knocking him out. Yi Ha Han moves to attack, but Siok Kang tells him to stay back. Sehyun Kim attacks him with his quest card's power, leaving Yi Ha Han shocked and wondering what's with this intimidating aura. The quest window notifies that he used the Beast Mode Weasel card. Sehyun Kim moves to attack Yi Ha Han and declares Beast Mode, ripping to shreds and knocking him out. Siok Kang sees this and thinks no way, he took out Yi Ha Han with a single blow. He vows never to let his guard down again. The quest window notifies that Yi Ha Han is down, and East Gangbok High's stats have decreased. The boys are shocked to see this. A boy exclaims this is impossible, he takes out their leader in one go. The quest window notifies him that he has received a hidden reward for completing a quest early. The main quest, the fall of East Gangbok High, which includes first, rescue Ji Hyok Jang 11, second, occupy 5 bar scrubs 05, and third, defeat Yi Ha Han 11, with the hidden reward being one platinum card. So Hyun Kim announced that they had begun their counterattack. The quest window notifies that he has received a platinum card. Thiok Kang thinks that at this rate, they will lose and asks his gang members what they are all doing. He instructs them to take Yi Ha and get out of there. They have to keep their leader safe, no matter what. He advises them not to tell anybody about Yi Ha's defeat, as it may lower their fighter's morale, and not to worry about things there as he will handle it. So Hyun Kim thinks alright, there are three quests left, and it's been a while suck Siak. He believes that taking Siak Kang down will make things easier. Ha Jun Gu says no, insisting on leaving him to himself and recalling how he beat him earlier. He instructs Su Hyun Kim to help the others. Su Hyun Kim asks if he's sure he will be fine on his own. Ha Jun Gu confirms, saying he wants to know what Siak Kang meant when he said he did not want it badly enough and moves to attack Siak Kang. They both punch each other. The quest window notifies that Ha Jun Gu's potential is pulsating. Siok Kang attacks him again and asks if he knows what desperation feels like. He states that if he were that desperate to win, he'd never have lost to Sohyun Kim in the first place. Ha Jun Gu attacks him and says to shut his trap. He grabs him and asserts that he told him he can't do it. He holds him up in the air and says that the way he is now, he won't be able to beat anybody. Ha Jun is shocked and thinks to use the infinite suplex. He beats him on the ground again and again asking if only two suplexes and he's down. He says he doesn't have what it takes because he doesn't have a reason to win. Hajun Gu gets back up and thinks he is right, that's why he can't win. But Siak Kang kicks him again, saying that just getting back up doesn't mean he is desperate for it, he just doesn't have what it takes. Hajun Gu lies on the ground and thinks it's because he doesn't want it desperately enough, what is this desperation he is talking about? Siak Kang hits him again and says there's nothing he wants or has to protect. He wonders how he can find it, why he doesn't have it, and why the hell he needs it to win. Siok Kang hits him again and again, stating it's over. Hajun grabs his foot and thinks, let's think back to his past. He recalls that throughout elementary school, middle school and high school, he dominated his opponents and had nothing to fear. He ponders how strange it is, but then questions why he got so weak. He realizes he fell. He grew accustomed to peace and spending time with other people, but he was strongest when he was alone. 
The quest window notifies that Hajin Gu's potential is skyrocketing. His potential has reached its peak. He thinks, let's go back to when he was at his strongest, and this is his desperation. The quest window notifies that Hajun Gu's potential has awakened. Meanwhile, ranked second in North Gangbuk High, Daniel is playing chess and remarks that West Gangbuk High won't lose, they have Hajun Gu. The boy with glasses asks if he means the guy who lost to Sehyun Kim, and if he really has that much potential. Daniel acknowledges that it's true that he lost to Sehyun Kim, however, everyone knows that Hajin was capable of uniting Gangbuk. The boy asks what he means. Daniel explains that he's only weak because he got soft-hearted and had Jun Gu's drive and desperation to win come from his past self. He adds that if he returns to how he was in the past, Gangbuk will be turned upside down. On the other side, the quest window notifies that as a special reward for the awakening of his potential, Hajun Gu's stamina has been restored. Additionally, as a reward for the awakening of Hajun Gu's potential, he has received a Hajun Gu exclusive attack card, which he has claimed. Hajin moves to attack, punching Siok Kang again and again. The quest window shows the trigger card of Hajin Gu exclusive, which notifies that the overlords return. With every attack, a doppelganger appears, inflicting two offensive strikes on the opponent. The overlord's descent is unknown, and the overlord's dominance is unknown. The card set effect is 13. It notifies that the overlord return card has been triggered. Siok Kang falls to the ground and tries to grab his leg again, but Hajun Gu hits him. The quest window notifies that Hajun Gu has used the Kisi fighting method and the Overlord's return card has been triggered. Hajun Gu attacks him again and again, knocking him out. The quest window notifies that Siak Kang has collapsed. Siak Kang's gang member is shocked to see this fight. He instructs them to go and tell their side that Siak Kang lost. Meanwhile, Sehyun Kim also runs to help others and receives the quest window notification that Siak Kang has collapsed. He states he knew he could do it. At that moment, Hajun Gu lights up a cigarette and says he feels like shit. After a while, at the karaoke bar, Yi Ha Han lies on the sofa, wakes up, and asks where he is. A brown-haired boy holds him and advises him to be careful as he is hurt. He informs Yi Ha that he fought Sohyun Kim and lost. Yi Ha Han recalls the fight and acknowledges that he indeed lost to Sohyun Kim. He gets angry breaks the table in front of him, and exclaims, damn it all to hell. He asks when Suhyun managed to get that strong. The brown-haired boy responds that Siak Kang has lost to Hajun Gu, and that things are not looking good at all. He explains that West and North Gang Buk Hai are continuing to attack them, and their soldiers are desperately fighting back, but at this rate, they are doomed, and everyone is awaiting Yi Ha's orders. Yi Ha Gu realizes the situation, noting that they may end up like South Gang Buk Hai. He asserts that there is no plan and clever ploys won't work on them. The brown-haired boy asks what they should do then. Yi Ha Han instructs him to tell everyone to gird their loins, as this is a fight to the death. The quest window notifies that Yi Ha Han's potential is skyrocketing. Meanwhile, Sehyun Kim rides on a bicycle with Haru Siong and asks what she means. He questions why Sejong Ryu is acting strange and tells her to tell him everything. She explains that his heart did not seem to be in the fight, and she got the feeling that he was not particularly loyal to East Gangbok High. Sehyun asks if that's really the case. She elaborates, saying that the fact that he let their advisor get away makes no sense. He would have been able to recapture Ji Hyuk Lee easily, but for some reason after taking her down he disappeared, and that's why Ji Hyun was able to rescue the advisor. Sehyun Kim asks if that's seriously what happened and inquires about Sejong Ryu's true identity. He thinks he has a bad feeling about this. A boy steps in front holding lights to stop them and says to stop. Sohyun stops, saying okay, and asks how things are going. He requests to give him a briefing. Currently, both West and North Gangbok High are attacking East Gangbok High from either side, but they are resisting fiercely. Sohyun Kim asks about their high-ranking fighters. He explains that they just found one of the bars under East Gangbok High's control where Yujon Na is in a standoff with Changgang Yong. Suhyun Kim asks about Yujon Na. Haru Siong asks what the matter is and says Yujon Na is more than capable of holding his own. He acknowledges, but that's not what he is worried about. She asks what he is worried about then. He responds that he is not telling her and thinks he believes in him. She insists, asking him to come on and tell her what it is. Meanwhile, Yujon Na and Changgang Yong stand in front of each other. A boy asks why they are not fighting each other. 
Yu Jong-na says he has heard a lot about him. Chang gong yom asks if he does not think he needs to keep his promise to Siak Kang. The scene shifts to a flashback where Siak Kang sits at a desk and Yu Jong-na comes there. He hugs him and thanks him for coming, mentioning that he missed him. Siak Kang acknowledges that it must be tough being West Gang Bak Hai's underling and that an opportunity has presented itself to them. A war will begin soon. He explains that his task is a very simple one, betray West Gang Bak Hai. He states that helping East Gang Bak Hai is the only way South Gang Bak Hai will rise again, and he will play a key role in making it happen. He tells Yu Jong Na that he needs to stab Sehyun Kim and West Gang Bak Hai in the back and asks if he can do that for him. The scene shifts to the present. Chang Gong Yong says they are friends after all, but Yu Jong Na attacks him. He questions why he attacked him and asks if he is betraying Siak Kang. A boy notes that Chang Gong was struck and tells them not to just stand there but to attack West Gang Bak Hai. They all move to attack each other. He questions if Yu Jong Na is not indebted to Siak Kang and states that he is the sword of Siak Kang. He asks how dare a sword betray its master, if he has already switched loyalties to Suhyun Kim and says this will break Siak Kang's heart. He questions why Yu Jong Na would follow someone like Suhyun Kim and asks if he is not interested in any questions. Yu Jong Na attacks him with a low kick. He retaliates and says not so fast, thinking that Yu Jong Na is a striker and definitely has a substantial reach. Yu Jong Na is attacked by him, but he moves back and considers that he will be at a disadvantage from a distance. He attacks Yu Jong Na's chin, but he is kicked back again. He thinks he is persistent. At this rate, his leg will give out first and he needs to get closer. Yu Jong Na attacks again with a low kick and suddenly changes his moves to attack his face. Chang Gong Yong thinks it is a feint. The boys are also fighting each other. A boy asks if he heard that sound just now. They are all shocked, and a boy says no way, he has lost. The other boy asks if Chang Gong Yong lost to Yu Jong Na. Chang Gong Yong stops his attack and thinks he has almost gotten him. He says it's too obvious to feint a low kick and try to land a head kick instead. Chang Gong Yong bends down and asks if he wants to finish him off with one blow. He attacks him, flipping upside down, and states this is what a real finishing blow looks like, he idiot. Meanwhile, Ji Hyok Jang sits and remarks that East Gang Bak Hai is special compared to South Gang Bak Hai. So Hyun Kim asks if it is special, and in what way. Hyun Dong Lee suggests letting him explain that Yi Ha Han is their advisor. He asks if Yi Ha Han is their advisor. Hyun Dong Lee clarifies that's not the point. Yi Ha Han is an advisor who happens to also be good at fighting which means Yi Ha Han is not East Gang Bak Hai's strongest fighter. Su Hyun Kim asks what he means. He explains that all of East Gang Bak Hai's high-ranking fighters are stronger than Yi Ha Han. On the other side, Chang Gong Yeon knocks out Yu Jong Na, and the quest window displays the details of his abilities. His gang member declares victory, stating that he has defeated Yu Jong Na of West Gang Bak Hai. Kyu Ya arrives at the scene. A boy turns around to see and asks what has just occurred. Another person asks what this ominous feeling is. Chang Gong Yeon inquires about the identity of the newcomer. The quest window notifies that the El Diablo card has been triggered, decreasing the stats of all those in Guk Yang's vicinity. Chang Gong Yeon remarks that they finally meet, and he understands that the newcomer is to be his opponent, a master of Yamazaki-style Kyokushin karate named Yuja, the man they call El Diablo. Kyuja Ya steps forward and lifts Yu Jong Na from the floor. He asks him if he is capable of continuing to fight. Yu Jong Na nods. Kyu Jaya responds very well, then let's do this together. The boy greets Kyu Jaya expressing pleasure at seeing him. Another boy asks what his orders are. Kyu Jaya responds that all of them should guard Yu Jong Na while he fights, and as for the old guy, he will deal with him. He moves to attack him, and Chang Gong Yeon also punches him. The quest window notifies that Chang Gong Yeon is affected by El Diablo. Kyuja Ya wonders how he is so fast and thinks it's not at all fair. He admits that, to be honest, he is not 18. Chang Gong Yeon retorts, speaking for himself, and thinks Kyuja Ya's intuition in combat is remarkable. Kyuja Ya attacks him, grabs him by the collar, and punches him. He reflects that fighting is not just about technique, experience is essential too, something Siok Kang taught him. Everyone is shocked to see this. A boy exclaims, no way, Chang Gong Yeon is losing. Kyu Jaya hits him, saying it's over. Chang Gong Yeon admits he let his guard down. 
Kyuja Ye asserts that it's not at all over and grabs Chengang Yeon's shoulder to attack, employing Yamazaki style Kyokushin karate straight punches, eight strikes, and a Yamazaki style Kyokushin karate spin kick. Everyone is shocked to see Chengang Yeon lying on the floor in an unconscious state. Chengang Yeon thinks it's unbelievable that he lost. Yujong Na expresses gratitude. He believes this can't be, he didn't lose. Kujaya explains that because he weakened him, he was able to win easily, yet he does not look pleased. Yujong Na points aside. The quest window notifies that East Gangbuk High is rising again, energized by powers unknown, and Changong Yeon's potential has awakened. Changong Yeon punches Kujaya and throws him away, then repeatedly attacks him. Kujaya grabs him around the waist and tells West Gangbuk High to take Yujong Na and run. He cannot defeat this man. He urges Yujom to make his escape now, as he won't be able to hold him at bay for much longer. Chenggong Yeon grabs Kyuja Ye's shirt and declares that it's over. The scene shifts to a flashback where a red-shirted boy asks the other if he has heard why Yujom Na doesn't talk. He replies that it's mutism. The boy in the blue shirt asks about mutism, questioning why. The other explains that it's post-traumatic mutism. When Yujom Na was a kid, there was a fire in his home that killed his entire family. He was the only survivor, and it happened at such a young age that it still affects him, which is why he can't talk. After a while, Baeob Sangjiang, who ranked third in South Gangbok High, sits near the window and suggests using Yujom Na, stating they need someone expendable. Siok Kang expresses concern for him, considering his mutism. Baeob Sangjiang counters that they treat him well enough, and besides, it's not like he's got anywhere else to go. He proposes they drop his rank to third and let him be second, pretending it's because they are looking out for him. Siok Kang attempts to interject, but Baeob Sang Jiang insists they don't have anyone to be a scapegoat if the police catch wind of their business. Unbeknownst to them, Yu Jom Na stands outside the door, overhearing their conversation. Siok Kang asks who knows about this plan. Baeob Sang Jiang suggests Yu Jom Na might even be willing to go to prison for them, stating that what's best for South Gangbok High is best for Yu Jom Na too. After a while, Yujom Na sits in his room and writes in his notebook that today, he overheard Siak Kang and Baeob Sang Jiang's conversation, realizing that the world is whole of people who want to take advantage of him. The scene shifts when Sihyun Kim welcomes Yujom Na to their crew, expressing anticipation for working with him. He admits that while he doesn't know if he can provide Yujom Na with everything Siak Kang did, and he didn't exactly become the leader of this crew by choice, he can promise one thing. He will never take advantage of him. The scene shifts to the present when Chen Gong Yeon attacks Qiu Jiaya. Yu Zhong Na rises and reflects on his changed self. The quest window indicates that his crew member Yu Zhong Na is brimming with conviction, and his potential is skyrocketing. Chen Gong Yeon remarks that there's no point in getting back up now. The quest window reveals that Yu Zhong Na's potential has reached its peak, and congratulations, his potential has awakened. It further notifies that as a special reward for the awakening of his potential, Yujom Na's stamina has been restored. Additionally, it informs that as a reward for the awakening of Yujom Na's potential, he has received an exclusive attack card. Changgung Yeon advances to attack him and remarks that there's nothing more he can do. Yujom Na also moves to attack him. He contemplates delivering another low kick, thinking it's not a big deal and that he can take it. Then, Yujom Na executes the kick. The quest window indicates that he has acquired an exclusive Yujom Na attack card. The card description reveals terabyte low kick, enabling the user to unleash a powerful low kick with full force, dealing 3x critical damage. Yujom Na strikes him, and the quest window notifies him of a critical hit. His low kick fractures Changgong Yeon's leg bone, causing him to collapse to the ground. Everyone is shocked by this turn of events. A boy exclaims that he brought down Changgong with a single kick. Kyujaya asserts that they have all demonstrated that West Gangbok High has become even stronger. The quest window then notifies that the effect of the El Diablo card has ended. After a while, Yi Ha Han sits at the bar, and the boy with the red tie quickly approaches, saying it's an emergency. Changgong has been defeated. Yi Ha Han inquires by whom. The boy replies that after fighting Guk Jae Yang, Yu Jong Na got the better of him. Yi Ha Han stands up and acknowledges, stating they managed to take Changdong out too. Yi Ha Han then asks about Sejong Ryu. The boy explains that after he fought Haru Siang at the karaoke bar, they expected him to bring the advisor back, but for some reason, they couldn't get in touch with him anymore. 
Yi Ha Han queries about Dong Tak Seo. He responds that he's currently at his bar fighting Ji Hyun Lee. He adds that Yi Ha Han should relay a message to Dong Tak. If he loses, Yi Ha Han will kill him, so he better be ready to fight to the death. Meanwhile, Ji Hyun Lee initiates an attack, but Dong Tak Seo retreats. She reflects that his fighting style complicates matters. He expresses disappointment, suggesting that if he can't move any quicker, he'll be at a disadvantage, then launches an attack. She observes that he employs Jeet Kune Do. He questions if his opponent is this slow girl, expressing a preference to fight Haru Seung instead. She acknowledges that she can't deny his speed superiority over Haru Seung. He continues his attack, apologizing for attacking a girl. She interrupts his attack, reassuring him that there's no need to apologize, and thinks if he doesn't finish this quickly, his speed will overpower her. He asserts that he can't help being weak, it's a limitation of his gender. She questions why he's so fixated on his gender and thinks about landing a good hit. She moves to attack him, instructing him to stop talking and focus on the fight. She believes she just needs to land one good hit. He finds it amusing, noting her attempt to strike him, but he merely evades her attacks and steps back. She thrusts the sword into his foot, and he screams forcefully. Then she strikes him in the face, asserting that he should have realized she was attempting to land one good hit. She knocks him out and believes she has emerged victorious. The quest window notifies that East Gangbok High is rising again, energized by unknown powers, and Dong Tak Seo's potential has awakened. He rises and declares that he has become more robust. She wonders if he's prepared to fight to the death. He attacks her, throwing her back. She collides with a wall, starting to bleed. He declares it's over for Ji Hyun Lee of West Gangbak High, revealing that he did some research on her before the fight and finds her past quite interesting. She responds with a sharp shut up. He reveals that his dad is an alcoholic and a domestic abuser who frequently beats both her and her mom. As his violence escalated, she first picked up a sword to defend her mother, leading to her father's eventual arrest. It's a very touching story so far, he remarks. However, he continues, it's what happened afterward that truly intrigues him. Despite her protest to shut up, he persists, pointing out that she risked her life to save her mom, yet she ultimately abandoned her and returned to her dad. He states that history repeats itself, suggesting that just as he couldn't defeat her dad, even with a sword in hand as a woman, she will never be able to defeat a man. He moves to attack her again, declaring that they are finished here. She responds by asserting that as a woman, she will never be able to defeat a man, but that's not what her master told her, and she moves her swords in front of him. The scene shifts back to the flashback. Ji Hyun Lee asks if it is true that there is a sword-based martial art that can strike down any opponent with a single blow. Her master sits down and confirms that yes it exists, but it is not easy to pull off. He explains that if he fails to execute it correctly, it will cost her her life. He instructs her to put everything on the line with the first strike, echoing the words of the martial arts founder to their disciples. He asserts that while she may be a woman, if she masters this style, she will be able to defeat anyone who stands in her way. He inquires if Ji Hyun would like to learn it, and upon her affirmation, he declares that, from this moment on, he is the ultimate swordswoman. The scene shifts back to the present. The quest window notifies that his crew member, Ji Hyun Lee, is filled with conviction, and Ji Hyun Lee's potential is skyrocketing. He moves to attack and asserts that it's no use, a woman can't win against a man. She readies to attack him with the sword. The quest window notifies that Ji Hyun Lee's potential has reached its peak, congratulating her as her potential has awakened. It notifies him that as a special reward for the awakening of her potential, Ji Hyun Lee's stamina has been restored. He jumps to attack with Jeet Kyun's dragon kick. The quest window notifies that as a reward for the awakening of Ji Hyun Lee's potential, she has received a Ji Hyun Lee exclusive attack card. She utters Jai Jin Ryu. The quest window displays the Jaijin Ryu card, which notifies that the user gains the ability to use Jaijin Ryu, a traditional Japanese sword-based martial art that sacrifices endurance and risks everything on strength and speed. Endurance is fixed at F rank, while strength and speed increase by three levels. The quest window notifies that Ji Hyun Lee has used Jaijin Ryu. She states, do not block, but evade. That is Jaijin Ryu, and knocks him out. She mentions she should have held back a bit. The quest window notifies the main quest, the fall of East Gangbok High. First, rescue Jihyok Jang 11. Second, occupy 5 Bars Clubs 45. 
Third, defeat Yiha Han 11. The fourth and fifth objectives are unknown, and the rewards are also unknown. Meanwhile, Sohyun Kim stands outside the sing karaoke and acknowledges, all right, he is here. This is the last karaoke bar. He believes he just needs to take over this place and asserts that this is definitely where he is. He calls Yi Ha Han and believes Yi Ha Han is in there. He beat him last time, but he can't let down his guard, especially since Siak Kang was awakened at the last minute too. He states let's see this through to the end. He notices two guards standing outside the door and thinks to himself if only two guards. He removes his jacket and mentally prepares, saying okay, let's do this. The guards step aside, and he wonders if they are allowing him through. He questions their intentions, to which the brown-haired guard responds, go on in, Yi Ha Han is waiting for him. The quest window updates, indicating the progress of the main quest. First, rescue Ji Hyuk Jang 11. Second, occupy 5 bars clubs 45. Third, defeat Yi Ha Han 11. Fourth, defeat awakened Yi Ha Han 01, with a time limit of 1 hour and an unknown reward for the fifth task. Sohyun Kim realizes that the quest has been updated, and he needs to find Yi Ha Han within the hour. He thinks this place is larger than he expected, and it's dark in here too. They might try to ambush him, but he needs to be on his guard. He observes the place and considers where Yi Ha Han could be. He sees Yi Ha Han standing in the hallway, runs toward him, and says he found him, let's finish this. Yi Ha Han moves from there. He commands, stops right there, and asks if he is running away, if he went this way, or if he's playing cheap tricks. He looks down the hallway, sees Yi Ha Han disappear, and notices more rooms there. He opens a door and wonders where he is. Suddenly, two men attack him from the room. He realizes this is a trap and asks if this is Yi Ha Han's final plan, stopping the attack. He concludes that Yi Ha Han has hidden people in each room, and he needs to find them. He fights back, saying he'll play with them. The quest window notifies that he has used Calirnes. He declares, let's go. Meanwhile, Yi Ha Han states that 27 is the number of rooms he will have to search in order to find him. The person dressed up like Yi Ha Han raises a question and asks if this is not a waste of their troops and if it would not be better for all of them to attack him at the same time. He asserts that this is Sehyun Kim's weakness. He inquires about his weakness. Yi Ha Han explains that Sehyun Kim is adept at fighting a large group of opponents. The bigger the group, the stronger he becomes. If they all attack him at once, it will only repeat what happened earlier, and they need to fight Sehyun Kim in small groups. He states that Sohyun Kim's weakness is stamina. Yi Ha Han remarks, strangely enough, even though Sohyun Kim is strong, he lacks stamina. He gets tired quickly. Even after a brief fight, it's almost as though he's drawing his strength from elsewhere. They will use that to their advantage, attacking him repeatedly in small groups to tire him out. By the time he has to fight him, he will be completely exhausted. He challenges him to bring it on, drag his tired self in here, and he will chew him up and spit him out. Meanwhile, Sohyun Kim knocks all of them out, feeling exhausted. He thinks he does not have enough stamina for all these fights, and he should have worked out or something. He considers if he should use a healing bean. He thinks that he will be able to restore his stamina with it, but if he uses it this early, how is he going to fight Yi Ha Han? He thinks he already has two quests left, so if this is the right time to use it, he feels ashamed realizing he has been relying too much on the cards. There are 14 rooms he still needs to search, and he will be able to find Yi Ha Han without using a healing bean. He thinks his only option is to use the copy cloud. Meanwhile, Jiang Gun Park and Seong Ho Kim wait for Su Hyun Kim to attack, holding baseball bats. Jiang Gun Park observes that Su Hyun Kim is pretty worn out by now. Seong Ho Kim suggests that the three of them in this room can finish him off. He predicts this is the next room Sehyun will search. Seong Ho Kim asserts they will be the ones to take Sehyun Kim down and save East Gangbok High. He hears the noise of steps and thinks here he comes. He instructs the others to get ready and contemplates this is the end of Sehyun Kim. Soo Jin Yu opens the door and enters the room. They all prepare to attack, but pause upon seeing Soo Jin Yu. Jiang Gun Park wonders who the hell this guy is. Soo Jin Yu remarks they are so annoying. He asks who he is and how he got in here. Yoksa H. Wang also enters the other room. A boy insists Sehyun Kim should be the one coming in here, but he is not a member of West Gang Bakai's crew either. He demands to know who the hell these people are. He declares it's enough. The scene shifts back to a flashback. 
Elisa arrives with Yoksa H. Wang and Su Jin Yu at Su Hyun Kim's house and announces she brought them, just as he asked. He is stunned by her action and says she can't just bring strangers home like this. She asks what he is talking about and clarifies they are copy cloud. He asks what she means. She explained that he didn't remember. He had asked her to have them copy people. He asks if those two people were copy cloud. She confirmed that's right, and since they would need to run a restaurant as well as unite gangbuck, she selected people who were physically fit. The scene shifts back to the present. Su Jin Yu attacks the people in the room. So Hyun Kim explains that first, Su Jin Yu is a former gymnast. His specialty is speed, and the downside is that trying to get him to do anything is like pulling teeth. Yoksa H. Wang also attacks the people in the other room. He explained that this is Yoksa H. Wang, a former bodybuilder. His specialties are strength and endurance, and the best thing about him is that he's chronically jolly. At that moment, a black-haired boy enters Yi Ha Han's room and announces they have a big problem. Sehyun Kim's reinforcements suddenly show up, and it seems West Gang Bak Hai has more hidden crew members. Unfortunately, Sehyun Kim is not exhausted. Just then, Sehyun Kim kicks him and orders him out of his way, stating that this is the last room and that he knows Yi Ha Han will be there. Yoksa H. Wong sees him sitting there and remarks that the fellow must be Yi Ha Han, asking how he dared to bully his master and that he shall teach him a lesson. Fahyun Kim dismisses the title of master, declaring let's get this over with so he can go home and rest. He tells Yi Ha Han that it's over, that he is the only one left, and that he is peeking at his card. Yi Ha Han acknowledges, saying he sees it, so it's finally coming to this. So Hyun Kim is shocked at his abilities and details, thinking this is unbelievable. What's with those stats? He puts on rings with sharp needles and declares welcome. One of them will die here. So Hyun Kim considers that his stats are much higher than when he fought Siak King, wondering if it is possible for the same potential to yield different results. He contemplates whether he will receive an exclusive card as a reward for awakening, and if that is what Yi Ha Han's exclusive card does, which boosts his stats. Yoksa H. Wang and Su Jin Yu move to attack. So Hyun Kim commands them to stop. Yi Ha Han pushes the table toward Yoksa H. Wang and knocks him out. Su Jin Yu also moves to attack him, advising him to watch his head, but Su Hyun Kim kicks him in the face, asking what the hell he is talking about. Su Jin grabs his leg and declares he is not finished yet. Yi Ha Han hits him, stating he thinks he is. He grabs his hair and asks if he is wrong, and if he wants him to finish him off, then punches him. Yoksa H. Wang moves to attack him, stating he let his guard down. Yi Ha Han grabs a mic and acknowledges that he is right, admitting he sure as hell let his guard down. He puts the mic in his mouth, hits him, and asserts he won't anymore. Yoksa H. Wang falls behind on the floor. He acknowledges he let these people get the better of him too many damn times and questions if he would not agree to Sohyun Kim. He moves to attack Sohyun Kim. Sohyun Kim stops his kick and uses Yi Biap Tik Jones Sanbyuk Chigi to push him away. Yi Ha Han asks what's wrong, stating he is awfully quiet all of a sudden. He thinks this is bad, he's too powerful. Yi Ha Han asks if he is scared. So Hyun Kim exhales and thinks he has to go all out for this fight. He can't afford to get careless and says not at all. The quest notifies that he used the Beast Mode Weasel card. Meanwhile, at North Gang Buck High, ranked second, Daniel knocks at the door and announces it's him. Yun Jo, the top dog of North Gang Bak Hai, tells him to come in. He enters the room. Yun Jo asks how things are progressing. Daniel reports that Su Hyun Kim and Yi Ha Han just started fighting and Su Hyun Kim might lose. He asks if that won't throw a wrench in his plans. Yun Jo responds that it does not matter whether Yi Ha Han wins or Su Hyun Kim does. Either way, the victor will only become his prey. Daniel says he has a question. Yun Jo asks what it is. Daniel asks between Yi Ha Han and Su Hyun Kim who he thinks will win this fight. Yun Jo answers Yi Ha Han. Daniel asks why. Yun Jo responds that he's smart. Daniel inquires about smart. Yun Jo explains that, given his intelligence, he is sure he sees right through Su Hyun Kim. Meanwhile, Su Hyun Kim tries to attack Yi Ha Han, but he quickly backs up and counters with an attack of his own. So Hyun Kim thinks not only does he use Taekwondo, which is tricky to counter, but he's also faster than him, and he needs to grab him just once. Yi Ha Han pushes him and throws him back. 
So Hyun Kim thinks he's got a long reach. At this rate, he will lose, and there's only one way out of this, and he's figured him out. Yi Ha Han jumps back and says he bets he will try to grab his foot. So Hyun Kim thinks he has to grab him. Once he gets a grip on him, wherever that may be, he can win this. He corners him, thinking he has cornered him. At this distance, he won't be able to get away. He tries to attack, but Yi Ha Han punches him and asks how his acting was. So Hyun Kim wonders if he tricked him. Yi Ha Han uses the Taekwondo Tornado Kick, the Taekwondo Double Kick, and the Taekwondo Triple Tornado Kick to attack him, and So Hyun Kim falls to the floor. Yi Ha Han goes to kick him again, stating as he said earlier, that one of them will die here. The quest window notifies that if he fails to complete a main quest, all rewards are forfeited, and quest windows will no longer appear. He states it's over for So Hyun Kim. Kyuja Ya Ha Jin Gu, Yu Jong Na, Ji Hyun Lee, and Haru Siong run toward the karaoke bar. Ji Hyun Lee identifies it as the karaoke bar where Se Hyun is. Kyuja Ya expresses a bad feeling about this and insists they need to get to Se Hyun right away. Haru Siong suddenly stops. Ji Hyun Lee asks what the matter is. She points out that Si Jong Ryu, the third strongest fighter in East Gangbok High, disappeared in the middle of their war. Sijion Ryu asks if they are here to take Yi Ha Han down. Haru Siong asks what is going on and who exactly he is. Sijion Ryu responds by asking who he is and if that really matters at this point. He questions if there are only five of them. Ju Hyun Lee asserts that it does not matter. He will cut him down, East Gangbuk scum. Sijion Ryu opens a candy and suggests they not bother tiring themselves out now. She asks what he means. He explains that since they are not enemies, Haru Siong asks what that even means. He suggests they all go see who ultimately wins between Sohyun Kim and Yi Ha Han. Meanwhile, Sohyun Kim lies on the floor unconsciously. He reflects that it feels like it was only yesterday he met him at the Gangbuk conference, and he never thought he'd become such a thorn in his side, but this is the end of the line for West Gangbuk High. He attempts to kick him, stating it's over. Sohyun Kim quickly flips away. The quest window notifies him that he has used the healing beam. Yi Ha Han remarks that he sure is a strange one and asks how he recovered his stamina so suddenly, especially after all the hits he took and who he really is. So Hyun Kim stands up and thinks he almost had him. His stats make this fight tricky. Yi Ha Han says that he is only delaying the inevitable. He thinks his fighting style leverages his strength and speed, and because of his high intelligence, his ploys won't work on him either. He could win if he just managed to get a hold of him once, but how does he make that happen? He considers if he should use the Berserker card and charge at him, and if using Berserker now is the right call to make when he still has one unknown quest left. The quest window notifies that he has used the weaving technique. Yi Ha Han tries to kick him, but he bends down and thinks no, Berserker is not the way to go. It's time for plan B. Yi Ha Han jumps again to attack. He considers if he is waiting for an opportunity to strike, but it's no use as he has already figured out his pattern. He tries to attack him again and again. He thinks his little tricks won't work on him. Yi Ha Han states he has a habit of dodging to the left. After confirming that he indeed has a habit of dodging to the left, he backed him into a corner on purpose. He attacks him using a Taekwondo tornado kick, but Sehyun Kim blocks it. He thinks he's lucky and says he blocked his tornado kick with his arm. Sohyun Kim screams in pain and says his arm is not broken yet. He acknowledges it as a solid effort, as he is sure he just realized that he won't be able to use that arm anymore. He moves to kick him again and declares goodbye. This will be his final tornado kick. The kicks hit his arm and caused it to break. He says choose. Either he lets his arm shatter or lets his head go flying, and either way, the end result will be his defeat. He kicks him. But So Hyun Kim stops his attack using the power of quest cards. Yi Ha Han thinks he managed to block his kick without injury. So Hyun Kim recalls when he early knocked out Yi Ha Han, and the quest window notified him that Yi Ha Han was down, and he had received a hidden reward for completing a quest early, along with receiving one platinum card. The quest window shows the card, notifying that the attack card Guard Fist allows the user to block all attacks once and can only be used once per day. Yi Ha Han is shocked to see and thinks his arm is not broken. So Hyun Kim asks how his acting was and gets ready to attack. The quest window notifies that he used Guard Fist. He considers using Guard Fist on one hand and Stun Fist on the other. 
The quest window shows the attack card that notifies Stun Fist when a punch is landed squarely on an opponent, immobilizing them for 3 seconds. The quest window notifies that he used Stun Fist, and Changong Yom is affected by El Diablo. Suhyun Kim attacks. Yi Ha Han thinks he can't move. Suhyun Kim's gang members enter the bar and are shocked to see the door blocked by many things. Haru Siang says she is sure the two of them are fighting in there and suggests they take down the barricade at once as Sohyun Kim might be in danger. Kyuja Ya asks what's the matter. Suddenly, Yi Ha Han falls out, breaking the door. The quest window notifies that he used the maximum capacity card. The strong against the weak, weak against the strong card has been triggered, and he used the Dempsey roll technique. He thinks he can feel it, he is putting it all on the line, and he will never get another chance like this. The quest window notifies that his strength has increased to SSS plus rank, and he used the Beast Mode Weasel card. He attacks Yi Ha Han and thinks he must stay focused, he has been waiting for this once in a lifetime opportunity. The quest window notifies that he used the To the Moon card. He thinks everyone realized then and there that So Hyun Kim would win this fight. He attacks him and smashes his face on the ground. Everyone is shocked to see this. He thinks he did it, and he won. The quest window notifies that Yi Ha Han has been defeated. The quest window notifies the main quest objectives, the fall of East Gangbok Hai. The first is to rescue Ji Hyuk Jang 11. The second is to occupy 5 Bars Clubs 55. The third is to defeat Yi Ha Han 11. The fourth is to defeat Awakened Yi Ha Han 11, with a time limit of 1 hour, and the fifth's reward is unknown. Yi Ha Han stands up and says not yet, it's not over yet. So Hyun Kim thinks hold on, he's getting back up. The quest window notifies that East Gangbok High is rising again, energized by powers unknown. He recalls a flashback where Kyu Jiya fights with Siak Kang. He wonders if this is going to be a two-phase fight like how it was with Siak Kang. Yi Ha Han calls Su Hyun Kim. Si Jong Ryu says let's stop this and face the facts. East Gangbok High lost. Yi Ha Han wonders where the hell he has been. Si Jong Ryu responds that he doesn't really have an excuse to give him and that he went on a walk, he guesses. Yi Ha Han moves to attack him and asks when East Gangbok High is on the brink of collapse, but Si Jong Ryu hits him and knocks him out. Everyone is shocked to see this. Si Jong Ryu remarks that for a smart guy, he sure is stupid. The quest window notifies that the quest has been updated. The quest window indicates that the main quest, the fall of East Gangbok High first, is to rescue Ji Hyuk Jang 11. The second is to occupy 5 Bars Clubs 55. The third is to defeat Yi Ha Han 11. Fourth is to defeat Awakened Yi Ha Han 11, with a time limit of 1 hour. The fifth is to choose between helping Yi Ha Han and helping Sejong Ryu, and the reward is unknown. Sejong Ryu says to Sehyun Kim, good work. The quest window notifies him that choosing to help Sejong Ryu will result in a reward of 2 diamond cards, and choosing to help Yi Ha Han will yield 1 master card. He remarks that it's a bit of a sticky situation if it's not. The scene shifts to a flashback of a man lying on the floor unconscious. The referee announces that the match is over, and Yi Ha Han is disqualified. He thinks that Taekwondo is boring, with too many damn rules. The referee admonishes him, saying he had told him not to go after his opponent's vital points. Yi Ha Han declares that he is quitting. He asks what he means. Yi Ha walks away and states that he quit Taekwondo thinking that was why he quit Taekwondo. After a while, some boys surround him, and one of them asks if he has heard. Yi Ha Han responds, heard what? The boy explains that a group of East Gangbuk High graduates is running a karaoke bar. Yi Ha Han inquires about the karaoke bar. He explains that he knows it's the kind where he can have girls come in to pour his drinks and stuff. Yi Ha Han reflects that he doesn't like rules, he wants to live a life of freedom. A black-haired boy remarks that he heard it makes a ton of money. The yellow-haired boy expresses jealousy, mentioning that they are only in middle school, but those guys are already legit gangsters. Yi Ha Han asks why they don't take over that karaoke bar. After a while, he knocks out all the people at the karaoke bar and reflects that it was the start of his business. With freedom came money and women. He believes he was living the life he had always wanted and enjoying his hard-earned freedom. The scene shifts to the present. Yi Ha Han attacks Sejong Ryu and asks if he thinks he'll let him take that away from him. He declares that East Gangbok High is his, and this business is his. Sejong Ryu moves back. 
Sehyun Kim sees this and wonders what the heck is going on and why the two of them are fighting, but more importantly, he defeats Yi Ha Han with a single blow. Sejong Ryu then attacks him and knocks him out. Everyone is shocked to see this and asks why he had to poke his nose where he doesn't belong. They suggest he should have just lived a quiet life. Yi Ha Han lies on the floor and asks just who exactly he is. Sejon Ryu responds that now that it's all over, he might as well tell him. He reveals that he's a high-ranking member of North Gangbuk High's crew. At the moment, Chin Hak Yong arrives with his gang members. Sejon Ryu remarks that he scared him and asks who he is. Chin Hak Yong identifies himself as Chin Hak Yong of North Gangbuk High. He admits that he shamefully failed to recognize him at first glance, as the faces of the highest-ranking members are kept secret. He apologizes and hopes for forgiveness for this transgression. Sejon Ryu reassures him, saying there's no need to worry, he's not mad. Chin Hak wonders what shenanigans the other high-ranking members are up to. Sehyun Kim remarks that a high-ranking member of East Gangbuk High was actually a member of North Gangbuk High and he can't believe this. Sejon Ryu confirms, stating that he had to follow the orders he was given. When asked about the orders, Sejon Ryu explains that they were orders from their leader. The scene shifts to a flashback. Yun Jo tells Sejong Ryu that he is to join East Gangbuk High's crew. Sejong Ryu asks why East Gangbuk High and if he should drop what he is currently working on. Yun Jo explains that he is the best person for the job and that he will spy on Southern Gangbuk. Yun Jo mentions that Yi Ha Han is the only person capable of uniting the South and Ha Jun Gu of West Gangbuk High has no interest in uniting Gangbuk. Additionally, South Gangbuk High's Siak Kang is far too stupid to pull it off. He instructs him to become a high-ranking member of East Gangbuk High's crew and report everything Yi Ha Han does to him. Sejong Ryu asks about becoming a spy and remarks that it sounds fun. He recalls the fights between Ha Jun Gu and So Hyun Kim. After a while, Sejong Ryu calls Yun Jo and reports that something unexpected has occurred at West Gangbuk High. Ha Jun Gu lost a fight with someone named So Hyun Kim, so So Hyun Kim is now the new top dog of West Gangbuk High. Yun Jo acknowledges that he knows. Si Jong Ryu asks if he does. Yun Jo responds that the situation has changed, and South Gangbuk High will fall to So Hyun Kim. Si Jong Ryu expresses surprise, mentioning that it's not Yi Ha Han, but that punk. Yun Jo advises him to stay close to Yi Ha Han and keep an eye on So Hyun Kim, as eventually So Hyun Kim and Yi Ha Han will wage one last war over the South. Si Jong Ryu inquires about what happens next. Yun Jo instructs him to pick whichever of the two he deems superior, and if he believes Se Hyun Kim is the superior one, he asks if he is to eliminate Yi Ha Han himself. After a while, Yi Ha Han asks what he is doing. Se Jong Ryu responds, not much, just going on a walk. Yi Ha Han comments that he is a pretty strange guy. The scene shifts to the present. He asserts that their leader knew from the start that he would show up, and that Se Ak Kang and Yi Ha Han would lose to him. So Hyun Kim thinks no way, how is this possible? Sejong Ryu confirms, saying that's right. From the beginning, their leader knew he would wage war over Southern Gangbuk. So Hyun Kim wonders what the hell is his deal. Sejong Kim moves toward him and mentions that he heard he made a promise to their leader, and now that the war is over, let's head to North Gangbuk High. So Hyun Kim ponders what to do. For this quest, he has to make a choice. He debates whether he should do as Sejong Ryu says and get two diamond cards or help Yi Ha Han and receive one master card. However, if he helps Sejong Ryu, he won't be getting a master card. He considers that maybe he should just take the two diamond cards and try combining them. But what if the two diamond cards don't yield a master card? He'd be losing the opportunity to gain a master card. He considers that he was told that once he got master cards, he'd be able to take on North Gang Bakai. Would choosing the diamond cards be the right decision for him when he ends up fighting North Gangbuk High anyway? Siak Kang moves to attack him and calls North Gangbuk High, saying there's not a chance they'd let him and his idiots do as they please. Sejong Ryu pushes him away and remarks that he stinks of sweat. Changong Yom abuses him and moves to attack him, but Sejong Ryu moves back. He asks if he was a spy all along and says they trusted him. Sejong Ryu attacks him and confirms that he is. He asks Sehyun Kim why he is stalling, and if he is not going to keep the promise he made to their leader. After all this, he is going to team up with Yi Ha Han instead. Sehyun Kim asks if he has had dinner yet, 
and thinks it's not exactly an easy decision to make he knows. Yi Ha Han gets up with the help of Dong Tak Seo, calls Sa Hyun Kim, and advises him to think about this carefully. If he goes to North Gangbuk High, it will be the end for him, and who knows what Yun Jo will do to him. He pleads with Sa Hyun Kim to help East Gangbuk High. If he helps them, the members of East Gangbuk High will join his crew. He begs him to assist them. Sejong Ryu remarks that there's probably no helping it, he better shut his trap. He thinks that if this is the end, they are to fall to North Gangbok High. Sejong Se Ryu moves to attack him and says goodbye, but Sehyun Kim, Kim attacks him instead. He bends down, he bends and, down and asks what he, what he thinks he is doing. Sehyun Kim responds, Se Kim that, he Kim responds that he can't North do it. Gangbok High North Gangbok High can't he be trusted. That given what he, he explains that given what he has seen of that young Joe idiot, if he allies himself with North Gangbok High, things will go downhill. His gang members are shocked to see this. He tells Yi Ha Han that he better keep his word. The quest window notifies that Siok Kang, Chang Gong Yom, Yi Ha Han, and Dong Tak Seo have joined his crew. So Hyun Kim declares to North Gang Bak Hai to let him make himself clear. The South won't hide anymore, and he, So Hyun Kim of West Gang Bak Hai at this moment, declares war on North Gang Bak Hai. The quest window notifies him that he has chosen to help Yi Ha Han. The quest has been updated. 5 1 is to land one clean hit on Siyon Ryu 01 and the reward is one master card. Sejong Ryu remarks that it's interesting, but unfortunately for him, this war he speaks of is about to end right here and now. Chan Hak Young realizes that it has come to this, he can't take on all of them by himself and moves forward. Sejong Ryu tells him to back off and asks if he thinks he can't handle them on his own. Chan Hak Young responds that no, of course not. He apologizes and says he will wait right there. He thinks he was foolish to worry, he finds it interesting and wonders if their leader knows, he wonders how things would turn out this way. Sejong Ryu mentions that he did not instruct him on what to do in this scenario, so he supposes he will just have to make a judgment call. He declares to West Gangbak Hai and East Gangbak Hai that he is crushing them all today. Sehyun Kim alerts his crew that Sejong Ryu is about to attack, and they should be on their guard all of them. Sejong Ryu attacks Chen Gong Yom and tells them to be their guard. He remarks that, unfortunately for them, it won't change a thing. He will take care of the small fry first. He also attacks Dong Tak Seo. So Hyun Kim commands them to get away from Sejong Ryu, as none of them are strong enough to face him yet. Sejong Ryu attacks Kyu Ya and questions what's happening. The quest window displays an attack card exclusive to Yu Jong Na, the terabyte low kick, which allows the user to unleash a powerful low kick with all their might, dealing 3x critical damage. Yu Jong Na demonstrates his moves. Sejong Ryu remarks that it looks dangerous. The quest window notifies that Yu Jong Na used the terabyte low kick. Yu Jong Na attempts to attack him, but he takes a long jump and mentions that it would have hurt if he had not missed. He asserts that he is the strongest out of the small fry, that's for sure. He kicks him and pushes him away, saying it was a nice low kick and advises him to try taking his opponent by surprise next time. So Hyun Kim thinks no way. In the blink of an eye, he managed to take four of them out. Yi Ha Han asks Se Hyun Kim if he thinks they have a way out of this. Se Hyun Kim responds that they need to land one clean hit. Yi Ha Han asks about landing one clean hit. He considers that right now, the only way to beat Sejong Ryu is by obtaining the Master Card. He needs to land a clean hit in order to receive a Master Card. With it, he can hopefully turn the tide of battle. But how are they going to land a clean hit on that beast when Sejong Ryu has already knocked out four people? Yi Ha Han asks how they are going to land this clean hit. He suggests he has an idea and thinks to wait a minute. There is a way. Yi Ha Han asks if he does. Haru Siong says they just need to land one clean hit. That's easy and flips to attack him. The quest window notifies that Haru Siong used capoeira. She remarks that with her speed she can land. Sejong Ryu comments that this one's hopeless, and he was going to go easy on her too, cutie. She thinks that was not a clean hit. Ha Jun Gu tries to punch him, but he blocks with his arm and says it's not that simple. Ha Jun Gu mentions that his endurance is formidable. Even if they land a hit on him, it won't count unless it's powerful enough to actually do some damage. He considers that he just needs to worry about his endurance. Sejong Ryu states that if he knows, he should stay out of this and grab him. Hajungu thinks he's fast too. Haru Siang runs toward him and tells him not to worry. Sejong Ryu remarks that she is the next. 
the quest window displays the trigger card exclusive to Yi Ha Han, called Self-Loathing, which turns the user's feeling of inferiority into a frenzy, increasing their stats. It notifies that Self-Loathing has been triggered. Yi Ha Han moves to attack him. He moves back and comments that it came out of nowhere, wondering what their plan is exactly for trying to land a clean hit. He thinks, well, he guesses it does not matter. He is sure it ultimately hinges on Xia Kang, the strongest of all of them. The quest window shows the attack card exclusive to Xia Kang, the infinite suplex, which grants the user the ability to land an infinite number of suplexes and continues until the opponent loses consciousness. It notifies that Xia Kang used the infinite suplex. Xia Kang also tries to attack him and grabs him. Chijong Ryu looks up and notices Sehyun Kim moving to attack him. He asks if Suhyun Kim is meant to land the final blow. Yi Ha Han thinks that with Xia Kang grabbing onto his legs and Suhyun Kim attacking from above, they will manage to land a clean hit for sure. Sejong Ryu grabs Suhyun Kim's hand and asks if this is his genius plan seriously. He smashes both of them on the floor and asks if this is how he is going to unite Gangbok. He questions if Suhyun Kim really thinks he can land a clean hit on him and says there's no point in trying to trick him. He knows he is the strongest one here. Sehyun Kim lies on the ground and thinks that none of their attacks are doing any damage, and this is the same despair he felt when he fought Daniel. Sejong Ryu asks if Sehyun Kim is the one planning to attack him last. He thinks this is how powerful those with stats about SR are. Sejong Ryu expresses frustration and asks how many times he has to explain that he has got no chance against him. Siak Kang moves to attack him again. He grabs Xia Kang and says he will just finish him off this time, but Sehyun Kim and Yi Ha Han both grab his arms. He wonders if the three of them are planning to do a suplex and finds it interesting. He says he can stand there and watch as their little plan fails. Yi Ha Han corrects him, saying they are not trying to land a suplex. Sejong Ryu asks what he means. Yi Ha Han explains that their objective is to stay like this. He wonders what Yi Ha Han is talking about. Sehyun Kim asserts that the three of them are not the strongest. He then inquires who it is and declares it to be a lady. Jihyun Lee arrives, wielding his sword. Sehyun Kim explains that the plan they devised to land a clean hit on him involves grabbing and holding him still for a single Jijin Ryu strike. She executes the attack and proclaims that it's a clean hit. The quest window indicates that Jihyun Lee has employed Jijin Ryu. They all feel relaxed and exhale. The quest window confirms that he has successfully landed a clean hit, completing the quest and congratulating him on receiving a master card. Sehyun Kim sees the card and believes he has achieved it. The master card is revealed as an attack card that drains mana, and he ponders whether to use the mana drain, questioning if it is indeed a master card. The master card appears as an attack card that drains mana, granting the user the ability to absorb an opponent's stats and permanently increase their own. It cannot be used on extremely powerful opponents. He contemplates what this means and whether he can absorb his opponent's stats. Yi Ha Han calls out to him and asks what he is doing. Sejong Ryu stands up and asserts that the fight is not over yet. He suggests striking him with a wooden sword while the three of them hold him down. Sehyun thinks to himself that it was a clean, powerful hit, yet his opponent seems totally fine. He moves to attack, grabs him by the neck, and remarks that it's not a bad plan. Sehyun Kim wonders how his opponent is this strong and realizes he must use the card before his opponent kills him. The quest window notifies him that he has used the Mana Drain card. He begins absorbing Sejong Ryu's mana power. He wonders what is happening on Earth, and he starts to feel weaker. The quest window notifies that the absorption of Sejong Ryu's stats has commenced. Sejong Ryu pushes him away. The quest window notifies that the Mana Drain has been suspended. He examines his hand and asks what he just did. Sehyun Kim also observes his hand and thinks he feels stronger now, wondering if he really absorbed his stats. He sees his stats details on the quest window and realizes his stats have increased. With this, he might have a chance against him. Sehyun Kim receives a call from Yun Jae Wo and he answers it. Yun Jo informs him to come back. He apologizes, asking what he is saying. Yun Jo informs him that the South is now complete. He inquires if this is the situation he spoke of. Sehyun Kim wonders what he's talking about. Sejong Kim acknowledges, stating he understands, and mentions he will head back right away. Then he puts his phone back in his pocket. 
he informs them that they are in luck, expressing his desire to continue playing with them, but their leader has other plans in mind. He apologizes for breaking up the party, but he is confident they will see each other again soon and hopes they will all have grown much stronger by then. He bids farewell to his friends, saying this was fun. After a while at West Gangbok High, the gang members stand in line as a student calls for their attention and salutes their leader and top dog. Sayong Kim walks among them. They congratulate Sahyon on uniting Southern Gangbok. One person remarks that not only does he talk the talk, but he also walks the walk. Another comment is that he looks particularly strong and imposing today, mentioning the rumor that after defeating Yi Han, he gave him a Brazilian wax as punishment. Sahyon Kim denies it, asking if they're kidding him and requesting them to stop spreading such rumors. Hyun Dong Lee congratulated him, expressing disbelief that he lived to see this day. Ji Hyuk Jang remarks that he has finally united the South. Sehyun Kim urges them to just get rid of these guys and inquires about the rest of the crew, mentioning they are waiting for him. Ji Hyuk Jang admits he can't quite believe it. Sehyun Kim echoes the sentiment. He notices Yi Ha Han and his gang and wonders if these men would join their crew. Sehyun Kim and Yi Ha Han spot each other. Sehyun Kim extends his hand and expresses his anticipation of working with him. Yi Ha Han recalls their previous fight, grasps his hand forcefully, and asserts that since he made him a promise, he intends to keep it, but warns him not to get cocky. He emphasizes that Suhyun better prove that he deserves to be their leader, otherwise he may become his enemy again one day. Suhyun Kim assures him that he will do his best. He then mentions that North Gangbok High is on its way, emphasizing the significance of this particular gang. They have all been wary of them, and he can't even begin to fathom how strong they will turn out to be. He mentions that unimaginably powerful foes await them, and he doubts he declared war against such an entity without a plan in place. He prompts Yi Ha Han to share his thoughts. Ji Hyuk Jang responds frankly, admitting there is no plan. So Hyun Kim asks for clarification on what he means. Ji Hyuk Jang acknowledges that he heard him, noting that Si Yong Ru alone was strong enough to overwhelm all of them. He admits he doesn't know why Yun Jo ordered Sejong Ryu to retreat, but he warns that if they attack again, West Gangbok High will undoubtedly fall. Yi Ha Han criticizes him, commenting sarcastically on his role as an advisor, but suggests there might be a solution. Ji Hyuk Jang proposes a way to prevent North Gangbok High from invading them. Yi Ha Han asks for details. Ji Hyuk Jang explains that they all know the history of Gangbok, expressing his trust in it. Siak King inquires about the history of Gangbuk and clarifies if he means the story of how Gangbuk, which was originally a united faction, first became divided as it is now. Ji Hyuk Jang confirms, stating that Gangbuk was originally whole. Once upon a time, a man named Johan Siang, otherwise known as God Dog, united Gangbuk. He explains that Johan Siang was soon betrayed by his subordinates, resulting in the disbandment of the God Dog crew, leaving Gangbuk without a master. Subsequently, a war broke out among those seeking to claim Gangbok for their own, leading to the survival of only North, South, West and East Gangbok Highs. Siak Kang inquires about his solution for stopping North Gangbok High. He responds that it's simple, they should ask that man for help. Siak Kang asks what he means by that man, and he clarifies that he means Johan Siang. He emphasizes that they must visit the legendary figure who united all of Gangbok, Johan Siang, also known as God Dog. Siak Kang raises concerns about whether that will work, noting that everyone knows he's a huge bad person. Ji Hyuk Jang acknowledges this but insists they must try. He believes that without Jo Han Siang's help, West Gangbok High would not have a future. He concludes that the plan is to find and meet with Jo Han Siang, and he will investigate where his usual haunts are. After a while, So Hyun Kim sits in his room and gazes at the Master Card. He contemplates how the Challenger card was telling the truth and reflects on gaining such an extraordinary ability. With a single use, his stats increased, not just temporarily, but permanently. He realizes that with this card, he can become infinitely more powerful. He can simply grab hold of anybody and absorb their stats, becoming Bagman Kim again. He plans to absorb the stats of North Gangbuk High's strongest fighters and maybe even those of extremely powerful opponents. His first priority is to focus on upgrading the Mana Drain card. As he lies on the bed, he wonders if that will be enough. 
Meanwhile, Kyuja Ya sits in his room and contemplates how pathetic his actions were during the war. Despite being ranked second, he ended up needing help. He recalls thoughts of Jihyun Lee and wishes to become a man capable of protecting her. At the same time, Sehyun Kim and Kyuja Ya begin exercising. They both realize that they must change, they can't keep relying on the cards forever. They understand it's for her sake, for their own sake, and they must begin training. Meanwhile, Sigong Ryu arrives at Yun Jo's place and announces his presence, having successfully completed his spy mission. Sigong Ryu of North Gang Bok Hai has returned in the end. Upon seeing both Daniel and Yun Jo there, he expresses surprise at encountering them both. Yun Jo instructs Daniel to pay Sigong Ryu his reward, to which Daniel acknowledges and agrees. Sijong Ryu remarks that some words of praise from Yunjo would also be appreciated, but before that, he has a question. Yunjo asks what it is. Sijong Ryu expresses his curiosity about why Yunjo ordered him to retreat, noting that he could have easily defeated South Gangbok High by himself. He inquires about the reason behind the recall order. Yunjo explains that it's simple. It would be pointless for Sijong Ryu to be the one to defeat the South, as it would jeopardize his long-awaited plan. Yunjo then calls Daniel, indicating that it's time. Daniel confirms that he has been waiting for the command. Yunjo asks about the preparations, to which Daniel responds that they are all set. Yunjo expresses satisfaction, stating that it's excellent, and declares, let's go. It's finally time to unite Gangbuk. Meanwhile, Jinti Hyo severely beats a student who falls to the ground and apologizes. Jinti Hyo demands him to repeat himself and asks what he said. The student explains that Sijong Ryu carried out his task perfectly as a spy, and the boss himself is giving him a hefty reward. He adds that it's just his guess, but the success of this mission will likely propel Sijong Ryu even higher in the ranks. Jin Tihyo curses frustrated that despite his hard work, Sijong Ryu is rising in the ranks once again and wonders why he can't even get a chance to prove himself. He thinks he wants to climb higher too, and he also wants to gain their leader's favor. A boy arrives, running, and announces that he has news, war has begun. Jin Tihio asks for clarification. He explained that the boss announced the unification of Gangbuk, and high-ranking members of North Gangbuk High were to prepare for war. Jin Tihio sees this as his chance. He inquires if, by war, the boss means they will be targeting Suhyun Kim, whom he's after. He confirms his belief. Jin Tihio concludes that if he were to bring Suhyun Kim to him first, maybe he could move up a rank. Meanwhile, Hyun Dong Lee, Ji Hyuk Jang, and Ji Hyun Lee walk at Han River Park. Ji Hyun Lee asks why he brought them all the way here. Ji Hyuk Jang explains that they are here to look for a man. North Gangbok High will be coming for them, and at present, they are nowhere near strong enough to stop them. He says they are here to ask that man for help, to defend themselves against North Gangbok High. He mentions the man who previously united Gangbok, Johan Seong of God Dog, and that's why they came all the way to Han River to seek his assistance. Ji Hyun Lee expresses concern about the number of people around and asks if it will be easy to find him. Ji Hyuk Jang reassures her, stating that it will be easy. He loves dogs, and he receives a tip that he comes here around the same time every day to walk his dogs. She questions how he, as someone who united Gangbuck, can be walking around a park every day, completely defenseless, considering he must have many enemies. Ji Hyuk Jang explains that the reason is simple. She asks what it is. He responds that it doesn't matter who tries to attack him. He knows he'll win. He notices Johan Seong sitting at the desk with his dogs, bows down in front of him, and greets him, expressing his honor at making his acquaintance. Johan Seong inquires about his identity. He asks if he is Johan Seong, and if not, informs him that they have heard a lot about him. Ji Hyun Lee sees him and wonders how someone like him could manage to unite Gangbuk. She questions how he managed to achieve such a feat in a single day and states that they have a favor to ask. Johan Seong dismisses them, expressing disinterest in uniting Gangbuk or anything similar. Ji Hyuk Jang attempts to say something, but Johan Seong interrupts, addressing him as four eyes and warning him to listen carefully. Ji Hyun Lee feels overwhelmed by his aura, finding it hard to even breathe in his presence. Her instincts tell her that this man is capable of stopping even North Gangbok High, but unfortunately, he has no reason to help them. Hyun Dong Lee questions why they bothered coming there if all they were going to do was stutter. Ji Hyuk Jang explains that it's his aura, he can't even get a word in edgewise. 
A first-year student arrives, calling for the advisor and stating that they have finally found him. Jihyun Lee asks what the matter is. He explains that it's an emergency. North Gang Bak Hai is attacking them. He elaborates that Jin Ti Hyo, ranked 11th in North Gang Bak Hai, has invaded the south with his troops in tow. He has divided his forces in half, and they are attacking from two different directions. The momentum of their attack is tremendous, and several areas have already fallen. He reports that Yi Ha Han and Siak Kang are fighting back, but there are too many of them, and things are not looking good. He asks what they should do. Ji Hyuk Jang responds, saying they need to move quickly, they need to hurry. Jin Siak Gu arrives with his gang and commands them to stop right there. He expresses surprise that North Gang Bak Hai would show up there. Jin Siak Gu asks what this place is and mentions that it's where their precious advisor is hiding. Ji Hyuk Jang didn't expect North Gang Bak Hai to show up so soon, let alone in an ambush while their leader was away. He considers it terrible luck. A student identifies Ji Hyuk Jang as the South's advisor. Jin Siak Gu remarks that he's even uglier than the rumors said. Hyun Dong Lee tells Ji Hyuk Jang to go, as they will hold them off. Ji Hyun Lee insists that as the advisor, he must survive to command their forces. For now, he needs to run and come up with a plan for their next move. She acknowledges that they are facing North Gang Bak Hai and realizes they have no other choice but to protect their advisor. Jin Siak Gu moves to attack them with his gang. She realizes that they don't know how strong they will be, but they have no other option but to protect their advisor. She moves to attack him. Jin Siak Gu stops his gang and tells them to wait, wondering why he looks so scared. Johan Siong arrives, shocking everyone. He calls Ji Hyuk Jang four eyes and says he will help him out just this once. The scene shifts to a flashback, Johan Seong walks on the road with his dogs and Haru Seong approaches him, saying excuse him. He stops and turns back to see her. She exhales heavily and asks if he remembers her. The scene shifts back to the present. Jin Seok Gu asks why Johan Seong is on South Gangbak Hai's side. Johan Seong tells them to get out of there and asks if they don't want him to unite Gangbak again. The quest window notifies that it's unmeasurable. The scene shifts to the flashback. Haru Siang pats the dog's head and expresses relief, stating that she didn't think he'd remember her. Honestly, she is surprised that he does. A dog named Eden licks her face repeatedly. He tells Eden to stop. She explains that they are related, but it's not like they were ever particularly close. They only saw each other on holidays. He tells Eden once again to stop. She continues, saying that's why she was even more surprised by all this and how sweet and kind he was back then. She adds that he is the last person she expected to become God Dog. She clarifies that she is not saying he is a bad person. It's just that he is so different from how he used to be. He interrupts, telling her to shut up and get to the point. She returns the little dog to him and says, okay, please help West Gang Bak Hai. She explains that they are in danger. North Gang Bak Hai is about to invade them, and she can't bear to see people who are important to her get hurt. She begs him to help West Gang Bak Hai this one time. He agrees, saying fine. She suggests he might not understand what she's saying and asks if he will really help. He takes back his other dog and confirms, yeah, since he is indebted to her parents. She inquires about her parents. He tells her that if she wants to know, she should ask them herself. He adds that he's only helping her this once, afterward, she is on her own. He advises her that if she and her friends aren't strong enough to handle that, she shouldn't be a part of the crew. The scene shifts back to the present. Johan Siang hits Jin Siak Gu of North Gang Bak Hai and knocks him out. The other guys also move to attack him. A man comments that he might be the great Johan Siang, but he's only one guy, and they should show him how strong North Gang Bak Hai has become. Johan Siang starts hitting them one by one. Ji Hyuk Jang watches him and thinks that at first he didn't think the rumors were true, but they are, and this guy is the real deal. Siak Jin Jang, ranked 21st in North Gang Bak Hai, arrives and tells them to get out of his way, asserting that none of them are capable of taking Johan Siang on, and the punks will need years of training before they ever have a hope of holding their own against him. He realizes that Johan Siang really did unite Gang Bak in a single day. Yi Ha Han attacks him and knocks him out. They all kneel down and say they surrender. Ji Hyuk Jang exclaims that it's incredible, such raw strength, and asks what they are waiting for. He urges them not to stop there and to unite Gangbok at once. Johan Siang warns them not to even try it. 
he apologizes. After a while, Daniel stands near his car and talks on the phone while a boy approaches him, calling his name and informing him that they have a big problem. Daniel asks what's going on. The boy explains that Johan Seong has appeared and Jin Tihio, their 11th ranked fighter, attacked the South. Johan Seong came to the South's aid and while he didn't engage in direct combat with Jin Tihio, he decimated the lower ranked members who attacked first. The boy continues, stating that with the momentum gained, the South began to fight back and reclaimed all the territory that West Gangbok Hai had taken from them. He emphasizes that they are back to square one and that Daniel needs to come up with a new plan urgently. Daniel asks for his orders. As expected, Daniel remarks that Johan Seong made his move and instructs the boy to tell him how they should proceed. Meanwhile, Yun Jo sits in the car, contemplating what he is looking at. Yun Jo remarks that such cheap tricks only delay the inevitable. He then asks if he is talking about Johan Seong and Sahyon Kim. Yun Jo states that he could not care less about either of them, mentioning there's been a change of plans, and instructs him to stand by for now. Daniel acknowledges, saying, understood. The boy reports that someone from West Gangbok High is here. Daniel asks who it is. He turns back and identifies the person as Ji Hyok Jang of West Gangbok High. Ji Hyok Jang arrives and greets them, introducing himself as the advisor of West Gangbok High. The scene shifts to a flashback. Siak Kang asks if they need to call a truce. Ji Hyok Jang confirms, stating that's right. Thanks to Johan Seong, their first strike failed, but he will not help them out again. If North Gangbok were to attack them a second time, they would have no hope of defending themselves. He explains that the two of them know as well as he does of the wide gap in fighting prowess between them and North Gangbok High. Siak Kang acknowledges this and asks if North Gangbok will agree to a truce. Ji Hyuk Jang responds that it would make sense for them to do so if they were equally as powerful as them, but otherwise they have nothing to gain from a truce. Yi Ha Han suggests they can use Johan Seong and mentions that Johan Seong only agreed to help them out once, but North Gangbok High does not know that. Ji Hyuk Jang agrees, thinking indeed. He explains that if they make North Gangbok High believe Johan Seong is completely on their side, it will get them thinking. To fight them, North Gangbok Hai would also have to go through Johan Seong. Ultimately, they will have no choice but to agree to a truce. He elaborates that they will use Johan Seong as a means of striking up a truce. He thinks to himself that he'd expect nothing less from the strategist of East Gangbok Hai. He asks the advisor what they are calling a truce for, by the way, and mentions that it won't change anything. Ji Hyok Jang explains that it must be done through training. He inquires about the training. Ji Hyuk Jang explains that they, the South, are still far too weak to go up against the North, and they need the truce to buy some time so that they can become stronger. He states that in those two months, all the high-ranking fighters in Southern Gangbok must become strong enough to face off against North Gangbok High. The scene shifts back to the present. Daniel asks if he wants to call a truce now that he has got Johan Seong on his side. Ji Hyuk Jang confirms, stating precisely. He mentions that they have seen for themselves how powerful Johan Seong truly is and that he will continue to lend them his strength. He emphasizes that not even North Gangbok Hai is capable of taking on Johan Seong. He expresses disappointment, mentioning that they already have a plan in place to defeat Johan Seong. He adds that North Gangbok Hai hid the full extent of their might in Seoul so that they could first formulate a plan to take Johan Seong out. He remarks that those plans are already complete, and yes, Johan Seong might have united Gangbuk once, but they have figured out the extent of his fighting prowess and how to beat him. Ji Hyuk Jang thinks to himself that he's not bluffing. Daniel informs Yun Jo that they got their advisor and asks if they should move to attack Johan Seong and West Gangbuk high right away. Yun Jo suggests calling a truce. Daniel questions this, asking if it is because of Johan Seong and mentioning that they are ready to take him. Yun Jo responds that it's not because of Johan Seong. Daniel wonders what's going on and what he is talking about. Yun Jo asks how annoyingly persistent he is and how long the truce he is proposing will last. Ji Hyuk Jang suggests that two months should be sufficient, he believes. The scene shifts to West Gangbok High. Ji Hyuk Jang stands near the window and remarks that two months have already passed. Time certainly flies indeed. Hyun Dong Lee stands beside him and comments that he has become so much more handsome in the past two months, adding that his new mullet is hideous. 
Ji Hyok Jang asks if he is trying to compliment or insult him, suggesting he pick a lane. He reflects that two months seem to have passed in the blink of an eye, and he looks forward to seeing how much their high-ranking crew members have changed. He adds that he is especially eager to find out how Sehyun and Kuja, who began their training early on, have changed. He asks if he has not seen them and mentions that he goes to their school. Hyun Dong Lee replies that he skips school a lot. At that moment, Kyuja Ya arrives and asks if the meeting has not started yet, mentioning that he arrived just in time. He asks who he is and states that unauthorized personnel are prohibited from entering. Kyuja Ya responds that he should be fine to enter since he is authorized. They are shocked to see Kyuja Ya's transformation. Ji Hyok Jang remarks that the voice is familiar, wondering if it could be Kyuja Ya. Kyuja Ya mentions that they are embarrassing him. A student expresses disbelief, asking how Kyuja Ya managed to lose so much weight in two months. Kyuja Ya credits his mother for helping him with his diet, to which someone asks if she is a miracle worker. Kyuja Ya dismisses the question and inquires about Suhyun's whereabouts. He was informed that Suhyun was on his way. Kyuja Ya expresses his anticipation to see him again, mentioning that he thinks Suhyun trained even harder than he did. The students see Kyuja Ya walking in the hallway and are shocked by his appearance. Kyuja Ya explains that he said he did not want to have to use others as a crutch anymore, so he warred with himself for the past two months, adding that the hearing gave him even more respect for Sohyun. Hyun Dong Lee asks if his eyes deceive him, expressing disbelief at what he is seeing. Ji Hyuk Jang comments on the drastic change that occurred in only two months and wonders what the two of them have done to themselves. Sohyun Kim says he does not feel like he has changed all that much. Ji Hyuk Jang insists that they most certainly have changed, appearing more mature and grown up, especially Kyu Ji Ya. He asked what kind of diet they were on. Kyu Ji Ya says he shudders to even recall it, but offers to share if they really want to know. Ji Hyuk Jang says in that case, never mind. He notices Haru Siang and Ha Jun Gu and remarks that the two of them have also had a glow up. He tells them to step aside, welcoming Hajun and Haru back. He expresses how great it is to see them after two months. He notices Yugi and Na and Ji Hyun and mentions that they are here too, both looking especially stunning today. Yi Ha Han arrives and tells them to move out of his way. So Hyun Kim greets Yi Ha Han, saying it's nice to see him. Ji Hyuk Jang warmly welcomes both of them. Yi Ha Han acknowledges him and admits he didn't recognize him at first. Ji Hyuk Jang expresses his happiness at seeing everyone again, noting how much stronger they have all become. He suggests cutting the touching reunion short and beginning the West Gangbuk High meeting. Su Hyun Kim reflects on how it's already been two months, realizing how quickly the days have flown by and how much has happened during that time. During the day, he trains rigorously at home, and at night, he disguises himself as Bagman Kim and uses the Mana Drain card in the north. As he battled countless foes as Bagman Kim, he learned something horrifying, the truth about the Mana Drain card. One day, he became curious about the limits of Mana Drain, so he tested how much of his opponent's stats he could steal. He saw how they were being drained not only of their stats but also of their very lives. Ji Hyuk Jang approaches So Hyun Kim and remarks that he startled him. After a while, they all sit on chairs. Ji Hyuk Jang asks what distracts him and says they are in the middle of a meeting. So Hyun Kim notices his hand and says sorry about that, go ahead and continue while thinking if it is really okay for him to keep using it. After a while, Jin Ti Hyo breaks a table at Hold'em Triple, which grabs everyone's attention. He says he could have caught So Hyun Kim and brought him to Yun Jo if it were not for that idiot Jo Han Seong, and he abuses Jo Han Seong. Yang Chiel Shin from the Gangbok Crossroads Syndicate tells him to pipe down reminding him he is not the only one here and that he is bothering the other customers. Jin Ti Hyo attacks him, smashes him on the floor, and punches him continuously, expressing his desire to impress their leader too. A black-haired boy arrives and announces that Yun Jo is present. Jin Ti Hyo turns back, grabs his shirt, and asks what was just said, questioning who is present. The boy confirms that Yun Jo is here to see him. Jin Ti Hyo kneels down in front of Yun Jo, stating his identity as Jin Ti Hyo, ranking 11th, expressing that it's truly an honor, and asking what business Yun Jo could possibly have with someone as lowly as him, who is not even in the top 10. Yun Jo asks why he did such a thing. Jin Ti Hyo says he is not sure what Yun Jo means and assumes he referred to when Yun Jo said his name. 
Yun Jo questions why he attacked Sehyun Kim two months ago. Jin Ti Hyo responds that he did it because he wanted to climb higher ranks. Yun Jo agrees and extends his hand, stating that if Jin Ti Hyo brings Sehyun Kim to him, he will raise his rank. Jin Ti Hyo holds Yun Jo's hand and pledges his loyalty, gratitude, and dedication to bringing Sehyun Kim to him. He notices Yun reaching his hand towards him. Seeing two guys standing aside, Jin Ti Hyo warns them that this is not a playground and advises them not to mess around on their turf, attacking them while questioning if they know who they are. Jin Ti Hyo's gang members observe him and express admiration. Others wonder what's happening. Yun Jo prepares to leave, remarking that they are just what he needs. Jin Ti Hyo wonders what Yun Jo is talking about. After a while, at the snack bar, a group of girls sits having food. Karen Beek arrives holding a plate, spots Sehyun Kim, and remarks that she was wondering who it was, confirming that it's Sehyun Kim. Sehyun Kim responds by saying that's cold, considering they haven't seen each other in two months, which she acknowledges. She asks so what? He reflects that he didn't expect her to be so cold towards him, but he can't really blame her, adding that he just thought he'd swing by. She simply replies that she figured. He reflects on how he pushed her away and asks how the snack bar is doing. She explained that, as he could see, the people he brought here handled the cooking while the two of them were in charge of the hall. Upon seeing Yi Han and Siak Kang, she inquires about the two of them, asking who the other person is. Siak Kang identifies the other person as Tidiak Baki. Yi Han jokingly asked her to wipe the drool off her chin. She clarifies that she's the one who hired Tidiak Baki, mentioning that he told her to come work here. He asks what she means. So ha Yang overhears them and accidentally drops the plate. She asks if he didn't hire So ha Yang. He denies ever doing anything like that. She grabs So ha Yang's hand, drags her over, and asks why she came here. So ha Yang responds that she likes Su Hyun Kim's hair. He thanks her. Yi ha Han then asks Su Hyun Kim if So ha Yang is his girlfriend. So Hyun Kim questions why he's asking. Yi ha Han clarifies that he's just saying she's pretty, speaking objectively. Just then, Sehyun Kim receives a call from Haru Seong and answers it, asking what's up. She inquires about what he's up to. He responds that he's at the snack bar. She informs him that there's someone she'd like him to meet before they confront North Gangbak Hai. He asks if it's someone she'd like him to meet, perhaps her parents, if they're finally making it official. She asks if he wants to come meet the former top dog of North Gangbak Hai. After a while, Sehyun Kim stands with Haru Seong outside a hospital and asks if this is where the former top dog of North Gangbak Hai is. She confirms it. He observes that this is a hospital. She suggests they go in. He asks what the former top dog was like. She explains that even though he was involved in Gangbak's turf war, he was still a good person. She mentions that he didn't pick on people weaker than him and always put his subordinates before himself. He remarks that it's impressive. She adds that because of his character, he was always surrounded by good people and had no shortage of followers. He comments that he sounds like a great guy and asks why he's in a hospital. She opens a door and indicates that it's his room, belonging to Sechen Kang, the former top dog of North Gang Bakai. He is shocked to see Sechen Kang lying in bed in bad shape. She explains that he was perfectly healthy but suddenly fell into a coma one day, and not even the doctors can figure out why. However, one thing is certain, the last thing he did before his coma was meet with Yun Zhou. He wonders what that means, questioning how meeting Yun Zhou could be related to his coma. He decides to use the peek at him card on him. The quest window notifies that he used the peek at his card and later notifies that the attempt failed because the effects of a master card rendered this subject's stats non-existent. He ponders what it means that Sechen Kang's stats are non-existent due to the effects of a master card, realizing that Sechen Kang ended up in a coma, not because of an accident, but because he fell victim to a master card. She asks what's wrong. He realizes he's not the only one receiving quests. She asks if he needs to use the restroom. He clarifies that it is not at the moment and comments that her bowels seem to have the worst timing. He thinks there's no way it could be true, and he can't believe it. He calls Ji Hyuk Jang. Ji Hyuk Jang asks what's the matter. He explained that he needed some information about Yun Jo's past, specifically what he used to be like at North Gangbak Hai and how he became its top dog. Ji Hyuk Jang assures him that he understands and will look into it right away, asking if they should meet at school to present his findings. 
He agrees, instructing him to come to the club room and saying he's counting on him. Meanwhile, Jinti Hyo gathers all his gang members and asks if they are ready. They respond affirmatively. He informs them that he trusts they have all heard the news. Yun Jo asked him to lead the offensive in the south, and he's also willing to supply as many troops as he needs. He asserts that, in other words, he is the supreme commander of the southern conquest. Yun Hyong Jai expresses his confusion, stating that he doesn't understand any of this. He reflects on the idea that Yun would trust someone like Jin Ti Hyo with such an important mission, suggesting that Jin Ti Hyo is best suited to serve as cannon fodder. Jin Ti Hyo asks what Yun Hyong Jai just said and suggests they at least hear him out. Yun Hyong Jai inquires about the other's opinions. Ti Hyong Lim responds that they can't exactly go against Yun's orders. Yun Hyong Jai clarifies that he was not planning to do so. He simply does not understand their leader's rationale. Jin Ti Hyo counters by saying that if the supposed idiot fails, they will get their chance to shine, so all in all, this is not such a bad situation to be in. Myun Du interjects, saying they don't care either way, Yun Ti Hyo, or whatever his name is, can be the supreme commander all he wants if it means they stand to make a profit. He addresses him as the supreme commander and warns him not to forget that his people won't lift a finger to help him unless he can offer them some serious money. Jin Ti Hyo verbally abuses him, attacks him and questions if any of them failed to listen to what Yun said. Yun Hyong Jai notes that his whole demeanor has changed. Jin Ti Hyo continues, criticizing him for blathering on about not understanding Yun's decision and biding his time for when he fails. He asks how dare he question their leader's judgment and challenges him, offering to show him why he is ranked the highest out of all of them. Ti Hyong Lim wonders if that idiot was always that strong. Yun Hyong Jai stands up and says that while he'd love nothing more than to accept the challenge, doing so would be disobeying Yun's orders. He asks what the plan is. He responds that the plan is to take Se Hyun Kim down. Yun Hyong Jai asserts that they do not need a plan to defeat a small fry like him. Jin Ti Hyo declares that they will attack him in one fell swoop. No matter how much stronger the South might have gotten, they are hopelessly outnumbered. He instructs each of them to get ready to contribute their troops, considering it an investment. He reassures them not to worry, as they will all receive their share of the reward Yun has promised him. He adds that dealing with just Se Hyun Kim will be easy. Meanwhile, in Club Room 1 at West Gangbok High, Ji Hyok Jang greets Se Hyun Kim, saying good evening. Se Hyun Kim apologizes for asking him to meet so late. Ji Hyok Jang responds that it's no trouble. Se Hyun Kim inquired if he was able to find the information he asked for. Ji Hyok Jang confirms that he did. He found out what Yun Jo of North Gangbok High was like before he became the top dog, as well as a past picture of him, and sent it all to his phone. He sits on the chair and expresses thanks, then suggests they take a look. He is shocked to see Yun Jo's picture on the phone and wonders if this is really Yun Jo. He remarks that he could not be any more different. Ji Hyok Jang says he was surprised too, and at first, he did not even think it was actually a picture of him. He asks what else he has learned about him. Ji Hyok Jang mentions that Yun Jo is said to have excelled in multiple areas, he received good grades and had lots of friends. Additionally, he loved novels and always had his nose in a book. He explains that Yun Jo was just an average student who never got involved in any fights. So Hyun Kim asks what happened, questioning how someone like him ended up becoming the top dog of North Gangbuk High. Ji Hyuk Jang asks if he knows that it did not even take a month for Yun Jo to unite North Gangbuk High. He emphasizes that no matter how hard one trains, it's impossible to become the top dog of North Gangbuk High in the span of one month. At that moment, Yiha Han arrives and agrees, stating that an average person can't become a skilled fighter after only a month of training. Not only that, but North Gangbuk High had a fairly powerful lineup of fighters back then, and Yun Jo basically appeared out of nowhere to become the leader of North Gangbuk High. Siok Kang adds that he's a monster who managed to unite all of Northern Gangbuk in just a month. Yiha Hajun, and he all agree that it's an impossible feat. Yiha Han suggests there's a secret to his success, expressing certainty about it, and asks if all of this doesn't seem rather strange. He acknowledges that it's suspiciously similar to the path he has taken. Su Hyun Kim thinks Yun Jo is really getting cards. Just then, a boy arrives and reports that there's trouble. He inquires about the trouble. The boy explains that it seems North Gangbok High is making their move. Yiha Han asks how so. 
The boy responds that Yun Zhou appears to have appointed Jin Tihio as his supreme commander. Yi Ha Han remarks that's strange. Ji Hyuk Jang agrees, saying indeed. He comments that he is not underestimating Jin Tihio's fighting skills by any means, but questions why Yun Zhou would bother doing that when he could easily crush them by leading the charge himself. Su Hyun thinks it could be a quest. Ji Hyuk Jang suggests first shoring up their defenses, as this could all be a trap set by Yun Zhou. So Hyun Kim asks if this means Jin Tihio will strike them soon. He responds most likely. So Hyun Kim suggests they strike first then. Ji Hyuk Jang asks what would happen if Yun Zhou showed up. He reassures him that Yun Zhou won't come for them. Ji Hyuk Jang asks what he means. He suggests first confirming whether that's really the case. Meanwhile, Bi Gi Hong, ranked 15th at North Gangbok High, is playing when a boy approaches him and informs him of an emergency. Bi Gi Hong asks what it is. The boy explains that West Gangbok High is attacking them. Bi Gi Hong expresses disbelief, asking what he is saying. The boy elaborates, stating that the high-ranking members of West Gangbok High beat them to the punch by gathering their troops and launching multiple offensives at once, catching them off guard. On the other side, Haru Xiong and Ji Hyun Lee knock out many people. Ji Hyun Lee comments on the sudden order for an all-out attack, questioning what Sa Hyun Kim is thinking. Haru Xiong adds that she is wondering the same thing. If this triggers Yun Zhou into action, they will be in real trouble. She also asks what Sa Hyun is thinking on Earth. Meanwhile, Sa Hyun Kim stands near Sechen Kang in the hospital. He looks up and declares to Yun Zhou that he is watching him, even if Yun Zhou is not aware of it. He explains that at first, he couldn't believe he was in the exact same situation as him. Yun Zhou hears him despite standing in his place. So Hyun Kim continues, stating that now he is sure of it, the pieces of the puzzle are finally falling into place, and he is a quest player too. Yun Zhou observes him with the help of a card. So Hyun Kim mentions that Yun Zhou started before he did, so his goal is to unite Gangbok as well. If that's the case, he questions why Yun Zhou is taking his sweet time to accomplish it. He speculates that if uniting Gangbuk truly was his objective, Yun Zhou could have chosen to face him himself instead of sending Jin Tihio to do his dirty work. He suggests that Yun Zhou must have more attack cards than he does and lots of ways to take him down and asks why Yun Zhou doesn't hazard a guess as to the reason his hands are tied. So Hyun Kim concludes by saying he received a quest that forbids Yun Zhou from attacking him directly if Yun Zhou did not. He asserts that, in that case right now, this is his playground. He expresses that he has some idea of what Yun Zhou must have gone through. Yun Zhou was probably having just as tough a time as he was. Therefore, Yun Zhou received a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity in the form of these quests. However, he asserts that Yun Zhou should not have done this. Being powerful does not give him the right to hurt someone else the way he has. He states that no matter what may have happened between him and Sechen Kang, Yun Zhou really crossed a line here. Now he understands the reason Yun Zhou became a quest player. He concludes that it was to stop him. He declares fine, let's do this until only one of them is left standing. After a while, Su Hyun Kim sits with Alyssa Copy Cloud and she asks what he is saying. She hits him with a pillow and asks if Yun Zhou is a quest player as well and if he's behind what happened to Sechen Kang. She asks if he is sure he was not mistaken and just spouting a bunch of nonsense into the ether. He affirms that he is sure, given all the circumstantial evidence. He thinks Yun Zhou was planning to wait until he became sufficiently powerful to use the mana drain to absorb his stats. She expresses disbelief, saying no way. He explains that worries him. She asks what he means. He explains that Yun Zhou started doing quests earlier than he did, which means he has many more cards in his possession than he does. Not only that, but Yun Zhou is a ruthless, unscrupulous individual who did not hesitate to put Sechen Kang, the former top dog of North Gangbok High, in a coma. He admits he is not sure whether he is capable of defeating someone as monstrous as him. She hugs him from behind and assures him that he has her support. It doesn't matter how strong he is, she will protect him no matter what. She declares that together, they will have Yun Zhou drawn and quartered, then leave the remains of his carcass displayed at the gate of West Gangbok High for all to see. He asks where the hell she learned to say something like that. He then expresses his gratitude, acknowledging that he was being silly. He vows to stay strong and asserts that he is going to make sure no one else ends up like Sechen Kang. After a while, Ji Hyuk Jang stands with Yi Ha Han and begins the briefing as per his orders. 
he reports that their crew attacked North Gangbok High, handily defeating their fighters ranked 26th, 27th, and 28th and claiming the territory each was overseeing. He confirms that he was correct in his assessment. He notes that even though their people were being attacked, Yunjo stayed put. Sohyun Kim comments that he will continue to do so. Yi Ha Han asks what he means. Sohyun Kim explains that he can't quite explain, but that's the state Yunjo is currently in. He is sure that will change one day, but for now, Yunjo's hands are tied. Ji Hyuk Jang asks how. Sohyun Kim suggests they need to use this window to their advantage. Yi Ha Han asks about the window. So Hyun Kim explains that Yun Jo will eventually make a move himself, so they need to gain as much as they possibly can before that happens. Ji Hyuk Jang interjects, saying it's not that simple. Yi Ha Han asks why not. Ji Hyuk Jang explains that it's because of the Central Five. So Hyun Kim asks about the Central Five. Ji Hyuk Jang explains that the Central Five refers to five high-ranking members of the North Gangbuk crew, including Jin Ti Hyo. In order of rank, they are Jin Ti Hyo, Yun Hyung Jai, Ti Hyung Lim, Min Udu, and Bi Ki Hong. He clarifies that they are called the Central Five because they guard the center of Northern Gangbok territory, and their combat skills are on par with that of Sejong Ryu. Each of the Central Five possesses its own territory and troops, and only by defeating them will they get the chance to fight Yun Zhou. He emphasizes that if Yun Zhou is currently not in a position to act, the first thing they need to do is subdue the Central Five. So Hyun Kim asks if they have a plan for taking them down. Ji Hyuk Jang replies that they should allow him to present his plan first. They will divide Southern Gangbuk into five separate forces. So Hyun Kim asks about dividing themselves into five. Ji Hyuk Jang explains that they will split their troops into five different divisions, each facing one of the Central Five. Since the Central Five are skilled fighters, if they teamed up, things could get a lot more dangerous for them. This plan would keep the five separated. So Hyun Kim observes that it's a plan to prevent the five from working together. Ji Hyuk Jang confirms and asks Yi Ha Han what he thinks about the plan. Yi Ha Han disagrees, suggesting they should combine their forces and attack Jin Ti Hyo. So Hyun Kim inquires about Jin Ti Hyo, questioning if he is the supreme commander of the Central Five. Yi Ha Han explains that he mentioned Yun Jo, for whatever reason, can't attack them directly right now so they shouldn't waste any time and should strike Jin Ti Hyo with everything they have got. He adds that once they defeat the Supreme Commander of the Central Five, the remaining four will weaken and collapse. So Hyun Kim acknowledges that the only drawback is that the other four could team up and attack them. He agrees but reiterates that they need to gain as much as they can while Yun Jo is laying low. So Hyun Kim agrees with that point as well. He then prompts them to choose. The quest window notifies that a new main quest is available. The first option is to follow Ji Hyuk Jang's plan, and the second is to follow Yi Ha Han's plan. The reward for either choice is none, and the next quest will vary depending on whose plan they choose to follow. Ji Hyuk Jang asks how they plan to go after the Central Five. So Hyun Kim considers that with Yi Ha's plan, they could reap the gains very quickly, but what if they end up having to battle the remaining four at the same time? That's too risky. He suggests they go with Ji Hyuk Jang's plan. They will divide their forces to take out the other four before striking Jin Ti Hyo. The quest window notifies that he chose Ji Hyuk Jang, and his choice will determine the next quest. He adds that while they need to make gains quickly, there's no need to rush things and suggests they adjourn. A man wearing a white shirt arrives, calling out to Su Hyun and informing him that they are under attack from North Gangbok High. Ji Hyuk Jang asks in surprise, North Gangbok High? Who is at their helm? He responds it's Jiang Yu Song, ranked 19th in North Gangbok High. Meanwhile, Jiang Yu Song expresses his disbelief, questioning what the hell is. He admits he was surprised to hear that North Gangbok was invading them, only to find out it's just some weakling ranked 19th. Hak Jin Ju and Dong Yu Wang arrive. Jiang Yu Song questions if they truly believe they are capable of retaking this territory all by themselves. He remarks that people must have seriously underestimated West Gangbok High. Hak Jin Ju demands an answer from them. Meanwhile, So Hyun Kim inquires about who's ranked 19th in North Gangbok High and why there's such surprise regarding Jiang Yu Song. Ji Hyuk Jang clarifies that hearing Jiang Yu Song's name isn't what surprised him. So Hyun Kim asks what he means, and Yi Ha Han explains that what surprised him was that members of North Gangbok High's crew, who are ranked higher than 20th, are beginning to make their move. So Hyun Kim asks if those ranked higher than 20th are special. 
Yi Ha Han confirms, stating that in North Gangbok High, fighters rank 19th and above are considered the real deal. It signifies that their war with North Gangbok High has begun in earnest. So Hyun Kim asks how strong Jiang Yu Song is. Yi Ha Han simplifies the explanation, asking if he remembers Chen Hak Yang, the guy ranked 20th. So Hyun Kim affirms, and Yi Ha Han emphasizes that even if there were 10 Chen Hak Yangs, they wouldn't be able to defeat Jiang Yu Song. Meanwhile, Jiang Yu Song knocks out Hak Jin Ju and Dong Yu Wang, leaving their gang members shocked to see this. A man with a white shirt remarks, this can't be happening, he managed to beat two of their highest ranking fighters so easily. Another person adds, there's nothing they can do. The boy with the red tie comments they can't win against a beast like him. They'll lose the territory they just gained. Yi Ha Han reassures them, saying he didn't think Jiang Yu Song would show up, but they shouldn't worry as he sent someone just in case. Chang Gong Yom grabs Jiang Yu Song's shirt and moves to hit him. However, before his fist could strike, he managed to shift his center of gravity, grabbed Chang Gong Yom's neck, and hit him hard using Muay Thai techniques. Everyone is shocked to see this. Chang Gong Yom thinks he has let his guard down, never expecting to be defeated so easily. Jiang Yu Song attempts to kick him, but Qiu Jiaya blocks his kick. Chang Gong Yom asks who he is. Qiu Jiaya on the call with Seo Hyun Kim says he just arrived. Seo Hyun Kim acknowledges and leaves it to him. Qiu Jiaya agrees and says he'll call back later. He remarks on the irony of their situation, once enemies but now allies. Chang Gong Yom is surprised to see him. Qiu Jiaya thanks him for holding down the fort and assures him he'll take care of the rest. Jiang Yu Song demands to know who Qiu Jiaya is. Qiu Jiaya responds, asking who he is. He declares himself as the man who will never lose again. Meanwhile, Jin Ti Hyo asks Ti Hyong Lim if he sent Jiang Yu Song. Ti Hyong Lim confirms, stating he wants to assess the strength of West Gangbok High precisely. Jiang Yu Song is ranked 19th, so he should be more than capable of the task. Jin Ti Hyo inquires if he's sure they don't need to send anyone else. Ti Hyong Lim retorts, asking if he has forgotten who Jiang Yu Song is. He emphasizes that Jiang Yu Song was the winner of the National Youth Muay Thai Tournament and at one point was training to join the National Muay Thai team. While he might only hold the 19th rank in North Gangbok High in Southern Gangbok, he could have easily risen to the top. Ti Hyong Lim asserts that he has provided all the intel on Southern Gangbok's fighters, ensuring they are prepared for whoever shows up. He questions if Qiu Jiaya is ranked second in West Gangbok High and dismisses him, stating that the rumors about him are greatly exaggerated. In reality, he's quite weak. He seizes Qiu Jiaya's head and strikes him with his knees, rendering him unconscious. Members of West Gangbok High are shocked by what they witness. One of them remarks in disbelief, stating that they didn't anticipate Jiang Yu Song's strength, as Qiu Jiaya seems unable to retaliate at all. On the other hand, members of North Gangbuk High express delight at the scene. One of them comments on how someone like Qiu Jiaya ranked second in West Gangbuk High could boast so much but fail to back it up. Another member points out that something seems amiss, prompting the others to observe Jiang Yu Song noticing his excessive sweating. They are taken aback by his condition. One suggests he might have contracted COVID. Despite Jiang Yu Song's attempts to attack, Qiu Jiaya manages to block every strike. Jiang Yu Song reflects on Qiu Jiaya's seemingly inhuman endurance, questioning the accuracy of the information he received, which portrayed him as weak. Finally, Qiu Jiaya delivers a hard blow to his face. He wonders why his blow is so remarkably powerful. This can't be right. The intel claimed he was only ranked second because he was Su Hyun Kim's friend and that his fighting skills were lacking, yet he appears entirely different from what the intel described. He attempts to kick Qiu Jiaya, but Qiu Jiaya bends down to avoid the attack. Observing his opponent's moves, Qiu Jiaya ponders whether change is possible for someone like him. He recalls his intense training sessions, where he would run while carrying bricks in his backpack until he suddenly fell down, only to get back up, reload the bricks, and continue running. Determined to overcome his past self, he launches an attack against Jiang Yu Song, resolved not to lose to anyone. Jiang Yu Song notes that Qiu Jiaya's systema is quicker than he expected, so he decides to focus on blocking his attacks for the time being and wait for an opening. Suddenly, the quest window notifies a critical hit from Yamazaki-style Kyokushin Karate. Qiu Jiaya delivers a powerful punch to Jiang Yu Song's face. Astounded by the destructive force of the blow, he recalls his rigorous practice regimen, 
particularly his punches against a tree. Once more, he delivers a punch, and Jiang Yu Song attempts to block it with his arm. The quest window notifies of a critical hit. Reflecting on his persistent practice of hitting a tree, he breaks through Jiang Yu Song's defense. Continuing his assault, he fractures Jiang Yu Song's arm bones and then lands a punch on his face, knocking him out. The quest window displays an attack card, Gukja Yang Exclusive, which grants the ability to use Yamazaki style Kyokushin Karate. It inflicts a critical hit on an opponent whose endurance stat is lower than the user's. Everyone is shocked to witness this. Cheng Gong Yom expresses disbelief that Jiang Yu is down. A boy reacts in disbelief, asking if Jiang Yu is okay. Dong Yu Wang wonders what happened to him over the past two months and expresses gratitude. Hak Jin Ju acknowledges that he truly saved them. He remarks on how cool he is. Chen Gong Yom calls out to him, extending his hand forward, and compliments him on the excellent fight. Qiu Ye grasps his hand and expresses gratitude for holding down the fort before his arrival. Chen Gong Yom acknowledges that Qiu Ye has become much stronger in the past two months, which makes his own efforts seem inadequate. He affirms that if Qiu Ye can achieve such growth, so can he. Chen Gong Yom remarks that defeating Jiang Yu Song will lower North Gangbuk Hai's morale and enhance his own reputation simultaneously. He thanks Qiu Ye and contacts Su Hyun Kim. He informs Su Hyun Kim that he has defeated Jiang Yu Song. Su Hyun Kim responds that there's no need to convey it with such solemnity, as he was observing the entire time. Su Hyun Kim commends him, stating that they are just getting started. Qiu Ye inquires about whom he should fight next. So Hyun Kim suggests that he can take a break for now, as there are more people they can rely on. Meanwhile, Minu Du inquires if Jiang Yu Song indeed lost to Qiu Jia. The black-haired boy confirms this, stating that it seems to be the case. Minu would express disbelief and questions if he heard correctly, wondering if it was So Hyun Kim who defeated Jiang Yu. The black-haired boy asserts that he is certain it was Qiu Jia. Jiang Yu attempted to block Qiu Jiaya's punches, but ultimately succumbed when he received a blow that shattered the bones in both his arms. Minu Du remarks that the situation sounds absurd and seeks Hyoki B's opinion on what they should do. Hyoki B suggests that they should stand by for now. As he moves toward the door, Siak Kang kicks it from the other side and throws him out. Hyoki B recognizes Siak Kang and questions if he is ambushing them alone. On the other hand, Minho Jo is seated on a chair and observes a group of people in front of him. He remarks that while Jiang Yu Song might have lost, they really shouldn't underestimate them. He questions if they truly believe he is capable of taking all of them on. At the same time, a group of students from West Gangbuk High confront Chan Ho Beek. He inquires if Se Hyun Kim sent him here, then uses the momentum to attack more of them. He questions if they take them for a bunch of weaklings, Siok Kang, Yi Ha Han, and Ha Jun Gu. Meanwhile, Ji Hyok Jang states that this is only the beginning. As he mentioned, Yun Jo himself won't act, so they need to gain as much territory as possible before he does. So Hyun Kim agrees, expressing his trust in his crew. The quest window notifies that a new main quest is available, which is to gain as much territory as possible before Yun Jo makes his move 3 unknown with a reward of 1 bronze card. The more territory they gain, the greater the reward. It notifies the start of the main quest. Kyoki B asks who they have here, noting if he were still alive, he thought he would have died of embarrassment. He mentions that the top dog of South Gangbok High losing is one thing, but to think he'd go crawling to Sehyun Kim. He questions if Siok Kang is now ranked 10th in West Gangbok High, if he is really the Siok Kang he once knew, and if he has any pride left. Siok Kang moves to attack him, grabs his legs and thinks to himself, what the hell, he is heavy. Hyoki B questions if he still looks like the Hyoki B he used to know. He grabs his face, stating that things have changed. He is now Hyoki B of North Gangbuk High. He throws Siok Kang toward the wall, calling him useless, and asks if he needs to kick this idiot himself. His gang member steps forward, apologizing and stating they will handle this. Hyoki B agrees, urging them to do it mentioning that they must be out of their minds, and stating that the minute he decided to invade their turf alone, he was done for. On the other side, Yi Ha Han is attacking people from North Gangbok High. Min Ho Jo warns to watch out for his feet and stay close to him. He mentions that Taekwondo is useless at close range, finding it strange, and asks why Yi Ha Han isn't posing more of a challenge. He doesn't seem to have anything up his sleeve either, 
He adds that Yi Han might have gotten stronger over the past two months, but it's still just Taekwondo. Yi Han responds that he doesn't particularly enjoy being surrounded by a bunch of men. He questions if Min Hojo is still joking around and challenges them to see how long they can keep their obnoxious grins on their faces as well as him and his two buddies. At that time, Ha Jun Gu is also fighting with people from North Gangbok High who are attacking him with baseball bats. Chan Ho Beek drinks wine and comments that the opponent may be Ha Jun Gu, but he's ultimately just a boxer and dealing with a boxer is easy. He explains that one simply needs to stay out of reach, expressing his regret, and mentions that he should have gone after someone else. He adds that his boys have beaten dozens of boxers, which means their specialty is taking down boxers, and now let's see if Ha Jun Gu can survive this fight. Meanwhile, Ji Hyuk Jang expresses his concern. Se Hyun Kim inquires about what is troubling him. Ji Hyuk Jang mentions their fighters, acknowledging that they volunteered to go, but he regrets not providing them with additional troops. So Hyun Kim asks if they should have done so. Ji Hyuk Jang explains that the opponents they're facing are quite formidable. He mentions Chan Ho Bik, Min Ho Jo, and Hyo Ki Bi, noting that while they may not be as strong as the Central Five, they are not weak by any means. With some effort, they could probably even become part of the Central Five, suggesting they should have formulated a plan of attack. He concludes that it was too reckless to send them in without reinforcements. Even though those three have grown stronger over the past two months, they were still sent into enemy territory alone. Sehyun Kim responds that he would have been worried two months ago, but he believes in the three of them, Ha Jun Gu, Siak Kang, and Yi Ha Han. He asserts that they are the central three of West Gangbuk High. He adds that if those three can't accomplish this, there will be no future for West Gangbuk High. Meanwhile, Siak Kang calls Hyo Ki Bi a fat idiot, refuting the idea that he went crawling to Se Hyun Kim. He clarifies that he is simply lending his strength for the time being for the sake of South Gangbok High's revival. He moves to attack Hyo Ki Bi, who questions him about an infinite suplex and doubts his ability to lift him. Siak Kang asserts that would have been true two months ago and proceeds to lift Hyo Ki Bi. Shocked, Hyo Ki Bi realizes he's being lifted off the ground. He reflects on his past thoughts, realizing he had two months to consider this. The scene shifts to a flashback. Siok Kang stands near a basketball net and considers how he could become stronger. He acknowledges that he is not particularly intelligent and lacks a teacher to guide him. Nonetheless, he resolves to dive in headfirst and extract whatever he can to improve himself. The scene shifts to the present. Hyoki B berates him, likening lifting him to pulling a telephone pole out of the ground. He reflects that he spent the past two months extracting whatever he could find from the ground to improve himself. He smashes him onto the floor, contemplating the infinite suplex. On the other side, Yi Ha Han strikes Min Ho Jo's face and continues punching him repeatedly. He questions whether Min Ho Jo thought he was going to overpower him that day. Yi Ha Han inquires about Min Ho Jo's expectations. Min Ho Jo responds that he has not relied solely on Taekwondo for his training over the past two months. He confesses that he has been working especially hard because he now has someone he wants to kill, thinking about Sejong Ryu. He waits eagerly, thinking about how he will best Sejong Ryu. Meanwhile, Sejong Ryu lies on a bed with a girl, yawning and wonders if someone is talking about him. Currently, Ha Jun Gu punches Chan Ho Beek and hurls him aside. He kneels down and queries what caused Chan Ho Beek to become so formidable and who he desires to vanquish. Ha Jun Gu reminisces about his confrontation with Daniel, recalling when he flung him against the wall. He lights up a cigarette and mentions Daniel. Sometime later, a boy approaches Sa Hyun Kim and delivers good news. Ji Hyok Jang inquires about the good news. The boy reports that they have emerged victorious. Chan Ho Bik, Min Ho Jo, and Hyo Ki Bi were defeated, while Siak Kang, Ha Jun Gu, and Yi Ha Han emerge triumphant and are currently on their way back. Additionally, they managed to secure some territory from North Gangbok High. As a result, the morale of West Gangbok High is soaring. Ji Hyuk Jang asserts that he had confidence they would emerge victorious. Sa Hyun Kim expresses his belief in their abilities and ponders what Yun Jo will do next. Meanwhile, the head of the Gangbok Crossroads Syndicate, Guan Xiao Oh, arrives at Yun Jo's location and confronts him, accusing him of messing with their guys and verbally abusing him. Yun Jo remains silent, eliciting frustration from Guan Xiao Oh, who insists on talking to him. Jiang Du Ma intervenes, subduing them all and forcefully dragging Guan Xiao Oh by his hair, confirming that they have been dealt with. 
He then contacts him, informing him that they have lost some territory and instructing him to bring Sehyun Kim to him. Meanwhile, Jin Ti Hyo punches Hyo Ki Bi, Min Ho Jo, and Chun Ah Ho Beek one by one, berating them. He expresses his disappointment, stating that he trusted them to fulfill their task, yet they allowed their territory to be taken away. He angrily questions how they dare to return after their failure and what Yun Jo must think of him now. Hyo Ki Bi apologizes, explaining that they underestimated the strength of Ha Jun Gu, Siak Kang, and Yi Ha Han, who seem to have transformed within the span of two months. Jin Ti Hyo orders him to shut up. Yoon Hyong Jai interjects, expressing optimism. Jin Ti Hyo inquires about the reason, and Yoon Hyong Jai explains that this failure will cause Yun Jo to lose faith in him, providing an opportunity for Yoon Hyong Jai to succeed where he has failed. He remarks that he's running his mouth again and questions why he has such a problem with him. He suggests that if he's so irritated about him being in charge, he should demonstrate why he's ranked 11th. Yoon Hyong Jai swiftly approaches him to strike and advises him to know his place. He acknowledges Yoon Hyong Jai's speed. Yoon Hyong Jai asserts that he's only showing a modicum of respect since they're with the other guys. Ti Hyong Lim swears, stating they can't go a single day without fighting. Minu Du finds it amusing to watch, at least. A boy in a blue shirt arrives, calling for Jin Ti Hyo and urging him to stop this. Jin Ti Hyo inquires about the matter, and he informs him that Jiang Du Ma is here. Jiang Du Ma arrives, and Jin Ti Hyo inquires about the reason for his presence. Jiang Du Ma attacks him and lifts him into the air. Yun Hyong Jai is shocked to see this and thinks there's no way he can lift Jin Ti Hyo with one hand. Jiang Du Ma pushes his face into the pool and states that their leader is furious, asking if he has anything to say for himself. He apologizes. Jiang Du Ma plunges him into the water again and asks if he has anything else to say. He admits to making a mistake. Jiang Du Ma asks if there's anything else to say. He promises that it won't happen again. Jiang Du Ma asks if there's anything else to say. He pleads for one last chance, promising to bring Sehyun Kim to him, no matter what it takes. Jiang Du Ma states that the rest of them also need to listen to what he's about to say. He emphasizes that all of them are one and the same, and they must work together to capture Sehyun Kim. He warns that if they fail again, the rest of them will also be held accountable. Meanwhile, at the snack bar, Sehyun Kim looks at his phone and asks if this is for real, questioning how much they made this month. He expresses disbelief at the number of zeros and acknowledges that he is finally pulling his weight as a crew member. Hyundong Lee downplays it, saying boosting the snack bar's sales was not too difficult, and all he did was spread rumors throughout Gangbuk as he has always done. Sehyun Kim praises Hyundong Lee, referring to him as the one-man rumor mill, and asks about the specific rumor he spread. Hyundong Lee explains that anyone who brought a friend to the snack bar would get a free menu item, indicating that he was capable of spreading rumors that were not completely bizarre. A boy points out that it's about this snack bar, mentioning that they heard about this place through word of mouth, but he can't take all the credit. So Hyun Kim questions what else could account for all this business. The boy gestures towards Karen Beek, stating that their snack bar is doing really well, thanks to her. He praises her skills in both cooking and waiting tables, adding that they have many regulars who've fallen for her beauty and keep coming back to see her. At the moment, Karen Beek serves the food on a table and asks if he wants his number, apologizing that she does not have a cell phone. Hyun Dong Lee adds that on top of that, she's also promoting the snack bar on her Instagram, and she's integral to the success of this place. So Hyun Kim thanked Karen Beek for all her hard work and extended his hand to her, expressing that they would not have been able to run this place without her. She moves away from there and casually says not to worry about it mentioning that she is doing this for her own benefit, and encourages them both to work hard. He agrees and thinks he is not sure how to make things right between them. Just then, Soha Yang hugs him from behind. Hyun Dong Lee mentions that Soha Yang's presence has also contributed to their sales, as a large number of customers come to see her as well. She suggests going to the walk-in fridge. So Hyun Kim asks what she is saying. He thinks perhaps he should start a revolt. A white shirt boy comes there and says it's an emergency. So Hyun Kim asks what it is. He says North Gangbak Hai is launching an all-out assault. So Hyun Kim asks what. Meanwhile, Jin Ti Hyo arrives with his gang. So Hyun Kim also emerges, sees his crew standing there, and notes that they are all present. He confirms they just arrived. 
He inquires about the situation, asking if North Gangbuk Hai is launching an all-out assault. Sohyun Kim confirms it matches what he heard, stating they are on standby after receiving intel that Jin Ti Hyo, along with a large number of troops, is making his way here. Yi Ha Han predicts that he will be arriving shortly. Sohyun Kim acknowledges this. Yi Ha Han expresses his relief that they were able to receive that intel in advance. Suhyun Kim responds, stating that he ensured they never let their guard down. Ti Hyung Lim and Bi Ki Hong arrive at the scene. A boy announces their arrival. Suhyun Kim asks who those guys are, noting that they are not part of Jin Ti Hyo's forces. He wonders what's going on. Yi Ha Han remarks that something seems off about the situation and suspects that Jin Ti Hyo is nowhere to be seen. The white-shirted boy approaches and urgently informs them that it's an emergency. Sahyun Kim asks if it's another one and instructs him to spit it out. The scene shifts to a flashback. Jin Ti Hyo stands with Yoon Hyung Jai and expresses irritation, stating that he never expected to end up working with him of all people. He suggests they avoid failure in bringing Sahyun Kim to Yun Jo, as it would spell trouble for all of them. Jin Ti Hyo acknowledges that they may have no choice but to team up. Yoon Hyung Jai proposes an easy way to reach Sahyun Kim. Jin Ti Hyo inquires about this approach. Yoon Hyung Jai explains that they should strike where he is weakest, citing their recent defeat, which demonstrated West Gangbak Hai's capabilities. He notes that none of the three who were defeated were weak, indicating that their fighters have significantly improved over the past two months. He warns that facing them head-on could lead to defeat. Jin Ti Hyo asks what he proposes they do instead. Yoon Hyung Jai suggests that each of them should focus on their strengths. Jin Ti Hyo queries their respective strengths. Yoon Hyung Jai replies that his specialty is disinformation, while Jin Ti Hyo is stealthy and will leak false information to West Gang Buck High. The scene shifts to the present at the snack bar, where Jin Ti Hyo arrives with Minu Du and observes that this is it, West Gang Buck High's business. He surrounds Karen and Soha, intending to hit them where it hurts. He admits to envying So Hyun Kim, who seems to have a couple of real babes working for him. Meanwhile, Sohyun Kim quickly rushes toward the snack bar and informs Yi Ha Han that he will leave him to handle things there. Yi Ha Han assures him that he's got it covered, and Sohyun Kim departs. Bi Ki Hong attempts to hit him with a golf stick, but Sohyun Kim dodges. Bi Ki Hong comments that they won't let him leave the place and introduces himself as Bi Ki Hong of North Gang Bak Hai. He adds that, unfortunately, Sohyun Kim won't be able to make it to his little snack bar, as their job is to keep his fight there. Sehyun Kim agrees, mentioning that he's not in a huge hurry anyway. Bik Ki Hong asks what he means, and Sehyun Kim responds that he learned a thing or two from Yi Ha Han when he fought East Gang Bak Hai. On the other hand, Jin Ti Hyo asks what the hell is and remarks that he thinks they'd all left. He notices Yu Jomina and Haru Siong and asks who the hell they are. He realizes that he should never let his guard down. Haru Siong asks what it is to him. Meanwhile, Sehyun Kim thinks about what he should do. He was not expecting them to attack the snack bar, and he did leave Haru and Yujom there just in case, but they were up against no ordinary opponent. Bik Gi Hong suggests seeing what he's got as the leader of West Gang Bak Hai. Sehyun Kim realizes he needs to hurry over there and help them. Huja Ye arrives and attacks Bik Gi Hong, but he bends down. Huja Ye says the snack bar is their priority, and they should leave this place to them and go. Sohyun Kim expresses concern, stating that this is North Gang Buk Hai they are talking about, and who knows what terrible things they will do to Haru and Yujom. Sohyun Kim runs toward the snack bar, thinking he will trust Kyuja to handle things here, but it will be hard for Haru to hold his own against Jin Ti Hyo. The quest window appears in front of him, notifying him that he used the camera card. He says sorry, but he is already too late. They have their boys stationed on the route to his snack bar. Sehyun Kim is shocked to see the quest window notification that Haru Siong used capoeira. Meanwhile, Haru Siong lands a hit on Jin Ti Hyo. He remarks that it hurts and asks if she is truly Haru Siong of North Gangbok High. He acknowledges that she has become much stronger. The scene shifts to a flashback where Johan Siong walks along a road with his dogs and stops. He turns back, noticing Haru Siong, and asks why she is following him. She responds that she caught up to him. He questions if she is some kind of stalker. She apologizes and explains that she wanted to ask him a favor. He reminds her that he has already done her a favor and inquires about what she wants from him. 
she expresses her desire to become stronger and pleads to be his disciple. The scene shifts to the present as Haru Siong identifies herself as a member of West Gangbok High. Yujong Na strikes Minu Du, delivering a low kick, followed by a punch to his face, but Minu Du blocks it with his arms. He retaliates by kicking him and throwing him away, then charging back for another attack. However, Minu Du lights up a cigarette and asks if Yujong Na believes he has the upper hand. He suggests that Yujong Na might be thinking that, since he's been training hard, he can easily defeat them and protect the snack bar alone, implying that his fighting skills are not impressive. Minu Du asks if he's hit the nail on the head and states that sadly he's wrong. He's simply doing the job he was paid for. He proceeds to mention that he's a kickboxer from West Gangbok High and asks if Yujong Na knows what Jin Tihio requested when he was paying him. He explains that Jin Tihio asked him not to let anyone interfere in his fight. As Haru Siong attacks Jin Tihio, Minu Du questions why Yujong Na thinks he did that, suggesting it's because he didn't believe he could take on both of them alone. He then clarifies that it's not the case as Jin Tihio, being a member of the Central Five, presents a different reason. Haru Siong privately thinks that Jin Tihio being a member of the Central Five is a pervert. Jin Tihio questions if she's done and moves to attack her. She reflects, but not in the way he's thinking. He's a pervert who enjoys giving weak opponents hope before he ruthlessly crushes them, turning all that hope into abject despair. Karen Beek and Soha Yang are shocked to see the fight. Jin Tihio remarks that she feels it if she doesn't. He questions if something isn't right here. Meanwhile, Minu Du attacks Yujom and states that this is the Central Five. He throws him away and expresses that it would be all too easy for him to take him down, but he has no intention of treating him so cruelly. He suggests that who knows he might become a client someday. Jin Tihio grabs Haru Siang's hair to drag her, while she reflects on just sitting back and watching what happens to his friend. He punches her face to smash it and expresses his love for seeing the face of his opponent, once assured of victory, morph into an expression of helplessness and despair. He expresses that it's exhilarating. He affirms that this is it, this is what he is talking about, a complete psychological annihilation, and now this is a real thrill. Karen Beek attacks Jin Tihio from behind with a rod and abuses him. He commands her to wait there quietly, he will deal with her next and push her away. She hits a wall and becomes unconscious. He questions how dare she interrupt him in the middle of his fun. He informs Soha Young to keep watching, as he is almost done, and this is the highlight of the fight. He breaks a stick to make it sharp and says he has been staying strong so far, but let's see if he can withstand this. She asks what he is doing. He moves to hit her hand and says sorry, he can't finish until he hears somebody scream. He applies pressure to her hand and it starts bleeding, saying they are just getting started. After all, she still has nine fingers left. After a while, Sohyeon Kim arrives there and thinks he could have done it differently. If he had been smarter about this, he could have kept them safe. He was ambushed by a bunch of North Gangbuk High troops on the way and wasted too much time fighting them off. In that short amount of time, they badly hurt Haru. Yoksa H. Wang lies on the floor, badly injured and apologizes, saying they should have protected them, but that Jin Tihio idiot was too strong and they could not do anything. Sohyeon Kim acknowledges this. He mentions that Jin Tihio kidnapped Karen Beek and Soha Young. Sohyeon Kim thinks he watched the whole thing happen. Ji Hyok Jang says he believes Jin Tihio intends to set a trap for them, using the hostages as bait. He advises them to tread carefully in situations like this but he can see that his advice will fall on deaf ears. Meanwhile, Jin Tihio gathers in front of his gang members and commends them, saying, Excellent, good work, all of them. He acknowledges that although he did most of the work, Yoon Hyong Jai agrees, saying it's true, and he can imagine the expressions on those West Gangbok High idiots' faces now, it's a great job. Jin Tihio confirms, asking if he's ready to set a trap for them with those hostages as bait. Yoon Hyong Jai corrects him, stating that he's not his advisor and that the trap has yet to be prepared. He suggests they can take their time as West Gangbok will hesitate to act since they are holding their people hostage. A white shirt boy arrives and alerts them, saying they have a big problem. West Gangbok High is launching an all-out assault. Jin Tihio expresses disbelief, stating that they have hostages, so it must be some kind of mistake. However, the response he receives clarifies that it's not a mistake. In Area A, a large group of foes has been spotted, led by the former top dog of East Gangbok High, Yi Ha Han. 
Similarly, in Area B, a top dog hunting team from South Gangbok High is approaching, with Siak Kang, the former top dog of that school, leading them. Area C is also under attack from the top fighters of West Gangbok High, with Sehyun Kim, the top dog of the region, leading the charge. It becomes evident that they can't stop them. They are losing territory even as they speak, and he realizes that provoking West Gangbok High has backfired on them. He acknowledges the need to act quickly. Meanwhile, Sehyun Kim declares, let's show them who they dared to cross, who they dared to provoke, and what happens when they mess with them. He acknowledges North Gangbok High's contribution, stating that they have truly motivated him to unite all of Gangbok. He rallies his allies, urging them to join him in destroying their opponents. Meanwhile, the white shirt boy reports that West Gangbok High is approaching, and they have no means to stop them. Jin Tihio questions if it can't be that West Gangbok High is truly coming, sarcastically noting that it's what he expected to hear. He inquires about the boy's meaning. Jin Tihio states that Sehyun Kim doesn't know their location, they are merely a group of enraged individuals who, despite their ignorance of the hostages' whereabouts, have gathered their forces to pursue them. Yoon Hyung Jai acknowledges the point, affirming that Sehyun Kim has lost his composure, emphasizing that the easiest opponent to defeat is one who is emotionally agitated. He proceeds to outline the plan, reiterating that they will disseminate false information. They will spread rumors that the hostages are held in various locations, causing West Gangbok to deploy their troops accordingly, leading them to search the wrong places throughout the night. He explains that by the end, those idiots from West Gangbok High will be exhausted, which is when they will launch an all-out assault. Jin Tihio acknowledges the strategic prowess, stating he would expect nothing less from their genius advisor. He corrects him, asserting he is not his advisor. He praises the plan as a genius, emphasizing they will begin spreading false information and position their troops accordingly. He instructs everyone to follow the plan, spreading disinformation about the hostage's location. He adds that they are free to hide and ambush West Gangbuk High as well. Their task is to wear them out. After that, they will launch an all-out assault. They all affirm their agreement, saying yeah. Jin Tihio declares that tonight, they will bring down West Gangbok High and make a name for themselves. Meanwhile, Sehyun Kim is seated at a roadside desk when Ji Hyuk Jang arrives and apologizes for his tardiness. Sehyun Kim reassures him, asking what is currently happening. Ji Hyuk Jang explains that there is disinformation everywhere, clearly orchestrated by Yoon Hyung Jai, and it seems they are planning to exhaust them. He then inquires about North Gangbok High's next step. Ji Hyuk Jang responds that they will initiate an all-out assault. Fa Hyun Kim then asks if they are aware of Jin Ti Hyo's current whereabouts. Ji Hyuk Jang regrets that they do not mention that he is quite well hidden. He explains that their fastest personnel have been dispatched to gather information and expresses confidence that they will soon return with something valuable. So Hyun Kim emphasizes the urgency of finding the hostages. Ji Hyuk Jang apologizes once again, admitting he was deceived by their disinformation and feeling ashamed. So Hyun Kim reassures him, stating that he has an idea. Ji Hyuk Jang asks what it is, and So Hyun Kim suggests a method to determine the location of those individuals. Meanwhile, at Texas Hold M Poker Bar in North Gangbuk High, Karen Beek and Soha Young are restrained with ropes and their mouths taped shut. They are surrounded by some boys. One boy comments on what a sight they are. Another boy inquires about their identities. He explains that these girls are employed by West Gangbuk High's business. Another boy questions if this represents the caliber of women from West Gangbuk High. He remarks that it almost persuades him to switch loyalties. A boy in a gray shirt asks about the nature of their business. The boy in the brown shirt explains that they sell Tidiakbaki and adds that Jin Tihio brought them there. The boy in the brown shirt concludes that the individuals from West Gang Bak Hai must be searching for these two. He mentions that he doubts any of them are aware that the hostages are located in this poker bar. He ponders what would happen if these girls were to contact them and questions how they would manage that given their current restrained state. The boy clarifies that was not his intention and he meant to inquire whether they had conducted a thorough search of their bodies. He brings up the notion of a body search and mentions that Jin Tihio instructed them not to physically touch them. He emphasizes that they are merely ensuring these two individuals don't attempt anything deceitful and assures that Jin Ti will comprehend. As he reaches towards the girls, Chin Hak Yang intervenes and swiftly subdues him to the ground. 
The boy in the brown shirt asks who Chen Hak Yang is, speculating if he is from West Gangbak Hai, and then realizes that he is indeed Chen Hak Yang. The scene transitions to a flashback at Bar Gangbak, where Chen Hak Yang is seated reading a book when a boy approaches him, calling his name and informing him that someone is there to see him. Chin Hak Yang inquires about the visitor's identity and mentions that he doesn't have any more scheduled meetings for the day. The boy reveals that it's Bagman Kim, prompting Chin Hak Yang to stand up. He instructs Bagman Kim to sit down and asks how he could be reading at such a time. Chin Hak Yang asks what Bagman Kim is referring to, specifically regarding his sister. He grips Sehyun Kim's neck and warns him that if this turns out to be a falsehood, he will kill him, demanding that he repeat what happened to his sister. Sehyun Kim responds by suggesting that, given his rank, Chen Hak Yang should be able to locate their whereabouts easily, and he encourages him to verify the information if he doubts its authenticity. The scene shifts to the present, where Chen Hak Yang holds Soha Yang in his arms and remembers Bagman Kim's instruction to check on Soha Yang's condition. He assesses that she appears to have fainted, perhaps relieved to see him. Fortunately, she seems mostly unharmed, for which he expresses gratitude. He reassures her that he is there to save her, but she remains unconscious. He regrets not arriving sooner and urges her to awaken. Chi Hyung Lim arrives and demands an explanation of the situation, questioning the identity of So Ha Yang. Chen Hak Yang explains that he joined North Gangbok High to gain strength and protect his sister. Chi Hyung Lim expresses confusion about the situation, prompting Chen Hak Yang to clarify that he had no knowledge of the plan to use his sister as bait to lure West Gangbok High. He reveals that he joined the group solely for Soha's sake, but witnessing what happened to his sister has led him to decide to leave North Gangbok High. A quest window appears, indicating that Chen Hak Yang has left the crew. Ti Hyung Lim strikes him and declares that if he doesn't want to be part of North Gangbok High, then he doesn't have to be, as nobody asked him to join in the first place. He questions how a weakling rank 20th like him dares to interfere with their plan. Ti Hyung Lim acknowledges knowing that she is his sister and asks what significance it holds. He asserts that Chin Hak Yang should be prepared to make sacrifices for North Gangbok High, emphasizing that his role is to stand there silently and observe, regardless of what decisions they make regarding his sister. A quest window appears, indicating that Chin Hak Yang's conviction is strong and his potential is skyrocketing, reaching its peak. Chin Hak Yang rises to his feet and quotes Nietzsche, stating, Don't let anyone get away with insulting his family. Another notification window appears, signifying that Chin Hak Yang's potential has awakened. Ti Hyung Lim mockingly remarks on Chin Hak Yang's newfound determination, joking that he might wet his pants. Chin Hak Yang acknowledges that he understands he has no chance of defeating Ti Hyung Lim, even if he were to stand back up. However, he shifts the focus by revealing his phone, indicating that he has been in conversation with someone. He recognizes the phone and instructs someone to take it away from him. Meanwhile, Yi Ha Han is on a call with Chin Hak Yang and overhears him mentioning the poker bar. He immediately contacts Siak Kang and informs him that the hostages are being held at the poker bar. Siak Kang acknowledges the information but expresses difficulty in reaching the location due to the distance. Yi Ha Han echoes the same sentiment, stating that they are headed in the opposite direction. Ji Hyok Jang laments the timing of discovering the hostages' whereabouts and wonders if there's anyone nearby the poker bar. Su Hyun Kim assures them that he is close by and promises to rescue them. He enters the poker bar, subdues a member of South Gangbok, and expresses gratitude to Chin Hak Yang, assuring him that everything will be okay. A quest window appears, indicating the creation of a side quest. Rescue the heroine first, escape with the heroine 01, second and third objectives unknown, with the reward being a platinum card. Sohyun Kim confidently asserts that they can leave the rest to him. Ti Hyung Lim declares that this simplifies things perfectly. He will personally take out Sohyun Kim, but he wonders if Sohyun Kim is confident he can endure for that duration. He notes that they have several surprises prepared and observes that they've stationed their best fighters here, anticipating the arrival of the West Gangbuk idiot. So Hyun Kim swiftly subdues a member of Ti Hyung Lim's gang, knocking them out, and asserts that Ti Hyung Lim is next. Ti Hyung Lim acknowledges So Hyun Kim's prowess, remarking that he wouldn't expect anything less from the top dog of West Gangbuk High. He would have been disappointed if So Hyun Kim turned out to be weak. He eagerly accepts the challenge. 
Sehyun Kim reflects that Ti Hyung Lim is one of the central five and believes he can defeat him, but it will require some time. With Karen and Soha being held hostage, the situation becomes more complicated. He realizes that if he doesn't dispatch Ti Hyung Lim quickly, the rest of the Central Five will likely arrive, making it impossible for him to take on all of them simultaneously. Ti Hyung Lim observes that Se Hyun Kim doesn't seem as confident anymore and realizes he made a grave mistake by coming here alone. He considers his options. Chen Hak Young suggests that Ti Hyung Lim should leave the situation to him and depart. Se Hyun Kim questions Chen Hak Young's decision, thinking he might be taking on more than he can handle. Although Chen Hak Yang has awakened, his abilities are still inferior to Ti Hyung Lim's. Ti Hyung Lim faces Chen Hak Yang, preparing for the fight. A notification window appears, indicating that Chen Hak Yang's potential is rapidly increasing. Ti Hyung Lim questions Chen Hak Yang's seriousness and whether he truly intends to fight him. Se Hyun Kim notes that Chen Hak Yang's potential is increasing rapidly, although he has already awakened. Another notification window appears, stating that Chin Hak Yang's potential is reaching its peak. Chin Hak Yang instructs Se Hyun Kim to take Soha to safety. Another notification window appears, indicating that Chin Hak Yang's potential is nearing its limit. Meanwhile, at Bar Gangbuk, Se Hyun Kim lays Soha and Karen Beek on a sofa and assures them that they should be safe there. He reflects that thanks to Chin Hak Yang, he was able to escape and feels concerned about Chin Hak Yang facing Ti Hyung Lim. However, all he can do for now is to have faith in him. He receives a call from Ji Hyuk Jang, who identifies himself and inquires about Se Hyun Kim's whereabouts. Se Hyun Kim responds calmly, informing Ji Hyuk Jang that he is at Chen Hak Yang's bar. Ji Hyuk Jang questions the choice of location, to which Se Hyun Kim explains that Chen Hak Yang assisted him and this was the safest place available. He adds that he cannot venture outside as he has the hostages with him and requests reinforcements. Ji Hyuk Jang acknowledges the request but warns that North Gangbok High may already be aware of Se Hyun Kim's location and could send their troops after him. Se Hyun Kim confirms this, stating that they are already present and he is surrounded by their troops. Ji Hyuk Jang assures him that they will dispatch reinforcements as soon as possible. Se Hyun Kim expressed concern for Chin Hak Yang's safety and urged him to send help for him as well. Meanwhile, Chen Hak Yang attacks Ti Hyung Lim, who is determined to protect Soha. He acknowledges Ti Hyung Lim's capabilities and admits to being impressed, noting that even a mosquito bite would be more painful than Ti Hyung Lim's attacks. He decides to utilize Kyokushin Karate's parallel stance and launches his assault. He throws Ti Hyung Lim away and questions whether Ti Hyung Lim truly believes he can defeat one of the Central Five with such limited skills. Chen Hak Yang realizes that he surpasses Ti Hyung Lim in every aspect and recognizes the advantage of using Kyokushin Karate. However, he also acknowledges that prolonging the fight would only disadvantage him further. Despite this, he takes a risk and grabs Ti Hyung Lim's arm to launch his attack, banking everything on a single move. A notification window appears, indicating that Wu has claimed a Chen Hak Yang exclusive trigger card, Grip the Lightning, which increases the user's speed rank by three levels when utilizing Juda techniques. He attempts to throw Ti Hyung Lim to the ground, but realizes that Ti Hyung Lim lands on his feet, preventing him from falling. Despite this setback, Ti Hyung Lim punches him, prompting him to wonder if he should have allowed Ti Hyung Lim to throw him. He apologizes, admitting he didn't catch that. He contemplates whether Ti Hyung Lim is on a completely different level, pondering if that means he cannot defeat him. Ti Hyung Lim launches another attack, causing him to spit out blood. Despite feeling like giving up, he resolves to continue fighting. He moves to strike him, refusing to surrender. Ti Hyung Lim employs Kyokushin Karate's recoil high kick technique to kick him, instructing him to stay down as he deems him useless. Ti Hyung Lim prepares to leave, expressing disbelief that he allowed himself to be distracted by someone so weak and resolves to retrieve the hostages. Despite feeling unable to move, he recalls thoughts about Soha Yang. The scene shifts to a flashback of Soha Yang holding a paper and mentioning that the superhero in her family is Chin Hak, her older brother. Someone asks her why she thinks so, to which she responds by explaining that he always accompanies her to her after-school classes and defends her from anyone who tries to bully her. He acknowledges what an amazing superhero she has in her brother. Their father chuckles and remarks that he feels a bit disappointed that she doesn't consider him her superhero. 
Their mother, who stands beside Chin Hak Yong, comments that he knows how much Chin Hak cares for Soha. Soha Yang expresses her certainty that her brother will always be there to protect her, even as they grow older, and she hopes he will continue to be her superhero. The scene shifts to the present as the quest window notifies that Chin Hak Yang's potential in fighting has reached its limit, followed by a congratulatory message indicating that Chin Hak Yang's potential has surpassed its limit. Chen Hak Yang rises to his feet and delivers a powerful punch to Ti Hyung Lin. So Hyun Kim inquired about the notification window he had just seen. The quest window responds, notifying that awakening is not the end. Rather, it signifies the activation of an ability that was previously dormant, and they have not defined awakening as the limit. So Hyun Kim is surprised by the information displayed in the quest window. The quest window further notifies that there exists a stage beyond awakening. So Hyun Kim requests more information about this stage, urging the quest window to elaborate on it. The quest window notifies that he will soon discover that awakening is quite literally the activation of one's dormant abilities, and the next step is to combat and triumph over those awakened abilities. They refer to this stage, which follows awakening as ascension. The quest window displays Chin Hak Yong's abilities rank, indicating that his strength reaches SSR, Speed SR, Potential B, Intelligence C, and Endurance R. It congratulates, stating that the path to ascension has opened, and from now on, every awakened crew member can become even stronger by completing ascension quests. It presents an ascension quest titled Ascend Crew Members, including Sohyun Kim 01, Kyuja Ya 01, Hajun Gu 01, etc., and Chin Hak Yong 11. The reward for completing the quest is 10 supreme level-up cards for strength, speed, and endurance. The quest window notifies that the ascension quest is now beginning. Ti Hyung Lim verbally abuses Chin Hak Yong, asserting that getting back up won't alter the fact that he is ranked 20th. He mocks Chin Hak Yong, suggesting that he can't even defeat Jiang Yu Song, who holds the 19th rank. Ti Hyung Lim views Chin Hak Yong's actions as a waste of time and advances to attack him. However, Chin Hak Yang retaliates by punching Ti Hyung Lim repeatedly in the face, demonstrating his speed and the force of his blows. Ti Hyung Lim's mouth begins to spit out blood as Chin Hak Yang strikes him with his knee. Ti Hyung Lim wonders if it's possible that he could lose to Chin Hak Yang. Despite this, Ti Hyung Lim resolves to win the fight for their boss and leader Yun Jo. He kicks Chin Hak Yang using Kyokushin Karate's stretching front kick technique, determined to emerge victorious. Ti Hyung Lim reaffirms his determination, stating that if he loses, he will never be able to face Yun Jo again. He reflects on his first encounter with Yun Jo and recalls how, on that day, he and the Central Five swore allegiance to him. Ti Hyung Lim admits that he doesn't know why, but it felt right to pledge their loyalty to Yun Jo. He reflects that it has been a year since then, and from that day onward, the Central Five of North Gangbuk High have dedicated themselves to supporting Yun Jo. He executes another kick using Kyokushin Karate's no-recoil high kick technique and declares that he has defended Yun Jo for the past year. He believes that a man who has something to protect will never be defeated and feels victorious. Chun Hak Young seizes his shirt and concurs, stating that he agrees that a man who has something to protect will never lose. He reflects that he endured the kick and another shoulder throw. Ti Hyung Lim insists that he knows such moves won't work for him, and thinks to himself that he will simply counter them as he did last time. The quest window notifies that he has acquired an Ascension exclusive attack card. It displays Chin Hak Yang's exclusive attack card, Thunder Shoulder Throw, which enables the user to seize their opponent, leap high into the air, and execute a shoulder throw, dealing a critical hit to an opponent whose endurance stat is lower than the user's. He grabs Ti Hyung Lim's arm and ascends into the air before slamming him onto the ground. The quest window notifies that Chin Hak Yang has utilized the Thunder Shoulder Throw card. Ti Hyung Lim taunts him, questioning whether he believes he won't lose simply because he has had someone to protect for only a year. Ti Hyung Lim asserts that he has been a protector his entire life and recalls memories with So Ha Yang while trying to shield her. He continues to strike Ti Hyung Lim while he is on the ground. The quest window notifies that it was a critical hit. At that moment, a boy in a white shirt approaches Jin Ti Hyo and informs him that they have a problem. Jin Ti Hyo inquires about the issue, and the boy reports that Ti Hyung Lim has been defeated. Jin Ti Hyo expresses disbelief and questions how it could have happened, pointing out that Sa Hyun Kim is at Bar Gangbuk. 
He insists that no one else could be strong enough to defeat Ti Hyung Lim, one of the Central Five, except Chen Hak Yong, who was ranked 20th at North Gangbok High. He reveals that Chen Hak Yong betrayed them and brought down Ti Hyung Lim. Enraged, Jin Ti Hyo strikes him and demands an explanation, kicking him repeatedly and expressing disbelief that one of the Central Five could lose to someone he has never even heard of. He declares that they need to take action. Otherwise, he will be too ashamed to face Yun Jo again. They must defeat and capture Su Hyun Kim as soon as possible. Another boy reassures Jin Ti Hyo, stating that Su Hyun Kim won't be able to leave Bar Gangbuk, as Yun Hyung Jai has already taken measures to ensure that. Jin Ti Hyo asks if Yun Hyung Jai did, and he confirms that he sent his own fighter to Bar Gangbuk. Jin Ti Hyo inquires about his own fighter. He explains that out of the Central Five, Yun Hyung Jai commands the largest number of troops. According to his knowledge, Yun Hyung Jai has a total of 100 troops, and not even Su Hyun Kim will be able to fight all 100 of them. He confidently declares that victory will be theirs. Meanwhile, Su Hyun Kim finds himself surrounded by Yun Hyung Jai's troops. The quest window updates, presenting a side quest titled Rescue the Heroine. The objectives include first escaping with a Heroine 11, second defeating 100 enemies Zunil, and the third objective remains unknown. The reward for completing this quest is one platinum card. On the other side, Jin Ti Hyo disagrees, stating that it won't be enough. He instructs to send the three remaining members of the Central Five. If they fail to take Sehyun Kim down, they are done for. At the moment, Yun Hyung Jai inquires about the distance remaining until they reach Bar Gangbuk. A boy informs him that they are nearly there and then proceeds to ask a question. Yun Hyung Jai prompts him to continue. The boy questions why Yun Hyung Jai is deploying his own troops to pursue Sehyun Kim. Suddenly, another boy strikes him with a steel rod, rendering him unconscious. Yi Ha Han and his group surround them, seizing the opportunity. Yi Ha Han orders to encircle North Gangbok High, ensuring that none of them can escape. Yun Hyung Jai realizes that they are being ambushed by West Gangbok High, and the only person capable of devising such a plan is Yi Ha Han. Yi Ha Han approaches Yun Hyung Jai and apologizes, admitting that his entrance might have seemed too much like that of a villain. He remarks that it's fitting since he started out as a villain and he got Yi Ha Han good with his little scheme last time and he hates letting a debt go unpaid. He acknowledges that he knew he'd be passing through there. Yun Hyung Jai admits that he let down his guard, he could have gotten away with underestimating Se Hyun Kim, but he should never have underestimated Yi Ha Han. He questions whether this is really a smart move. He points out that the other two members of the Central Five are on their way to strike Su Hyun Kim right now, so instead of ambushing him, Yi Ha Han should have protected Su Hyun Kim. Yi Ha Han reassures him, saying not to worry about that, he has also sent some of their people to the other two members of the Central Five. Yun Hyung Jai asks what he means. Yi Ha Han explains that attacking the three of them is the surest way to keep Su Hyun Kim safe. Meanwhile, Yu Jong Na steps in front of Minu Du to stop him. He questions whether Minu Du is at it again. Simultaneously, Beat Gi Hon notices Ha Jun Gu standing in his way and asks what's going on, questioning whether Ha Jun Gu is from West Gangbak Hai. He assumes that Ha Jun Gu is his opponent. On the other side, a gray haired boy informs Jin Ti Hyo that they have just received news about the three members of the Central Five being ambushed on their way to Bar Gangbuk. He expresses concern that Su Hyun Kim might slip through their fingers at this rate. Jin Ti Hyo inquires about Su Hyun Kim's current condition. The boy reports that even though Su Hyun Kim is facing a hundred foes, he is not backing down. Su Hyun Kim is fighting with his back against Bar Gangbuk, where the hostages are currently held, indicating his determination to protect them until the end. The boy speculates that Su Hyun Kim actually intends to take out all 100 of their troops. Meanwhile, Sohyun Kim attacks North Gangbuk High troops and, after knocking one out, places his hand on the person for Mana Drain. The quest window notifies him that he has used the Mana Drain card, which has resulted in an increase in his stats. He challenges Jin Ti Hyo to come and face him personally. Meanwhile, Minu Du expresses his disappointment, remarking that this situation is boring. He had expected someone else, but it was him again. A black-haired boy interjects, stating the need to reach Sehyun Kim. The brown-haired boy asks what they should do if Minu Du wants them to handle him. Minu Du rejects the idea, saying that he won't do it. He is the one who gets paid. He moves to attack. 
He acknowledges that he should pull his punches a little since Yu Jong Na might become a customer of his someday. Yu Jong Na attempts to attack, but Minyu Du evades. When Yu Jong Na tries to kick, Minyu Du blocks the attack. He comments on Yu Jong Na's effective counterattack, suspecting that he may have figured it out from their brief tussle earlier. He wonders if someone told him that the martial art he practices is a style of kickboxing called Washu Sanda. He questions, but he knows what. He acknowledges that he is not strong enough and moves to attack him. He ponders on how to articulate this and admits that he is just too weak. While he might have the technique down physically, he is no match for him. Yujom Na attempts to attack him, but he moves back. He finds it strange that Yujom Na is not using his legs at all, considering he used kicks as well before. He speculates that Yujom Na is hoping he can take him out with one well-placed high kick. That's the only way Yujom Na can hope to win despite being so much weaker. Yujom Na tries to kick him again, but he blocks the attack, determined to finish him off with a single strike. The scene shifts to a flashback where Yi Ha Han calls Yujom Na and suggests it's still not too late. He proposes that Siak Kang can fight Minu Du instead. Yi Ha Han realizes that Yujom Na wants revenge on Minu Du after he is soundly defeated by him. However, if Yujom Na were to lose to him again this time, matters would be complicated. Yi Ha Han emphasizes that if Yujom Na were to lose, Suhyun Kim would be in danger, and it's not the time to be stubborn. Yujom Na gestures towards himself. Yi Ha Han questions how he is supposed to have a conversation with him when he doesn't say a word. He assumes that Yujom Na means he couldn't bear to face Sehyun Kim if he were unable to defeat Minyu Du this time around. Yi Ha Han then agrees, saying that he will trust Yujom Na to handle this. The scene shifts to the present, and Minyu Du remarks that he does have that killer move after all. Yujom Na moves to attack him. The quest window notifies that Yujom Na uses the terabyte low kick. Yujom Na thinks he's got him. Minu Du was pretending to do a high kick, but it's actually a low kick, so this is what he was hiding. Yujom Na moves to kick him, but Minu Du grabs his leg and apologizes, saying he tricked him. He questions if Yujom Na thinks Washu Sanda was just kicking and punching. Minu Du explains that unfortunately for him, that's the sport variation, but military Sanda, which he studied, includes grappling. He adds that whether his finishing move is a high kick or a low kick aimed at his legs, it won't work on him. Minu Du kicks him, throws him away, and declares that he's done pulling his punches. He expresses his disappointment, stating that he thought people got stronger over the past two months, but it looks like whatever they did has been nothing but a waste of time. He asks if anyone didn't at least give Yu Jom Na any advice on how to become stronger. The scene shifts to a flashback. Boss Big Deal Jake Kim sits in a restaurant, drinks water, and slams the bowl on the table, expressing his thoughts about someone familiar. He notices Yu Jom Na and asks if he was ever in juvie, then recalls that he is indeed Yu Jom Na. Yu Jom moves a paper toward him. Jake Kim takes the paper and asks what it is, questioning if Yu Jom Na wants to become stronger. Yu Jong Na responds affirmatively, stating that there's someone he wants to protect, and there are still many fellows like him in the world, those with heart and passion. He pats him on the shoulder and sadly remarks that he doesn't have time to teach him that, as he's got a lot going on, what with being wanted by the police and all. However, he does have one piece of advice for him. As he moves to leave, he says that if there's someone Yu Jong Na wants to protect, then he better strengthen his resolve. In every fight, he should be prepared to fight to the death, and he won't lose. The scene shifts to the present, where Sehyun Kim engages with the North Gangbok High troops, while the quest window indicates that Yu Jong Na's potential is skyrocketing. His potential is reaching its limit, and congratulations, his potential has overcome its limit. Minu Du is shocked to see Yu Jong Na getting up again and asks if he's getting up again. The quest window notifies that as a special reward for the ascension of Yujom Na's potential, his stamina has been restored, and his stats have increased. They move to attack him. He senses that something does not seem right and suggests they should get him. The quest window notifies that he has received an ascension exclusive card, he has claimed an ascension exclusive attack card. Minu Du moves to attack him and asks how dare he. He thinks Yujom Na's vibe is totally different now. Still, he's an opponent he has beaten before. How foolish to attempt the same kick again. Yujom Na again moves to kick him. He thinks it's no use, he will grab him like he did earlier. The quest window displays an attack card exclusive to Yujom Na. The terabyte spear kick, 
which enables the user to unleash a potent solar plexus push kick with maximal speed, paralyzing the opponent. The higher the speed, the longer the opponent remains paralyzed. This ability can only be used once per day. This indicates that Yujom Na utilized the terabyte spear kick. Yujom Na delivers a kick to the opponent's chest. The opponent ponders what this kick is, realizing their inability to block it as it strikes the solar plexus. The quest window notifies that the opponent has been paralyzed. The opponent realizes they can't move. The quest window presents another attack card exclusive to Yujom Na, the terabyte low kick, allowing the user to unleash a powerful low kick with maximum force, dealing 3x critical damage. It indicates that Yujom Na has employed the terabyte low kick. His kick breaks Minudu's leg bone, flipping him into the air and slamming him to the ground. Minu Du's gang members are shocked to witness this, exclaiming in disbelief and questioning how Minu could lose. A boy remarks that the individual has just defeated one of the Central Five. Meanwhile, a boy in a white shirt informs Beat Gi Hong that they have a significant problem. Minu Du has been defeated. He asks if it means that two of the Central Five are already out of commission. Ha Jun Gu stands nearby and corrects him, stating that there are actually three because he is about to defeat another. Beat Gi Hong brandishes a golf stick towards Ha Jun Gu and warns him not to act cleverly, asserting that the chances of him defeating Ha Jun Gu are non-existent. The quest window displays the trigger card exclusive to Ha Jun Gu, named the Overlord's Return, which summons a doppelganger with every attack, inflicting two offensive strikes on the opponent. The details regarding the Overlord's Return's strikes, descent and dominance are unknown, and the card set effect is 13. It notifies that the Overlord's Return card has been triggered. Ha Jun Gu remarks that he almost had him. Yi Ha Han echoes the sentiment, saying he almost had him, and wondered if his reach was too short. The quest window indicates that the Overlord's Return card has been triggered. He considers that he will need to get closer to him. A boy in a white shirt asks if he sees that. He responds, stating that it appears the intelligence they received was accurate. It's Ha Jun Gu, the boxer from West Gang Bakai. He wonders why his men seem so relaxed. The boy in the white shirt comments that, unfortunately for Ha Jun Gu, their own Beat Gi Hong has never lost to a boxer. The quest window notifies him once again that the Overlord's return card has been triggered. Beat Gi Hong and Ha Jun Gu attempt to attack each other. Beat Gi Hong advises there is no need to be so hasty, let's take it slow. He reflects that he has managed to evade every single one of Ha Jun Gu's punches. Beat Gi Hong strikes him with the golf stick and remarks that a boxer should not be hasty, adding that he must say he is impressed by the boxer from West Gang Bak Hai. He wonders how this is possible and tries to counterattack. The quest window notifies him again that the Overlord's return card has been triggered. Beat Gi Hong comments that he has slowed down quite a bit and that the golf club hurt. If not, it would have been much worse. He realizes he needs to focus. He's not like the other guys. He believes he just needs to land one more good hit. Hajun attempts to punch him again, but he bends down, anticipating Hajun's move to come in closer. It's obvious what Hajun is trying to do. The quest window notifies that the Overlord's return card has been triggered. Hajun Gu thinks he'll try to trap him by backing him into a corner, but he knows that if he's aware of what his enemy is plotting, he can be one step ahead. Beat Gi Hong moves to strike him, thinking it's over for Hajun Gu. But Ha Jun Gu grabs the golf stick, saying he knew he'd try this. He thinks he knew what Bi Gi Hong was up to and says he backed him into this corner, pretending to trap him but actually aiming for his weapon. He moves to attack him, declaring it's all over, but Bi Gi Hong punches him in the face. He wonders if he's a boxer. Bi Gi Hong remarks that it's been a while since he had to throw a punch. The scene shifts to a flashback. Bi Gi Hong stands in a fighting ring and knocks out his opponent. A boy mentions that he won gold at the Chungqing Boxing Association Championship. It's surprising that someone with his level of talent would join North Gang Bak Hai. Ti Hyung Lim sits on the sofa holding a golf stick and remarks that he knows West Gang Bak Hai, and they also have a boxer among them. Bi Gi Hong asks if that's correct, inquiring about the boxer's name. Ti Hyung Lim responds Ha Jun Gu. Bi Gi Hong admits he's never heard of him. Ti Hyung Lim supposes he'll see for himself when he fights him. By the way, he has been wondering, considering Beat Gi Hong is a boxer, why he bothers using a golf club as a weapon. Beat Gi Hong asks if it's not obvious. The scene shifts to the present, where Beat Gi Hong strikes Ha Jun Gu and remarks that a golf club does more damage than a fist. 
He knocks him out and comments that this is fun. He has not dusted off his boxing skills for quite some time. He mentions he's never met anyone as incredible as Hajun Gu, finding it hard to believe what he's seeing with his own eyes. Only a boxer of Hajun Gu's caliber could have figured it out. He admits he never properly learned how to box, he's self-taught. He asks how Hajun Gu managed to do it and climb as high as he did with self-taught boxing skills. The scene shifts to a flashback of Hajun Gu's childhood, where little Hajun Gu sits having food and says he is alone, or rather, wishes to be alone. His father hits him, abuses him, and says he is picking at his food like his mother. If he has time to stuff his face, go and bring his mother back. He thinks his mother abandoned the family, and his father beat him instead of her. He learned how to block blows before he learned the multiplication table, and he spent his days trying to come up with ways he could be spread from the beatings. He says he is just like his mother, he never admits when he is wrong. Hajun Gu begins practicing boxing after seeing it in a magazine. He reflects that he taught himself how to fight, and that the only enemy in his home was his father. He thought his father was the only person he needed to beat. He notes that a jab should be thrown, and for a straight punch, he needs to use his hips. So, on the day he became a middle school student, he defeated his father. He believes he didn't feel any regret or guilt. If he were going to, he would never have started teaching himself how to box. After that day, seeing his dad hesitate to lay a finger on him taught him a lesson about how he should live his life. He believes he must reign and make the world cower at his feet. The scene shifts to the present. Hajun Gu states that he taught himself not only boxing but also the ways of the world. He gets up, holding a cigarette on his lips. The quest window notifies that Hajun Gu's potential is reaching its limit. He asks why Beat Gi Hong is just standing there. The quest window then notifies that congratulations, Hajun Gu's potential has overcome its limit. Beat Gi Hong moves to attack him, but Hajun Gu tells him not to get smart with him. The quest window notifies that he has acquired an Ascension exclusive attack card. Beat Gi Hong is shocked to see Hajun Gu standing up. The quest window displays a trigger card exclusive to Hajun Gu, named the Overlord's Descent. This card slightly increases the user's strength while unleashing the aura of an overlord, which binds nearby enemies and decreases their endurance. The overlord's return ability delivers two strikes, and the overlord's descent binds nearby enemies. The overlord's dominance details remain unknown, and the bind's chance of success is proportionate to Hajun Gu's strength, endurance, and speed. Additionally, enemies' endurance decreases in proportion to Hajun Gu's strength, endurance, and speed. The card set effect is 23. It notifies that Beat Gi Hong has been inflicted with a bind, and the Overlord's descent has decreased Beat Gi Hong's endurance. Beat Gi Hong's leg is grabbed by chains, and he wonders what's happening. The quest window notifies that nearby enemies have also been inflicted with a bind, and the Overlord's descent has decreased their endurance. Hajun moves towards him. He realizes that here comes Hajun Gu, but despite seeing it, he can't do anything about it. The quest window then notifies that the Overlord's return card has been triggered. Hajun Gu punches him, shocking everyone who witnesses it. Meanwhile, the troops from North Gangbok High launch an attack on the members of West Gangbok High, shouting Die, West Gangbok High. A member from West Gangbok High retaliates, urging to take down North Gangbok High. A boy interjects, stating that they are nothing but Yun Zhou's lackeys. Another counter pointing out that the boys' group is Sahyon Kim's lackeys. He calls for assistance, prompting another to inquire which one of them just felt him up. Yi Ha Han identifies Yun Hyong Jai of North Gangbok High, suggesting that they have a lot in common. Yun Hyong Jai questions why that is. Yi Ha Han explains that not only are they incredibly intelligent and possess stellar fighting skills, but they are also very good looking. Yun Hyung Jai retorts that Yi Ha Han is full of himself, but Yi Ha Han insists he is not. He bluntly states that a talented guy like Yun Hyung Jai is wasted on North Gangbok High and should join West Gangbok High. He mentions that they have already defeated three of North Gangbok High's Central Five, and the only surviving members, whom they were all so proud of, are him and Jin Ti Hyo. However, their top dog soon crushes Jin Ti Hyo, and Yun Jo holds the five responsible for the defeat. Yun Hyung Jai swiftly moves to attack, but his opponent sidesteps, thinking to himself that he's fast and has one heck of a punch. Yun Hyung Jai retorts that he is nothing like his opponent, adding that he looks like the kind of guy who goes around stealing other people's girlfriends. 
Jahangu moves to attack him with a kickboxing move, but Yoon Hyung Jai blocks it and remarks that it's uncalled for. He also thinks that he's good at blocking attacks too. Yoon Hyung Jai explains that he was trying to look out for him, to which his opponent acknowledges. He then decides there's no need to be hasty. He will move slowly, controlling the distance between them and aiming to break his legs first. Yoon Hyung Jai adds that he looks like the kind of guy who goes around stealing other people's girlfriends, implying that he plans to remain an underling of Yoon Jai for the rest of his life. He attempts to kick again, but his opponent blocks it, saying he saw that coming a mile away, recognizing the high kick as a feint. Yi Ha Han observes the situation, noting that his opponent got close to him and countered his attack, which is why he hates fighting smart guys. Yoon Hyung Jai moves to attack him, expressing his intent to break his legs first. If he isn't quick to catch on, he notes and tries to punch, but his opponent bends down, wondering what fighting style this is, whether it's boxing. Yoon Hyung Jai counters that his fists are quick too. His opponent reflects that based on what he's seen of his footwork and punches, it's probably boxing. If he's a kickboxer, that works to his advantage, and he will widen the distance between them and aim for his solar plexus. Yoon Hyung Jai attempts to punch him again, and he tries to kick him. Yoon Hyung Jai spins to hit him with his elbow. Yi Ha Han observes a spinning back elbow and sits down. Yoon Hyung Jai believes he dodged that and apologizes, acknowledging his opponent's good reflexes. However, his opponent reflects that he couldn't have dodged that with good reflexes alone. He was only able to do so by visualizing all the possible ways in which he could strike. Yi Ha Han remarks on the opponent's strategy of pretending to be a boxer then suddenly pulling a spinning back elbow, and concludes that this is why he can't trust people who wear glasses. He reflects that he's a lot like his opponent, and believes he now has a rough sense of his fighting style. He considers his opponent to be the type who compensates for any physical shortcomings with intellect. He mentions that he has learned a number of different martial arts, acknowledging that whoever has more tricks up their sleeve is going to win this fight. Yoon Hyung Jai attempts to attack him but Yi Ha Han moves back and tries to counterattack. Yi Ha Han moves back again and asserts that what Yoon Hyung Jai tried won't work. He then attempts to attack with a spinning back elbow. Yoon Hyung Jai questions if that's right and counters with a spinning back fist. He recognizes it as a spinning back fist this time. Yoon Hyung Jai attacks him again and asks how this is going. He moves back and feels relieved that the blow did not reach him. Yoon Hyung Jai clarifies that he never intended for that attack to hit him. He considers if he has backed him into a wall. Yoon Hyung Jai states that since his opponent uses Taekwondo, his aim from the start was to cage him in so that he could not use his kicks. He moves to attack him, while he thinks he's trying to take advantage of Taekwondo's weakness. He replies that he is well aware of his weakness. Yi Ha Han tries to anticipate his moves, considering an uppercut or a headbutt. Yoon Hyung Jai hits him in the face and says he wants to know what martial arts he learned, if any. He thinks about the martial art that originated in Japan, allowing the use of judo techniques, karate techniques, and all kinds of foul play. Yoon Hyung Jai informs him that he hates breaking it to him, but he has not learned a variety of martial arts. The one and only martial art he learned is kudo, and he grabs his shirt. He reflects that it's a real-world combat system masquerading as a martial art. The members of West Gangbuk are shocked to see what's happening, and a boy tells the others to look over there. The members of North Gangbuk High are also shocked, and a boy in a red shirt asks what just happened. He wonders why Yoon Hyung Jai didn't execute a perfect shoulder throw on Yi Ha Han. Yi Ha Han grabs Yoon Hyung Jai's neck from behind and reminds him that he said he only learned one martial art right. He realizes Yoon Hyung Jai couldn't throw him over his shoulder. Yi Ha Han points his sharp rings at Yoon Hyung Jai's neck and apologizes for the disappointment, explaining that Kudo was among the many possibilities he considered. Yoon Hyung Jai reflects that he nearly pierced his neck. He admits he's pretty prone to suspicion and doesn't trust anybody, which is why he loses. Yi Ha Han attacks him, beats him to the ground, and claims it was not fair, asserting that he would have won if it weren't for those brass knuckles. He sits near him, takes a cigarette, and advises him not to be a sore loser, stating that's what a sore loser would say. He emphasizes that all that matters in a fight is the outcome. Meanwhile, a boy in a black shirt approaches Jin Ti Hyo and informs him of terrible news. Yoon Hyung Jai has been defeated as well. There's no one strong enough left to battle West Gangbok High, and the tide has completely turned in their favor. 
He mentions that West Gang Buck High is looking for Jin Tihio now, and they will probably be storming in here soon. A group of West Gang Buck members arrives, and a boy points out Jin Tihio, saying, There he is, that's Jin Tihio. Jin Tihio responds that he's already here. They move to attack him, shouting die. Jin Tihio grabs one man by the face and smashes him on the floor. He knocks out all the members of West Gang Buck and states that all he needs to do is beat Sehyun Kim. Then he can turn this all around and ask if they wouldn't agree. After a while, Suhyun Kim arrives and observes the injured members of West Gang Buck High. Jin Tihio beckons Suhyun Kim to come and see how strong he is. He proposes a fight between himself, the strongest member of the Central Five, and Suhyun Kim, the top dog of West Gang Buck High, suggesting they begin. Sehyun Kim punches him and throws him away, asserting that they won't do anything of the sort. He appreciates him sending him 100 of his troops and thanks him for the feast he provided. Sehyun Kim declares that there won't be a fight. Instead, it will be a one-sided beating. Jin Tihio gets up and remarks that it's good. He would have been disappointed if he were any weaker. He asks if it wouldn't be much of a boss fight otherwise. He mentions that Sehyun Kim surprised him a little, acknowledging that he packs quite a punch. Sehyun Kim, in turn, thinks that Jin Tihio is pretty strong and fast for someone of his size, but asserts that he is no slouch either when it comes to speed. He considers that the most important thing is that he's all worked up right now, and he will use that to his advantage. He will try to anticipate Jin Tihio's next moves so he can stay one step ahead. Sehyun Kim hits him again and asks why he is just standing there. Jin Tihio realizes that he is not able to react in time and attempts to attack him, but Sehyun Kim moves back and hits him in the face, asking how dare he. Jin Tihio wonders if it could be that Sehyun Kim is so much more powerful and skilled a fighter than him that there's no point in even trying to anticipate his next move. Sehyun Kim hits him and beats him to the ground, asking why he did it. He recalls what Jin Tihio did with Haru Siam. Sehyun Kim asserts that he won if it was not enough and mentions that he already accomplished what he was there to do. He questions why Jin Tihio had to go that far. Jin Tihio responds because it feels good. Sehyun Kim asks what he means, and Jin Tihio explains that it feels exhilarating to give someone weak hope and then take it away again. He finds satisfaction in seeing that hopeful expression turn into despair. It makes him feel alive, he claims. Sehyun Kim punches him hard in the face and remarks that this is how he lives his life, picking on people weaker than him. He grabs Jin Tihio's neck and states that he has met very few people as despicable as him. He clearly deserves to be punished. Sehyun Kim lifts him up and asserts that he is no arbiter of justice, this is simply retribution for what he has done to one of his people. Now Jin Tihio can see for himself how it feels to be weak. The quest window notifies that Suhyun Kim used the Mana Drain card, commencing the absorption of Jin Tihio's stats. He demands to know what is happening to him and what Suhyun Kim is doing to him. The quest window notifies that stats are increasing. He insists that Suhyun Kim tell him what he is doing and commands him to stop. The quest window displays Jin Tihio's stats details, which are decreasing, and Suhyun Kim's stats, which are increasing. Sehyun Kim recalls Sechen Kang and then throws Jin Tihio on the floor. The quest window notifies that the mana drain is suspended. He thinks he doesn't want to be like Yun Jo. This isn't right. Jin Tihio asks what Sehyun Kim just did to him. Sehyun moves to leave without saying anything. He commands Sehyun Kim to stop right there. Sehyun Kim thinks he needs to be better than that. After a while, Karen Beek wakes up at Gangbuk Bar and asks where she is. So ha Young also wakes up and asks what's going on. Sehyun Kim sits near them and asks if the girls are okay and if they're not hurt. He apologizes, admitting it's his fault they got mixed up in all this. He says he can't even begin to apologize but assures them that everything's okay now and they shouldn't be in any more danger. He suggests they go home and move to leave the bar with the girls. He receives a call from Ji Hyuk Jang, who informs him that he has arrived at Gangbuk Bar. Sehyun Kim remarks that it was fast, mentioning that it's all over and he is exiting the building with Karen and Soha. He sees the troops' bodies outside the bar and asks if Ji Hyuk Jang defeated all these foes by himself. Sehyun Kim confirms, saying, yeah, it's a long story. Ji Hyuk Jang asks how to express surprise since there are easily over a hundred of them there. Sehyun Kim suggests that Jin Ti Hyo should be there too and they should grab him and take him to West Gangbuk High. He asks what he is talking about. 
so Hyun Kim explains that he defeated Jin Ti Hyo and left him there. They should take him to West Gangbok High to shake him down for some intel. He asks if he is sure he is not mistaken and says that Jin Ti Hyo is not there. So Hyun Kim questions what he is saying. The other person says he does not see Jin Ti Hyo among the wounded. At that moment, Jin Ti Hyo moves toward Karen Beak to punch her, but Sa Hyun Kim comes between them, takes the hit, and throws Jin Ti Hyo away. Sa Hyun Kim thinks about the destructive force. He absorbed his stats, yet he's now even stronger, and this aura is not the same as the Jin Ti Hyo he faced earlier. He asks how this is possible, how did he manage to get back up, and if he is actually Jin Ti Hyo. The scene shifts to the flashback, where Jin Ti Hyo lies on the floor after getting beaten by Su Hyun Kim and thinks he can't budge an inch. He feels like all his muscles have atrophied. What the hell did Su Hyun Kim exactly do to him? He wonders why he lost to him and says, but he reached out and took his hand. He recalls Yun Jo coming to him and holding his hand. He thinks Yun Jo definitely reached out and took his hand that day and asked why he lost to Su Hyun Kim. At that moment, Yun Jo sees Jin Ti Hyo throwing a card and remarks about what a waste. This card is too good for trash like him. The quest window shows a one-time use card that lets him make a deal that burns through the potential and intelligence of a crew member to exponentially increase their fighting power. The crew member's potential and intelligence will never recover, and this card will disappear once used. He remarks that he supposes he has no choice but to use it to take Sa Hyun Kim down. The scene shifts back to the present. Sahyun Kim sees the details of his stats in the quest window and thinks his intelligence is non-existent. He moves to attack him, places his foot on his face, and then throws him away. Sahyun Kim strikes the wall and he quickly runs toward him to punch, but Sahyun Kim moves aside and his knee hits the wall. The quest window notifies him that he used the healing bean and his stamina has been restored. He tells Yun Jo that he should not be using a card like that on another person, and asks if the ends always justify the means for him, and if this is the way he has been using the other cards he has gotten. Yun Jo hears him with the help of the quest card. He asks if he is even a human being and uses the Yeet Biep Teek Jon San Byok Chigi card to push him away. He states that he intended to keep as many of the cards he received over the past two months while training as hidden as possible because revealing his hand, this early would put him at a disadvantage during their next fight. He continues, saying that enough is enough. After the stunt he pulled, he thinks he needs to repay the favor and show him what he is capable of. He recalls a memory when Ji Hyuk Jang told Daniel that he gave him two months. He acknowledges that it was his mistake, as he has completed a lot of quests over the past two months. Thanks to him, he now has quite a collection of cards. The quest window notifies that the card chapter is now in effect. It shows a buff card, the card chapter, which applies a buff that increases all stats for the user. Stats increase in proportion to the number of cards in the user's possession. He says he will start by raising his stats to match. Jin Ti Hyo moves to attack him, but he bends down thinking he can anticipate the attacks thanks to the cards, he kicks him in the face. The quest window notifies that Yet Biep Teek Joan has been used. He considers Jin Ti Hyo and realizes they are now evenly matched. In fact, due to the card chapter effect, his stats are higher than Jin Ti Hyo's. By utilizing the cards he has recently acquired, he should be able to win this fight easily. However, the problem is that Yun Jo is watching this fight. He knows that the cards he has claimed over the past two months are unknown to Yun Jo. If he displays them now, he will be at a massive disadvantage when facing him. Jin Ti Hyo attempts to punch him, but he blocks the attack, knowing he has no other choice. He needs to defeat Jin Ti Hyo using only the cards he knows about. Jin Ti Hyo grabs his hands, but he opens his arms and pushes him away. Jin Ti Hyo moves to attack him. Soha and Karen are also worried about So Hyun Kim. Sihyeon Kim blocks his attack and asks if he is lowering his guard before attacking. The quest window displays the attack card, Guard Fist, which allows the user to block all attacks once, but can only be utilized once per day. He acknowledges that he is an animal. The quest window notifies that Guard Fist was used. He contemplates, on one hand, Guard Fist, and on the other, Stun Fist. The quest window reveals the attack card, Stun Fist, which immobilizes opponents for three seconds when a punch is landed squarely on them. He launches an attack on Jin Ti Hyo. The quest window notifies that Stun Fist was used, resulting in the status condition fainted and immobilizing his opponent for three seconds. 
he realizes he has three seconds, during which he plans to utilize every single card available. The quest window notifies that the Dempsey roll technique was employed. He moves to punch him. At this moment, Yunjo activates the nullify card. The quest window notifies him that the nullify card was used, which cures the subject of any inflicted status condition and can only be used once per day. The quest window informs Sehyun Kim that Jin Hyo was cured of his status condition and the Dempsey roll technique failed. He considers if he is being deceived. Jin Hyo lands a blow on his chin. He contemplates that there might be a card like that. Yun Jo activates the superior boost card. The quest window notifies that the superior boost card was used, which randomly increases the stats of a crew member for a short period of time. It can only be used five times per day, cannot be stacked, and does not increase potential and intelligence. Jin Hyo grabs his neck and attempts to strike with his knees. However, Sehyun Kim grabs his hand and twists it. Jin Hyo screams in pain and realizes he has become stronger. His stats have increased. However, it doesn't seem like Yun Jo is controlling Jin Hyo anymore. This means all Yun Jo can do is provide support, and not only that, Jin Hyo is now entirely devoid of intelligence. He considers that if he approaches this fight strategically, he should be able to win easily, as Jin Hyo barely has any strength left. Sehyun Kim moves towards his legs and declares, here's a tackle, thinking he needs to finish this quickly. He strikes Jin Hyo's chin and believes he has succeeded. The quest window notifies that he has used the To the Moon card, the Beast Mode Weasel card, and the Healing Beam. He believes it's over. The quest window notifies that his stamina has been restored. Yun Jo observes this and inquires if he has recovered his stamina. He supposes this is as far as he can go, considering it was too good a card to waste on someone like him. Sehyun Kim launches another attack. Yun Jo remarks that the Healing Beam is indeed an excellent card, but he knows something. He is not the only one with a healing card. The quest window notifies him that he has used the Healing Rice, which restores his stamina. It can be used twice per day and can also be used on a crew member. Jin Hyo attacks Sehyun Kim and smashes him against the wall. The quest window notifies that Jin Hyo's stamina has been restored. The girls are shocked to see this. Yun Jo instructs Jin Hyo to finish him. Sehyun Kim smirks. Yun Jo notices this and wonders if he is smiling. The quest window notifies that Jin Hyo has been inflicted with a bind. Jin Hyo moves to attack the girls. Sehyun Kim stands up and expresses gratitude to Yun Jo noting the number of cards he used in the battle. He had not expected Yun Jo to use so many cards. He acknowledges the upgraded version of the Healing Bean, considering it quite the card. Yun Jo is shocked to hear this and thinks to himself that he should not reveal that he intentionally dragged out the fight to discover what cards Sehyun Kim had. He realizes that now that he has seen four of Sehyun Kim's cards, it wouldn't hurt to show him a few more. Yun Jo activates the Load card. The quest window notifies that he has used the load card, which allows the user to load a crew member's card to use on themselves. It can only be used once per day and can load up to three cards. He mentions Hajun Gu's The Overlord's Descent card. The quest window notifies that he is loading crew member Hajun Gu's The Overlord's Descent card. The quest window displays an exclusive trigger card of Hajun Gu's The Overlord's Descent. This card slightly increases the user's strength while unleashing the aura of an overlord which binds nearby enemies and decreases their endurance. The overlord's return, consisting of two strikes, complements the overlord's descent by binding nearby enemies. The overlord's dominance remains unknown, and the bind's chance of success is proportional to Hajun Gu's strength, endurance, and speed. Additionally, enemies' endurance is decreased in proportion to Hajun Gu's strength, endurance, and speed with a card set effect of 23. Chains emerge and grab Jin Hyo. The quest window notifies that the Overlord's Descent card was used, resulting in Jin Hyo being inflicted with bind and his endurance being decreased. He then activates the Overlord's Return, stating, Hajun Gu's The Overlord's Return. The quest window notifies that he has used the load card to load crew member Hajun Gu's The Overlord's Return card. The quest window displays the trigger card, Hajun Gu Exclusive, The Overlord's Return, which summons a doppelganger with every attack, inflicting two offensive strikes on the opponent. The Overlord's Descent binds nearby enemies. The Overlord's Dominance remains unknown, and the card set effect is 23. It notifies him that the Overlord's Return card has been triggered. 
so Hyun Kim powers up and moves toward Jin Ti Hyo by taking a high jump. The quest window notifies that he has used the To the Moon card. He summons slime and extracts a sword from its little face. The quest window notifies that the slime summoning has been initiated and he uses the load card. He activates Ji Hyun Lee's Jijin Ryu. The quest window notifies that crew member Ji Hyun Lee's Jijin Ryu card has been loaded, granting the user the ability to employ Jijin Ryu, a traditional Japanese sword-based martial art that sacrifices endurance and relies entirely on strength and speed. It increases by three levels, with endurance fixed at F rank. He strikes the sword on Jin Ti Hyo's head, causing him to scream in pain. The quest window notifies that the Overlord's return card has been triggered as he utilizes Jijin Ryu. Karen Beek and Soha Young are shocked to see this. Jin Ti Hyo is knocked out by So Hyun Kim. He informs Yun Jo that he is the next. The quest window notifies of a side quest titled Rescue the Heroine, which includes three objectives. First, escape with the Heroine 11. Second, defeat 100 enemies 100d100. Third, defeat Jin Ti Hyo 1, with the reward being one platinum card. It notifies that the quest is complete. He has received a platinum card, and the effects of the load card have ended, returning his stats to normal. He states, claim card. The quest window notifies that he has claimed the platinum card and displays it. He examines it and realizes he was not expecting to receive this card. After a while, Ji Hyuk Jang arrives with some boys and asks Se Hyun Kim if he is alright. He informs him that advisor Ji Hyuk Jang is here with his soldiers in town to rescue him and he inquires about Jin Ti Hyo's whereabouts. He assures that he, Ji Hyuk Jang, and his guards will fight. So Ha Yong hugs Se Hyun Kim and cries. He comforts her, saying it's okay. He knows she has been through a lot, but it's all over now. There is no need to worry, they can go home. A gray-haired boy asks who the girl is. A yellow-haired boy replies that she works at the snack bar if she still does. He jests if Se Hyun Kim manages to seduce her already. He remarks that he'd expect nothing less from their top dog. Sehyun Kim glances towards Karen Beek. She apologizes, acknowledging that it seems like she was interrupting, and moves to leave from there. The yellow-haired boy asks what's with the vibe and mentions he thought he and Karen were close. The other asks if something happened between those two and if this means they now have a chance with Karen. She apologizes for getting kidnapped alongside Soha. She believes she must have been the one he came to rescue and she still thanks him for saving her. He reassures So Ha Young and tells her not to say that he came here because of her. She turns back and stops. He clarifies that he came here for her. The yellow-haired boy asks what that's supposed to mean if he came here for her. The other remarks that it was pretty major and asked if this decides who his love interest is once and for all. At that moment, Chen Hak Young arrives and asks where his sister is. He reassures him, saying, for God's sake, relax, she's fine. Chen Hak Yong hugs him and declares that he found her, and there she is. He asks if she is okay and if she is not hurt. So Ha Yong wonders why he chose her. Ji Hyok Jang remarks that it's excellent. Their war with the Central Five has finally come to an end. He thanks everyone for keeping up the good fight into the wee hours of the night. He expresses his sincere gratitude to the high-ranking members of their crew who have rendered distinguished services in this war emphasizing that this victory would not have been possible without them. He particularly acknowledges him, Ji Hyuk Jang, stating that thanks to his defection, they were able to find out where the hostages were located. He reiterates that they are honored to have him among them, and that West Gangbok High has become stronger after this war. They have gained the territory of the Central Five, as well as that of Ji Hyuk Jang. He mentions that there are not too many high-ranking members of North Gangbok High left for them to fight, and the day they will have to face Yun Zhou in battle is drawing near. He states that it's now time to decide what to do with the defeated. So Hyun Kim suggests bringing them in. He agrees and states to take a good look, as here are the remaining members of the Central Five over whom they have reigned victorious. So Hyun Kim suggests they first jeer at them a bit. Ji Hyuk Jang instructs everyone to get ready to boo these losers. He announces that the jeering has now concluded and asks if they have sufficiently mocked these losers. Ji Hyuk Jang confirms. He questions what they will do with them and considers the answer obvious. These four definitely gave them a run for their money. He thinks that Yoon Hyung Jai's stats are well and truly impressive. If they succeed in recruiting him, West Gangbok High will have another Yi Ha Han in its ranks. He examines Yoon Hyung Jai's stats details on the quest window. 
He believes the choice is clear and notes that all of them are in the prime of life. This is the time to try new things and challenge themselves. The quest window notifies that the Silver Tongue card has been triggered, which increases the user's probability of persuading the other party. The card festival effect increases the probability of persuasion. He realizes he needs to recruit them all and asks how long they plan on playing second fiddle to someone else at North Gangbok High. He asserts that it's time for all of them to strike out on their own, make a name for themselves, or if they are content to be Yun Jo's lackeys for the rest of their lives. The quest window notifies that his probability of persuading the other party is increased. Sehyun Kim moves his hand and suggests that all of them come to join West Gangbok High. There is no better time for them to dive into new experiences, that is how they grow and develop as people, and at West Gangbok High, they are a family. Yoon Hyung Jai asks if he wants them to join West Gangbok High. He confirms that's right. Yoon Hyung Jai refuses. The quest window notifies that he failed to persuade the other party. The effects of the two cards are clashing, and the lower-ranked card, Silver Tongue, is defeated. He states that they won't betray Yun Jo. The quest window notifies that the Silver Tongue card will not work on subjects who have been inflicted with a status condition. He reflects on how if the Silver Tongue card did not work, not only that, these guys have been inflicted with status conditions. He wonders what Yun Jo has done to them. The quest window shows the normal card, Chain of Indoctrination, which binds up to 10 targets with the Chain of Indoctrination, inflicting them with the Brainwash status condition. It mentions a cascading effect. When one person is released from the chain, other targets are also cleared of the Brainwash status condition. The quest window notifies that the effects of two cards are clashing, and the lower-ranked card, Chain of Indoctrination, is defeated, ending the effect of the Chain of Indoctrination card. He thinks about Yun Jo and concludes that he has no right to be upset about this. The card he received earlier is identical to the one that Yun Jo has, and he says nullify. The quest window notifies that he used the nullify card, and the effects of the chain of indoctrination card have ended. He believes he is just righting the wrongs they have committed. They all observe themselves. After a while, So Hyun Kim asks if they don't remember why they started working for Yun Jo. Yoon Hyung Jai confirms that's right, and the same goes for the other guys too. They just found themselves serving him as leader one day, and it felt like it was something they had to do. So Hyun Kim acknowledges this and thinks that the Central Five were affected by a status condition. He wonders how many people Yun Jo used his cards on. He asks what they will do now. Yoon Hyung Jai asks what he means. He asks if they are going to join West Gangbok High. Yi Ha Han states that they still need more talented people and they'd like him to be one of them. Yoon Hyung Jai agrees, saying okay. He asks if this means he will join. Yoon Hyung Jai confirms that he will join West Gangbok High, expressing his feeling that Yun Jo used him. Although it might be dangerous, he needs to find out the truth, and he will discover who Yun Jo truly is. The quest window notifies that Yoon Hyung Jai has joined his crew. Yoon Hyung Jai suggests giving the guys a gift. Yi Ha Han inquires about the gift. He explains that, as they know, he is one of the highest ranking members of the North Gangbok High crew, and as such, he knows a lot about them. He will provide them with intel on Sejong Ryu, and anyone ranked higher than him at North Gangbok High. So Hyun Kim thinks recruiting Yoon Hyung Jai was a great choice, and with all this intel at their fingertips, any upcoming fighting should be a cakewalk. Yoon Hyung Jai mentions that he will start by telling them about Sejong Ryu. He believes that after he takes down North Gangbuk High's best fighters and becomes stronger in the process, he will face off against Yunjo. Jiang Duma arrives. They all notice him. A boy in a white shirt asks who he is and where he came from. Another boy tells him that he can't enter, but Jiang Duma pushes past and moves forward. Ji Hyuk Jang is shocked to see him and says it is impossible. He asks what the mountain of North Gangbuk High is doing here on Earth. Jiang Du Ma receives a call from Yun Jo and informs him that he has just arrived, and the Central Five have switched over to West Gangbok High's side. He assures Yun Jo not to worry, that he won't make any mistakes, and that he will commence crushing West Gangbok High. Jiang Du Ma approaches Sehyun Kim. Yi Ha Han instructs everyone to protect Sehyun Kim. The members of West Gangbok High move to attack him, but Jiang Du Ma punches them one by one and knocks them out. So Hyun Kim watches them and thinks they are going to die. He moves to attack him. The quest window notifies that he used the stun fist. 
He believes that if he doesn't fight, everyone is going to die here. The quest window notifies that the stun fist failed. His opponent is immune to status conditions. Jeongdu Ma punches him in the face, throws him away, and charges him again. Yi Ha Han kicks him with a taekwondo tornado kick and thinks, let's stay calm here, in the midst of every crisis lies great opportunity. They might call him the mountain, but he's all by himself, and given how much stronger they have all gotten, they might have a fighting chance. The quest window notifies that the overlord's return card has been triggered. He believes that if they defeat Jeongdu Ma today, it will bring a big blow to North Gangbak Hai. Jeongdu Ma attacks both Yi Ha Han and Ha Jun Gu, smashing their faces on the floor. Yi Ha Han realizes he's totally unhurt. Yu Jong Na moves to attack him. Yi Ha Han grabs his arm and asks if he's going to dodge that. Where is he? Ha Jun Gu grabs the other hand and says this time, it's going to hurt. Yu Jong Na kicks him. The quest window notifies Yu Jong Na of using terabyte low kick. Chen Hak Yang grabs his tie and throws him over the shoulder to beat him to the floor. He asks if he thinks they are done. The quest window notifies that Chen Hak Yang used the Thunder Shoulder Throw card. Yi Ha Han thinks it's a great, clean hit. Jiang Du Ma acknowledges it's impressive. While he might have let his guard down, he did not expect them to be able to throw him, and it would be disrespectful for him not to treat this fight more seriously. He considers he's still completely fine how. Jiang Duma says now then, let him begin, and attack one by one, throwing them near Sehyun Kim. They all lie unconscious after being beaten. He informs Yun Jo that it's over, it took longer than he estimated by one whole minute. Yun Jo remarks that it's a minute too long. He apologizes. Yun Jo inquires about Sehyun Kim. He explains that Sehyun Kim was knocked unconscious earlier, and he will bring him to him. Yun Jo warns him not to let his guard down. He grabs Suhyun Kim by the shirt and starts dragging him. Suhyun Kim asks if he believes in miracles. Jiang Du Ma questions about miracles. The quest window shows the normal card Mirror Call, which, when all crew members are unable to battle, restores their stamina and increases some stats for one minute. The card festival effect is cooldown decreased by one week. He says at the end of despair lies a miracle. The quest window notifies that he used the Mirror Call card. Jiang Du Ma asks why to do something so pointless. The quest window notifies that his crew member's stamina has been restored. He questions if not giving up is pointless. The quest window notifies that his crew member's stats have increased. He admits that to be honest, he knows exactly what heinous deeds Yun Zhou is perpetrating. He acknowledges it might be limited to Gangbuk, but he knows that even after he unites Gangbuk, he won't stop there. He will lay waste to all of Seoul. He asserts he is not giving up because he is the only one who can stop him and suggests they go. The quest window indicates that he used the maximum capacity card and the card chapter card. They all move to attack him together. He declares that today, they are going to take Jiang Du Ma down. Meanwhile, Siak Kang asks what he just said. A brown-haired boy mentions that Jiang Du Ma showed up and Su Hyun and the other high-ranking fighters battled him. Siak Kang questions why the mountain of North Gangbak Hai would suddenly show up there. He admits he's not sure. Siak Kang asks what happened to Sahyon Kim and the other crew members, noting he said they fought Jiang Du Ma. He explains that something strange happened. Siak Kang inquires about what was strange. He states that they started fighting Jiang Du Ma when they all suddenly disappeared. At the same time, at Aja's karaoke, Ji Hyun Lee and Hyun Dong Lee ask what he means by they suddenly disappeared. He asks Suhyun Kim and Yi Ha Han, and all of them vanish. The other person confirms that's right. He explains they vanished into thin air, as if they were never there in the first place. Siok King thinks this doesn't make any sense. What exactly is going on here? A boy enters the room and says they have a problem. Ji Hyun Lee asks what's now and if they have found Suhyun Kim. He responds no, not yet. This is another problem. She asks about the other one. He explains he's on the move. She asks who he is. He clarifies the main forces of North Gangbok Hai and Yun Jo, its top dog. Siak Kang notes that So Hyun Kim disappeared, and Yun Jo is suddenly on the move. He wonders if he is about to attack them, or if something has gone wrong, and what Yun Jo is up to on Earth. The boy wonders what they should do and what his orders are. Siak Kang asks if he wants him to give him orders and questions why him. He states he is the highest ranked one here. Siok Kang considers giving orders in a situation like this and whether there is anything they can do at this point. 
now that the most powerful members of their crew have disappeared. West Gangbok High can't fall yet, and he needs to step up and quell the chaos. He declares that he will calm down all of them and take charge of the situation. Sohyun Kim arrives with other members and inquires about what's going on, questioning why everyone looks so serious. They are all shocked to see Sohyun Kim. Siak Kang thinks there's no way, pondering what exactly happened back there. Meanwhile, Yun Jo arrives and demands an explanation from Jiang Du Ma about what happened. Jiang Du Ma apologizes, admitting that he lost Sehyun Kim. Yun Jo grabs his neck, lifts him up, and asks if he failed. A bystander comments that they can't believe Yun Jo lifted Jiang Du with one hand. Yun Jo reflects that he doesn't understand what happened. He had been monitoring Jiang Du Ma and Sohyun Kim with a camera card when they suddenly disappeared. Thus, he came to investigate, only to discover that Sohyun Kim had managed to escape. He wonders how Sohyun Kim slipped through Jiang Du Ma's fingers and what exactly occurred in that brief moment. He contemplates his own actions. Meanwhile, at Jay Sing Karaoke, everyone gathers around Sohyun Kim, expressing relief that they thought something terrible had happened to him. Ji Hyuk Jang asks him to explain what exactly happened back there. Sohyun Kim responds, saying it's a little embarrassing to talk about, but what happened? The scene shifts to a flashback where Sohyun Kim stands with his crew member after increasing stats and moves to attack Jiang Du Ma together. Sohyun Kim mentions the fog of negotiation. The quest window notifies that he has used the fog of negotiation card. It displays the one-time use card, fog of negotiation which makes the user's current location a neutral zone for five minutes by filling the area with a gray fog. This fog makes it impossible for the user and their opponents to attack each other, cannot be used on extremely powerful opponents, increases the success rate of all negotiation and persuasion cards, and applies a stealth effect that renders the user and their opponents invisible to those outside the fog. Jiang Du Ma asks what this is. The quest window notifies that Jiang Du Ma has entered the fog of negotiation. He questions what's with this sudden fog. Sohyun Kim instructs everyone to stay sharp. The quest window notifies that Yu Jom Na, Yi Ha Han, and Ha Jun Gu have entered the fog of negotiation. Sohyun grabs Ha Jun Gu's hand and suggests they get out of there. He thinks they need to make a run for it. They need to quit while they're ahead. The truth is, they are not strong enough to win against Jiang Du Ma yet. Yi Ha Han asks if he wants them to run away instead of fighting. Sohyun Kim responds that they have tried everything they could. They can't beat that monster. He thinks they still have a long way to go, even though they have become much stronger. He wonders how much stronger they need to get. However, it's too early to despair because he is finally starting to see what he could not before and the stats of North Gangbuk High's elite fighter. He believes he is getting closer to Yun Zhou's level, and all the hard work he has been putting in is bearing fruit. At this rate, he will soon be able to face off against Yun Zhou. Yi Ha Han asks about the territory they gained. So Hyun Kim responds that the guys are more important than some territory, and they can let them have it. The scene shifts to the present. So Hyun Kim mentions that there's nothing special, they basically just ran for their lives. He states they are not at Jiang Du Ma's level yet, and they received word from Ji Hyuk as well. Hyun Dong Lee reports that he and the new members they recruited were able to safely escape. Haru Siong arrives and calls Sohyun Kim. He asks how she is doing. She apologizes. He asks what for. She explains that if she had defeated Jin Tihyo, none of this would have happened because of her. He wasted too much time, and Yun Jo even sent Jiang Duma after him. He responds that even if she had defeated Jin Tihyo, things would have turned out the same way. She asks what he means. He explains that Yun Zhou would have sent Jiang Du Ma anyway, and they would have been beaten to a pulp and barely escaped with their tails between their legs. She asserts that it's all because he was too weak. He pats her head and suggests that they all become stronger together. He asks what if she made a mistake, stating that she can try again, and he guarantees that she has the potential to become even stronger. Meanwhile, Yun Zhou declares that he will not give him a second chance. He states that he uses him because he does not make mistakes, and if it seems like that's no longer the case, he will abandon him on the spot. Jiang Duma agrees. Yun Zhou reminds him that he has plenty of people he can make use of. Jiang Duma assures him that he will do his best. After a while, Sohyun Kim lies on his bed at home and contemplates. He realizes he can see it now, he is starting to perceive the gap between Yun Zhou and himself, and he is finally reaching the end of all this. 
Suddenly, his phone starts ringing. He answers the call, and it's Yoon Yong Jai on the other side. Yoon Yong Jai identifies himself. So Hyun asks who he is. Yoon Yong Jai questions if he has already forgotten his voice and instructs him to check his phone. So Hyun Kim asks why. Yoon Jong Jai reveals that he is the one who asked him to send information on the North Gangbuk High Fighters ranked from 7th to 10th. So Hyun Kim confirms that he indeed sent it and sarcastically thanks him for betraying North Gangbuk High. He responds that there's no need to thank him. Just hurry up and review the info he sent, and a new war will begin soon. The copy cloud arrives and asks what he is doing. So Hyun Kim contemplates the next group of fighters. She insists that it's time for him to entertain her and asks what they are going to do today. He wonders how strong these four are going to be. No matter how powerful they are, he has no other choice but to take them down in order to grow even stronger. She continues to call him repeatedly. He thinks it won't be long until he and Yun Jo battle for the very last time. She grabs his hand, sits on him, and demands that he answer her. Meanwhile, some boys come to Yun Jo holding Jin Ti Hyo and call him. He asks what it is. A boy says they brought Jin Ti Hyo. Yun Jo instructs them to leave and approaches Jin Ti Hyo. He remarks that he guesses he can't even call him trash anymore. He grabs his face, lifts him up in the air, drains his mana, and throws him away, calling him slime. Yun Jo questions if anyone would even call him human at this point and who told him to come out without his permission. A girl sits at the next table and remarks that Su Hyun Kim is proving to be a bigger thorn in his side than he expected. She suggests that he won't lose to him of course, but it might be best to have a safety mechanism in place. Yun Jo responds that there is no need. She asks Yun Jo if he wants to do it one more time. After a while, the person ranked 9th in North Gangbuk High sits between girls and remarks that now this is interesting. He asks if they dare summon them. Sianu Ha, ranked 8th in North Gangbuk High, sits holding some cards and agrees that he thinks it's perfectly reasonable, considering he is now part of the top 10. Sijong Ryu also joins them and comments that having the higher ranked members gather there as if they are at their beck and call, he better has a very good reason for this. Sijong Ryu adds that he thinks they will find that he does. He is there to pass on a message from Yunjo. The person ranked 9th stood up and asked if he meant he spoke to him directly. Sijong Ryu reassures him, stating that here is his message. The Central Five have been defeated, and the top 10 are to work together and prepare to battle West Gangbuk High. The person ranked 9th exclaims that at last they have their orders. Sijong Ryu agrees, mentioning that Yunjo is furious. He inquires about all of them working together and states that he does not think there's a need for that, as those two are already one. Sianu Ha mentions that they are finally fighting West Gangbuk High and asks how he is feeling. Tiho Chin, ranked 7th in North Gangbuk High, takes a long high jump, lands on the floor, and mentions that he is in peak physical condition. He asks to be filled in and inquires about who the strongest fighter at West Gangbuk High is. Meanwhile, Yoon Yong Jai mentions that West Gangbuk High has two problems. So Hyun Kim sits there with Yi Ha Han and others and notes that they came here because he said he had something to tell them, but to think they have not just one but two problems. He acknowledges that's right. So Hyun Kim agrees and suggests they hear him out. Yoon Yong Jai begins by addressing the first problem, the pecking order. So Hyun Kim asks about the pecking order. Yoon Hyung Jai explains it as the members ranking, stating that in this aspect, West Gangbuk High is a total mess. He questions if he ranked the members in order of when they joined his crew and mentions he has never in his life heard of an organization like this. He asks why anyone would bother making an effort to improve when they are ranked in chronological order. Yoon Hyung Jai suggests that the ranking of West Gangbuk High's fighters must be re-established depending on their skills and abilities. He then addresses the second problem where his crew members are stationed. Yi Ha Han inquires about where they are stationed. He states that currently, the high-ranking members of West Gangbuk High are quite literally stationed all over the place, and he is sure there was a good reason why each member was assigned to their respective locations. But the most important thing right now is their impending war with North Gangbuk High. He emphasizes that their best fighters need to be stationed on the front lines so that they can answer the call of war at any given moment. Considering his most recent skirmish with North Gangbok High, too few of his high-ranking fighters were able to take part. He suggests that had they already been close by, they might have been able to defeat Jiangdu Ma. 
Yi Ha Han acknowledges that he's right on both fronts, they have been neglecting the basics of running a crew. Recruiting him was well worth the effort, he sees. So Hyun Kim asks if they should go with what Yoon Hyun Jai suggested and how they should rearrange the members' rankings. Ji Hyuk Jang says it sounds like it's now his turn to speak. He has already reordered the members accordingly and opens a scroll. So Hyun Kim asks when he managed to do that. He responds that this was a matter he had also been debating as West Gangbuk began to grow in size. He begins by stating that now let him begin. First, he ranks Chang Ju Min from South Gangbuk High 21st, as he's a fairly well-rounded fighter, and he could not exclude him, given his experience as a high-ranking member of South Gangbok High's crew. He continues, saying Dong Yu Wang, also from South Gangbok High, is ranked 20th for similar reasons as Chang Ju Min. Next, Jinguo from South Gangbok High, while not the sharpest tool in the shed, is ranked 19th on the merits of his physical prowess, and he puts him in charge of a small contingent, believing he'll do well. He adds that Hak Jin Ju, another member originally from South Gangbok High, even put him in a tough spot once with his ploy and came up with ideas that surprised even him at times, so he thought he deserved a rank of 18th. He continues, stating that next is Hyondong Lee from West Gangbok High. While his fighting prowess is lacking, he values his expert handling of the crew's internal affairs. Currently, he is responsible for running their snack bar. He then mentions Dong Tak Seo from East Gangbok High. He was one of the highest ranked members of East Gangbok High, and overall he thinks ranking him 16th would be appropriate. He proceeds to Changong Yom, also from East Gangbok High. He proved his worth during their battle against East Gangbok, and he believes he will excel in his new rank of 15th. Next, he mentions Bi Gi Hong from North Gangbok High. He was one of the Central Five who gave them so much trouble in their last battle, and a rank of 14th seems suitable for him. He concludes with Minu Du, also from North Gangbok High. He proved his fighting prowess during his fight against Yujong Na, and him, he thought a rank of 13th would be appropriate. He proceeds to Ti Hyung Lim, another former member of the North Gangbok High crew, one of the people who showed them why the Central Five were so revered. He deserves a rank of 12th, he thought. Next up is him, ranked 11th, Ji Hyuk Jang from West Gangbok High. He ranked himself quite a bit lower compared to before, as they have had a lot of talented people join them since. He then mentions Chin Hak Yong from North Gangbok High, who showed what he was capable of by defeating Ti Hyun Lim, one of the Central Five. If it were not for him, they would have lost to North Gangbok High this time around. He is ranked 10th. Following is Yoon Hyung Jai, also from North Gangbok High, ranked 9th. He feels like this ranking might be a little high, but with both brains and brawn, a ranking of 9th is fitting for him. Next is Ji Hyun Lee from South Gangbok High, ranked 8th. He kept her near the top as she possesses both combat prowess and leadership in spades. She's a hidden trump card, capable of turning a situation around in their favor at any given moment. He mentions Haru Seong from North Gangbok High, ranked 7th. He ranks her highly due to the sheer potential she possesses. Of course, if she were to realize her potential, she wouldn't be able to maintain that rank. Next is Yu Jom Na from South Gangbok High, ranked 6th. He proved himself to be a powerful fighter and a loyal member of this crew during the recent battle with North Gangbok High, and his combat prowess alone merits him the rank of 6th. He mentions Siak Kang from South Gangbok High. Once introduced as one of West Gangbok High's Central Three, no one would question him being ranked 5th. Next is Yi Ha Han from East Gangbok High. As he's a strong fighter with an intellect to match, there is no reason not to rank him highly. He thinks they can all accept that he deserves to be ranked 4th. Next is Ha Jun Gu of West Gangbok High, ranked 3rd. He's a loyal member of this crew who has gotten him out of several jams. His abilities in battle alone justify that rank. Kyu Ya of West Gangbok High not only possesses great potential, but he's been a big help to him in more ways than one. As he's his right-hand man, it's only fitting that he stays ranked second. Finally, as for who's first, well he knows. Sohyun Kim comments that all sounds okay to him and asks if he doesn't think he is ranked too low. Ji Hyuk Jang responds that as all he has to offer is his intellect, he should concede his spot to those who are skilled fighters and the ranking can always change. He then asks about where they should be stationed and suggests they go with Yoon Hyung's suggestion on that too. He asks if they should move all of their high-ranked fighters to the front lines. Sohyun Kim agrees, saying yeah, now that concludes today's meeting.
He notices Ji Hyuk Jang crying and asks why he is crying. Ji Hyuk Jang responds that he just can't quite believe it. It was not too long ago that the number of people in their crew could be counted on one hand, and yet today, they are large enough to have a member ranked 20th. As one of the crew members, he can't help but be touched by how far they have come. Si Hyun Kim agrees, saying yeah, Ji Hyuk Jang's right. He adds that they might actually end up uniting Gangbuk one day. Yi Ha Han places a hand on his shoulder and says he can't let down his guard yet. Yun Jo has him in his sights, and without him, West Gangbok High will fall apart. He says he needs to watch his back at all times. After a while, Sehyun Kim sits holding a card and asks if they understood that, thinking that his once tiny crew, West Gangbok High, would grow to such a degree that uniting all of Gangbok no longer seems like a pipe dream. He believes that defeating Jin Tae-hyo made him even stronger, and he is starting to get on Yun Jo's nerves, no doubt. That's why he needs to hurry up and become stronger before he tries anything. He needs to face him in battle as soon as possible. He believes the final fight is approaching. His copy Cloud comes there and asks why he is grinning so foolishly. He responds that it looks like she is getting around just fine on her own now. She agrees, thanking him for letting her loose. The girl sitting at the next table is surprised to see her, and a black-haired girl comments that she's so pretty. The other girl asks who that is. The copy cloud sits with him and asks what he was thinking so intently about. He responds that she knows, and it's just about uniting gangbuck and stuff. She asks what they are doing today. He responds with a good question and suggests checking out the restaurant they couldn't go to last time. She agrees, saying it sounds good. A white-haired girl comes over and sits in his lap. She asks if he knows this woman and what she is doing. Then she kisses him on the lips, shocking everyone present. After the kiss, she leaves without saying anything. The copy cloud grabs his shirt and expresses frustration, saying she is getting really sick and tired of this and asks when he found the time to seduce another woman. She tells him to get his life together. He denies it, saying she has got it wrong, that he has never seen her, and then falls unconscious. She calls out to him, telling him to wake up. The white-haired girl reassures Yun Jo that he is watching, and that he does not need to worry, as the safety mechanism is in place. Meanwhile, Ji Hyuk Jang is in shock and asks what Sehyun is saying that he collapsed. A boy in a white shirt confirms, saying yes, he was in a coffee shop when he suddenly fell unconscious. Ji Hyuk Jang expresses confusion, asking what the heck happened. Yi Ha Han questions why Sehyun would suddenly collapse in a coffee shop and where Sehyun Kim is now. Yoon Young Jai speculates if it is from exhaustion or something. The boy responds that he's currently at home. Ki Ha Han expresses concern, saying that is not good, as he is sure that won't happen, but if North Gang Bak Hai were to attack them now. A brown-haired boy rushes in, announcing they have a problem. They are under attack from North Gang Bak Hai. Ji Hyuk Jang exclaims asking what. Ki Ha Han blames him and his mouth, questioning why he'd have to jinx them like that. Yun Hyun Jai asks what he means by saying that they are under attack from North Gang Bak Hai, who is leading the attack, why didn't anyone know about this, and how many foes they are up against. He responds that it's just one. Yi Ha Han questions if it's just one person and suggests there might be a mistake. Ji Hyuk Jang says that's preposterous and asks if he walked into West Gang Bak territory all by himself and how many of their high-ranking fighters are stationed there. He lists them. Cheng Ju Min, Jingguan, Hak Jin Ju, Dong Yu Wang, Dong Tak Seo, Chang Gong Yong, as well as Bi Ki Hong and 50 fighters. Yi Ha Han reassures that they should be good then, mentioning that Dong Tak, Chang Gong, the action team, and even Bi Ki Hong are there. Ji Hyuk Jang agrees and asks Yun Hyung what the matter is. He suggests retreat, telling everyone to retreat. Yi Ha Han questions what he is talking about, reiterating that it's just one guy. He responds that's the problem. There's only one person in North Gangbok High who dare set foot in enemy territory alone. Meanwhile, Ti Ho Chin moves to attack them and announces that he is ranked 7th in North Gangbok High, extending greetings to West Gangbok High. He asks if everyone is present and introduces himself as Ti Ho Chin, expressing his desire for the battle to be epic. A boy punches Ti Ho Chin and others move to attack and grab him. Another boy comments that this is Ti Ho Chin and remarks that he is nothing special after all. On the other side, Ji Hyuk Jang asks what's happening, why they should tell their troops to retreat, and if Ti Ho Chin is really that strong. Yoon Hyung Jai explains that they don't understand just how strong Ti Ho Chin is. 
Yi Ha Han asks why he's ranked 7th and requests an explanation. Yoon Hyung Jai elaborates, stating that not even Jiang Du Ma, who's ranked 3rd, would be able to overpower him easily. Ji Hyuk Jang asks what he means, considering Jiang Du Ma is so strong. Yoon Hyung Jai clarifies that Tiho rose to the rank of 7th on the merit of his brawn alone, and his nickname serves as proof of his combat prowess. Ji Hyuk Jang inquires about his nickname, to which Yoon Hyung Jai responds that they call him the Hulk. Meanwhile, Ti Ho Chen attacks the West Gangbok High troops and expresses his disdain for lulls in the fighting, urging them to come at him. They move to attack him, shouting to get him. Meanwhile, Yoon Hyung Jai remarks that it's a stupid nickname, but it's the only way he can describe him. Ji Hyuk Jang asks what martial art he practices and what his fighting style is. Yoon Hyung Jai responds that he practices none, he's never trained in any martial arts. He operates purely on instinct, and people begin to call him the Hulk because of the rough, unsophisticated way he fights. At the moment, Ti Ho Chin brutally beats the West Gangbok High troops and takes a high jump to attack the rest of them. A boy sees him and questions what hope they have of defeating a beast like him. Ti Ho Chin continues to attack them and knocks them out, then moves on to the next. Dong Tak Seo punches him in the face and warns that they are too green. They should stay out of this, as this foe is beyond any of them. He reflects on his training and the effort he put in to become stronger, all in preparation for this day. Chang Gung Yong grabs him by the shoulders and hits him with his head, declaring that it's their turn to step up. He resolves not to fall behind the others anymore. Ti Ho Chin punches both of them simultaneously, throwing them away and commends their fighting spirit. Dong Takasio remarks that he took out both him and Chang Gung Yong with a single punch. He curses, realizing that this is where he is hiding, and turns back to see Beek Gi Hong. Beek Gi Hong stands there holding his golf stick and greets him with a long no see. He moves to attack Beek Gi Hong, demanding to know how he dared betray Yun Zhou. Beek Gi Hong responds that he doesn't know how long he will be able to hold his own against him. Meanwhile, Yi Ha Han moves with his troops and commands them to call everyone in. Ti Ho Chen has invaded their territory by himself, presenting them with a chance they must seize. No matter how strong he might be, he's all alone. Yi Ha Han sees this as a heaven-sent opportunity, they will gang up on him, knowing he won't be able to take on all of them at once. He orders them to summon their strongest fighters. While it may be a cowardly move, they can win if they all attack him simultaneously, and he asks if they understand. He announces that they are on the move, their high-ranking fighters are headed to Ti Ho Chin's current location. However, he thinks it's not enough. He states that he doesn't care, he will fight dirty if he has to, as long as it means they win this war. He ponders that they need someone stronger and asks where So Hyun Kim is. Meanwhile, So Hyun Kim lies on the bed while the copy cloud stands near him and calls out to him. So Hyun Kim wakes up and asks where he is. The copy cloud expresses her relief that he's finally awake and informs him that they are at home. She mentions that he suddenly collapsed, so she carried him back home. So Hyun Kim recalls the incident after kissing the woman and admits that it felt good but caused him to fall. She questions when he manages to seduce another woman. He denies it, claiming he doesn't even know her, and swears by it. The quest window notifies him that his stats are sealed. He looks towards it in disbelief and questions what is happening. The quest window notifies him that his stats are currently under seal and cannot be increased. So Hyun Kim wonders why his stats have been sealed all of a sudden and how this could have happened. The quest window notifies him that to unseal his stats, either a certain length of time must pass, or he must use a card. He reflects on the only recent significant action being kissing the woman and expresses his desire to do it again. However, he considers the possibility of her working for Yun Jo, finding it entirely plausible that he is currently under the effect of a card. At that moment, his phone starts ringing. She alerts him, saying his phone is ringing. He acknowledges and answers the call. Yi Ha Han is on the line and asks if he is alright, mentioning he heard he suddenly fainted. So Hyun Kim reassures him that he is okay for now. Yi Ha Han continues, expressing that things are not looking good at the moment. So Hyun Kim inquires about the situation. Yi Ha Han explains that Ti Ho Chin has appeared on their territory and Beek Gi Hong is currently engaged in a fight with him. However, he adds that Beek Gi Hong is no match for Ti Ho Chin, emphasizing the need for Su Hyun Kim's help. He informs Su Hyun Kim that Ti Ho Chin is currently alone, presenting an opportunity to take him down. 
The quest window notifies Sohyeon Kim that a new main quest is available. To defeat Tihochen, the Lone Invader 01, with the reward being one Master Card, Sohyeon Kim ponders over this information and tells Yi Ha Han to listen carefully. Yi Ha Han asks what it is. Sohyeon Kim emphasizes that this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for them. They must defeat Tihochen today, no matter what, as he needs that card. He says they need to send all of their troops after him. They will gang up on him like never before and go after him with the full might of West Gang Bakai. Yi Ha Han says exactly what he was thinking. He guesses great minds do think alike and says don't worry, the reinforcements he summoned should have arrived by now. So Hyun Kim says they are not enough. He asks what he means, he says they are up against someone nicknamed the Hulk and they are going to need a clever, well thought plan this time. He says to send in the person he designated to fight Ti Ho Chin. He asks who would that be. The Hyun Kim says it's Ji Hyuk Jang. He says he can't be serious. Siok Kang asks if everyone heard the plan. Ji Hyun Lee says she did. Haru Seong asks if it could be that Sehyun's finally lost his marbles. Kyuja Ya says she took the words right out of his mouth. She says she was looking forward to finding out what brilliant plan Sehyun had come up with this time, but to think his plan was to have Ji Hyuk fight Ti Ho Chin. After a while, Ji Hyuk Jang stands in front of Ti Ho Chin, tears streaming down his face, and asks why he has forsaken him. He moves to attack and questions if they sent their advisor to fight him, adding that Yun Jo will be mighty pleased if he brings him back. Meanwhile, Suhyun Kim rides his bicycle and reflects on Ti Ho Chin, also known as the Hulk. He acknowledges Ti Ho Chin's immense power but notes his lack of intelligence. Suhyun Kim considers using Ti Ho Chin's stupidity to his advantage. He thinks that when Ti Ho Chin sees their advisor facing him, he will likely let his guard down. However, what if their advisor turns out to be a highly skilled fighter? Sehyun Kim decides to use the CHCH Changes card. The quest window notifies him that he has claimed the Changes card, which allows the user to switch two crew members' stats for two minutes. It can only be used once per day, with the card festival effect increasing the duration by one minute. Sehyun Kim plans to switch his stats with Ji Hyuk Jang's. Meanwhile, Ji Hyuk Jang charges up for the fight, expressing his frustration at watching everyone else fight from the sidelines and declaring that now it's his turn. Ti Ho Chin scoffs at the idea of an advisor thinking they can beat him and challenges them to come at him. The quest window notifies that the stats of all those in Kyuja Ye's vicinity have decreased. It reveals a normal card exclusive to Kyuja Ye called El Diablo, which decreases all stats of everyone in the vicinity, including allies, by one level for three minutes. The quest window further notifies that Kyuja Ye has used El Diablo. Feeling his body suddenly become heavier, Kyuja Ye reflects on the effect. Meanwhile, Ji Hyuk Jang attacks Ti Ho Chin, throwing him away, and declares himself as no mere advisor. He asserts that his name is Ji Hyuk Jang, the man destined to unite Gangbuk. He wonders if this is Ti Ho Chin's true power. Ti Ho Chin lies on the floor, pondering why that punch hurt. He considers the possibility that he might be more powerful than his leader, prompting him to question why he has been following orders all this time. He declares that from this moment onward, he shall reign above all. Ti Ho Chin realizes that West Gang Bak Hai possesses a powerful fighter too and smiles. Ji Hyuk Jang moves to attack him, but Ti Ho Chin counters. Ji Hyuk Jang blocks his attack with his arms and attempts another attack, expressing his intention to match his combat power and request to fight. Siak Kang, Kyu Jia Ya, Haru Siang, and Ji Hyun Lee move to attack him together. Meanwhile, Yi Ha Han inquires about the situation, questioning if Ji Hyuk Jang is indeed holding his own against Ti Ho Chin. The boy confirms, stating that there's no doubt about it. They just received word that he's evenly matched against Ti Ho Chin, suggesting that he might have been hiding his true power all this time. Yi Ha Han expresses disbelief, saying no way. He then asks how this could be possible. Yi Ha Han shares his idea, contemplating what's happening, suggesting the possibility that Ji Hyuk Jang has a twin brother, a younger sibling who's skilled in combat, while Ji Hyuk is the highly intelligent older brother. He recalls hearing about a pair of brothers like that in Gangnam, but dismisses the idea as ridiculous. Nonetheless, he sees this as their opportunity. Ji Hyuk Jang is buying enough time for the other fighters to arrive, and once Sehyun Kim and the rest of West Gang Bak Hai's high-ranking fighters join the fray, they will be able to defeat Ti Ho Chin today. Yoon Hyung Jai expresses concern, saying something doesn't seem right. 
He asks what he means. Yoon Yong Jai thinks that no matter how strong Ti Ho Chin is, he won't be able to handle all of West Gang Bak Hai's elite fighters, and at this rate, he really will lose to them. However, he wonders how it can be this easy and what the man ranked 8th could be up to. He considers whether he should abandon Ti Ho Chin. On the other hand, Ji Hyuk Jang punches Ti Ho Chin, and he also punches him back, remarking that it's impressive. He did not expect him to be able to withstand his punch. He says he will put a little more weight behind it this time and moves to punch him again. But Ji Hyuk Jang bends down. He thinks he dodged that. How cowardly. Ji Hyuk Jang asks if he really expects them to fight him as he wants and thinks their goal is to wear him out and buy them more time. Haru Siong attacks him. The quest window notifies that Haru Siong is using capoeira while Kyu Ya is using Yamezak style Kyokushin karate. Kyu Ya also hits him on the chin. He says that's not nearly enough to knock him out. The quest window notifies that Ji Hyun Lee is using Jai Jin Ryu. Ji Hyun Lee attacks him. Ji Hyuk Jang thinks of staying arrogant. Soon, his liege will arrive. Siok Kang grabs him over the belly and slams him to the ground. The quest window notifies that Siok Kang is using infinite suplex. They consider whether those attacks were effective, even a little. Ti Ho Chen lies on the floor and says he sees, so this is all they've got. He mentions he was hoping for one heck of a fight and thought today would be the day, but if they have nothing else to show him, he'd better start wrapping things up now. He moves toward Ji Hyun Lee to attack and says he will put a little bit of strength behind this punch. Kyu Ya comes in between and her punch hits him. Kyu Ya says she will not allow him to lay a finger on her and sees Sehyun entering, saying he is late. Sehyun Kim arrives there along with other fighters. The quest window notifies that CHCH changes have reached their time limit. His stats have returned to normal. He says since it seemed like he wanted to fight all of them at once, he gathers everyone here and says now let them have one heck of a fight. Meanwhile, a boy informs Yi Ha Han that Sehyun Kim has arrived on the scene. Yi Ha Han responds, saying good, with Sehyun Kim there, everything should be fine, the others will be there soon too. He asserts that they will take Ti Ho Chin down today and thinks he is far too arrogant. At this moment, Ti Ho Chin observes Su Hyun Kim, the top dog of West Gang Bak Hai, Ha Jun Gu, ranked third, and Yu Jom Na too, realizing the rest of his fight will be there shortly. He decides it's time for him to make a run for it. Kyu Ya questions if he is running away, to which Su Hyun Kim reacts, asking how dare he, stating that he ran all the way here and they shouldn't joke about that. Ti Ho Chin starts running from the scene. Sehyun Kim urges everyone to go after him, while Kyu Ya mentions he's too fast. Despite this, they agree they have to take him down today. A white shirt boy interrupts, reporting there's trouble. Yi Ha Han asks what it is. He reports that they are under attack from North Gang Bak Hai. Sehyun Kim inquires what he means. He explains that as soon as their high-ranking fighters left the territories they were overseeing to rush over here and fight Ti Ho Chin, North Gangbok Hai invaded and claimed those areas for themselves. He admits that their mistake was solely focusing on Ti Ho Chin. They waltzed right in and stole their territory, and they could not do a thing to stop them. He demands to know who was at their helm, who dared invade their territory. He reveals that distracting them by using Ti Ho Chin as bait appears to have been a ploy by Sianu Ha, ranked 8th at North Gangbok Hai. Sianu Ha comments, well this is easy. Meanwhile, Yi Ha Han grabs the boy's shirt and inquires about Sianu Ha. The boy responds that there's no need to grab him by the collar like that. They fell right into his trap. Yoon Hyung Jai remarks that this was all Sianu Ha's plan. Yi Ha Han asks what's that supposed to mean and who is this Sianu Ha guy? The boy explains that he told him that they call Ti Ho Chen the Hulk because while he's got brute strength, his intelligence is lacking. However, with a master tactician at his side, he can be put to very good use and Sianu Ha is such a tactician. He continues, saying that they work seamlessly together. Sianu Ha is the brain of the duo, while Ti Ho Chen is the brawn. He admits they were too complacent about their strengths and what a formidable pair they make and this time they bested them. Meanwhile, Sehyun Kim contemplates that they have lost. His crew member informs him that Ti Ho Chin is gone. It seems like his exit route was perfectly planned in advance. It'd be too dangerous to give chase. They might have laid an ambush on the route. Sehyun Kim reflects that they were soundly defeated. They could not even inflict a major injury on Ti Ho Chin. He wonders why North Gang Bak Hai's combat prowess is so much greater than theirs. 
he considers that there isn't a significant difference in potential between his crew members and Yun Zhou's lackeys. He believes he started completing quests not too long after Yun Zhou did. Suppose there is something he is missing. He ponders that they even underwent intense training to get stronger, so why can't they catch up with them? What exactly is Yun Zhou's secret? He wonders if there is no way for him to level up his crew any further, and then he thinks to wait a minute. Come to think of it, there's that card he received as a reward for the Gangbuck conference quest. The quest window displays a normal card labeled Lesser Leap of Strength, which increases the user's strength by 05 but decreases the user's intelligence by 3 levels in exchange. This card will disappear once used, and the card festival effect can be used twice. He considers the Lesser Leap of Strength card, he discarded it since it would decrease intelligence too much. But what if that was only because it was a bronze card? The quest window reveals a superior Leap of Strength card, which increases the user's strength by 05 level. This card will disappear once used, and the card festival effect can be used twice. He contemplates that if he manages to get his hands on the superior Leap of Strength card, he might be able to level up his crew further without decreasing their intelligence. He concludes that this was Yun Zhou's secret. He considers that his stats are currently sealed. Instead of lazing about, he should focus on making his crew members stronger. But how does he get his hands on the Leap of Strength card? He thinks that by completing more quests, that is the only way. If he were this dedicated to his studies, his grades would be a lot better. In any case, there is no hope. He believes his crew can become even stronger. He needs to complete quests and collect as many Leap of Strength cards as possible. After a while, at the snack bar, Yi Ha Han asks what the matter is and why he asked him to come to this burger joint. A black-haired boy stands behind him and tells him to look right in front of him, and he will see why. Yi Ha Han asks what's up with him, he says he's been there for an hour. Yi Ha Han asks for an hour. He confirms saying yes he doesn't know exactly what happened, but Siak Kang is stuffing his face. He tends to eat when he's stressed and asks if Yi Ha Han knows what might have triggered it. Yi Ha Han says he has a feeling it's because of Ti Ho Chen. Fiak Kang eats a lot of burgers and thinks he snubbed him. The scene shifts to a flashback where fighters from West Gangbuk High are battling Ti Ho Chen. Siak Kang arrives and asks if he is Ti Ho Chen, saying it's nice to meet him. He introduces himself as Siak Kang from South Gangbuk High and mentions he's been looking for a worthy opponent lately. He remarks that it seems like Ti Ho Chin will fit the bill, but advises him not to take it too personally, as he'd just be the latest in a long line of foes he has defeated. Ti Ho Chin asks if it is so. Siak Kang affirms, stating that he, Siak Kang of South Gang Bak Hai, will crush him. Ti Ho Chin responds apologetically, saying he has absolutely no idea who he is. The scene shifts back to the present. Siak Kang expresses disbelief, questioning how Ti Ho Chin could not know who he is, he thinks if that was an attempt to goad him into a fight, it worked. Siak Kang believes he will be the one to take him down. Meanwhile, Sianu Ha sits playing cards and comments on drawing one card from the front and one from the back, deeming it not bad. He remarks that the war with West Gang Bak Hai should be easy to win. Ti Ho Chen approaches him and calls out to him. Ti Ho Chen hugs Sianu Ha and expresses gratitude, saying it's great work, but Sianu Ha replies that it doesn't feel like work. It's been ages since he had so much fun. Ti Ho Chin insists that Sianu Ha should thank him. Ti Ho Chin explains that while Sianu Ha distracted them, he was able to sneak in and reclaim what was rightfully theirs, recovering some of the territory they lost to them. Sianu Ha states that this is the next part of his plan, and it won't be that much different from the last one. They are going after the high-ranking fighters of West Gangbuk Hai. He asks what it is. Ti Ho Chen interrupts, saying there's no need to bother explaining as he won't get it anyway, and he will be happy as long as he gets a chance to fight a strong opponent. Pianu Ha assures Ti Ho Chen not to worry, as he will make that happen. He then inquires if West Gang Buk Hai has what he is looking for a truly powerful opponent. Ti Ho Chen responds that there was someone who introduced himself out of the blue. Sianu Ha asks for the person's name, but Ti Ho Chen admits that he had totally forgotten. Sianu Ha remarks that Ti Ho Chin never fails to amaze him, encouraging him to hang in there for just a little longer. He acknowledges that thanks to Ti Ho Chin, West Gang Bok Hai's morale is at an all-time low, and this war will only get easier as time progresses. Speaking of which, he can't help but wonder what the mood is right now at West Gang Bok Hai. 
Meanwhile, at West Gang Bak Hai, Ji Hyuk Jang remarks that the situation is dire. Someone asks if it's because of Ti Ho Chin. Ji Hyuk Jang confirms, stating that the morale of West Gang Bak Hai, except for that of their high-ranking fighters, has sharply declined. This happened after word spread that Ti Ho Chin single-handedly dominated in a fight against their troops. In fact, morale is currently so low that they can't expect their soldiers to demonstrate their usual fighting prowess. The quest window notifies that his troop stats have decreased. Yi Ha Han comments that war is a numbers game, they need to find a way to raise their morale as soon as possible. Sehyun Kim suggests that all they need to do is defeat Ti Ho Chin. Yi Ha Han asks if he has any bright ideas. Sehyun Kim responds that they will just gang up on him. He criticizes this as a cheap, underhanded method that he and the rest of their West Gangbuk high group often use. Fahyun Kim acknowledges that Ti Ho Chin may not have a lot of troops under him, implying that although he may be strong, he won't be able to defend himself against the attacks of their high-ranking fighters for long if they gang up on him. He expresses disbelief at himself for suggesting something so cowardly in such an analytical manner. Yun Hyong Jai disagrees, saying that the plan will never work. He points out that he has never been ganged up on by them and questions how he would know. Yun Hyong Jai responds that the issue isn't that, but rather the ninth ranked individual in North Gangbok High. He inquires about this ninth ranked person. Yun Hyong Jai explains that he is right. Ti Ho Chen and Sian Ha don't have a big unit under them, which is why they work together, utilizing their exceptional brains and brawn. He adds that the ninth ranked individual is their polar opposite. Sehyun Kim asks about their polar opposite. He confirms that Yuijin Jong, ranked 9th in North Gangbok High, commands the largest number of troops in North Gangbok High. Fahyun Kim inquires about the largest number of troops. He confirms that's correct, and undoubtedly, those three are now working together, and he guarantees that Yuijin Jong has sent some of his troops to support Ti Ho Chen and Sianu Ha. Sehyun Kim remarks that they would have ended up being ganged up on instead. The quest window notifies the creation of a side quest. Defeat Yuijin Jong, ranked 9th in North Gangbok High. The first objective is annihilate Yuijin Jong's troops 01 with a reward of 3 platinum cards. The second, third, fourth, and fifth objectives are unknown, with rewards being unknown as well. Sohyun Kim expresses relief and thinks about the quest with 3 platinum cards as his reward, but he wonders what he should do about Ti Ho Chin. Ji Hyuk Jang asks about the final remark. He apologizes, mentioning he finally let out gas that he had been holding in for a while and considers who he should focus on beating first. Yoon Hyung Jai shares his plan to deal with those three. He asks about the plan. Yoon Hyung Jai explained that they would divide West Gangbok's forces into three groups. He inquires about dividing them. Yoon Hyung Jai explains that, as he knows, they are up against three main foes this time around. Ti Ho Chen, Yui Jin Jong, and Si Jong Ryu. He asks about Sianu Ha. Yun Hyung Jai says he excluded him because he and Ti Ho Chin are inseparable. If they continue what they have been doing, there's no chance of them winning, but they will have a better chance if they divide and conquer. He says first, Yi Ha Han has agreed to take on Si Dong Ryu, seeing as how he's also got a score to settle with Si Jong Ryu, while Su Hyun and he can go after Yui Jin Jong. So Hyun Kim points at himself and asks if he is going with him, wondering why. Yoon Hyung Jai explained that it was because he knew Yuijin Jong very well. He agrees, expressing his trust, and then asks about Ti Ho Chin, inquiring who will go up against Ti Ho Chin and Sianu Ha. Yoon Hyung Jai mentions that's what he's debating too. They need someone to buy them some time by fighting Ti Ho Chin while Yi Ha Han is battling Siyong Ryu and they are dealing with Yuijin Jong. Siok Kang is holding burgers and volunteering to do the task. Yi Ha Han asks if he is sure he is up for it and notes that Siok Kang does not look so good. Sehyun Kim adds that he is not intelligent enough for the task. Ji Hyuk Jang interjects, saying let him do this, and reminds them that Siok Kang was once the top dog of South Gangbok High. Besides, he has never seen him make a face like that before. Sehyun Kim agrees, saying alright, it sounds like a plan. Yi Ha Han will be assigned to Area A to face off against Sejong Ryu, with Ha Jun Gu, Yu Jom Na, Chang Gong Yom, and Dong Tak Seo. He states that meanwhile, he will go to Area B to battle Yu Jin Jong with Kyu Ja Ya Haru Siong, Yun Hyong Jai, and Ji Hyun Li, and last but not least, Siok Kang will head to Area C to fight Ti Ho Chen and Sianu Ha with Chin Hak Yong, Ti Hyong Lim, Minu Du, and Beat Gi Hong. He declares, let's do this.
After a while in Area A, Sijong Ryu inquired if that was so, as West Gangbok High divided its forces into three units. A brown-haired boy confirms that it's correct. Sijong Ryu remarks that this should be fun and predicts that it won't be long now, as Yiha is coming. Meanwhile, Sohyun Kim stands with Kyu Jaya and Haru Seong in a circle and states that this is it. They are the Wonder Trio, the Dream Team. He asks Kyu Jaya how he is doing and if he is ready for a fight. Kyu Jaya responds that he is good and more than ready. She also adds that she is ready and asks how she is doing as well. Sohyun Kim observes that Kyu Jaya seems to be in good condition for the battle ahead and inquires about her well-being. She confirms that she is doing great. The quest window notifies that Haru Seong's potential is throbbing. He concludes that, more importantly, Haru seems to be in peak form too, which means the person he is most worried about tonight is Siak Kang. Meanwhile, Siak Kang sits and remarks, but it's been a long time since they've seen each other. Hak Jin Ju responds, who do they have here, the old top dog of South Gang Bakai. Siak Kang comments that Hak Jin Ju looks even more devious than the last time he saw him. Hak Jin Ju acknowledges the comment with thanks. Siak Kang then mentions that he hears Hak Jin Ju has a brilliant plan to take Ti Ho Chin down. Hak Jin Ju confirms, stating that not even Yoon Hyung Jai or Ji Hyuk Jang would be able to come up with a ploy that is this clever. He adds that they will just sit back and watch as Ti Ho Chin meets his downfall. Meanwhile, at Area B, a boy announces that they have just received intel that Sahyun Kim has divided his forces into three units. Yuijin Jung expresses annoyance, questioning why Sehyun Kim had to go and do that, calling it a pain in the butt. He asks if there are any orders for them and comments on the number of people under Sehyun Kim's command. He emphasizes that even if every single one of his troops did nothing but give them a nugi, that's 300 nugis he's talking about. Meanwhile, Sehyun Kim notices the side quest on the quest window and decides they should go after Yuijin Jung. The quest window notifies the start of the quest. Sohyun Kim declares that they will show them what they are truly capable of, stating that this time, it's their turn. Meanwhile, Yuijin Jong stands up from his chair and asks who he is going to have to fight. A boy responds that it's likely Sohyun Kim. Yuijin Jong acknowledges that it's the top dog of West Gangbuk High himself, expressing admiration for his confidence. However, he questions whether Sohyun Kim will really be able to withstand all 300 of his troops. Yuijin Jong then asks which high-ranking fighters he will be bringing with him. His response includes Haru Seong, Kyu Jaya, and Ji Hyun Lee. Fi Hun Lee, a high-ranking fighter under Yuijin Jiong, remarks on Haru Seong, mentioning that it's been a while since they heard that name and questions if they are even allowed to lay a finger on little Haru. Wa Hyun Jin comments that this is quite a conundrum as if they do, Daniel might be furious with them. Yuijin Jong explains that Daniel already knows about it. He knows, but he doesn't understand that guy. He points out that Daniel was the one who drove Haru away, yet now that Haru has become their enemy, Daniel is seeking him out. Yuijin Jong expresses his disinterest in the situation, stating that he can't be bothered with any of that. They should let the two of them work it out. He confirms that they are suggesting they attack West Gangbok High right now and says there is no plan, they will do what they do best and overrun them with an all-out frontal assault. Meanwhile, Hak Jin Ju sits with Siak Kang, who has a lot of food, and asks if he can have a burger too. Siak Kang says he can take one, but he'll kill him. Hak Jin Ju remarks that was close. Siak Kang mentions he can have some fries though. Hak Jin Ju picks up a piece of fries to eat and says thanks. Siak Kang responds with all right, starts talking, and asks what brilliant plan he has to take Ti Ho Chin down. Hak Jin Ju replies that the plan is to play Ti Ho Chin and Sianu Ha against each other. Siak Kang inquires about how he plans to play them against each other. Hak Jin Ju explains that Sianu Ha is what makes Ti Ho Chen such a formidable enemy, and vice versa. He adds that it's only possible because they are friends, but what if he were to drive a wedge between them? He elaborates that he will pit them against each other by inserting himself between the two of them. Siak Kang asks how he plans to do that. Hak Jin Ju responds that he is getting to that. He will surrender himself to North Gang Bak Hai. Siak Kang asks why surrendered. Hak Jin Ju counters by asking how else he is going to drive a wedge between those two. Siak Kang asks how exactly he plans to do that. He states, as he said before, that by putting himself in between them, there's no need to worry. Feigning surrender is his speciality, and it worked on Sehyun Kim too. He adds that the problem lies with Sianu Ha. 
he's smart enough to realize that he's not genuinely surrendering to North Gang Buck High and insists that there must be a way. Siak Kang mentions he has an idea. When asked what it is, Siak Kang replies, don't be too alarmed, alright, and stands up. He agrees and also stands up. Siak Kang moves to attack him and explains that by spreading the word that he beat him up, they will start a rumor that there's infighting within the ranks of West Gangbak Hai. Then he will be able to surrender to North Gangbak Hai and join them without arousing Sianu Ha's suspicion. He acknowledges that it's a great idea and asks if they couldn't have spread that rumor without him punching him. Siak Kang considers that he's right. Meanwhile, a boy approaches Yoon Hyung Jai and informs him that they have a problem. He asks where Suhyun Kim is. Yoon Hyung Jai responds don't worry about that, just get to the point. The boy agrees and explains that Yoo Jin Jong's soldiers have shown up, and there are too many of them, at least over a hundred. Yoon Hyung Jai responds that's fine. The boy asks why he thinks it's fine. Yoon Hyung Jai explains that their plan has already begun and thinks, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth and it's payback time. Meanwhile, the troops from North Gangbuk High gather outside, and a brown-haired boy remarks what's this, seriously, West Gangbuk High? He questions if they really think one person will be able to stop all of them. After a while, Yu Jin Jong asks what's going on, their troops are being held at bay by just one guy. He inquired what are they up to now. He instructs them to get rid of him and proceed with the attack. The black-haired boy stands holding a phone and announces that there's a call for him. Yui Jin Jong inquires about the caller's identity. The boy replies that it's someone he knows very well. On the call, Yoon Hyung Jai identifies himself. He remarks on the cleverness of the little trick Yui Jin Jong played with Ti Ho Chen and thanks him for it. Yui Jin Jong responds, glad he enjoyed it and asks why he is calling, a traitor if he wants to betray West Gang Bak Hai to them. Yoon Hyung Jai denies this, stating that he wants to show him that they too can do what he did. Yui Jin Jong asks what he means. Yoon Hyung Jai explains that they are capable of doing the exact same thing Ti Ho Chin did to them and thinks, let's show them, So Hyun Kim. Meanwhile, So Hyun Kim attacks the North Gangbuk High troops one by one and knocks them out. A boy exclaims it's So Hyun Kim, taking down the top dog of West Gangbuk High. The quest window notifies that he has used the chapter card, increasing his stats in proportion to the number of cards in his possession. Additionally, the one-man army card has been triggered, increasing his stats in proportion to the number of opponents. It also notifies that the strong against the weak, weak against the strong card has been triggered, increasing his stats in proportion to his opponent's endurance. So Hyun Kim beckons them to come. The quest window notifies that his stats are currently sealed and only temporary stat increases will apply. He expresses his desire for this battle to be epic. Meanwhile, Yui Jin Jong remarks, not bad, no wonder it all seemed too easy. Yoon Hyung Jai interjects, saying drop the tough guy act. Yui Jin Jong retorts it's not an act, and he knows exactly why. He explains that he sent the entirety of his forces over there and knows that there are over 300 of them, emphasizing that So Hyun Kim can't possibly fight 300 people by himself. He adds that this situation is nothing like when Ti Ho Chin invaded West Gangbok Hai. Yoon Hyung Jai disagrees, stating that's where he is mistaken. Yui Jin Jong asks what he means. Yoon Hyung Jai explains that when he sent his people there, he also dispatched West Gangbok High's troops and high ranking fighters. At that moment, Haro Siong, Kyu Jia Ya, and Ji Hyun Lee arrive. Yui Jin Jong questions if he is really ambushing him with a bunch of riff raff. Si Hyun Lee greets Haru, remarking that it's been a long time, and asks how she has been. Wo Hyun Jin remarks that she dared to come here to fight them when she couldn't even beat Jin Ti Hyo. The scene shifts to a flashback where Haru Seong stands with Jiang Yu Seong and pleads for him to let her be his disciple. He responds that even if he did, it would be meaningless, as he is no good at teaching others and she might end up becoming a worse fighter than she was before. He moves to leave and advises her to look for another teacher. After a while, Haru Seong approaches him again. He sees her and asks if it's her again. He notices her hand and asks about the bandages on her fingers, questioning if someone beat her up again. He remarks on how pathetic it is and says fine. She asks if he means he will teach her. He responds that, as he mentioned earlier, he's no god at teaching people, so he will just demonstrate his techniques. She inquires about only his technique. He replies that she should watch him and use them for herself if she wants.
The scene shifts back to the present. Yuijin Jong calls out to Haru Siang. She requests him not to say her name and asserts that she is here to win. She wonders if he possesses the ability to copy.